All right. So I am starting this live stream early because it seems like every time I pre-plan some shit, it just never sorts out properly. And actually, I've been drinking because me and my friend Kevin went out tonight. And we went to a comedy club, <laughs> which was very, um, actually made me sad. I mean, there, there was good comedy, but that, there were many things that made me sad. One person I am going to absolutely share because I asked him ahead of time if it was okay. And it seemed like his whole stand-up comedy bit totally fit in with the narrative, I guess if you would say, of my channel. So... Actually, there was this table behind us that, um, yeah, I mean, this place is badass. I'm totally going back next Wednesday because these, these guys that run this organization are badass. But, um, there was this point where we're, we're supposed to, like, confess stuff and we had a piece of paper and we'd write down some shit and of course I wrote down like my confession was that I want to murder all the women that want to murder their children and that's saying a lot for a fucking atheist <laughs> and that had to do with abortion actually I had many conversations while I was there but hello black wolf Actually, I'm going to drop this because if you would like to come up and join me, I'm, <laughs> I know you're not drinking anymore, but I've had much to drink and I have much to say tonight because, well, I always have much to say, but, um, so, <laughs> with writing down our confessions, um, there were two really young guys. I, I think he said he was 22, and his friend was the same age. Um, and the dude wrote on his confession paperwork that he was confessing that he was straight. Like, what the fuck? That's... To live in a society where your confession is like that you're fucking straight? There's something seriously fucking wrong there. Like, really seriously fucking wrong. So, I only got permission from two of the comedy guys that were at the comedy club. And I'm going to play theirs, but I'm also going to play the the one of the woman that did comedy. Because I didn't fucking like it at all. And there were quite a few people there. And she stood up and tried to do comedy. And she wasn't fucking funny. And she was, like, really overweight. And she was stupid and... But people were, like, applauding her because she was a fucking woman. And I was not, I was not fucking impressed at all with her fucking comedy bit. But it, it was weird that the audience was like, yay. I mean, I wanted to talk to her before I left, but it, the, the night just went whatever. Um... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> this shit is really fucked up. And actually, Black Wolf, we should have a conversation because there's a lot of shit that's really fucked up. And that's really why I don't go out. <laughs> because, well, I'm going to play this comedy bit and we'll talk about it.
because this young man, he has a YouTube channel, Lucas Guts is his name, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave, copy, sorry I'm drunk, so this is not going to be <laughs> an easy thing, but here is his channel, I want everybody to subscribe, because this kid was speaking a lot of fucking truth in his comedy and it had to do with the relationship between the sexes. Weird. Yeah, that all the all the men's. Well, uh, everybody that I witnessed was a man besides the fucking really heavy woman. That was not funny. <laughs> like that bitch probably should not do comedy. I don't know what her thing is, but she wasn't fucking funny at all, but she was getting the applause because she was a woman. But yeah, I'm going to play I'm going to play this young man's bit because it actually it, I mean it it was funny, but it it kind of made me sad at the same time. Cuz this is just the same shit we talk about on the channel all the time. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a play. I'm going to play, uh, I think, the bit that I recorded that I uploaded already that people probably already saw. But <laughs> I'm also going to play a previous one from his channel because people need to follow his channel. Hello, Black Wolf. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm drunk, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to drive this bus, dude. <laughs> All right, I'll do the, I'll do the best I can. You line up the videos, and I'll, um, hell, I guess I'll, I'll talk about it. I don't know how many people in this thing? No, it We're just gonna play. This is the comedy club that I went to. I told you about it already. So. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. But I, I want you to hear this guy because I, I talked to him after his comedy bit because he had a lot to say that were was pretty much everything we fucking already talked about on, on this channel. So really young man. So I'm gonna right. do this You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, your next comment. On the downside of these, there's no phone pouch on these fucking robes. This I've been playing three times. They're like, we made a dick hole for you. I don't want a fucking dick hole. <laughs> Your next comic of the night, please start getting it going. Get it going. Start giving it up. So let's have Lucas at Boots, everybody. Lucas Boots. Woo! What's up, everybody? How we doing tonight? All right, I feel like here. So, uh, show of hands or make some noise. Has anybody here ever uh, cried in public before? Where are my sad people at? Yeah, so everywhere. All right, all right. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about that because I'm not a bitch. <laughs> but if I was going to cry in public, though, I know the perfect place to do it. Talk about a gym, y'all. Think about it. Picture this. You go to a gym, and you can always just disguise crying really hard as just... Working out intensely, it's easy. I mean, come on, picture this. You go over there, get the dumbbells, start doing some curls like, fucking bitch, let me. Took the kids, took the dogs. And you got your friend with you too, you're like, yo, what the fuck? Are you crying or something? Are you okay? No, man, you ever work out so hard, you got just sweat coming out of your eyes? Because <laughs> that's what's going on here. But, anyways, um, I've been going to the gym a little bit recently. You know, it work out. Nothing weird, guys, because, hey, fuck Uber, because I'd be lifting. Yeah. All right, all right, y'all know what it is. But I'm going to go to the gym mostly uh, to ball up, though, and I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of good, though, not to brag or anything, but I jumped over two people at the same dang time once. Not even NBA players can do that. Granted, it was a four foot eleven Hispanic chick, and she was severely pregnant. But hey, that's two people at the same time. That's a two point baby. Y'all know what it is. That's right. So the same uh, very nice Hispanic lady. She was, and I, I, 
I'll discriminate. I'll talk to anyone. We were playing a pickup basketball game. He's I was going out. up, dribbling. I hit with a little in and out hesitation. She goes stumbling. And I pull up from three. Boom! Busted right in her face. I was like, fuck yeah. Call me a splash bro. That shot was wet. That shot was so wet. There was water all over the floor. Because her water just broke. Yeah. I feel like I put an inch that woman's basketball career. But hey, it's all right. The new one's just getting started. That's a circle life, baby. Y'all know what it is. Oh man, so uh, anyways, like I said, I've been going to the gym a little bit recently too. I've also been on this pretty uh, strict TV 12 diet, so I'm trying to be like my hero Tom Brady, but unlike him, I'm only human. Oh, I'm only human, folks. So every now and then, I like to mess around and have just a little bit of a cheat day though. Just, just a little bit of a cheat day. But not like my girlfriend though. Oh, oh, oh. She loves cheat days. She ain't getting up them. Had one with uh, a good friend of mine. One with a neighbor, uh, one with my cousin. I mean, uh, just, she couldn't get enough of it. Oh my goodness. So, uh, yeah, she upgraded, got a better model. What can I say? Can't blame her, though. I did learn a valuable lesson, though, folks. If you're going to date a girl with low self esteem, make sure that self esteem stays low, all right? Give those compliments <laughs> to a minimum. Be sure to compare her to all her friends. Forget those anniversaries. Trust me, that is a secret to a healthy and happy marriage. Just ask my dad. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, as a result of that, I am single, it's true, <laughs> so um, yeah, alright, someone, someone else single too, I like that, I like it, it's given me a lot of time to do some soul searching, and I think I realized I'm like the opposite of a pedophile, it's true, because I'm 24 and I cannot date girls three years younger than me, I just can't do it, because every single girl who's 21 younger, you know, of the TikTok generation, they're all exactly the same, they're all just bisexual and depressed. Every single one of them. <laughs> and that just, that just isn't me. I can't do it. And I try to relate to them. I met this cute girl and, um, you know, I, I tried to, well, I tried to, I, I'll be honest, I send her DMs actually. And I tried to spit some sick game. Be like, yo, girl, you said you're, uh, you're depressed? Yeah, guess what? I'm sad as fuck too. Oh, yo, girl, you said you're bisexual? Well, uh, guess who loves dick? This guy right over here. Cool. Can't get enough of it. Didn't work though. Unbelievable. She's some of these ladies. So, anyways, um, anybody ever been to uh, Hooters here recently? Yep. Anyone? Oh, yeah. All right, just one person. Good. You shouldn't go. That place is fucking gross. You shouldn't go. That place is nasty. So, anyway, I got some friends who like going to Hooters, and they're all pretty, and obviously they're all single too. And they're all kind of stupid though, because their idea is all like, hey. Instead of going to a bar to meet girls, let's go to a place where the girls come to us. All right? Genius idea. Now, these guys have no idea how to get bitches. One of them's uh, in his late 20s. He still lives with his parents. The other one, his entire sex life comes courtesy of his right hand. Yeah, he calls her Angelina Jolie. <laughs> That's kind of cute, right? They've been together a really long time, you see. That's, that's a nice story. So anyways, my friends, of course, who like Hooters, they invited me out to go to and I don't like to go because, you know, what can I say? I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, good food, good beer, and good times. Come on, guys. No, it's tits. Where's the women's tits? We're going to tits! So we get to tits, and I am honestly shocked and appalled by what I see because when I picture tits, I thought it was just all loose and perverts, right? You would think that's a demographic, but no. I get to tits, there's families at tits. There's children at tits, there's young teens at tits, there's middle aged children at tits. It's disgusting. All these people are hanging out at tits. Who's bringing their families to fucking tits? I couldn't believe that's disgusting. It had me thinking. I mean, that shit's obviously the dad's idea, right? No. No? What? Oh my goodness. No. But no, hey, I, I got an idea though. I, imagine the little Uno reverse that situation. What if you opened up a restaurant like Hooters? We're gonna call this place Dongs, all right? <laughs> Dongs is like Hooters only instead of ladies. He got dudes with big old meat packages running around, and they're getting all hot and sweaty. They're hitting on your wife. They're playing catch with your kids. Ask how they're doing in school. Being a great father figure, even while you're sitting on your fucking fat ass watching the Cowboys lose. A place like that would never be allowed to exist. I couldn't imagine the fact that the woman will receive it. She's like, oh, babe, let's go to Dongs. Unbelievable. <laughs> I know, ridiculous story, ridiculous premise, I mean, come on. A woman decided where to eat? Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to end on that. Thank you so much. Please stick around.
Hey, what's up, good mother? Hello. Hey, man, you won't believe what I just saw, though. What did you see? A car on fire. You caught on fire? <laughs> a car on fire. Yes, I just finished the job, so, you know, I went home, and then I took, you know, a, a little road, and then there was a car on fire, so oh. I had to stop. I had to stop and call the police. <laughs> you, you you called the police. Yeah, I called my employer actually. <laughs> I thought you said you caught on fire. No, 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 not me. Uh, some of the car. Okay. And uh, the person uh, died. So it was awful to watch. Oh, I'm they burned sorry. to death. Yeah, it burned. It was uh, there was nothing left, you know. Yeah. Dang, that yeah, sucks, it was man. not. It was awful. Yeah. No you know, I just finished my job and I just want to go home and rest, and then boom, that car explodes in front of my face. Ah, uh, it exploded. It exploded. Yeah, it exploded, and then it, uh, it burned. Okay. It did like a boom, you know. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, what did you guys think of the comedy that was really sad? Is it just me? Is it because I've been drinking tonight that I find that comedy really sad because it reflects our how fucked up our culture is? Well, yeah, but I, I don't I did see all the video though. Well, I did. It was um I think it's sad to an extent from uh from one comedian to to another. He did a really good job. I can tell he was kind of on the spot. He he he's only, he only does like one thing that he shouldn't do, but he'll get better at it the more he keeps doing it. Well, okay, he, we're not we're we're not criticizing his comedy. This is open mic night. This is no, 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 I know that uh, he's really good. I'm saying he has the potential to be really, really good. Oh no, it's he's just great. yeah, yeah, his potential to be really, really good. The only thing he has to do is like um, I, I would just. Like for him, I just rehearse a little bit more. I mean, he, that was him just doing it on the spot. But I think if he like re, re like just kind of rehearsed it a bit, I'm not it, it, it would hit. About the technical skills, I'm talking about the content of this. I know I'm, I'm getting to that in just a moment. Like that. as far as the content, it's um it's like a story driven comedy, which is which is good. He's telling, like he's ref the comedy is reflecting like what you know our society is, is today and it's and it's yeah. messed up that um it, it is sad because you it's take become, the family to tits oh uh, yeah it becomes he, he he's talking about just society and how it normally is i mean that's the that's the punchline of the joke it's 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 normalized all those things that sound like shocking and everything is just normalized this is why i commend him for picking a story format to tell the joke any yeah. other way that wouldn't have landed right but he uh yeah, I mean, he, I just think he needs to get a little better at um, addressing the audience. But that was really, really good. I have to. Dude, he was so it. funny, but hardly anybody laughed. Well, it's 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 not. It wasn't the joke itself. It is. It's just kind of his. Um, it's just his approach. It's kind of like this. One of the reasons a lot of people like Kevin Hart. I'm not too much of a Kevin Hart fan. When you tell story-driven comedy, mm -hmm. it has to have. It, the story can't be too long. But also the punchline has to hit. If that punchline is, it, you, you could have the greatest punchline, but if you're firing and not particularly hitting the target, then it's it's gonna come off as uh, you know, it could have just been the audience too. But it, he has to like target his jokes better. That's yeah, all there was, there was hardly any audience. Honestly, honestly, there wasn't a lot. Actually, I'm I'm gonna play I'm gonna play the only woman that I saw next okay um and this is why women aren't funny i mean this this is open mic right but most women are not funny at all right absolutely <laughs> most women are not funny this one definitely not bob actually you might like this one here. <laughs> it's my bra. And she's she's like, no, no. And 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 I'm just like, no, that's my bra. Trying to listen. And she's like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. And and they're wanting to drag me 
back into this room. And I'm like, am I allowed to have a witness? And it's like, well, are you traveling with anybody? Well, I came to the airport with a coworker. We weren't we're traveling together. And I go, Tom, you know, I'm traveling with him. They're like, okay, come on. So they're starting to walk me back. And now I'm like, uh-oh, they're just going to strip me down in front of my coworker. <laughs> and after all that, they didn't even look. It's, it's like once I had a witness, they weren't going to do anything. So next time, I go through airport security. I've got... See, once I had a witness, they weren't going to do anything. That leads me to believe that she was trying to trap somebody into doing some shit that she can fucking be a victim about. But it did work because she ugly and fat. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not to mention, what's really funny about it is what I was saying earlier and why I mentioned it. She's trying to do the same thing the other guy did, but her story is bombing. And it's bombing because there's like no one knows where the where the build up is. Oh, I went there, but they didn't do anything, and so my car almost fell off a hill, but it didn't. And it's just it's a droning it's a droning story. I mean, that story could have been made a lot funnier. But the problem is the reason um, female comedians aren't funny is because we society is conditioned like everyone. To, oh, nothing is about nothing about a woman is funny. Everything about a woman is taboo to when a female comedian stands up on stage. They will only they'll make fun of men because that's safe. They'll make fun of maybe she other women, but she they'll never. Well. She she just made fun of herself. The problem is, yeah, basically, it's even can, uh, make it. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the thing, though, like. Even when women are making fun of themselves, they always hold back. When it comes to male comedians, we never hold back on making fun of ourselves. That's the thing. And, and the thing is, most women like do. They they'll they'll make fun of others before they will do themselves. And so it's that's what kind of keeps that along them, them from being funny. That along with the uh, what's reinforced already in, in society. And I hold joke. I'm sorry. He we got that, baby. I was going to say, I'm just going to finish this because the next one, the dude was funny. I just wanted to play the only woman that came up on the on the thing. Was not funny. I, I don't remember laughing once, but I, I have a high standard when it comes to comedy, and it has to be really fucking dark. So I'm going to keep playing it, though. I got this in mind. And I'm like, never again. I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to risk it. So I decide I'm going to protest this this event like yeah. that was happening. Yeah. So I'm going to take my bra off yeah. and run it through the x-ray. Feminism. So I'm online. I got my six pins and all my crap. And then I start taking my bra off. And, and for Larry Roll, who always asks me, how the heck do you do this? Well, it's as simple as that. Oh my and God! Why? 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 You fat as fuck. Look at the fucking applause. Right. Look at the applause. No, 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 no. no. Was fat. It, this is what pissed me off. The dude before her was way fucking funnier, and anybody here currently. Didn't have one single applause like that. This oh. bitch takes her fucking fat ass bra off and she gets a fucking huge applause. This is bullshit. Look at her stomach hanging out. This this is just... <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. This yes, it is funny. Weird. It's not even funny that they're applauding fucking social justice bullshit. This yeah, but women don't, don't have charisma. so They're not funny. Bob... The women don't have to. I know, I know. <laughs> Women are not funny. I say it all the fucking time. Women aren't funny because they don't. Some, need you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, dude. This is my new church. I'm gonna start going <laughs> every Wednesday, and I'm, I'm gonna go up there because I'm gonna do some comedy. So. Go for it. I don't know what yet because I know. Don't Women show, don't show your bra, though. Don't show your boob. Dude, no. But don't worry. Like, if you're gonna take off a bra, at least I'll be on the audience to catch it. I mean, I mean, <laughs> might, might as well. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had. I actually had to leave. They were doing like a confession thing where they were 
like having everybody confess stuff. And I wrote on my confession card and I didn't wait to fucking hear it read, but I wrote that I wanted to murder women that wanted to kill her children or murder her babies or something. And that's saying a lot for a fucking atheist. <laughs> no, no, you guys, you know what's fucked up? The dudes behind us, um, the really young man wrote on his confession card that he was confession confessing that he was straight. He was confessing that he was heterosexual. Yeah, that's crazy, man. These people today, man. It's anything sexual, you know. I don't follow these people, man. Um, it's crazy. The fact that you have to confess that you're heterosexual. What the fuck? What does that mean, though? What the that, fuck does that, that mean? That that means in a fucking mass psychosis of a society that is driven by fucking social justice nonsense. Oh. That you have to confess that you like women as a man. That's fucked up. That you is see, super fucked up. Yeah, you see, you see yeah Bob, it is. You know, she, she doesn't know about the simp, the simp chronicles, but, but but yeah, it's like that now. I mean, to everyone in the comments section, it was a long time before I came out of the straight. You know, I went up to my mom was like, I like pussy, ma. What do I do? And we just like held, hugged each other and cried the whole entire fucking time. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry, son. You're going to grow up and try to get inside me. I'm sorry. And it makes me, Christopher Hitchens explains why women are not funny. Yeah, evolutionary biology demands men be funny in order to reproduce. Thus, men's brains develop yeah. in humor. Bit, men, on the other hand, don't have to. That's why women are not funny. That's why it would yeah. be. That's why this bitch is not funny. Look, I want to finish this because sure. the next guy is, is actually funny. So, Might as well to jump to the next. No, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna finish this because she's funny. Look, look at her. The, Not this intentional. Is, this is what is tolerated in our society. So. My friend Kevin said he was gayer now. So my friend Kevin's gay, and after that bit, he was more gay. So. <laughs> I forget exactly who it is, but periodically I go look at the label because what? down the block it's comfortable, and uh, I'm not giving them up. So anyway, I take this off. Screen's like, ma'am, you don't need to do that, ma'am. I'm like, no, I had a problem, so I take it, drop it in the bin, and she kind of looks at it. You know, it's like a little bit like a rattlesnake. She gets close, it's, you know, backs off. And that's what happens when you get close to me. Uh, and then when I get out the other end, I grab my bra over my shoulder and just walk out proudly with my stuff and my bra on my shoulder. And then suddenly my modesty returns and I'm kind of like this and, and find the restroom and put it back on. So this pattern repeats um, from time to time. And uh, <laughs> then started what I call the Battle of the Bins. And this is where they started saying, I, I used to put my bra along with my purse, my shoes in a bin. And they decided, well, shoes go on the belt. You don't need to, uh, to have a bin for that. Um, purse goes on the belt too. And so they would they take, literally take my shoes out, take my purse out, and then they look at the my bra sitting in the bin there. And it's kind of like, <laughs> think about it, and then just kind of push it on through. And so I got amusement from this. It's very minor, you know, little. Kind of, I kind of stuck it to them a little bit. No, you yeah. And then comes one day, I get all through this, drop my bra in the bin. They go, you know, purse, shoes out on the bell. And then the screener goes, why don't you take your bra and put it in your bag? 
Yeah, yeah but nobody uh, wants to fucking well, say That's it. A, entirely a too reasonable request. And I won't, you know, be a too reasonable request. I'm not and before I'm, I'm some about to do that, <laughs> she says, <laughs> you wouldn't want it to get dirty on the belt. And I think she's giving me a choice. Man, that's uh, making me want to vomit. Okay, you can put it on the belt. <laughs> and she's kind of like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. Um, man, why don't you just, just pick it up and put it in the bag? And she starts unzipping it. I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. You can put it on the bag. Why? Just why? Like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then finally, she just kind of pushes it down. I know. Victory. Anyway, thank you all very much. What was the punchline? Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Girls, a lot of clearance. You know, with the bra on, they go up there. Yeah. And they give me a lot of clearance, but I can take my phone. You know, that could be a clip. I can take the microphone. Oh, God. I need to talk to her on why she is doing this. <laughs> oh my god. This is why people should not fucking. It's, this is why I don't usually go out in public. <laughs> Those. Yeah, man, she's fat as fuck. I had a hard time um, witnessing all that. <laughs> Those considering doing stand up. I mean, it was not comedy. Don't start she off. She should go doing, to the gym. She should be doing comedy as a whole. As a whole. That was that was like fucking. That was painful to watch. For those considering doing comedy, do not start off telling story based jokes. They they are very difficult to land, and if you're not good at them, it's just gonna make people think you're crazy or weird. Just don't do don't do it. Yeah. Well, I might start doing comedy just for fun. <laughs> I go for it. It's it's Maybe fun. You know? I mean, I know women aren't typically funny, but I don't know. A wet paper bag or a wet blanket would be funnier than that lady. Watching paint dry would be funnier than that but, lady. But, but you you heard the reaction that all the people applauding her. Yeah, all the people that clap, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Woman they takes do. off her bra. Yay, uncle, Aunt Amela. <laughs> you know. It was not even good. It was not even sexy to watch. You know, it's a fat girl. It's not attractive at all. You know, it's very not. It's it's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. And all the people uh, watching this. Oh my bad. I was gonna say no, go ahead, man. watching this right now. I mean, reverse the genders. Imagine I go up on stage and I take off my boxer and I just throw them at some random woman. Like, yep, I took off my boxer, showed the TSA my balls, shaved them <laughs> right then and there. And you know what? They respected me for it. They respected me because I came from dongs. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. She is full of manure. Yeah, she's not good. This guy was funny, though. This this next guy, I liked him. Um, here, let's, let's give this a play. I asked his permission. I didn't ask her permission. Like, I don't give a fuck. But here. <laughs> this is this more Are we having fun? Yes, I'm gonna see y'all motherfuckers on Sunday. All right, <laughs> church in church. Also, I am a um, I am a W nine priest, so I can be leased out. Uh, weddings, anniversaries, anything you need me to say, uh, whatever you want me to add, please hit me up at the registry. All right, your next comment. One of our most veteran global comics. You can see him really here every week and all around Texas all the time. Just give it up for Mr. Lee Cross. So that was actually the last time a Catholic priest ever touched me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, uh, where are my single guys at? All right, I'm going to give you all some advice when it comes to women. Um, you should avoid her if she wears a pinky toe. I'm oh, sorry, pinky. <laughs> she got a pinky toe. <laughs> Cut her loose, man. Yeah, she got a pinky toe. You don't want that, man. She's going she gonna to hit that against everything in your house. It's going to be your fault. <laughs> sorry. I'm a little high. Um, if you're 
the toe ring. A toe ring. See, the toe ring, it, it just, it's like the pinky toe, just get rid of her. Uh, if her car is missing at least one, I'll help you out. <laughs> She's doesn't know Jackie. <laughs> Shut up. Look. Like y'all can y'all can see all of our faults and all the zits on the back of our back from like fifty yards out. You can't see that fucking curve that you're about to hit. <laughs> you're forty five. <laughs> no. Another thing, uh girls who are into Harry Potter. Girls who are into Harry Potter, especially if they have a shorting a sorting hat butt plug. <laughs> and she wants to find out what house you belong to. <laughs> Baby, I'm a Star Wars nerd, so bust up that lightsaber. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Girls don't like it when you pretend they're vibrators uh the dildo the, the, the dildos on the vibrator. <laughs> Turn to the dark side. So you know what girls also don't like? When they're going down on you, you use your golem voice. <laughs> yeah. It is, but it's so funny. It's so funny. But she was all like, well, I'm really in the role play. And I was like, well, I got, I got a role play for you, all right? <laughs> so she's going down on me, and I'm just like, oh, yes. <laughs> 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 It wasn't until I said, my precious, that she was like, okay, that needs to stop <laughs> right now. Or I will get that sort of time. Well, I, um, I'm a single man. I, uh, I'm the only guy on stage. I'm a single man. And, oh, yeah, no, no, there's that guy. So, uh, no, I'm single, and uh, I, do, I do stuff that really pisses off women. Um, I, uh, I yeah, there's a woman right there. I'm about to piss her off. Uh, I bathe with Dawn dish soap. I bathe because I'm one, I'm, I'm cheap, and two, I need to get clean. And three, look, if it's good enough to get the oil off the little duckies that are covered in oil for whatever reason, it's good enough for me. Okay? I also clean my dishes while I'm bathing. Two birds, one stone. Yeah. You know? Another thing girls don't like is um, when you won't let them break you down mentally, physically, emotionally. Right. When they're finally, when you finally like, you know, like when you want to like spend the rest of your life with them, it's just like, uh, this freedom's actually pretty nice. Still hang out with my boys because you haven't officially become a boyfriend girlfriend yet. Like, how do you do that now in 2021? Right. Like, you just pull her side like, do you want to do a girlfriend? Or just like. You just like have to bust out a tax form and be like, look, here's the thing. <laughs> Economically, it'd be really great for us to leave it together. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm just going to tell the lady at the front desk that we're boyfriend and girlfriends. So that way, maybe if we would like, in, in, like in enough love, we'll like take away the application fee. Because we can't hit that 30. That $35 is really going to bust us right now. Okay, I, I, I look, I, I, this body was built on ramen noodles and Jack in the Box tacos for like a good eight years. Okay, I can't do this anymore. That was one time, uh, our, uh, I'm one of those guys like, look, if I order a cheeseburger with no vegetables and it comes out with vegetables, you know what? That's just the universe saying, hey, that's so, eat some vegetables. Okay? But when I was with my girlfriend, no, you ordered that without vegetables. And by God, you're going to get that without vegetables. Yes. Me, I'm like, hey, Karen, I'm perfectly capable man. And take the vegetables off. No harm, no foul. I'm not gonna have my uh, nope. Dr. Pepper get beat into when I get a refill. <laughs> not a problem. No, no, no. Not with a single white female. Okay. <laughs> and this one time the apartment complex accidentally charged us 62 cents more than what our rent should have been. Y'all, I felt like a negotiator in a SWAT team. I was like, sweetheart, we cannot go in there with this energy right now. We cannot. You gotta tone it down, sweetheart. She's like, they charged us 62 cents more than what we should pay. I'm like, you know what? That's probably gonna go towards the dog park that they never mow. But we don't talk about it because the female loves running in the tall grass. Win win. She's like, no, win right now. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna need your gun. So we talking about. I was like, I need that. It's Texas. Yeah. This chick pulled out three guns. <laughs> Now I own six guns. <laughs> um, 
What's that thing when you, you know, like when you really gotta go to the bathroom and right when you get to your front door, your asshole's just like, job here's done. What, what is that? I'm gonna give you all a little advice, guys. Whenever that, whenever that, uh, that moment hits you, don't make big strides <laughs> when you're going to the bathroom. You wanna make small, little strides, make pray. Oh, dear Jesus. I know we haven't talked in a while. I really need you. Yeah, don't do this. Cause then just shit everywhere, uh, and your dog rolls in it. Uh, you know, then you gotta bake her and dog just so, uh, and you just got a mad girlfriend after that. Awesome guys, hey, thank y'all so much for coming out tonight. <laughs> really appreciate you guys. I gotta admit, that one was the best one up there, and I'll tell you why. Right, right. What his delivery? He's just as good as the first guy. The thing about it is, he told a story. But his delivery was subtle and hit yeah. like a freight train. It yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. No, the dude was actually cool. Uh, we we talked to him for quite a bit before the the thing even started. So I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm I always love seeing like new new comedy. I'm happy. I yeah. honestly, I'm happy. I never went through with the comedy. It used to be very good, but I'm happy I never went through with it because the woke. To everyone listening, fuck the woke cloud. The, the woke crowd can suck my dick. I, I really hate how they ruin comedy. I mean, it's it's so fucking bad, you know. Uh, they Did you talk the to these comedy? people? They, they ruin the comedy that allows the ruining to happen. Like, yeah. Dave Chappelle is like, fuck you guys right now. Yeah, he refuses to make a joke about the, the alphabet game because after a while, people get so fucking butthurt. And for those watching, me and everyone like me, like any kind of person's yeah. ever done comedy before, we don't yeah. want to walk onto the stage and have to figure out what gender the stage identifies as. I mean, I always thought a microphone was a microphone, but sometimes it identifies as a dick or a pussy, depending on how the fucking crowd feels. Up, oh, yep, yeah, it's pussy today. Everybody's screaming shit. But I put the mic up. It's one of those freaking things. Yeah. And that's what's fucking fucking weird about it. I mean, the comedian's supposed to be a dick, not the crowd. Right. Motherfuckers oh, Bob. Are. Bob, I'm I'm actually glad you're here, Bob. Did you hear what Putin said about uh, his warning to America? Uh, no, I did not because I was working. So no. What did he God. say? Damn it! Okay, let me. I'm I'm gonna find it. I want to get your reaction because I loved it. I mean, I love Putin, but um, let's see. Uh. Podcast. All right, while you're looking for that, yeah, Putin has a gangster walk. You can tell a dude has a gangster walk. He just walks in. You don't see women yelling at him and shit. The only thing he does is he like he points a finger, kind of motions to remove her now, remove her ass now. I like Putin. <laughs> he's like he's my people. President Putin. Yeah. That guy is kind of crazy though, but it's a the good president. Yeah. No, the he's guy's a chill. confident and dangerous man. He's, he's a chill man. dude. I got him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a pretty chill dude. He's not, he's, not, he's a good one. He's a smart man. Mm. I've never yeah, seen him panic very about anything. Smart. Very, no very smart. No one's ever seen Putin panic about anything. Dude's just completely I OG. Yeah. He's just OG about like a lot of stuff, and that's what's really cool about it. You know, he has like a. Right. Gangster walk too, and he comes up on the stage. You don't see people yelling at him and getting in his face and trying to cancel him. You know, you don't. Right. You don't see that shit trying you to happen. Stupid to try that bullshit. You know, it's, it's, I used to, I used to uh, meet a girl. She was a Russian girl. She was yeah. the sexiest girl I ever fucking my life. Yeah. No, Russians uh, are the best. Plus. You guys ready? Plus, Danny. Oh, um, just, just a sec. Plus, any Russian person watching this, I grew up with a lot of Italian and Russian friends. And the one thing I liked about my Russian friends is, like, they could fight. They could fight and be cool with you at the same time. And don't worry, we can work on your comedy bit because sometimes, you know, I've seen Russian comics. which really great, but sometimes it's stale. But, but hell, you know, what I liked about Russia, though, I guess Russian people is if they like you, they like you. They don't like you, they don't like you. And they don't put on fake smiles and shit. Right. Yeah. When they smile, they're genuinely fucking happy. And, oh, and so, German? yeah. Germans are the same way. So, yeah, no, they, they don't play the superficial pleasantries. They, they don't fucking 
bend a knee to you and try to fucking jerk you off before you've actually proved that you're worth their fucking time. But the friends that you make in Germany and Russia, if you make those friends, they're friends for life. They're, oh, yeah. You got a friend for life with them. I mean, hell, some of the some of the coolest dudes I ever met, we got in a fist fight, especially when I was like chilling up there in Iceland for, like a few years back in the mid 20s, ran to some Russian cats. And it was it was funny as fuck. You know, it was like you, you, when you're in a drunk fight with a Russian person, it's like the most fucked up thing in the world. I mean, I, the Russian I knew was pretty shitty. But we had a weird conversation where neither one of us understood each other, but we kind of understood each other only after we hit each other in the face. So it's like this weird thing <laughs> to where people kind of understand where you stand <laughs> after you punched in the face. But yeah, it was it was all good. You know, when we drank and he learned a little English, I learned more Russian. He introduced me to his sister and you know, Russian women. I got to admit, they, they, they haven't forgotten how to be women at the very least. They and, and that chick was tall, by the way. But those in the comment section, I was like maybe like 26 or whatever. That, that chick was taller than me. Like, mm-hmm. damn. That that was – wasn't expecting that. She's got to be a turn-off. Mm-hmm. That, was, turn on. that, was, that was fucking awesome. But, Are you ready? Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. ready. I'm just saying Russia's pretty cool. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yes. We love the motherland. Gosh. Okay. So, do we want to give some love to uh, uh, Fauci? Oh no. Let's go to Putin. Let's go to Putin. Listen, I have. I got to tell you guys this, this story. With I was telling you this yesterday, but I think it's important for people to know this. Friends and family who are Russian, okay, mm-hmm. who live in America, okay. I don't know. I'm telling you this right now, and I know a lot. I don't know a single person will hit that. I don't know a single person who's Russian doesn't respect and love Putin. It's such a weird dynamic. Why do you think they love him They so love much? the way he leads. He He's a man's better, man. Better Putin than Perry. So company. I'll be watching too many of his videos. Okay. Putin rails against cancel culture and suggests teaching gender fluidity to kids is a crime against humanity. This is an insider story. Hear that? Crime against humanity. It's a game at cancel culture and supporters of transgender Fucking rights suggesting that teaching bitches. kids, uh, che- teaching gender fluidity is a crime against humanity while stating that Russia should remain its spiritual values and historical traditions. Putin said that some Westerners believe the aggressive deletion of whole pages of their own history reverse discrimination against the ma- reverse discrimination majority against the majority. In the interest of minorities, constant. In the interest of minorities, which is the exact fucking agenda that these stupid feminists push. To movement toward public renewal. Let me read that one more time. What yeah. a technical statement. Tongue twister. L- listen to this. That means civil war. That some Westerners believe the aggressive deletion of whole pages of their own history. Reverse discrimination against the majority in the interest of minorities constitute movement towards public renewal. Public wow. renewal. What does that mean? The Russian leader whose opponents have often ended up dead or imprisoned, like in cancel culture, to reverse racism. Yep. He said the emphasizing of the racial topic divides people. Yep. Um, I'll go to you first and, you know, what you had to say about what Putin just said, right? What do you think, Bob? Well, I think it's a genius, but it's just my opinion. You know, it's not because I say something that is the ultimate truth about anything. You know, it's just my opinion. I think this guy is a genius. That's what I think. It's a, it's a really awesome dude. I mean, like for those wondering, I mean, you go to Russia. There's there's plenty of non-Russians that also live in Russia. The thing about Russia is. Anybody can live there. You just can't be a pussy and live there. It's, it ain't going to work. If you're a pussy right. and they detect that, you're going to catch hell. Because yeah. when I was up in Russia and everyone was telling me, oh, Russia is so racist. I didn't experience a shit ton of racism. But then again, I'm numb to a lot of shit. Unless somebody's th- throwing a punch at me, I don't give a fuck. And I kind of like the fight, or rather I used to anyway. And so do they. So but it was actually kind of weird. Said, what he said about cancel culture and how yeah, cool. stupid it is to cancel culture is complete and utter bullshit. I mean, there's no such thing as reverse racism or reverse discrimination. Discrimination is just discrimination, and if most people would just get on board, talking about just, the majority, the white people, blame they want to, uh, the they want to people. eliminate the discrimination. You know, so uh, cancel culture mm-hmm. is a, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Cancel for culture, cancel culture stops healthy assimilation 
it stops healthy fucking assimilation. I mean, I'm not going to move to Germany and think I'm going to live there my whole life and not speak German. I'm not going to move to Russia and, and, and think I'm not going to do thing do as the Russians do. I mean, wherever you live, you have to assimilate. It wasn't the change that pissed people off. It was the in-your-face woke bullshit that pissed people off. I mean, people can identify whatever the fuck they want to identify. It's just right. these assholes get up in everybody's ass with it. I mean, when I was growing up, I never had a problem with anybody. You know, you want to be... You want to be a lesbo, a dyke, whatever. Cool. They, that's not my life. That's their life. I mean, they have a right to live their life like everybody else. But I don't have to accept people want to be a fucking unicorn. I mean, th- that's that's their shit. You know, they, they can. I accept that's what they want to do, but I don't have that to. Don't make that. Sense. I, I mean, mean people that say, you know, people that say, oh, I'm a unicorn. Blah, blah. Yeah, you, you know, that's fucking trash. That's yeah, bullshit. It's, it's, that don't exist. It, it, is, it is bullshit. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's bullshit. I mean, yeah. I believe in people's constitutional right to be a dumbass, like or a jackass, but it, but it's not. But they don't have the right to try to force that shit on you. I mean, if we, if we all agree that the sky is blue or whatever the fuck, and somebody keeps coming up, no, it's green, no, it's teal. It doesn't matter. Like fuck. I mean, it could be whatever the yeah. fuck it wants to be. I'm just mad that people want to violently pose their shit on you. I, I'm a really? 67 genders. I'm non-binary. That, that's great. Yeah. Be with pan whatever the fuck you want to be. Just don't shove it up my ass. You don't yeah, see me no, shoving my heterosexuality up anybody else's ass. You know what's weird? All these um, phenotypical games that these fucking idiots play, they should have played them when they were kids if their moms weren't so fucking psychotically micromanaging them and telling them to not, you know, be kids. They, they should have already outgrown this shit, but they've actually taken it into the adult world. And then the mommies that are in the jobs can allow them to play their stupid, idiotic, childish games. You know, in Canada, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. You know, if you don't like, you know, in Canada, if you want to have somebody, you know, a girlfriend, which is boring, you know, for me, it's boring to have some, a girlfriend because they are boring to me. But if you want to have somebody and you need to give them something, But yeah. what they do, they only take. They never give. So, you know, why the well, fuck should I be in a relationship, you know? But, Bob, but if, they, it was, they, if it was reciprocal, would it be as boring? But, That's yeah, but, you know, they impose. They impose stuff on guy here. That's what Bob, they do. Bob, if it was reciprocal, like you guys gave the same amount and you guys made each other happy, would that be boring? No, that will be better because it's an exchange, you know, but when it's only the one that give all the time, no, that's not going to work. But the feminists are very fucking self-centered yes. and they hold themselves to this really high ideal and they're like, oh, you just... They, they believe it They believe in a form ideal. of moral superiority and that's that's <laughs> the thing. And, and to, to Braxton's comment, I, I get what you mean. There's no escape in any kind of discrimination nowhere, no matter where you go. The thing about it is a person can mitigate it. Like what starts a lot of fights is um, people just strolling up, strolling up into a place. Maybe it's just my personality, but I had never really in Iceland, Russia. I never really experienced anything that was blatant compared to anything that was already fucking used to in, in, in the West. But then again, it's just I'm an asshole. And so are they. <laughs> so you're not. An you're, asshole. Kind of, you're actually very sweet. Bustle. You just pretend. I, I, yeah. You know, you know, when <laughs> I was a kid, there were. You're just a human. Everybody's a human. You know, we are, we are just human. You know, nobody is better than nobody. We just, we all human, but they want to be, they want to control men in Canada. They want to control men for, uh, you know, the way they want to fuck, the way they want sex, the way they want this. It's only their way. But you know, you know what I used to do when I was a kid? I used to be a wild man when I was a kid. One day I meet a feminist and then she told me, oh, you need to be my little dog. But she was living next to my house, you know, when I was a kid. And you know what my grandpa told me? My grandpa told me. She called you a dog? Yeah, but let me finish, you know. She 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 said to me, you need to be my own little dog. And then you know what I did? My old grandpa, you know, told me you need to be, to get some escort to play the same game as they do. And then they get very angry. She was very angry. She's starting to throw egg in the, in my window. Bob, she literally said she Yeah, she did. 
said dog. Yeah, but you know, I did. I played the same game as they did. So I called an escort, and then she she saw girl come to my house. She got very angry. Yeah. No. See, that's that's yeah. fucking weird. That that's yeah, weird. it is weird. That's that's crazy. I feel uh, like you guys have it worse in Canada, maybe than yes, yes, it's even worse. Let me tell you why. It's not because yeah. we are worse. It's because it's a liberal country, so it yeah. is worse. Yeah. It's a, like ninety percent, ninety percent of women. They are, they are all feminists. Most of them, all Canada, most of them are feminists. Yeah. If you find one that is not a feminist. That's the ring in the rough, if you know what I mean. Diamond in the rough. Yeah, diamond in the rough. Yeah, I saw one, one, one day. I found one girl like that one day, but she was what crazy happened? as well. She was too crazy for me anyway. But she wasn't she a not feminist? No, she was a feminist. She was not a feminist, but, uh, you know. Uh, but she, she was crazy. She wanted me, you know, to buy, uh, to buy a house and, you know... Uh, Oh, it was even more crazy. So, you know, I figure out, I say, hey, you know, fuck all of this. And then one day I meet my my ex-girlfriend that I have a kid with, but she died in a car crash. So, you know, I'm kind of glad that happened because right. I did absolutely shit. Dodge that bullet. <laughs> and then after this, I only went to escort because, uh, first of all, they look better. And second of all, they treat you better. And third of all, uh, they show up on time, you know. <laughs> They're fucking competent. <laughs> yeah, good. exactly. Which the feminists are not, but you know, I have three sisters, and uh, they very they hate me because I told them I will never date a feminist. Never. I will live alone forever. I will never date a feminist. Never. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's my fair, family I mean. used. To, my family used to hate me, man. But you know, I don't really care what the fuck people think. Just tell me you don't want to choke on all that armpit hair, man. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, if somebody, you know, <laughs> one one guy that I used to know, and he was in jail most of the time of his life, and when he got out, he told me, you know, I got a couple of girls I need to uh, show you. I said, no, 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 I don't want no girl because they're all feminists. They just want me to do what the fuck they want, you know, which I won't do because that's not how I view life. And then, uh, you know, all, all the friends that I used to have, they got very mad. I said, man, you need to uh, to go away of the city. They want they want me to, to go away. So I took all my money and then I left. And then I bought a house. I bought a house in the wood. But yeah, it's crazy here, man. You know, there is no escape. In Canada, it's... If you make a kid, you're fucked. You're, you're basically fucked. Uh, Nemo? Uh, I would watch your town. You are very new here, and Bob is a pillar of our community. So he is a police officer from Canada. I think Nemo was just being uh sarcastic. I think. Let's see. I I really hope Nemo is being sarcastic. Yeah, I think he is. I think he's just messing around. I really don't care. Uh, by the way, I really don't care. Even if people try to come at me, I just laugh at these people. There's no need to argue. There's no need. A waste of time. Well, That's Nemo's nice. never somebody... been up here to speak about anything. So, but I don't. I don't hate people. Even if they not agree with me, I understand because nobody think the same. You know, everybody has their own opinion, and that's all right. Well, you know the old saying: opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Yeah, exactly. That's so there's no need to be mad. Yeah, I'm I'm hitting that age to where I don't even really. I, mean, I used to like to fight, but I'm just kind of hitting that age where I don't even buff, like fuck with people that much anymore. Like, hey, I'm like, well, fuck you, and I'm like, okay, cool. I just I just start thanking <laughs> people for it. You know, cool, thank you. I'm a prick. I'm a repulsive prick. I mean, I just I just embrace the hate now. That's all you really can do is just embrace the hate. Pray for your enemies. Like pray karma hits their ass, and maybe they'll change. If they don't, whether they change or not, still not your problem. Fuck them. Hang out with people that actually give a shit about you and everything. And that's all I really did. I mean, I don't have many friends, but the few I have, despite them living in many different countries and shit now, because they moved back home, like, now they still hit me up. 
I think it's funny. People 25,000 miles away will hit me up long before someone like five miles away from me. It's kind of sad when you think about it. But, you know, it's friendship is valued more so in other countries than it is in the West. And, you know, if anyone disagrees with me, fuck you. I said it is true. Friendship. The West, the West has a loyalty problem. Yeah, it's called yeah, like, but, you know, the more the, these people change, the more I stay the same. But that's me. Right, <laughs> right. Yep. And they get, they hate it. They very, they hate it. They very, they hate me for this, and I don't care. I just laugh. I just started laughing, not because of hate, because there is nothing you can do. Like your friend, like this guy said, I don't know your name, but like the guy that we're talking with say, you can't really do nothing because all they do is hate you, hate you. Uh, you can do nothing. So what I do, I just started laughing, friendly laughing. And I say, okay, okay, have a good night. I have to go. Yeah. Then my, I leave. You know, I don't black, say that. My name's Black Wolf. I just, I just like to change my name around every, every now and then. But, but yeah, man. Like I just, I just like smile at people and let them do their own fucking thing. Now, I mean, when I was younger, I, I used to like get into fights, and now I just don't even bother with it anymore. Why, why even bother at the, at the most part? Let people live their life, and if they change, cool. If they don't, fuck them. There's billions of people in the world. I'm not going to get hung up over one person not liking me. There's tons of fucking people. You can go anywhere in the world yeah. and make friends, for God's sake. And and that's what I did. I mean, I got, always had like a diverse group of friends and shit. You know, we all we all got along and whatnot. I mean, it was it just kind of showed me that friendship, like depending on the culture, like friendship just means something differently in other you know the countries and everything. I mean, the West kind of has it, sort of. I mean, more is but it's more along the lines of. Everybody's your friend, at least in America, until you disagree with them one fucking time. This person disagreed with me on this fucking political issue. Go to hell. And yeah. meanwhile, I got motherfuckers I've known for almost 30 years. I'll bring up the one time I gave them 100 bucks because, you know, for a haircut or whatever the fuck they needed. And they, and they remembered that shit from like 10 years ago, and I'd long forgotten about that shit. I just, I, I just don't appreciate people that are very fucking new to this channel calling somebody weak when they're not. <laughs> yeah, but you know, they can't see what they want because the more shit they give me, the more fun I have. I know. Let me but put it this way. Stupid. Why you would know, you don't do have. No, no. You Why would somebody... Have. Hold on, Bob. Bob. Why would somebody come to a platform where they're fucking brand new and start criticizing people that are on the panel okay. and denigrating them? And, and because, because they're jealous. Me. Because they're all jealous. Me. That's why. I think Nemo was just being sarcastic because I'm looking at this other comment. Wish your enemies well. Love your enemies. Do good to those who do wrong too. This is the second time I've seen Nemo. I don't have to use the Nemo. Well, if he comes up on stage or he or she or whatever the hell comes up on stage and hell, it's up. Well, it's their choice at the at the very least, you know. I just I, I don't like how people uh, that are brand new, have no fucking respect, and think they can just fucking say shit and be disrespectful. Yeah. So, I, I don't like that. I don't like that either. But what I do, I just ignore these people because there's no need to to argue with these people at this point. And uh, yeah, the Braxton's comment. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I mean, you, you got a valid point on that. They're they're in a time we live in and shit that. You know, it, psychoanalyzing everybody just takes too much time. I mean, so it's, 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 that's one way to be too. I mean, hell. All right, I, so I, if I somebody's going to be a dick, we shouldn't fucking listen to them. Fuck the psychoanalyzation. I mean, somebody that's yeah. like openly denigrating somebody, they should it's just because be an, as an asshole and just be can fuck off. Or how does that work? The thing is, I mean, was he doing this last time? I mean, because I think he was just being no. sorry sarcastic i mean for the most part just judging from the comment no they yeah. had two comments last time that i really liked and i displayed so. oh, but okay. in here though but in canada though most people are pussy uh -huh. they are pussier they very they are well you have feminists running your entire country bob yeah that's that's why they all pussy <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But that's why, that's also yeah. why I don't show my face here. Because yeah. if I do show my face, they will know me in real life, you know? So I don't um, want them to know me. And yeah. Them. Uh, Nemo, no, don't, I, I don't do good to those who wrong me. I fucking uh, punish those who wrong me. I mean, it could be a religious, a spiritual thing for you too. You? 
absolutely fucking just gives them permission to fucking it, it almost green. gives them a fucking what is it called uh, um, green light pass uh, at the very least just nemo oh. i want you to go check out a video called buddha and the snake because the snake tried to find enlightenment and buddha had to come back or the monk had to come back and tell him i told you to be kind but i didn't tell you to stop hissing at people and everything you have to know when enough is enough i mean even if people for being dicks essentially but I mean, you know people people, people are going to do what the fuck they want and that's yeah. all right and you can't change that and what you can do is you know i have a certain way of living my life and i won't change for people even if they like they hate me and they shame me whatever they do i just smile to these people hey you have a good day i have to go you know and I keep going and continue my, the way I live my life because I don't care about these people. That's really all you can do, man. I've had people try to cuss me out and everything. And now I'm just at the point where even when they're being disrespectful, I'm like, you know what? Thanks, sir, madam. You know, you have a good one. And I just bounce up out of that. I, just, I don't even waste the time going back and forth with a lot of people that much anymore because they that's what they want anyway. They want you to get mad. They'll say anything to piss yeah. you off. And then when you're going at it with them, you may be mad at them, but they but they're enjoying every minute of it because you're giving them attention that no one else would give them. So they're all happy about mm -hmm. that, you know, attention seekers. And so, yeah, they yeah. really want to. Oh I'm saying if you really want to hurt a gaslighter, just isolate them. That, that just just ignore them fuckers. I guarantee you that'll drive even, them nuts. I don't even like that word gaslight. They're just liars. You know, the best answer is liars. silence. The yeah. best answer is silence. Don't say a damn word. Just look at these people. Don't say a word. Look at them and walk away. Yep. Because when you talk to them, you give them affirmation. Yeah. I mean, don't don't give them that affirmation. That's just they don't they live nothing. for that. Yeah, just don't say nothing, man. They they live for that. Some people live for that fucking affirmation. I just tell everyone right now, don't don't give it to self absorbed people. Stay away from self absorbed people. They just they got nothing to live for except pissing you off. So that's the high point of their life, pissing other people off. So let leave them in their own stupor. They can they can deal with themselves because nobody else wants to. Damn right. Yep. Amen. Amen, man, because karma is a bitch. Karma is very real. People walking around do dumb shit. Eventually, that catches up to you. It always does for everybody. Yeah. No no one's immune to that. Time is undefeated. Uh, By the way, Emmanuel sent me some stuff on Twitter. That said, Let's watch. Breaking news, white male marketing agency David Duvall at North Carolina Hospital wins. Ten million dollar reverse discrimination lawsuit payout after he was replaced by two women, one of who is black, as part of a diversity and inclusion program. So this motherfucker sued because he was fired, and they replaced him with two women, and he sued. And it looks like he won. Emmanuel's pretty fucking happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These fucking women, man. They have no idea what's coming for them, do they? <laughs> man. Who's win? Me? Hmm? Who's win? Who who won? Yeah. Um, David Duvall at North Carolina. Well, good uh, for him, then. A hospital worker. See, that's the thing. They fired him and replaced him with two women. So, <laughs> no, no, that, that's the thing. You could literally fire all these women. I, I don't believe that it, it takes two women to do his job. I think it takes more like four women to do his job. What was the job he was doing? I don't know, something in the hospital. I just know yeah, that yeah. Um, on average, if you fired all the women, you could replace four women with one man. I have, I have a pretty yeah. interesting joke. It's everyone in the comments section. Yeah. How many women does it take to screw in a light bulb? Do you know? 
Hell if I know. I haven't seen them do it yet. Hell, they haven't even made dinner. Fuck. <coughs> I'm still waiting. Gonna wait a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be waiting forever. Damn, Damn man. The world, world gonna freeze <laughs> over by the time I get that meal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I absolutely will not um, correct you, gentlemen, because guess what? Uh, all of the women I know, I mean, I, I do the light bulb things, but every single woman I know doesn't do anything that I do. Emmanuel, were your ears burning, sir? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Good. Good. How are you? What's up, dude? Yeah, good thanks. Hey, hi, Bob. Um, yeah, I, I just skimmed through um, the first hour of the stream, and oh, we haven't really. We just did a comedy while I was out getting drunk. So yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I, yeah. I, I checked. I checked the uh, bit. Um, the comedy <laughs> bit. Uh, the part where the female, um, the woman, um, takes off the bra. <laughs> Right. And she gets like applauded. Yeah, you saw that, right? I was just like, what the, the hell? Most <laughs> applause out of all of the sets that I fucking witnessed. She got the most fucking applause. That actually pissed me. You heard all the shit I was talking during her. Yeah. Set, right? <laughs> it's insane. It's just, oh um, it's like, I wonder what would happen to most of, I don't know, women's social. Capacity, let me put it that way. Um, the ability to get attention, to get applause, to get um, you know recognition. If you right. were to take away their sexuality, like tell them that you no, can't no. do anything sexual, anything close to your breasts, your 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 your, your ass, your whatever, you know, right. nothing sex. What right. would happen to them? Like that would take away like half of their material when it comes to. I Most of it, I guess, negotiation, anything, you know? I didn't hear any material the whole time. She was talking about some fucking, uh, through security, which for any normal person is like a little blip in their fucking life, but she was yeah. blowing it yeah. up to make it. No. Dude, I fell asleep. I like nothing <laughs> else to talk about. What? Her punchline and her delivery t fell, like, fell so flat that I fell asleep, man, and, and it's bad, yeah. like. You're going to know America's gone when you see me on a speedboat cruising past Africa and, and you're going to ask me, what are you doing? I was like, I'm dumping my excess misogyny here because there's just not enough room <laughs> over there anymore. Black <laughs> Wolf fell asleep on the stream. We'll check him off. <laughs> the list. Oh, man, we need, we need some of that patriarchy. Um, Black yeah. Wolf. Like, the way some of the things are, the way some things are going um, this side and our own radical feminists and CRT, you know, brainwashed you know, university students and all that stuff. It's it's much the same, you know. Emmanuel, like, um, I was yeah. just looking at that tweet you sent me earlier about David Duvall. Yeah. That's good news, right? For yeah, yeah. And... That's good news. That's that's but actually that's, um, that's actually a, a step in pushing back against all of this affirmative action. Right. Uh, reverse racism is 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 correcting the previous racism and nonsense it, it's right. like the fact that he, he got like so much money for uh for being 10 million, 10 million. Yeah, yeah that's insane yeah. that's insane well they, uh, they the next they, time people um try to do replace them with only know, like, two women <laughs> the fact that's that they need two women to replace them says a lot Itself, well, you know, just... I think it's one to four, honestly. <laughs> I mean, if no, no, if if you would take out all the in and you being our economist and our maths guy, like if you took out all these stupid bullshit departments that were put in place because women were in the workplace and they needed fucking mommies at the yeah, workplace yeah. to sort parse through all the things, I think it's four to one. Yeah, it's I would four be women to one man. I know, um, I'll speak for some of our, um, what you call them, uh, state-owned enterprises as well. And if affirmative action has, I'm, I'm talking along racial lines, has any uh, 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 
if if you, if it's comparable to affirmative action along um, gender lines, what I can tell you is that our state-owned entities are like about sixty or seventy percent overemployed. So right. that means thirty percent versus seventy percent that actually shouldn't be there. Right. Yeah. So it's it's a ratio Why of. Why there? <laughs> in that case, it's a ratio of one one is to two, I guess, or slightly yeah. over, going towards three. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's along that, uh, those lines. If, if you were to actually take out all of the unproductive people who've only got there through all sorts of um, policies, you know, um, it's you probably here. Like have to take out a third, a, a good two thirds of your um, staff. Yep. And the thing is, you know, it would save no so difference. much money. <laughs> you'd, you'd literally just be saving money. There'd be no difference yeah. to uh, productivity. It's an increase the wages insane. of the men. Yeah, there'd be yeah. more money for for the, for the people who are actually productive, who are actually contributing to society. That actually fucking deserve it. <laughs> that actually do the work. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Not the handful. I don't know if, if if in you know um, sort of like blitzing through the first hour. If you've already. Uh, showing the video of Gareth Cliff. No. Oh wait. Oh yeah, because that'd be something cool to react to, like in terms wait, which of one? the Putin one. That's or... the one with him and John. Um, let me see if I can find a link to it so I can send it to you. Uh, let's see now. No, I just played so far. I just played the um was um. Some comedy and oh, what Putin said. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Putin oh, yeah. is on the money, and <clears throat> I, know, I love him. What's what's um, what's sad is that traditionally, you know, those are the guys who've been associated with. I mean, historically speaking, those are the guys who've been associated with um, toxic socialism, toxic. communism, all that stuff. Right. You know, well, most of the guys I who who him with um. Being a badass. Yeah, yeah, I'm just talking about Russia as a whole, um, historically yeah, speaking. But know. he worked for somebody else. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah. but I, I just think it's sad that it's the people who've actually gone through the experience who are the ones who are loudest about it. Right. And the people who previously um, helped, I guess, protect the world from the takeover of socialism and communism are the ones who are actually trying to implement it now. <laughs> Wait, when did the left ever protect against socialism? Oh, no, they wouldn't. They actually want that. I know, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. They actually want that. But, but the, the question is, why is the rest of the country allowing that? that see, and, and that's a question that I've, I've had for a while, Emmanuel. I don't know. I have to go outside my country to your country in South fucking Africa to try to get these questions answered. <laughs> I can speak for, in terms of South Africa, I'd say <clears throat> it's definitely um, a whole lot of brainwashing. And yeah, like in the case of the video that we're about to react to, um, basically what you have is a country that has been taught to be very active to um, issues of inequality and racism. So as right. soon as those things are brought up in conversation, all rationality just goes out the window. It's just emotions, 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 uh, and people are just so triggered by the mere mention of racism to the point where, uh, let me just the women, find this thing and then the women, the like, men don't give a fuck. See, the men, the, the men, men don't though. give a fuck. The, the, the women the get is, triggered. We don't care. The yeah. problem with South Africa, though, um, good man, is that the men are also like that, uh, and yep. not all of them, of course, not to the same degree as women. Um, right. Because I guess the rationality sort of like takes over, but um, the the brainwashing has been so effective that even men are prone to these emotional reactions to certain trigger topics or trigger words, you know. Yeah. And that's that's it's, true. Uh, yeah, Uber, it's, Uber or Lyft yeah. driver that we had tonight, uh, we were discussing because I was, you know. Just, asking questions about society and his experience with the generation. And he opened yeah. an answer to a question I had with 
I'm not racist or anything, but, and then he mm -hmm. followed with his answer. And just the fact that he had to fucking preface his fucking answer with, I'm not racist, but what I'm saying has to do with a specific race in this specific fucking context. Yeah. That seems yeah. to be a problem. And he's not, he wasn't, he didn't seem 100% white. He might have had some darkness to his skin tone. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what the yeah, fuck? He had a bit of, of color. Uh, colorful. He had a bit of color, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but but uh, he's like I, I don't you know I'm not racist or anything but I hate that I'm like, I hate that I hate the fact that people have to qualify yeah. their statement yeah. to prove themselves as not whatever is uh, seen it's as objectionable signal you know, an right? anti-racist virtue I, I'm not racist I'm not um, sexist right. I'm not this I'm not that it's like we should assume that that's the case because most right. people in society most are not people that. are not <laughs> See. Right. These people have got us so convinced that racism is an actual problem right. that most people feel they have to show that they're not racist because right. other people are going to actually assume that they're racist. Right. That's how bad things have gotten. It's yeah, yeah it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's actually madness. So what, so what you're saying insane. is madness. Me and Emmanuel will pull our hair out together. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is, Emmanuel, when I get old and retire, I need to move next to you to restore some sense of order. I'm, I'm going to wait specifically when I start hitting that little raisin age and I'm a little walking stick. You know, God, things used to be different. Now we got this government mandated pussy fixing to mandate my foot up their ass <laughs> any day now. You wish for government mandated pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we all a government mandate. We never, Plus, agreed. we never agreed that that would actually become a thing under the dictatorship. <laughs> yeah, how else will I give a five star review? I mean, like, if the worst case scenario, <laughs> yeah. uh, it'll be like an Uber thing. Oh, this pussy was um, less than satisfactory. Uh, it yelled a lot, kicked and screamed, was very <laughs> refusing to zip ties, but it's okay. Uh, the dictatorship cares not about your satisfaction, sir. <laughs> That's why I need to be president. I gotta be. I gotta be president of the anti-thought, you know, police. You know, we we, we won't even use tasers. We're gonna go back to using spears and fucking machetes and shit. I like that. That's I, I agree to that. All right, Emmanuel. Uh, what, I'm gonna try to find a clip from from her um, from the lady's Twitter timeline and then see from there, um, because what I'm seeing on um, YouTube is a lot of reactions and. Not enough of the actual, like, two minute or whatever clip where, yeah. So just give me a, give me one more minute and then I'll have it on for you. Sure. Um, cool. Wait, Emmanuel, did you see that beginning video of the comedy? That that was the one that I liked the most because he um, brought awareness to. He he was speaking to. Um, his age group, I think he was 24. Oh, yeah. Or his age group and, and their problems with women, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. That's our age group because uh, I'm only a few years old. Yeah, that, that's, and, you. that's you. Yeah, dad. it is madness. It is <laughs> insane. It, you know, to, to have the average person assume that you are the enemy. Right. Treat you as the enemy, but then expect benefits as though you were, um, I don't know, like their father or, or whatever. No, you know. no, no. Almost like they're slave. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how I'm looking at this. Like, it's slavery. Yeah, you know, I, I have to say, you know, anybody watching this in their 20s, God, I feel bad for you. I mean, because at least, you know, I, I grew up, women were actually somewhat tolerable, but now, Oh man, women in their twenties, it's like it's like you gotta wind them up like one of those old cars, you know, wind them up and then kind of <laughs> pop them upside the head every now and then, like and then I was like and then they lag and you gotta pop them upside the head so they can like fucking start again. These cocktail bitches. I'm sorry, I just can't. I feel bad for dudes in their twenties because they, they have they got the worst pick of the litter. Just completely. Well but then again and our driver tonight, I did ask him um which which generation that he has noticed, like, because he drives, you know, he picks up a lot of people, a lot of different age, like 
every single generation. Um, and he said it was Gen Z that were the most fearful. So, Odd. which is not good because they're the young ones. They should be the most robust. They should be the most combative. They should be the most fucking rebellious. And they're not. They're the most fearful. Which leads me to believe that you fuckers, especially you Black Wolf, have um, work to do as far as yeah. leading these young people. All right, here, here's my advice to young to the youngins. Yeah, not, not advice. Like that. <laughs> okay, if you want me to hold your hand, sir, I will lead you out of the bedroom from that mandated pussy. It's not what anybody wants. It was a bad order. It seemed no. like a good idea at the time. Just, just don't do it. Is Stop it still? <laughs> um, Emmanuel, this Twitter thing, is that what you're talking about? Yep. Okay. All right, when they try to talk over you and tell you that you're not, ex that your experiences as a black woman in South Africa, I remember seeing this. Yeah, this dude, I like this dude. Who, what's his name? Uh, Garth Cliff. Yeah. <clears throat> the guy on the left. He's actually, um, he's had, he's got a podcast or, or, or like sort of like radio thing. Um, yeah. He's a legendary radio host in South Africa and... He's obviously had some, you know, uh, exchanges with people before. It's not his first rodeo. Uh, right. No, he and, did really good in this. Yeah, he is. Uh, uh, yeah. He's yeah. even had um, God's I'm side. Sure uh, as well. some people who are going um, to sleep tonight. Yeah, so he's, he's got some, uh, what's the word, pedigree. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Sifu would call him straight up bona fide. Yeah. 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 All right, let's play this. Yeah, because you sent me this before, and it's really good. I mean, she pulls the same social justice bullshit. Uh, speaking as a black woman, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. When you're the most, well, this isn't my country, because in my country, they are the most privileged motherfuckers that we have in our entire country. Because guess what? They check the woman box and the black box. So... They actually um, consume all the resources that are supposed to be available to black men, which actually yeah, yeah. systemically oppresses the black men. So. It, it's the same the side as well, because institutionally speaking, maybe not um, in terms of the ultimate outcomes, but certainly mm -hmm. institutionally speaking, uh, in terms of entrance into universities, jobs, especially government jobs and things like that, yeah. they tick enough boxes for them to be almost automatically, um, you know, hired or whatever or, or accepted yep yeah so it well, is but, it is but, but Emmanuel, they're the fucking minority in my country they're the majority in yours it doesn't make sense the 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 majority minority thing is not I, I think that's a distraction as much as i agree with um its obvious impact in, with regards to the west i'm talking specifically uh the northern hemisphere Am uh, america the uk yeah. russia i guess in, as well um, I understand I that that's also a very things. important factor. <laughs> but, I mean, in the case of South Africa, we we are the majority. So, but that doesn't yeah. make this policy any more correct. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. So, okay. I, I, I think a policy on your skin color. Yeah, like to I'm say, right? we we sort of fall into the trap of of saying, um, if this policy is bad in America because it actually discriminates against the majority, right? That's sort of hints at the fact that it would be acceptable in South Africa, which it's not because it's still discrimination against uh, uh, um, the minority. In this case, it's discrimination against the minority in, in yeah. favor of the majority. And right. just because it's in the favor of the majority doesn't make the means of getting to that um, outcome acceptable. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, let's just go at the clip and then I'll give you guys some updates on what's happened since and yeah. Okay. By the way, Emmanuel, <laughs> when I was talking to Psych about um, all the stuff that he was working on, um, yeah. he said he was, what did he say? It was, I mean, it was kind of funny, but it wasn't. <laughs> he, <laughs> he said he, <laughs> it was really funny, but it wasn't. 
um, because he's working on the law stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. He said he is going to be continuing his work until he gets genocided or he wins. <laughs> Yo, he needs to hope that um the Cape <laughs> independence movement like takes you know gets some steam because right the way things are headed we we look we look like we're only a few say heck I, I don't know how to time these things but we certainly look on track for a civil war yeah in much the same way that uh, America is as well he's tiny he, he's there's so yeah. little of him yeah, there are very few of them. Um, yeah. They don't make like 10% of the population. So, yeah. I thought it was like six, down to yeah, six. Yeah, it's like six, seven, eight, somewhere there. Yeah, um, yeah it's tiny. Yeah. He's like less And that's than all white race. people. It's not just, it's not just, if I'm correct, I think that's all white people. It's not um, yeah. the different types, not different. Um, yeah, the whole of them. Yeah, yeah. it's all. Of them. all the, the ones yeah. that live there send their kids fucking out of country. Yeah, it's that. It's also the fact that black people have way more kids than um, white people, and that's, I guess, historically, it's a certain. The certain things I've done, like incentivize that. It's the uh, welfare system that also, you know, says we'll pay you for having kids, you know, and the fact that, I guess, culturally speaking, white people have been forced to be more responsible because they've been, you know, kicked off of the government's teeth. So. Yeah. If that's the case, you cannot afford to well, take. Well, unless you're a kids. woman, unless you're a woman with kids, and if you're white, yeah. and if you're disabled, or if you have a mental fucking illness, they have medicalized um, psychology. Even culturally, though, um, I think it would be so frowned upon to have a white woman engaging in the same sort of, um, I don't know, uh, a bad sort of behavior that you typically see in black people from you know poor areas not in washington um, state where i'm from emmanuel have you ever had the misfortune of going to a trailer park yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, ri- it rivaled the hood in some ways right well we don't have drive-bys though the hood absolutely fucking has us you there see? we don't have to we don't live in fear of random stray fucking bullets going through our paper thin fucking walls that this, is this something is we don't I did get hit. We, we do have areas where perhaps you could say there's sort of white trash, right? But um, yeah. even there, you still yeah. don't have this the extent of um, societal de- decay that you see in like the hood. You know, well, yeah, decay. it's worse. Yeah, it, uh, and, no, and it, that's what it's makes actually me actually worse. Than, yeah, it's way worse. Yeah, in in, in in America. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You'd say so, you'd like, say that poor um, white communities are worse off than the hoods. I, I, I mean, in terms of, uh, okay, this is what I'm talking about. The extent to which they do drugs, the extent to which they uh, yeah. uh, engage in crime. Yep. You'd say it's worse than the hood. Yeah, because they actually kill themselves wow. more instead of killing each other more. I mean, it, it's kind of the same, except the white hoods kill themselves instead of killing each other. If that makes sense. I mean, yeah, it, then, it's the, kind of the same, yeah. but in the white community, nobody gives a fuck about poor white people. So in the black community, even though they're the minority, they get all the fucking extra privileges. Like poor white people, unless you're a woman and you fucking actually go to do all the things, you don't fucking get help with college. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the white men, absolutely not. If you're a poor white man, you get zero fucking help unless you're disabled, which a lot of them can prove to be disabled because the mothers yeah. are so terrible that they developmentally fucking retard their child. So, yeah, what I saw growing up, system. What I saw growing yeah, up, okay. I mean, there's like a heavy, because I lived, I lived in both. I mean, I live in a better neighborhood, like way better neighborhood now, but I remember living in a trailer park for a bit and I lived in the hood for a bit. Both seem to have a, a drug problem. I mean, the, the yeah. shitty part about it is there are people that will do everything. I ain't talking about just meth. I mean, just crazy shit, like bath salt and a bunch of everything. There's, right. there's, um, what I'm saying is whether somebody is killing another person or killing themselves, I mean, it's, 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 it's fucked up. I mean, people are dying, and the shitty part about it is, like, you got the government just keep, oh, let's just throw some more money at it. You know, they're not – no one's trying to really make any real 
cha positive change. Like whether some, whether I'm saying whether anybody's getting funding or not, that money isn't enough to, to change like a bad cultural dynamic. It's not enough when you no, you when, have to take it away. You have to take the money away because a lot of these fucking people have so much time on their hands because the money that they do get from the government um it's wasted so their 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 living needs like they they don't have to work because it's wasted their because for, their food's paid for like they have all this yeah. extra time to fuck <laughs> off and get into trouble and destroy their fucking lives they they're it, not motivated well, actually, to be living. it's wasted because yeah. like when they go to the oh, i'm sorry emmanuel my bad, you go. Yeah, I, I just want to say, this is what I was trying to get at, is that um, when you have that isolation from the state, you still have you still have a higher bare minimum. Mm -hmm. um, because of the fact that you don't have state protection, there's certain, um, I don't know, uh, bad behaviors that you, don't, you can't afford to indulge in. Right. Because there's no one to protect you. And I think that's right, and that's you gotta fucking thing. go in the work in the morning. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, like, that's the sort of thing that you see in South Africa is that even the worst areas, let's say that are majority white, right? They still have a bare minimum uh, in terms of just moral fabric of their society that is sustained by the fact that they know that if I mess up, that's it. No one's going to protect me. No one's going to help me. I'm done. And that that gives like a sort of societal pressure like a, a bare minimum of you can't do a b c like that's just not we frown upon that as a society whereas in in black communities because of the fact that the state's there and i guess the overall um moral decay that's happened over the years of you know due to um people being raised by people who come from state or uh, state uh, supported households is that now it's almost like in it's almost like intertwined with our culture yeah people don't don't uh, 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 frown people don't uh, you know give a second look at the fact that yo i just saw uh, um, a 16 year old with two kids and they're both hers what the hell you both know? of them are hers yeah that sort of thing like i speak to uh, friends married? and family who work in hospitals all the time it yeah. talk tell me about 12 year olds who are having kids in south africa like that's the thing yeah you know the, the way they talk married? about it, it's not even like they don't even talk about it as oh wow we just saw like some crazy thing they talk about it as this is what happens every day you know yeah. and and what but sort of implication it has for the next generation you know so are, are they getting married or it no oh they're no, just no. Around. oh yeah it's, it's just it's just a matter of being yes. they're so sexually liberated and right. um, protected from the consequences of those you know decisions because you know hey grandmother's here my mother's here to take care of the kid um yeah. to help that um yeah uh, at least i'm getting some money from the state yeah. uh i can i can use that on my nails i can use that on my hair i can buy my bag and buy my shoes and granted there's some there, there obviously are some people who deserve that right they do that too. But oh, fucking yeah. welfare bitches will you, fucking get their nails and hair done. Mind you, uh, 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 we have way less money coming from the state. Like I, I gave you an indication of how much you were getting for. Yeah. It's um, like $200 COVID. a month. <laughs> COVID. No, it's way less than that. What we got per month um, for COVID was about $20, I think. Um, we calculated 20. it for. Yeah, 20 yeah. And yeah. I, I believe what um, mothers get is around that amount. Let's say maybe thirty per month. It's but so far they below what what they need. But yeah. just because it's free money, it, it already twists their mindset, you know. Yeah. And and that's the sort of decay that you see in society. And it's what's worse that it's not like you had what we have now is a problem of we don't even have a a, a generation that's alive that we can point to and say that was the good generation. We don't need them. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't so need we have, we have, we have bad generations that have ra raised bad generations. Now we have sort of like three or four generations of bad, this, you know, generations. This is why yeah. I always say it would take three damn generations to correct this shit because it's generational. 
Once yeah. someone has learned something fucked up, <laughs> it becomes part of their conditioning, like the like the fucking hedonism. Yeah, motherfuckers running around screwing PUAs, going, "I'm gonna make a garden. I'm gonna like fucking impregnate <laughs> multiple bitches and everything." And it's like, uh, hell no. I mean, that's that's kind of the thing. I mean, if and, and I'm gonna say this, I'm probably gonna get some shit for it, but fuck it. No, you won't. This is what happens when you don't belt bitches. I mean, if I had a daughter. <laughs> And she came with like two kids. This would be my only question. Did you, uh, what are you like into the child feeding business? You, you pick them up for a documentary or something? Oh, no, they're mine. Oh, well, the stud belt is mine. Let's see what crack breaks first. I mean, damn it. Um, Bob them. wants to watch the video. Okay. <laughs> I just, video. I'm going to cut in here because Bob wants to see what Emmanuel is selling here. <laughs> No, we we can go on about it's. Uh, I feel like it's this. It's the same. It. I mean, whether maybe whether you give them five dollars for free or two hundred dollars free a month, it it's still free. Like it's not worked for. It's not valued. It it doesn't. It's being rewarded for bad choices. I mean, before you yeah. play the clip, I just want to tell everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah. bitches should hashtag this. Hashtag keep your fucking legs closed. I want to trend that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the way, we need to figure out a hashtag because Billy had a great idea about hashtag who's who's next for the next crazy bitch that we collect for the gulag. So I didn't have to bring that up because you had to it. Okay, I'm going to play it. Worrying about where their next meal's coming from and about five people are worried about the hideous racism that's up. Oh, anyway, I think that's okay. I'm sorry. I must interject at that point. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't think that many people are interested. In fact, the IRR has shown us endless reports of people who say that racism is at the bottom of their list of priorities and concerns. Their we biggest obviously priorities don't are, experience the kind of racism that I experience on a daily basis. Okay. So to say well, that something that no one cares you're, you're, about, you're, I'm sorry. No, it's really, your, personal it's really experience, your personal experience is completely anecdotal and unimportant to all of us. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that you think that the experience no. of a black woman in this country. See, a black woman in this country. You know what, Emmanuel? <clears throat> something that I figured yep, yep. out like three weeks ago, all these mm -hmm. fucking bitches, when they experience men, and, and it could be other women or whatever, all these women, when they experience anybody pushing back or criticizing or having any kind of energy that leads them to believe that they're fucking not wanted there, that like they don't deserve to be there, they fucking point toward racism instead of because they're fucking women and they shouldn't fucking be there. It's like they sort of fall into the collective. They they express the opinion on their own, talk about the personal experience, and then they try to turn their personal experience into like. But it's important. A, a, a hammer of sorts, like they say. But, but it's important in the regard that a lot of fucking black women are so fucking underqualified to be in positions that uh, the narrative pushes them into that they experience people like not taking them seriously and getting upset that they fucking fail at shit and they take yeah, it yeah. as racism when it's yeah, just yeah. an incompetence issue. Well, yeah. Uh, 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 that, that, that is the flip side of these fucking identity politics. It's like, okay, you, you push people based on fucking a policy and a diversity quota into a position, and they, they get what uh, the psychology fields call as imposter syndrome. Oh, my God, I feel mm -hmm. like I don't belong here or I don't deserve to be here and I'm, I'm an imposter. Well, because you're fucking very incompetent because they picked you over... 10 other people that probably would have okay. done a better job and you're highly underqualified, but because you have a vagina and you're black, you got the spot. That That's mm -hmm. the flip side of these policies. And this woman okay. will experience it as racism because we're not allowed to talk about fucking women not being qualified for places because women can do whatever in the fuck they want. When yeah. it's a sex problem <laughs> like it's not even a race problem it's a sex problem you, you you're right and i think um the problem is that they default to the collective 
when they want to uh, when they see that the you know normal tricks are not working yeah. so they quickly try essentially what they're doing is that they're mobbing you by you know saying as a black woman she's no right. longer speaking for herself she's now speaking right. for all black right. women right and now she's leveraging now all black women against you so once once you speak against her now you're no longer speaking against her you're speaking against all black women so whoever hears right. this clip as a black woman is supposed to be offended because now gas right. is it's not just debating this lady, she's debating you now. She's actually, right. he's actually invalidating your experience as a black woman, but which is as, rubbish because as black women, you don't have the same experience. You're all individuals. No, they don't. Exactly. But as an individual, she cannot stand on her merit. That's exactly. the thing. Most women can't. Group shit. Yeah. The thing about she it is, stand most on her women. Merit when she got into the position based on a group identity policy there's yeah. no individual there's only a group identity that's kind of the thing though like most women just won't like the majority of women no matter what culture you go to th this goes back to like ancient times it's not that women can't there's no woman on the planet that's ever been competent it's more along the lines of this it's a women, small number yeah it's a very small number like women are more prone to group think than than men are and it's not to say that men don't help each other it's just we need a damn good reason i mean if if me and Emmanuel were the destruction of it, the entire society black wolf well <laughs> how about the tyranny of the fucking tyrannical matriarchy like come on the well, matriarchy is gonna fall on its own sword it, it's un it's unsustainable what they're gonna anything they build is gonna be freaking unsustainable i mean the, the whole thing about it is most men are able to put their petty differences aside to to get something done, whereas women have to feel their way through shit. It's kind of like if me and Emmanuel are trapped in a building, I'm like, man, Emmanuel flipped me off, but I don't want this lion to kill me, so fuck this. Let's go beat this lion up or whatever. Just, yeah. just, we put I'm our shit to the side. To I'm still trying to feel my way through how to get all of you fuckers to stop with the bullshit and work together and put a stop to this nonsense. It won't continue for much longer. I'm very, glad, um, I'm very happy uh, about the reaction that Dave Chappelle got and is getting. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think it, it, so it, it's certainly a chink in the armor of yeah. social justice warriors. And I think they know that once the transgender uh, uh, you know, issue is dealt with, they're yeah. next. They yeah. know it. And that's yeah. why they're taping so hard for, for, for you know, canceling um, the, uh, Dave Chappelle. I, I think they know that um, that's that's sort of like the, I don't know, they're seeing that rationality, you know, the, the what's, the, what's the, know, the enlightenment is sort of kicking in resistance. It's sort of showing that, hey, <laughs> I'm realizing you know, that you're actually putting me, you're trying to kill me, you know, and they realize that once it starts to fight back, it's, it's, yeah. only gonna, it's only gonna work from the most ridiculous down to what's perceived as less ridiculous, but still ridiculous. It's you know? like a Hydra um, dude, man. Eventually like it's gonna sort the entire, story. yeah. Oh my, I was going to say it's like a fucking Hydra. And I, I remember I say this almost every fucking stream. And fuck it, I'll say it again. No, once you, not once if you lose. I said it all the time. Black. No, it needs to, it needs to be fucking hammered. It needs to be hammered because people don't know how serious this is. When you tell your musicians how to play and you tell your comedians how to do their fucking comedy, right. once, they're, once you take those guys out of the equi equation, you're fucked. Once we lose guys like Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, you're going to be left with what? Woke comedians? stale mm. shit same yeah. thing with music the moment you start hearing music sound damn near all the same no matter what genre you listen to oh yeah use a fuck at that point i mean it starts with that before it and then it trickles down everywhere else and and so as someone of ours myself it's it's really sad to see but yeah i mean they're they're gonna trip on their own sword it ain't gonna last much longer i mean you look at any air quote matriarch that ever exists it fell on its own sword Women yeah. are gonna fall down on their ass and they're gonna cry. And the only thing I'm telling men to do is do not go over there and help them up. Let them no, cry. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. The, the no, thing no. that we're no, no, gentlemen. The thing that we're experiencing currently has never been experienced before in all of human history. Well, yeah, I, women. Have, no, no, women no, have never been alone for all human history. The, the amount of um, death and destruction that these self-centered fucking bitches have caused is different and it needs to be stopped but i'm gonna play this and i'm gonna play it all the way through and i'm not gonna interrupt it okay because okay. bob really wants to fucking see this so you guys <laughs> 
I'm sure that there are 100,000 people who are going to sleep tonight worrying about where their next meal is coming from and about five people who are worried about the hideous racism that's up. Oh, anyway, I think we'll that's a bit, I'm sorry, I must interject at that point. Let's see, if let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, I don't think that many people are interested. In fact, the IRR has shown us endless reports of people who say that racism is at the bottom of their list of priorities and concerns. Their we obviously don't are, experience the kind of racism that I experience on a daily basis. Okay. So to say so that something you're, that no one cares about, I'm sorry, it's no, really, your personal it's really experience. Your personal experience is completely anecdotal and unimportant to all of us, oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that you think that the experience yeah. of a black woman in this country is yes. unimportant I'm not, and irrelevant. I'm not interested, Mut Mutsuli, I'm not interested in identity politics at all. Nobody really is. They're only interested in themselves, what they can get yes. out of this. The elections are coming up. If you And service been, delivery, service delivery. Please, it's just, I'm over it. It's so uninteresting. And, and this has played out so badly for people in other parts of the world where they've tried it. I can't believe you're going down this track. No, Gary, we're, we're not speaking about... I we're going to be great for you to say. Okay, you can proceed with your conversation then. Please proceed. No, no, I, I want you to finish. I want you to at least You don't want me to finish because you're speaking so. over when, me. I'm just trying to, this was not about uh, sucking us into a conversation about race, politics, and identity politics. We, we were having a conversation to say that the issues of service delivery are not as important mm -hmm. as the issues that people generally feel when they feel yeah. like they're being race based. Race -based. And, and I'm not saying to you, don't In a minute of the election, they just aren't. Okay, but New Zealand elections don't stop the rest of your experience. And racism is structural as well. So it's not like it's, oh, because it's New Zealand and everything stop? else that I'm. Is, 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 is the ward councillor of your ward going to solve the problems you have with racism? I mean, I'm in all honesty, climate change. I mean, let's talk about gender politics because it's a municipal election. No, I want the water and electricity and the roads Absolutely. to work. And what I'm asking is for the DA then not to bait on the race issues. Have you they not put that poster up? We're not baiting on the race issues. issues. See, you know what's kind of fucked up about these uh, social justice warriors and their puppeting of the same fucking five talking points? They're actually right that there is racism that is structural because, like, in my country, we have these diversity, inclusion, equity policies that literally systemically oppress men and white men over women. <laughs> So Optimism. they're right, but they're pointing to the wrong thing. They're they, they're complaining that it's women who are suffering when women are getting all the fucking preference. Not to mention, there's a time and a place to have certain conversations, and when people keep inserting race in every conversation, what it does is it derails. I mean, if the conversation had started yeah. that way, and she said, "Okay, this is what X people experience," and 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 that was the whole point of the conversation, then. I could see that, but it's kind of like if we're all talking about boats and I just randomly shot, what about planes? What the fuck? Right. Yeah. What, but, but the what about, but the what about when they deflect, when they get yeah. off subject, that's what they always do. It's that's not, what they it's always do. That's crazy bitches across the board. That's why when they do that, you have to fucking bring them back. No, we're not going to talk about that till we're done with this. Yeah, you know it's it's kind of crazy because I was growing up like I saw actual fucking discrimination, and actual fucked up shit happen, and I'm gonna be honest with you, like like the people in Gen Z, I'm not saying you don't go through shit, but some of us knew what actual racism and discrimination was. You, you you're getting the goddamn light version of that shit, <laughs> if anything. These kids are so fucking lied to; they don't even know what fucking reality is, and they see no future. No family structures that they can even look up to. Like these kids are, these kids are really fucking terribly off. Yeah. Like, what's worse is that, um, you know, with the whole uh, deflecting thing, it, it, it's just, it's so irrelevant to what that conversation was about. We're talking about a country that has the highest level of inequality in the world, highest level of unemployment in the world and we have a failing uh, uh, you know just our infrastructure is failing uh, due to a terrible government mm -hmm. and you want to talk to us about racism right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the majority going, is being oppressed how in the fuck does that even work <laughs> that doesn't people even are literally make going sense. home people literally people don't don't know what they're going to eat there are people going to right. sleep not knowing what they're going to eat right you know, like they don't they don't have a plan for the next meal 
And you're going to tell me that racism is something we need to be, to be discussing when people are hungry. Right. You know, when people don't have homes and people don't have the means to get these things together because they don't have jobs. Right. And you want to talk to us about racism. The right. fact that Gareth Griff says that ra- racism is not even like, it's not top of the list. It's not even close. And that's a fact. That's well, a fact. It's, it's not, it's also like that here, but what we're doing here with our bullshit group identity politics, because we have so many white women in fucking university and they're so white guilt ridden that that's what they fucking focus on. And then they go to all these groups and they protest and all their fucking activism and that's what they focus on because they've been told they're pieces of shit their whole fucking life that they need yeah, to do yeah. this to repent for sins of the past of the fathers of whatever no like because yeah, that's exactly it what comes from us though because white people are a majority and white women are the majority of fucking college fucking yeah yeah, yeah. We, so. it's kind of like the whole sort of problem Oh my bad, you uh, go. So, sorry, I, I, I just going to say we have the same sort of, sort of problem, right? With, um, uh, I guess the bad faith arguments of, yeah. of um, these women and all of that saying that you know previously disadvantaged, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here's the, here's the weird thing, right? During apartheid, we had people being actively excluded from the economy, from certain careers, and all that through law, right? Yeah. yeah. So that standard perhaps what growth should have taken place uh, yeah. in terms of black society, to put it that way, right? Yeah. Now what you have is the outcomes of that previous policy, which uh, caused disparities perhaps to widen way more than what they should have, understandably. Yeah. But what we have now is that we have laws that actively work in the opposite direction. And just because the outcomes haven't swung to what they deem app- uh, appropriate, they say we still have racism. Well, right. Now, the, what we are arguing about is that if it was racist to have apartheid laws in place, mm-hmm. how can you say that racism is structural if you now have laws that work in the exact opposite direction? But because what they're talking about racism, is more... Racism, even though it's flipped, it's still on a certain race. So they're, ca- yeah, they're they, they, still right, what they say, but they're pointing to the wrong perpetrators and the wrong victims. I, I, I think it's even bad about. to put it that way because they're not doing it like out of like some mistake of pointing to the wrong perpetrator or whatever. They genuinely believe that racism goes in one direction and that it goes from white people to black people. Right. And they believe that that white people to black people racism is still structurally in, like, in our society. Right. And my question is, if you have all the laws, <laughs> if you have all the laws going in the opposite direction, literally yep. being racist against white people, right? How can you say that's but black people racism? can't be racist, even how, though in you... my country they're the most fucking racist. The group, yeah, they are racist against each other, and they're racist against white people. Like I was in a, I was in a live, and a black woman literally said. Black women are the most fucking racist group of people that we have in our society. <laughs> She's yeah, like, I will this. fucking admit to that. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, thank you for fucking saying that, black woman. <laughs> like, she was I like, no, we're, we're that's the the most most racist. As well. It's just because they, you know, black people are um, economically and all that um, lagging behind other races. Right. It, it's difficult Not for people here. to. It's all like racist that. is a big word, though. You know, being yeah, racist is a big word because yeah. anybody can be racist toward anybody, yeah. any race. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a, it's a very big word to be racist. Yeah, it's something that shouldn't be thrown around so callously. I mean, like racism is just racism. There's no reverse version of it. I mean, it's just right. discrimination is discrimination, and and as soon as people start acknowledging it that way, then we can tackle actual racism across the spectrum. Right. But you can't fire a thousand arrows in the fucking dark and then go, did I hit the target yet? I mean, it just, <laughs> you might, well, but it just doesn't work. And the biggest perpetrators yeah. of it being women and having them being off limits, you can't fucking criticize them, even though in my country, the, like Cynthia G and Nyla are the biggest fucking racist bitches that are pitting black men and white men against each other so they're they're literally using psychology as a tool 
to fucking make those men fight, and it's disgusting. Well, I'm letting every man on the planet know right now, I'm not gonna die of a pussy. Like, like if I happen to be like at a McDonald's or some shit, and some woman like like jumps behind me and like save me, I'm like, no, I'm, you're gonna have to, sorry, you're gonna have to suck his dick because I ain't doing it. <laughs> sorry. Dick, black wolf, come on now. Well, you know, ever since I came out of hetero, I just I gotta I gotta live my truth, you know. Came out of closet hetero. <laughs> you live your truth, man. <laughs> Braxton, do you want to say something? Hold on, Braxton hasn't yeah. said a single damn thing since he's been up. I know he usually doesn't. He usually likes to just be and, and fly the flag. But we're talking about black people, so I think we should let him talk <laughs> for black people in our country. All I can say is, for all the black people who still has a shred of sense, leave Blackistan ASAP as soon as you can. Blackistan. <laughs> yeah. That's not even a real place. Yeah. You know, the most um, sad thing uh, that came out of that clip, right, is that um, she, uh, I, I'm assuming she's, she's got um, tertiary education, what? right? And what's what's sad is that at some point Gareth Cliff says your your personal experience is anecdotal. It has no it's not important to us. We're talking about issues on a national level, and here you are t- uh, telling us about your personal experience. Right. Yeah. And for some reason, like the reaction that uh, South Africans had to that, at, at least on um, Twitter and things like that. Now, mind you, Twitter is not it's not even close to. Uh, a realistic um, reflection on society, but I mean, let's just go with it for now. Um, they had, they were like so outraged by the fact that Gareth Cliff, being white, dismissed this lady's personal experience, but he dismissed it with the use of a study, with the use right. of studies that have proven right. that black right. people in South Africa don't rate race racism as a huge problem. Right. Certainly not ahead of things like unemployment. Um, you know, uh, poverty, hunger, you know, uh, crime, you know, we have way bigger issues to talk about. Issues that right. are relevant to local um, uh, elections, as you know, the main topic was of that stream. And yet she was able to derail everything just by using the I'm a black woman card and racism card to like she destroy didn't know. She didn't derail it. He fucking brought it right back. He was like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, I'm we're moving in terms, on. Of the, in terms of the reaction from South Africans. Yeah. They, they took that bait and ran with it. You know, really? and Nando's, which is a, sort of like a chicken restaurant um, in South Africa, and I think there are a few in the States. Yeah. Um, they uh, pulled their funding from this uh, podcast. Really? Um, yeah, so essentially they engaged in cancel culture. And mind you, in yeah. their statement, the first line talks about we support um, free speech or whatever, freedom of expression or whatever right. way they put it. And then they pull their funding. I'm like, if it's a woman that do does it, how do you support free speech? And then you you immediately revoke your funding as soon as a certain, you know, uncomfortable. Because a woman got um, her feelings hurt and I bet that bitch broken. went there and was like, oh my god, they fucking oppressed me, they wouldn't let me speak, it's just like the past 5,000 years of it, you whatever. The Women do that, though. You Women... saw the tweet, she said that they're speaking over her, all that stuff, it's just... No it's fucking like, but Here's the thing, though, right? Here's the weird thing. If you dismiss studies in favor for your personal, anecdotal, right. lived experience, right? It, it means How you're voices... selfish. How many voices have you dismissed by dismissing that study? Because studies are right. representations of thousands of voices. Right. You're essentially right. saying that your your one voice is more important than the thousands of voices that have lent them, you know, lent themselves to this the study. Isn't that yeah. fucking self centered and narcissistic? I think everybody's exactly. forgetting, you know, yeah. that she is the table. <laughs> right, right. Self centered and narcissistic with two fucking psychology. But uh, you know about the table. I eat. I eat on the. But you know about the table thing. You know, I eat on the table every day. I just want to leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for your table, Bob, and you pay your table to leave. We know this. <laughs> no, but 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 that's the thing with these with these feminists and uh, all the 
all the women that have been in all these positions that always get their fucking way, <laughs> if they don't get their way, they will fucking go around and still get their way if they can find another man to get their way. So what I propose to all the men out there is get your way. Not Fire. all the people away, you know? Fire all the women. She that's what something. I would do if I was young still. That's what I would do. Amen to that. I mean, treat it like subways. Have it your way. I mean, just. Yeah, my, man. Yeah, my advice to all the men, you, you have one or two options. If you, if you want to go out there and screw like a jackrabbit, then fine. Just be safe. But if you want a life without drama, just be MGTOW. Stay single. Just live your fucking life. Avoid this and, shit. Yes, yes. And all the men. All the men need to be MGTOW and oh, get the God. fuck away from the women so I can sort them out properly. Because but hey, if you, are, if you are MGTOW and still want to fuck people, well, you, what you can do is pay an escort, escort once a month and then don't deal with nobody. Just stay silent. Don't speak a right. damn word. That's, That's going to hurt more. them the most. That's what I meant. You know, treat treat women like subways. You know, get an escort and have it your way. You know, you want you know, provolone on that? All right, here's your provolone for pastrami. You know, just any kind of sandwich you want. Just... <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, man, that's a good one. Hey, Bob, I'm gonna open and a. And then watch their face. And then you need to watch their face when you get their way, and they notice that there's somebody oh, that comes to your home. Watch mm -hmm. their face. Dude, that would destroy them. If I open a fucking brothel and you just walk in there, you start looking around the uh, black wolf. I'd like a sandwich with extra mayo. I oh, got you, buddy. Got you. Like, got our finest horse. <laughs> I mean, sandwiches in the back. <laughs> no worry. Wait, what got do you it. mean by mayo? What are you referencing, the black wolf? Women <laughs> queefing. <laughs> <laughs> Women queefing, you know. It's all, it's all about them queefing. You know, you got to get the you gotta get the right one. I mean, but pretty soon... Hell, we're not like fucking androids and robots anyway. I mean, shit, trade up for a fucking sex doll. I mean, one one guy in Japan, I think it was a hikikimori or a herbivore, he married an AI. Had a wedding and everything for an AI. And, and, and I was laughing at this shit a few years back. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone laughed. And then about a year later, he's still happy. And then everyone was like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's happy. Uh, Kifu. has got his wife, too. But, I, you know, I, if you pay an escort, though. You need to go to the hotel because if you bring these people to your home, well, it might cause trouble. So because it's still illegal. So if I were a young guy today, I would go to the hotel and do my stuff there. That's what I would do. Good mother. I meant to add this earlier. You yeah, won't believe. Did you even get to talk earlier? Who me? No. No, because I was letting y'all talk. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's all good. But um, you won't believe who they're getting at now. My guy, Michael Myers, he's now being accused of being homophobic for murdering a gay couple, a guy couple in the new Halloween movie. And no spoilers because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, so now they're trying to trying to take out Michael. He better watch out before he goes after them. You know what? You know what? Yeah. They want to talk about equality and inclusion. They want attention. They never, he, he never once in the history of all the fucking people he killed before then killed a gay couple. So there, they got their inclusion. Fuck them. Well, that's a way to look at it. They're ridiculous. You can't, you can't call something that's inclusive, homophobic. You can't do it. Pick I mean, it. In Michael's defense, I mean, like, it wouldn't really, you know, done much. I mean, director after coming, Michael, Michael, they get poked every day. You know, your knife doesn't mean anything. Like, tack, kill someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I just think that's freaking funny. I mean, how people try to draw that. I mean, oh, what, what yeah. next? You know, it. SCE, he indiscriminately kills everybody. He does not discriminate. <laughs> yep. Are they yeah, really? Yeah. Are they really fucking pushing that bullshit? I bet it's not even gay people. I bet it's fucking feminists that have nothing better to do with their lives because our society has fucking carried them through life. They just look for shit to complain about. Yeah. And Jim McIntosh, yeah, I am clowning a little bit. I'm just saying, you know, anytime some people are arguing about the preferences of a fucking, you know, horror serial killer film, I mean, that's how, you know, life is good, I'm guessing. I mean, damn, that's an interesting thing. 
to be upset about. Get ready for they them just, to go I think they just want you. attention. Don't be surprised. Yes, because they're, they're lonely. They have no children, no husband, any of those things. They want to look, look, I'm looking for them to say Freddy Krueger. He needs to be canceled because no. because he has a past of being a Klansman or something. And then next we're gonna skip over to Jason saying saying he eats animals and kill animals. And here comes that that what you call it group Peta Peter whatever the, the whatever the hell they're called. Apparently Biden's a pedophile. There's a lot of people saying that right now. Uh, his brain cells has glitches like what four to five times a day. And the guy lags. I mean, I'm still kind of on, on board with him possibly being a robot. I mean, I don't know until I see some circuits or something. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm convinced, you know. And the, the only thing that creeps me out is the fucking hair sniffing. Am I, am I the only one that noticed that shit? Lavender. I don't, I don't know. Everybody what notices that. it. Everybody notices it. Everybody has been noticing it. I even heard uh, from somebody on the left that voted for Biden that said, um, oh, no, no, he's not a pedophile. And I'm like, what about the, the whole hair sniffing thing with the kids? Oh, no, that's kind of weird. But he's not a pedophile. I'm like, okay. Why is it weird then? And he couldn't fucking answer that question. I, I want to talk to the people that actually got hugged and hugged and sniffed by him. And because it looks like he's saying something. And, and I kind of was able to make out little words. Does he, like, does he like sniff some people and just go, use more shampoo? Nice lavender. I'm just kind of curious what he says after he does it. Just, just, it's just fucking, it's odd. I mean, I've just never seen anybody hug like that. I don't know whether there was a glitch in the programming or maybe they're robots or not. You know, I don't know. I think he's a robot. Until I see some circuit boards or something or a glitch in the system, I, I don't know. He might be a robot. Um, SCE, SCE, not all serial killers start with animals. Some serial killers actually just go after a whole bunch of people that deserve to die out of uh, justice and retribution. So there's a lot of serial killers out there that would never harm animals because they're innocent. But there's a lot of people that aren't innocent that some serial killers would gladly take out. He meant the majority. Majority, which is which is true. The majority of serial killers, about ninety some percent of them, start on animals, and and the reason they do that shit is because, as the old saying goes, if somebody would abuse an animal, they would abuse a human if they were able to or given the option to. So they have an affinity for violence, and it, like there've been whole YouTube videos on this shit. They emotionally have a have a like disconnect to the point where for them, that's a weird thing of compassion and hence why they shouldn't be in society. Some of them like either get off on it sexually or some kind of weird compassion. That's how they show love or compassion. These kinds of people shouldn't be on the fucking it's street. Really now, people that serial kill other people out of justice, that's a different story. Well, I gave you a golf club and a stick, you know, but, but you, you wanted to at least give him a head start. I was all for just hitting him with a golf ball, but, you know. No, but that's way too nice. Well, yeah, I mean, I like to have fun with it. I want to I see if I can like, up my 18-hole game at the very least, you know. I just say have fun with it. To everyone watching this, to any dude watching this shit, have fun with it. I might go down to gynecologist someday and just say um, <laughs> my dick you know, identifies as a vagina and I need, you know, special papers for that. It's kind of a... <laughs> There you go. I know it not good to organic college. Well, you might be able to. Yeah, hell, I'm, maybe I might be able to sue, you know, like, sir, did you just, you know, misgender my dick? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to, like, sue and get get everybody on it. Just, just FDA, get everybody on this shit. So. Actually, that's what I just pulled no. up. This band video about the gender roles. Now the Billy's here. Uh, uh, got got three things to say. Well, I'll say it after the video. No, uh, I mean it's it's kind of a it looks forty one minutes. So. Oh damn! Yeah. You can say what you want. Okay. okay. Well, by the way, the Michael Myers theme is my phone's ringtone, and, and the other two. <laughs> Speaking of the dictator in office. A lot of black, well, not a lot, but a number of black universities is now questioning him on his promise 
that he supposedly made. So now, so now, like they want answers. I was like, well, y'all can wait on that one. And the third thing is, um, now there's um gender. I think there there's um genderless passports or something for for people in the passport. In the passports, they have um they have like some type of like symbol on them or X or something. And I was like, okay, so they can pass that, but they can't pass a black other stuff. Yes, y'all. They got gender. Yeah, they have genderless passports now for people. Yeah. Nonsense. That, that's uh, what they talked about, the unique gender. Quick question. Um, with them with, with them saying that the Build Back Better um, campaign is, you know, going to be, you know, cost exactly zero. Why are they looking it's to such tax? Yeah, that's, that's the stupidest why, thing I've ever fucking heard. Why are they get, why are they looking to tax um people for their unrealized gains? And, yes, and I was, in I was, case you don't understand what that means. I was gonna me, ask you about that because you're our economist. Yeah, what is it? What it essentially means is that suppose suppose let's say for example you have a house, right? Yeah, and right it um let's say it costs a hundred thousand dollars and over the course of uh, a year it goes from a hundred thousand dollars to a hundred and let's say fifty this is obviously crazy but um just for the sake of making things round and easy to handle what that means is that that extra fifty thousand um dollars is going to be taxable now this is a house you haven't sold it you don't actually have the cash what that means is that you would have to pay that tax either from your existing um, cash, which, which would be, you know, earned from your income, or you would actually have to sell the house in order to pay the unrealized gain, which is insane to me. It's a tax on, on wealth that is not only just like a tax on wealth, it's destructive. It causes, it forces people to sell whatever they own in order to pay for the the, the privilege of being able to own that the thing that they work for. How's that? How's that going to build back better? It's actually forcing people to to sell their their shares, sell their Bitcoin, sell their their um, homes, whatever uh, sort of asset can appreciate over time, is going to be taxed. But why is it, America going crazy over this? This is nonsense. Oh, this is it's, this is such a stupid po uh, policy that. I don't even think third world countries that have terrible leaders would engage in this sort of nonsense. This is how bad the policy is. When he had first brought it up, I already knew from the jump it was a waste of money. It's just going to be another financial strain here. Yeah. I know. What do you have to say about this, Bob, in terms of being taxed on capital gains. If you have a house, I don't know if this also, this probably also applies to pensions, no? Well, I'm sure they have certain exemptions, but it should, because you know that's also capital gains. Oh, uh, Bob, you there? So I, I, I didn't quite get that. Could you say that again? Are you guys able to hear Bob? I'm not able to hear him quite clearly. Um, yeah, I, I'm not catching that. Um, Black Wolf, what do you have to say about um, this capital gains tax? Well, the only thing I would have to say is, man, it's... That shit's been coming a long time because the whole, like, ba first a bachelor tax shit, I'm not really surprised that that shit's happening. It's fucked up. I mean, a lot of people are going to get fucked over by it. It's not going to help anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. it's just really funny, the, the shit that people endorse. I'm so sick of people trying to endorse shit because of feelings and everything. These, God, these people have no idea how money actually fucking works. I mean, you're the, yeah. you're the economist, so, like, you know better than me. I mean, for me, I deal with, like, like micromanaging, what micromanaging shit, you know, on, on a um on a mass level in terms of like produce and whatnot. But they there are a lot of people that don't know how you know money works, and so they just think 
oh, the government just has endless money or X amount of money or whatever the fuck. Mm. And mm. it leads to shit like this. I mean, the whole – like, for example, the whole welfare thing wasn't meant for everybody to live on. The thing about it is it's just become so fucking convenient. I mean I couldn't even yeah. get that shit at one point because I guess what? I made too much. Yeah. I couldn't even get that shit when I actually needed it. And that's the bullshit that we have to fucking go go through, man. And and it's just they, – they set aside so much money for all of this stupid shit instead of things that people actually need. And by the way, hey, I see. But yeah, man, like like shit people actually freaking need and it's, it's divided. And all these people that really care about social – like I'm not angry because someone's an SJW. I'm angry about how they fight. These assholes yeah. could just as easily go down to a soup kitchen or donate their time. They never donate their time and energy. They think marching changes anything. If they really want change, I don't know, write a fucking book or go and work at – Go work for um, Habitats for Humanities or a fucking re animal rescue shelter. There's tons of things that they could do, but they don't do these things. They yell mm -hmm. at everybody else to do these things. Yeah. That's because and they've I never actually been productive, Black Wolf. They, 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 the best that they can do is to yell at other productive people to be more productive but in the direction that suits them. Right. So they want to take someone else's productivity and... The, the benefits they are and bring them towards themselves or whatever cause they think is 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 you know a good cause so they themselves can never actually do anything and that's why they're the worst sorts of people to have in um, leadership because all they can do is destroy all they can do is 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 chop whatever's there sell it turn it into cash and you know distribute it they don't actually they're not actually good at producing anything Right, because they're women, and women don't produce things typically, on average. They just consume things. They take from the pockets of the men and give it to the children, <clears throat> or who they identify as children. Especially all these university indoctrinated fucking bitches that wasted their time and life in university and don't have kids and get into all these jobs, and they want a mommy adults so this is what happened when there's an overabundance of nurturing because even when they're being total bitches it's yeah. ironic because they're actually following their core programming it's men who they've tried to change and alter but women never they didn't change they were always this way yeah that, that's we're naturally socialists we care about people and not the things that's why women don't belong in fucking government and leadership positions and being in charge of the structures of our society because the the structures of our society it's a thing it's not a person no, Why you put somebody in charge of a thing that is not qualified of being in charge of a thing it doesn't make sense good mother now can you imagine if you was invited on the leftist view talk show and you said that you'd really have a good time with Whoopi and behar Mostly. Well, they would shut up and listen to me because that's how they react when white women come on their panel. I saw it with uh, Shelly Luther during the lockdown and her protest against the lockdown. And dude, those bitches zipped their fucking lips. Did you guys ever see that? Mm, I might have, and I might have, mm, I might yeah. have months ago, no. and don't remember. Yeah. But um, but what's her name was, was recently on there. Um, what's her name? Um, what's her name? Shit, what's that woman's name? She she used to be in, she used to be a politician. Well, I don't. I think she used to be a. I think she used to be a politician, but she's still in politics. Well, Emmanuel's dropping another link. What is that? Mm -hmm. I get this, Condole I get this gender role discussion lined up, Emmanuel. Condoleezza Rice, that's her name. She's black, though. They'll listen to her. Oh, she destroyed them. Uh, is this on The View? Yep. Yep, oh, like what, a couple of days or like a half a week ago or something. Oh, that was, ooh, that was brutal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all, all they could do is just like, you know, sort of like sit there with their mouths open because it's like, how do you respond? You can't default to your um, 
identify this because she meets the criteria. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's sort of like froze. It's like I disagree with this because it goes against my entire ideology, but I can't I can't use my normal get out of jail right. card, you know. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, yeah. frozen. I don't actually I'm not when was the last time I actually had to figure actually had to, you know, make a good argument. Oh man, I'm stuck. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, you can sort of see the wheels, you know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we can. I can yeah. Request, I can guess. This is what happens when you share this. Hold on, let me mute him. Yeah, it's like a boot. You speak in French to that bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but you see, that day when she was on there, they was messing with the true chick, a real one. Now, like I said, because Condoleezza Rice, she's not shit like Kim (laughs) Clasic. They had a veteran chick on there that day. So they couldn't run that crap by her. Yeah, I I supported Kim Clasic a while ago. A lot of the shit that I'm seeing from her now, I'm not. Yeah. This is what happens in an over nurtured society. Like it it hurts everybody, including the damn air quote competent women. And and that's why you know I'm, I'm it's fucking hilarious, man. You don't have to do shit. They're gonna be tearing at each other's fucking throats and like do time, just just ghost and just just take a huge step back and just watch the bullshit unfold because it it's always been this way. Women didn't change their programming. Men's programming has been altered, and that's why you end up with the soy boys and and all this other fucking fucking shit. And any other avenue, that nature, like if it was in a knitting group or something like that, it would almost be fucking admirable. But not when it comes to making fucking life altering type of decisions, and and that's and that's kind of the the thing. And that, and that shit never left us from our more primitive days. And I don't care how much of a power dyke feminist bitch these women are, they will fold. It happens yes. happened then and happen now. They're they, cowards. They know that. They're, they're really just cowards. That's why I don't understand why our society and all the men are fucking listening to them and letting them influence all the policies. All right. Emmanuel says this video is a clip that confirms my theory about the tyrannical matriarchy. Is that true, Amanda? Yeah. It, it, it's another, it's sort of, is this another, what did they call it? A confirmation bias? <laughs> it's not even confirmation bias. It's just plain old confirmation. It, it, it's right. It, right. it's the fact that um, it shows you what these people actually want to um, achieve at the end of the day, which is yeah, let's just let the, the clip play. I don't want to okay. give it away. Yeah. Uh, let's play it. So you basically see it. This is going to be like, well, it's almost like uh, you probably don't see it like this. The two different classes of people. If you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated, you have all these rights. If you are vaccinated. That is what it is. So, yep. Yep. Can you describe this? You were previously hoping not to be able, not to have to do that, I guess, when we're still, mm. like we could maintain elimination across the whole. I guess that has now changed because I think it was less less because necessarily of the elimination determining that and more because we of course uh maintained and actually we have managed very high vaccination rates generally without the use of certificates. But actually what it's become clear to me is that they're not just a tool to drive up vaccines, they're a tool for confidence. People who have been vaccinated we want to know that they're around other vaccinated people. Oh uh, they want to know that they're in a safe environment. It is a way that we can give confidence to those who are going back. Wait a minute. How in the fuck, if you're already vaccinated, why do you need to feel safe against the unvaccinated? Isn't that the point of the vaccine, that you're safe? Am I missing mm-hmm. something, gentlemen? Uh, they're missing something. They, they have yeah. a clear... <clears throat> gap in their logic but but what you're just... saying safe safe women care about fucking safety yeah goes back to thing i say all the time women care about safety more than freedom women don't mm-hmm. really i'm gonna say this like <laughs> women collectively all over the world don't give a shit about having rights they say they do but not really when well, shit is bad they fold they'll give up their rights instantly for anybody it doesn't even matter who it is i mean the majority yes the majority, yeah, it's about ninety some percent of them. I'd wager ninety nine. I mean, hell, they they've done this all throughout human history. 
I mean, mm-hmm. whenever one kingdom would get invaded by like, you know, like Genghis Khan or something like that, the women weren't women. Women collectively have never been loyal anywhere in the world. I mean, they'll have their enemies, babies, for God's sake. Well, he made me do it. The king made me do it. Oh, but I'll I'll have these Genghis Khan type babies or whatever. And and this is why, you know, the, this is why they were treated like kind of that way. I mean, I'm not trying to justify some fucked up shit. I'm just telling telling how it is. Women mm-hmm. were were like at one point traded for goats and shit and I ain't condoning it and cows. I'm just saying thing about it is it's just many, many women in today's society aren't even a, to the same value as a goat. So. Well, yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they fucked that up. I mean, the thing about it is the one time men trusted women in ancient times, the whole garden, garden, Eve fucked us over with the snake. And then men try to trust men have tried to trust women multiple fucking times in history because there's always been simps. I'm doing, doing to trust the queen or the princess with the castle while I'm gone. What happened? The castle's on fire. Well, Saya, she thought it was a great idea. Ah, uh, fuck. She she was thinking. Fuck. They didn't told you to watch out for that, man. You know, it was just a shit. SC brings up a good point. The umbrella doesn't work if others don't use theirs. It's the same thing as what is the only fucking product in history that loses this efficacy when the people don't use it. I want to borrow borrow a quote from one of my guy kids. She won't get the shot, but she she remembers her saying this. I can't feel safe until everyone else has gotten it. Oh, my God. That's stupid. That's stupid. Yeah. You know, it's the fact that she said, she plainly said, yes, we're trying to make a system where there are two classes of people. Right. And like right. the reports didn't blink at that. No, no. Like, like the fact that she felt free to just say that. Well, like these since people, when have we accepted yeah. that, that? That people can just literally create a, like a, what you call it, like a system where there are two classes of people. They've already the been have, doing have that, Bill Emanuel. They've it's already been, way, been playing that game. It's just that they're switching the classes. Like they're done playing the the other class stuff, and yeah. then like it's a it's a new game. It's a new level on the class. I'm not surprised by them doing it. It's the fact that she can admit it, and no one actually like responds to that. No one actually like has a whoa moment, you know. I'm with that. I mean, the thing about it is women women are not held to any real standard, man. They can run around naked in the fucking airport and then people end up clapping, you know, for them and shit. I mean, you saw Good Mother upload that comedy video. The jokes were lame, but the moment she took off her bra, oh my God, you know, and everything else, it was just, it's just fucking ridiculous. And to all the simps out there, you are part of the problem. Stop giving women praise every time they take a shit. I mean, the magic trick wasn't that great the first time around. Oh, well, this time she took a piss. Oh, God damn it. You know, it's just they all have this fucking thing. And I, and I think like a lot of this stems from the over nurturation of society. We, we have it. I hate saying this, but fuck, we have it a little too good. I'm not saying I want everything like fucking fall necessarily. But like when you make life too good, women, women doesn't, don't have anything to really bitch about now. I mean, in ancient times, you know. They were real, women were actually very quiet in the caveman days, it's like especially in like primitive islands and shit like that. You didn't hear a lot of shit from her because they just didn't want to die. That was kind of the main, yeah. main focus of not dying. They knew everything can kick their ass. House cats whoop their ass. I mean, whole freaking thing. And so now, like modern era, women feel so empowered. I can punch any guy. I can take anyone down, but just don't hurt my feelings. That's just going too far. It's Jesus yeah. fuck. That's what they do, and yeah. that's. And that's the thing. I mean, I don't care if any woman gets mad at me for saying to come at me, bro. I don't give a fuck. I'll say it every goddamn time. You fold like a motherfucker when met with any real type of adversity. I don't care if you bring the biggest, strongest dyke among you. They will fold like a motherfucker given the opportunity because the what like women have never been alone in all of human history. Men have been alone. We've died and do the dumb shit mostly. Mm-hmm. But women, ha- there's never been a time in all of human history where women have collectively had to deal with themselves, and they're not liking that. They think they'll like it, but when it happens, oh, man, they're going to hate that shit. And go, go off and ask any man that ever lived off the grid, like, was it easy? No. Did people fight? you? Yeah, animals did. I mean, women just aren't going to do that. That's why there's not a lot of female monks or female philosophers. That's for a reason. Nobody stopped them from doing this shit. It is not in a woman's best interest to do those things. There's no gain. So they won't do it. 
Women do whatever the fuck they feel is safe. So even if all of us get sent to hell, they're going to be making pussy deals with demons to, to, to be put in a slightly higher hell. We're all in hell, but at least I'm not like that guy. That's the thing. It's, it's just the way it is, man. It's been that way in biblical times. You know, Eve was a lying bitch. And supposedly in the Bible, God cursed them with the pain of giving childbirth as a punishment for being a lying bitch. Like, like, fuck. That, that's that's kind of the thing. And men have, and a lot of men have been fucking passive ever since on, on, on that stuff. And so we're in an interesting time in modern days. I mean, you can't whoop women's asses anymore, but you also can't tell them shit. So what, what the fuck are you going to do? Uh, that, that's, that's the thing. You know, you can't be, don't be too violent, don't be too soft. And I was just going to say, most men are opting to stay away from them. You know? It's the only option. Yeah, that's the only option. And you can't, <laughs> you know, the way it seems women are built, they always turn to some higher authority to get them to force those that they, you know, I guess are arguing with to do what they want. That seems to be like the general gist of a lot of their politics. And... I guess it's a matter of time until uh, it's only a matter of time until you have them leveraging the government to force men into having relationships with them. You know, once this MGTOW movement really gets big enough, you know, and yeah, I guess once we get there, we're going to have to see the who's going to win. Is it going to be that men are so MGTOW that even the men that you normally appeal to in government would not enforce the, the sorts of things that women want? Or will women get to a point where they've just brainwashed everyone so much that they are able to actually leverage people into forced relationships or whatever, you know? Um, it won't be possible, man. I mean, some of these dudes have been fucked over so bad, they ain't ever going back to the fucking plantation. I mean, feminism did one good thing out of all the horrible things they did. It showed mm -hmm. men that we have options and it showed men that we were never valued by society. We've been working for free for thousands of fucking years. And for what? Yeah. I mean, that yeah. the opportunity at having kids and the opportunity at maybe one day being slightly respected 2% right under the family dog is the juice is no longer worth the squeeze. And even if it wasn't for feminism, this shit would have kind of happened anyway because of the rise in technology. People don't feel much of a need to be around each other anyway. I mean, why would they? They got their computer, their tablet. They they have distractions, man. If you want to live your whole life in your house, you can do you can actually do that now. Person, yeah. people can live in their house for the whole fucking life and work from their home. And back then, you couldn't do that. But now, if you just want to leave, never leave your house, you, you have that option. And mm -hmm. we, we're we're entering a more digital age. I've accepted that the fact that technology will be more like more of a thing in the future and like grid locking and uh, vertical farming and a bunch of other things. I've seen it, man. It's, it's um, yeah. it's some pretty impressive shit. It's going to come a time where technology is going to class a lot of people out of a job. They're even talking about allowing robots to perform surgeries by themselves. I mean, oh yeah. That's already happening. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, that's you know? already happening. Um, like, um, I know with the whole, uh, what's this thing? Um, What's this, what's this thing that um, Elon Musk is doing with the whole brain thing? Oh, the chip. Uh, the, the chip, yeah. 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 Apparently, like, they they built um, a machine to do the operation for, you know, to connect all of the nodes to, I guess. The nerves the and the spinal cord and everything. Yeah. We, we may be able to, like, fix, like, with that chip, it'll be able to fix crippled people so they'd be able to walk and everything. And um, it's it has a lot of possibilities, but it's actually kind of, it's scary, too. I mean, course, to anyone who's yeah. ever seen the anime Ghost in the Shell, uh, any kind of sci-fi anime, we may very well live in a time period like that in the upcoming years. I mean, not as extreme yeah. as that, but close, close enough. It's a way heading there. Like I, I saw, I saw something, um, something the other day about, um, I think it was Facebook, that's hiring. I don't know how many people in the Middle East or whatever, to, or, or I think Europe or whatever, to essentially help build the virtual internet. And if I'm if I'm gauging that correctly, if I'm understanding that term correctly, it, it, I mean that's basically like sort of like the Matrix, you know? Like we sort yeah. of like plugged into um, an alternative um, world. I, I, there are these um, novels that I'd read. Um, 
uh, normally from like you know manga and those sorts of things. And one of the common themes is like the alternate you know world where people sort of like plug into a virtual reality game and um, they sort of live their lives there and they sort of like flourish there and it sort of becomes like their like the avatar you know that sort of thing yeah um, yeah and I think if if that's where we're going then yeah oh, it, the world is in for a whole lot of change and I wonder it's how many happen. people opt for how many people up for real life versus virtual reality? How many people? A lot of are, people. The vast yeah. majority would, would most likely do that. I mean, I'm not even worried about the race shit because eventually that won't even be much of a thing anymore. Why? Because no one will be hanging out with anybody anyway outside of their little clique. So, yeah. I mean, we were always we were always destined to kind of merge anyway. I mean, technology made the world smaller, and mm. it's just. There's no easy way out of this, man. If um, even if people just reside in their own areas, if you if a per if people stay on the island and only like congregate with their air quote on kind, you end up breeding degenerates. But by the same token, if you like mix off and everything else, then yeah, you'll survive a little longer, I guess. But humanity is not long for this fucking world. I mean, technology is going to outclass us in every conceivable way. I mean, it's going to be like some weird Voyager kind of shit, man. And yeah, it's kind of mm -hmm. scary. But, you know, we've even discovered like a planet that was similar to ours about a light year away. It'd take 100 years to get there. But the thing about it is the, our universe is bigger than just us. And that petty shit, it'll go away in time. I mean, we made great strides in terms of racism in, in the early 19th, all the way up to now. Pretty soon, I mean, it, no one's really going to care that much anymore if people care less now than than back then the only reason people care now is because identity politics shit we were doing good until that shit came along but it's yeah. just uh it's all just i mean everybody bleeds red man we're all goddamn human that, that, that shit when the moment it was invented it was invented to separate the rich from the poor there's really no such thing as white or black or anything it's just some bullshit labels created by bullshit people so scared that we're one day going to team up and go against the goddamn government because they they have invested interest on keeping people divided and they can make money that way it's easier Everyone mm -hmm. divided, making money. Oh, they're fighting great. We can come in there and play hero now. They've been doing this since the dawn of time. I mean, anyone that denies this, that you don't know your government that well, they've been doing this shit since the dawn of time. Stir some shit up, fear monger everybody, get everybody scared of, you know, something. And then, but, oh, we're with the government. We're here to help you. Let us save you from yourself because only we can. Yeah. It's just, that's what's going to happen. And they've been infantizing, man. Fuck the universities. They've been, they've been infantizing people even since grade school to the point where most of these kids aren't even capable of working basic fucking jobs. What's going to happen when everyone's on welfare? And this is actually what they want. They want everyone on some type of welfare system program because that way they get to control you. Here's your government phone and your government housing and your government everything. And if you piss us off in any conceivable way, we'll just take it away from you. Yeah. Like parent, Like parents taking away a toy from a child. Mm -hmm. that's what it is so they want everybody on it don't don't to anyone in one's comment section please don't doubt that they the government doesn't want like oh the government doesn't want us somewhere yeah yes it does because the moment everything that you get is provided from them like a parent they can swipe that shit away anytime they choose at any point in time same oh, thing with wow. land I, i'm just going through the comment section and ryan has brought some interesting points up i'm just going to bring up the comments he says uh, you know what's funny about this Vax thing they, that they're pushing here so hard is that the government mandated it. And I also got a call from the federal office uh, was pushing me to get my employees vaxxed. And he says, and I would have to, and I would have to vax? They said, no, just your employees. I had to let go 10 employees because they wouldn't do it. And I'm getting fined out the ass. Yeah. Like sounds fishy. <laughs> yeah. 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 SC willing post find, Oh my word. Willing to find five K per person per month if they don't show <laughs> vaccine pa Oh my word. Damn. They really pushing it. And by the Whoa. way, SC SC's comment was like that link he posted was he's right. Universal thanks, man. That's what I was thinking of. Universal income. For those who don't know this, me and uh, him talk about this all the time. Your government wants everyone to be on a universal income. That way, they can control everything you do. 
from the 5G phone that you have, the any technology that you have, once they accomplish that, it won't matter what job you have. They will, they will have the ability to freeze your account. And the yeah. only thing that's going to matter is your social credit score. And if you pissed off, air quote, <laughs> the wrong people, you will find yourself quickly in poverty. So yeah, you like, kiss the right ass. Think about the, the whole um, introduction of, um, you know, government-backed uh, uh, cryptocurrency. If that becomes the default, then, I mean, they hold everything. You know, I, I guess I guess one could say um, it's not very different from what we, the system we already have with banking bank accounts and how most people use, you know, they swipe and things like that. You know, um, if the government decides to just freeze your accounts, you pray overnight, just like that. You know, um, that's another I thing think, with crypto stuff. They yeah. they, uh, they talk to me about it and they uh, they want to tax it. So uh, if anybody have uh, yeah. this kind of account. It will tax you. So uh, if you make, I don't know what, twenty k a month, well, you you will you will have to pay taxes on that. You know, so that's not a yeah. good idea to go there because you will get taxes even more as a regular yeah. job. You will get taxed more. And that's kind of the thing. I mean, a lot of people think like, oh, the government's gonna come in and kick my door. They don't have to do that. They got shit. They got ways of fucking you up without even touching you. Oh, we'll just make them broke. He'll, they'll have to comply eventually, or live in poverty, or live like shit. But if you want to live like a king, you got to kiss the right ass. That's pretty much what they're freaking setting it up. I mean, it all goes back to any type of like identity or type of politics you want to use. It all goes back to king and peasant kind of shit. They want everybody to live like peasants. Like no one's going to be able to just be a lord or a duke or anything like that. Everyone will be reduced to peasant status. And that's... <laughs> that's why I used to put so much money, man. To all these years that I work, now I have one million in the bank. And, you know, they can't touch it no more because it's all the money that I make. So, you know, I'm said and done. And all my house is already paid off. My car is paid off. Everything is paid off. So, you know, I, I got one million and I can do what the fuck I want with it. But I'm right. older, though. You know, I'm not 20 years old. I'm like 53 years old. So, you know, I've been working all my fucking life, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I mean, the shitty part about it is. The people watching this, they, they fuck things up so bad, you'd be lucky to get on retirement with, the, with how fucked up things are. I mean, hell, people can't even retire. I see like 70-some-year-old people working in damn, you know, State Brothers and shit and grocery stores and just like, fuck, man. And you have shit. a little job, you know, little job, you know, and imagine me, man. You know, I have like, when I used to start, my salary, my salary was like 20, I think it was 16 an hour when I was young. A policeman now is like 33 an hour, so you know it's not bad, but you know, I'm not young either. So, I used to already when I was young, I already had discipline to not go to restaurant and uh, every day, every night, you know, don't go to bar. You know, all that was doing is working, 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 and stack all the money that, that I can, you know. And then now, if I ever want it, I can buy a Lamborghini, but for me, it's useless. I don't need to buy that shit, you know. But I got enough money to do what the fuck I want. But you know, I work my ass off. It's not a little job that pay uh, ten bucks an hour, you know. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. I mean, it's back then it was like fucking. It was actually kind of funny. Back then it was easy to get a job, but harder to like make it up. And now it's like kind of the opposite. Now it's it's it's, it's fucking weird. But they're, they're really but people. People get dumber though. That's what I think, you know, more that we have a next generation, more that they, they look like they're, they're dumber. they dumb. Oh, yeah, they're fucked. I mean, dude, I know people like, like my age and up that they can't even mail a letter. They don't know how to change a tire. They don't, they don't know basic, the most basic shit. And it's just, I feel bad for them. I mean, you can't lead a generation of idiots. It's like putting a firearm into a nine-year-old's hand and saying, go fight a war. And they're going to have to go through that because we can't help them. We really can't help them. They, they're not going to listen to us because they fucking know everything. I mean, some of yeah. us were down in the fucking gutter. I mean, I remember I had a bunch of college kids, you know, they were protesting a liquor store and they got mad and they were trying to tell me what suffering was. And I asked this kid this one thing. Hey, kid, when you were growing up, did you have hot water? He said, what does that mean? I was like, no, no, no. Just answer the question. When you were growing up, did you always have access to hot water? He said, yeah, 
I said, okay, then don't fucking talk to me about your suffering. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right. Because in our time, it, that was not the case all the time, you know. We had to learn. I used to, my first car, I was 17 years old, you know, and I paid cash. And my, my daddy told me, you need to change the tire. I don't know how to change the tire. So he showed me one time, you know, not 10 times, not 20 times, one time. And, you know, 10 days ago, I had to change my tire. And then my, my kid told me, I don't know how to change the tire. Well, I will show you. Then I showed them and then, I said to him, don't come back here with some more about change tire. I show you once, you're supposed to know now. Don't come back to me and bother me about this. And then now he know. So he changed his own tire and he did his own thing, you know. He changed his own oil and stuff like that. His brake. But my son is uh, working in mechanic. So he, he went to mechanic school. So he know how to, uh, to change tire and stuff like that. It's not the majority of the kids. Most of these kids, they work as, as a you know, little job in the store, stuff like that. These jobs, they don't pay well, first of all. So uh, that's not a great future, you know. They end up as a wage slave, essentially. I mean, it's just... And they, they don't ever get up out of it. That's, that's the fucking thing, man. It's just... I feel bad. I mean, I've had to teach... Like people, some few people even my age, how to manage their fucking money. It's just weird. There are a lot of people that don't even know, you know, oh, I got to pay shit at the end. Yeah, pay it before February. Like you've been waiting in line like everybody else. IRS doesn't play. And that's the thing. I mean, they they treat money like water. I mean, yeah, I had yeah, my moments where I went to raves and parties and shit like that. But I always, even when I was partying in my 20s, I always kept my money on, on lock. And that's something my parents taught me, like never spend more than what you got never buy more than what you need just like have fun but don't be stupid that's it yeah within reason like you know bring 40 bucks and that's it deal with 40 bucks yeah and that's that's how 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 we did it back then but now it's just like fuck man I, Gen you know, Z people is like, be like oh i want this i want that even the woman man, the younger woman you know oh sometimes i see young couple and i mean the guy is like clueless like you don't know what the fuck to do you know i mean oh his girlfriend say oh i want this bra i want this boot and then you know they end up you know and then they end up spending like fifty hundred dollars in one day i mean what the fuck that's a lot of money man in one day yeah there have been women that have spent like damn near 10k in a day i mean that's the crazy part oh my god I've that's seen, a lot man that's a lot of money i've seen women do that at the mall man i was up in the macy's like a few years back and this bitch was spending she spent all her money spent all her man's money and i'm like god damn like the entire fucking time and just this is the kind of shit women treat money like water brother i mean it's just i mean i mean fuck and and i see some of these guys you know they're in the mid-30s and up or maybe even 40 50 whatever and then they're dating these like these 20 year old bitches or whatever i mean like actually dating them and shit and me and a friend of mine got in an argument because, you know, he turned 36, 37. He's like, oh, you don't understand. We relate so much. I'm like, motherfucker, you 15 years older than her. What the hell do you relate on? He's like, well, she gets my jokes. I was like, okay, well, does she laugh or before or after you laugh? And then he got all mad at me. No, shut up. Fuck you. I'm like, I'm just saying <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> he got all mad. I was like, does she laugh before or after you? And he thought about it and got mad. I'm like, man, go to hell. I was like, I'm just saying shit. You, you, you grooming. You're raising your own girlfriend, and I and I I know age shouldn't matter when it comes to dating. I mean, love whoever you fuck you want to love, and all that and all that fucking bullshit. But I'm just saying to anybody who is over the age of thirty, and you're dating like some eighteen, twenty year old chick, please understand you are dating a kid, and you are raising your own girlfriend. Please stop trying to talk to them like they're on the level. They are not. They are still very much of the childlike mind. And even women in their 30s, 40s, and 50s are still kind of that way. But it's even worse when you, when you deal yeah, with women them. Are, are, most women are, are like a child, though. You know, even in the, in the police, police job, there are some women there sometimes. And sometimes, you know, I, I don't say a word. Just look at them. And then I say to myself, I mean, why the fuck are you doing in that kind of job? I mean, and, you know, like one month ago. Some girl police got shot here in the head in Canada, you know, in here. It's like somebody got shot in the head. It's like that's never happened here, you know, but it happened, you know, because why the fuck should people put women there? You know, that's kind of crazy because women are selfish creatures. They only think about themselves and, you know, they, they are clueless, you know, and then boom, they got shot. You know, they arrest the wrong motherfucker. It was a crazy man. And then the guy had a gun. Boom. 
that's it done you know that's the thing. I mean, what, what, women have these ideas about the world that isn't true. I mean, the thing about it is, you and I both know this shit. The world's a life's a bitch, but women oh, want to yeah. try to make it all floofy and shit. And I mean, I'm all for making the world a better place, but women have these ideas that don't fall into reality. They have this weird Care Bear shit about how they believe things to go, and that's part of their nature. They form committees. I mean, yeah, but you know, a woman is like you know the. They used to cherish the kid. When I was a kid, when I was very young, I look at my grandmother. That was a real woman because, you know, they took care of the chair of me while my parent was away working. You know, that's how it's supposed to work. But yeah. nowadays, you know, sometimes I go, but my grandma is dead nowadays. But, you know, when I was younger, I went there to, uh, you know, just to talk to them. And then they, they would make me dinner, you know. But today that shit will never happen because the feminists when you ask your girlfriend hey can you make me a dinner they will look at you like you're a devil like you you're from an alien you know what the fuck <laughs> i mean what you no way man so that's why i don't want no girlfriend man because you know what the fuck do you do to me you sit there like a bitch all you do is open your leg you know if i want to fuck somebody i might as well just pay for it and don't deal with your sorry ass because yeah. what? That's, it's even cheaper to buy an escort than having a girlfriend. See, that's the easier way because, like, guys like me, you, and, and even SC, we, we grew up in a time period where, you know, we had mothers, we had grandmothers, and, you know, yeah. who, who cared about children. They cared about, you know, you know what the fuck was going on, but they prioritized but now they, they don't care. Now they, they don't care. Now they, they make a kid, and then they, they put the kid in some, some place with a kid. But there is no parent there, you know. Yeah, the exactly. daddy and the mommy is not there. They put them, you know, in a in a child place. You know where the child go, where yeah, when everybody working, you know. Yeah, daycare. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was searching for the fucking word, but you know that's what they put there. You know, but who's who's raising the children there? It's daycare a stranger. The it's a stranger. Somebody that you don't know raising your ch your kid. That's not good, man. That's not why I don't. The, the TV so if I was well. a kid, if I yeah man, they brainwash people. But if I was a kid, a young man, I would never make kid no more because that's too crazy, man. You know, the kid's gonna turn out against you, and uh, no man, fuck that shit. Man. I'm it's lucky, man. Much. I'm older. I'm very lucky. I'm older, and I have a kid, man. But two yeah, days I'm jealous, crazy. man. I'm jealous. I mean, I, I almost made the the hump a long time ago, but bad shit just happened in my life. The like, universe just said no. But the thing about it is, it's just I knew that shit was never coming again because, goddamn, man, it's just um, I, I remember. I feel bad for Gen Z because they'll never have these experiences. I remember going to a drive through. I remember going to Sonics. I remember going on picnics. I remember like when when shit could actually like actual romance and shit, where shit just wasn't all cheesy and everything. Just yeah. Yeah, like times like that where you could just take a girl out and she wasn't like chewing your head off about every problem in the goddamn world. You were just enjoying yourself. That was it. I mean, it's just simple. Now it's all complicated. And, and nowadays, shit and, and nowadays it's like it's like the opposite. It's full of complication. They are fat. They are lazy. They don't even talk to you, and that's crazy because you know they are human too. You know they have a mouth, a nose, and two eyes and two ears. You know. If you don't talk to me, what the fuck do you expect me to pay for you? I won't pay for you because you don't talk to me. You know, that's another thing. You know, that's an ego tripping. That's some crazy yeah. shit that they got brainwashed. You know, and they, and they, thing, they, you know. they saying that all, all the men are evil, blah, 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 blah. Don't talk to these people. Yeah, right. And you know what happened next? They die alone at 60 years old. Yep. Right. A lot of modern women got a fucking ego, and that's why, like, oh, don't shame me. You know, I, men need to start shaming women more. Yeah. I mean, it isn't just the ugly bitches. It, even the attractive ones, too. I've had to bust them down multiple times, like, like yeah, shit. Man. It's just yeah. bad. I but, now they, but now they, you know, rejecting a, a sexy woman. I did that, too, in the past. But the thing is, today, the young kid, they see an attractive woman, they are blind. They are blind yeah. because all they want to do is to fuck them. And then the woman probably look at them like, oh, you're just some weirdo motherfucker that don't know how to talk to me or some kind of shit like that, you know? So, you know, it's not going to work. If um, men and women don't talk to each other, it's just never going to work.
Right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's that's the video that I want to play. The one that got banned already. Um, but you know what? You guys want to hear something funny? There's somebody that commented on uh, the video I uploaded of the not funny chick. Yeah, they said, you do, you have no right to post this. At the beginning of the show, I asked everyone to not record the open mic. I don't remember anybody saying that. Yeah, but, she basically, she's a she's a bitch, man. You know, these people, they wait on you to do something that they don't want. And then, oh, you know, you should have not do that. Well, you should have told me before. So now shut the head up and go away. That's what I would they, tell they them. Wanna, because they I really don't be care. Offended. They want to be offended and shit, man. I mean, these then show them you made a finger. That's what I will do. I, I, I don't care. He has no idea. These bitches I don't care either. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, like these bitches, but, they want to fucking be offended, and and it's sad. I mean, even the ones that are like seven, eight, maybe even ten. You got to destroy them too. Like, oh, I'm at least I'm not fat. I'm like, yeah, but you're a dumb bitch. I mean, it's just <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. I mean, I I actually. Feel, I feel bad for simps, PUAs, and women in their 20s because sometimes you think you guys think you're playing somebody and we're playing you and you don't even fucking know it. That's the sad part. We, we know the game. We've, we've lived long enough to know the fucking game. And so when I see I mean, the game in action, I shut it I down. I mean, we're older, right? I mean, we're older. So we know. I just look at young people and I, I just look at these people's face and I know you're blind or you're this or you're a bitch or you're a moron, you know? Yeah. It's easy to spot. Just look at these people. They, yeah. You look at these people and they look down. You know, why do you look down? You know, I'm up here, stupid. Right, but they know they're full of shit. By the they way, know they're yeah. Hold on, gentlemen. You guys are getting carried away. Ryan's been here for like. I know, gentlemen, no more, man. I used to be a gentleman, yeah, but just, now I'm not no more. You yeah, are I, was, I was just listening. I understand his frustration. Like I see it too, and. um you know, it is it is really bad. And I just want to say hey to everybody. I've been like extremely busy. I know, Ryan. Dealing, We've dealing missed with a lot, you. Dealing with a lot of shit. You okay? But you know, to <sighs> me, to me, it's not really frustrating no more because I already have a kid and I take care of the kid, so I'm busy. So, yeah. but what frustrates me is the young people that they won't they won't get this opportunity to actually make a life, make a family. That's right. what make me mad the most. Yeah, it's well, not it's about it's, me. I honestly, I don't care because I'm well, old. You know. Not their fault. Well, it's well, the not thing their is, fault, Bob. It's, it's not. not their fault. But here's the thing. Yeah, you know, I know, I know, I know. It's not their fault. But no, yeah. that's it's just an opinion. That's just make me mad. I know well, all of this. I'm, well, well it's, it's, not not it's not really an opinion because there's stuff that's happening it's in true. society that's backing yeah. it up. A lot of the yeah. stuff that you're saying is true, and the thing is like. All you could do, right, for your child is, like, you know, take care of and, like, you know, give your child the best advice and they kind of have to make their own decisions. But what's happening now is children are kind of put in a place where they're, you know, uh, in, a, in, in a double gauge barrel. They're just set and loaded and they're either used against the father or they're neglected right until a later date so when they project themselves in society and what's um especially for a woman right if she's never had the first man that's supposed to love a woman is a is a is her father and technically what tends to happen is it tends to be a boy and that boy will take advantage of her her perception of every other man that she has after that is going to affect how she feels about men and how she talks to she talks about men to the other girls around her influencing them and they have you know, they have a sister, they have a group thing. They have like, you the know, sisterhood. the sisterhood. So they're all yeah. going to think one way. So Bridget over here, Bridget, my girlfriend could be having an amazing experience. But as soon as something goes wrong, one of her quote unquote girlfriends are going to tell her otherwise. Oh, you don't need to be with him. He abusive, sis, this and that. Well, that doesn't help anybody. Right. But, in the, but, but in the same commentation, it gets to the point where no one holds anyone accountable and it spins a delusion. Yeah. So the thing is, like, as I said, like, you know, 35 years, like, you know, 50 years ago, men that were in the same age group, they, you know, men and women going to college, they would, you know, date, court each, you know, court, the man would court the woman, you know, they would get together, relationship, marriage, kids, by the time from age, like, 19, all the way to 26. Now, women want all this stuff in men. But these men can get it on later in life because I feel like a lot of women don't understand. You want a man that's around your age, so financially ahead, but you guys set it up where you're pushing the women first. So how can right. you have and all then, these how can you have these men of value that are so 
you know, driven and they make six figures and they're so masculine. When you're saying masculinity is toxic, when you're saying that, oh, women don't have enough opportunities, you know how you build communities? You push the men up. When you push the men up, they bring the women along with them and build communities. Because I can tell you this right now, and I've seen examples in my family, the women in my family that have money are by themselves. They have nothing, yeah. right? But and Ryan, they, yeah, man. they probably Hold have on. a child. They Hold on, guys. Have... Hold on, Ryan. What? We are currently living through a serious evolutionary mismatch due to all these stupid fucking affirmative action, diversity, inclusion, equity policy, feminism has pushed fem women into all these positions that we're literally evolutionarily mismatched. Yes. So we are not, as a society, having enough children. So that leads me to my question. Are you guys having... So what's your question? Yet? Bob's where, already done. Bob's already children? done. Bob's already what? done. What? Yeah, and for Bob's me, I'm... Done. yeah, you got a bun in the oven. I know. I'm saying Bob is done. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Bob's I'm... done. I'm talking about you, Ryan. You're young. Yeah, like I'm going. I'm obviously going to have kids, obviously. But the thing is, I'm I'm not going to have kids until you know me and Bridget go to with the ceremony and stuff and get our stuff figured out first. No problem with that. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is like um. Uh, when when it, it's not good. No, what I'm saying is when you it's now. Okay. Anyways, when you when you push, <laughs> tell it, just just tell, it, just tell what you have to say, man. I don't understand. Like the kids, the young kids right now, Gen Z, they are completely fucking incompetent, and they're not going to be able to take care of the old when it's the old's turn to be I, taken I, care I, of. Yep. And the replacement, and this is why, right, has not been good. So we're going to have more old people than young people that are able to even fucking take care. Yes, of Yes, we're going to have. Well, let me tell you something. Thing. My little kid, my kid will take care of me because I raised my kid the best way that I can. And I told them when I get older, all the things that I did in my life was for you. Yes. So all I'm asking you is when I get older and I get old and uh, are done at gray air and done and I can't work no more. I want you to come see me and help me. That's all I'm asking. And he said, he said to me, he said, hey, man, OK, I'll be there. That's all he's saying, and that's what I ever asked, you know? No, no, Bob, but here's the thing, though. You've ra that's Here's the thing. I know the mindset of your child, what they're going through. If our child, if our parent has been, you know, been behind us since day one, through all the bullshit that we've done, teaching us, giving us advice, right? Coming I did. From a new yes, here's the thing. We're, gra we're gradually going to want to take care of you as a parent. As soon as we make it, the first thing we think about it is our parents. Yes. Yeah, but it's not every kid, though. Some kids are selfish and some kids are going to drug. There, there are a lot of shit, man, that happened. Yes, there are some people that will take care of, of us. Yes, but it's not everybody. Even in my generation, when I was younger, there was kids that going into drug stuff and then you never see them again, you know? No, but that shit happen all the time. When a, kid, when a kid is raised in a space where they get their shit together and raised right, that's generally what they think of first. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what I'm so, saying, right? Because... Because the thing is, like, I never, my mom never, my mom said, you know, I took care of myself. You don't have to do anything for me. I'm like, no, when you're older, I got an apartment for you. I'm going to take care of you. You're not going to no damn nursing home. Right. That's what I fucking said. That's yeah, I don't understand. All these years of sacrifice just to make my life better. Send me to but the best advice, the me. best advice ever. Try to stay healthy and try to eat good, man. You know, apple and yeah. stuff like that and go to the gym. That's what I would tell you because when I was a kid, all my friends, they told me, oh, come with us. I have a party. I did I did go there. I did every party even once when I was a kid, man. I always yeah. work all my fucking life, man. But yeah. today, today I got one million in the bank, bro. You know, but all, if I look at all my friends, they have nothing today. They have nothing because what they did is waste all their years. And now they're mm -hmm. older like me and they have nothing. So your it's a choice. It's about choice, you know. Your twenties so, and your thirties are your most productive years, you know, as a as a man to get your shit together. You got about maybe 15, 20 years in, in the midst of all that to to do that. And for me, I mean, I'm just I just don't feel like laying a, a brick, finding a woman laying a brick and having a silver bullet come out and hit me and like like out of nowhere like a fucking werewolf or some shit. Due to the simple fact that there's that that respect that we're all talking about. Gen Z doesn't have that. For example, my At parents all. in the At 60s. All. There is no respect. There's my only parents a few. Are. 
My parents are old. Yeah. I take care of both of them, and I don't think about it. I once dated this girl many years ago. I'd always been taking care of my parents. She tried to shame me for that. I mean, she said some shit about my mom, and I damn near bitch slapped her. That's the kind of thing about it. And, and that's it's just a lack of fucking respect. I mean, nobody's asking people to like their parents, but goddamn, respect them. That's it. So you don't have to like them, but just give them, give them that. At least they've earned that. I mean, they're both six in the six. My dad's in the seventies for God's sake. About fucking, he's in the late seventies and shit. And, I, and that's what I do. Nobody had to tell me to take care of my parents. I do that because I want to. That's I mean, they took care of me. At least I can fucking do. Yeah, my mom's all sad and shit that I, you know, have kids or whatever. She's pissed off about that, but I may never have them, and that, and that's fine because I'm not. I ain't about to deal with these bitches. To any bitch that happens to watch this stream. You better, get, you better get the fucking line or get the fuck on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with this kind of shit. No man yeah, should. I understand. I understand, man. You know, it's it's understandable because uh, if I was in your situation, I would not do it either because uh, that's crazy. Nowadays, just crazy. Nowadays, you talk to somebody, you talk to a girl. I used to know a cop. He just talked to a girl. He got fired. He lost everything because that bitch. Went to the boss and tell the boss, you know, this guy tried to uh, to fuck me in the ass while I work, and it was not true. It was not true. And he got fucking, he got fucked, man. He lose all this shit. And then I see the guy years years later, and he, he just got out of jail. He live in the street. He used to be a policeman and make very good money. Now he's in the street and doing nothing. So I understand. It can happen. Shit happen. I understand. But the best thing to do is stay silent. Don't talk to these people. Wait, wait to these people to come to you. That's what I will do. And second of all, you need to go work and do your shit. Because if you make good money, well, at least you will have money for yourself, you know? And that's the thing. I mean, I stayed on my grind. I went to parties and everything, but I always stayed on my grind, man. I learned, I learned everything it, I fucking could. I, I was always itching to learn every fucking thing I could, even if, um, even if it was pointless and everything like that. And now these, these <laughs> kids, they make me laugh. Oh, I have no one to teach me. For God's sakes, we're on yeah. YouTube. You can learn any fucking thing you want. I wish I had access to that shit. I have to look in books and shit to learn. I go to the library and read these guys. Now they have the internet. You, anything you want to learn how to do, you look on the internet. And they're too lazy to even do that. Oh, that's hard work, dude. motherfucker. It's the easiest thing. Yeah, but I know. When I was younger, man, I used to ask a young – there was an older man living in the street. And I, I used to go there once in a while, and he knew my daddy. And, you know, I went there and said, you know – if you need some help, I'll be there, you know. So I went there a couple of times and he told me a couple of stuff, you know, how to do this, how to change my break. My daddy never told me how to change my break. This guy did. You know what I did? I just go out there and talk to people. But back in the yeah. day, it was okay to talk to people. Nowadays, if you talk to somebody and you don't know these people, there are some bad people out there and there are some crazy. So if you talk to the wrong people, well, maybe it's going to get ugly, you know. That that can happen, and uh, it's a risk. There is always a risk in anything that you do, even my job. I can't go out there tomorrow, and uh, maybe I will die tomorrow. You know, who knows, man? Nobody yeah. knows. Exactly. Uh, I mean, of, it's. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. No, one of the things Black Wolf was uh, talking about uh, before, like uh, you know, dealing with a lot of this shit, and I, I do, I do understand. Like that is like a huge thing, but like, you know, like men, men in general. Like they're taking a backseat even more in society and dropping, you know, not even dealing with people. Do you not? Do you know, like in North America? So this is Canada and America. There, for every in college, for every, for every one man, there's nine women going to college right now. Yeah. For yeah, but you know, man, back, nine, yeah, and it's, really down, see, it's worse. Yeah. Every every one man, there's thirteen women. For every yeah, one man, there's thirteen women. Going to university right now. Can't really blame them. University is one of the most dangerous places for a man to be. It's a hell of a lot easier to take a fucking trade. Personally, I wish I had taken a fucking trade. It would have been a little bit easier. To, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't mad about the paper, but it just would have been a little, a little bit easier to accomplish what um, I wanted to do. Yeah, but and the thing is, like, when, when you look at the statistics and stuff like that, you see all these, like, you know, college educated university coming out with, like, in humani humanities and shit like that. And, like, I tried, I tried to go to the mechanic and fix my car, right? And, you know, it was backed up because the lady on the phone was saying, oh, yeah, we have, like, three mechanics and, like, they're booked for, like, the next three months. 
see a lot of people a lot of people are a lot of people are going to shit that doesn't fucking matter so what i tell my you know i tell my friends or when you have you know when you have children do a fucking trade because these people these tradesmen are fucking charging out the ass because exactly. no, there's not enough people to do the work Ryan, I'm happy you said that shit because SC can tell you I have been bitching about that for a very long time, for years. You hear that, fellas? Like, he, he, just, he just got another confirmation. Get a goddamn trade, then you can charge whatever the fuck you want. I'm my own fucking boss. I've had people pay me hundreds of dollars for the most basic shit that you can fix off of $40 or, or a child's fucking allowance, for God's sake. That is how bad it is. Mm -hmm. God, be an entrepreneur. It you don't have to invent really anything. <laughs> It's really, you know, it's Fucking really sad. bad out there. A lot of people don't even know how to do even the simplest things, man. And if you even get a, like, the thing's hell. Like, for me, even programming right now, the, the rates and the prices I was charging nine years ago are almost two and a half times more. And people are willing to pay more. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's good It's good for those jobs, I man. I just tell everyone to become, up, like, entrepreneurs. My whole thing about this is, and women, especially those in your 20s, pay real close attention but to this. No man wants to go off and work every day. It's bad enough we have to go out and fight the world. Nobody wants to come home and have to break their foot off in your ass every day. It's too much. It's too goddamn much. Yes. Yeah. No amount of pussy on yeah. this world is worth that. Right. Oh. Just. I'm just oh, being for real with them. I'm not gonna no lie, lie. Christina. That. That's similar. That, that literally. <laughs> that's that's a similar thing from what how I. Yeah, I mean, it. camera oh with chops. I mean, suck. Says Paul, yeah, you know, every cops now they they have a camera on the on the uniform, and uh, the security guard they will have camera too in the future because uh, people, man, you don't know, man, they say something and then the next second they do something else, so you don't know. But when you have a camera and they lie to you, well, uh, they fuck themselves up because uh, it's all on video, so you just show the judge and the advocate and all the people there, and uh, they believe you because. All they do is lying to you, so okay. if they well, lie to you, it's, it's it's on them. You know, it's not my problem. It's on them. I don't think that. there's a law. I don't think there's a law against fucking bitches lying, though. No, there's not. Okay. Because okay. remember what happened to me. You know what she got? She got what was it? She got like a hundred hours of community service, and I swear she didn't even fucking do that because she just went back to work like nothing. Right. Ryan, to which this day, Ryan, I'm going to say you're a better person than me because I'd have put the bitch in the ER. Nobody better spit at me. I'm sorry. I draw the line like right there. I don't spit people. I don't want them spitting at me. That's not cool. Oh, wait. Are you talking? At Ryan? Ryan's had many, many run ins with crazy yeah, Yes. <laughs> I've had many run ins with Entitled Woman. I guess I'm just a magnet. Whatever, wait, Ryan, whatever happened to that bitch at Dunkin' Donut? Oh, yes. she got she got fired. And uh -huh. she got fi she got fired from that place, and then she had to write me an apology letter, and then she basically got a slap on the wrist. Like there was a day in court, and then they just kept pushing it back. That recently happened. Uh, the last court thing was like three three weeks ago, and roughly they said that like um you you can put up in a restraining order against her or give her community service. I'm like community service for how long? He's like oh fifty hours. I'm like I just dropped the whole thing because it doesn't even fucking matter. What? Like all it could do was fine her. Fine her for what? Money she doesn't have? Right. Like I'll make her work gonna... fifty fucking hours. <sighs> Man. Make her work fifty hours because as soon as she like breaks that fucking community service or parole, like she I mean, she's in the system. If you yeah. drop it, she's not in the system. I didn't drop it. I just said okay, that I just did the maximum whatever they, they said I could do. Because the thing is like on TV they make like the COVID thing, the six feet thing so extravagant. But we're all already in court. They're like, oh, let's give her 50 hours. She's fine. Slap her on the damn wrist. See, Bet Ryan, you the world's are reversed. I'd be under the jail. See, Ryan, this is why me and you need to switch lives. I mean, just give me about a day. You come back like, well, a couple of bitches are in a coma. You might uh -oh. not want to go downtown no, for a no, while, no. but no, it's no, been no. taken care of. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. No, one of the things uh, Christina said before, I want to talk about it. She said, so this is why my husband said he married me because I was the first girl. He didn't want to put a sock in my mouth when I talked to him. I could feel that so much with friggin' Bridget because like some girls I would just talk to, like my fucking brain just turns off. <laughs> it goes on, it goes on. It turns off, bro. Yeah. I, I can't. It doesn't matter if you're attractive. Like, I'm, no, I've seen too many attractive. Yeah. They're common. Attractive women are common. But, uh, yeah. you know, most of the time, uh, most 
if a woman is very attractive, she's gonna be boring. But yeah, it's not everyone. But most of them that are very attractive, they are going to be boring. But you know, that's a, that's a good thing in a way, and in other way, it's not a good thing. Yep, that is a big thing. Good mother, do you want to? Did you want to say something while I was talking? Because. Uh... I just I have that video to play that was already fucking removed from YouTube and Oh I'm sorry. Play it. We could we could play it. I'm sure, sorry. Man. Well yeah. play it, play it. Yeah, it's talking about the gender roles. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's let's yeah. play this thing. Well, the sorry. woman the woman role is to sit home and raise the fucking kid. Yep. I'll co sign yep. that. All right, here. This is kind of um, scary, though. Just warning you, gents. I want to ask you about another virus, far more threatening to humanity, and it's this uh, this this psychological pathogen that seems to have uh, spread through the population. Animosity between the genders. Um, Joking aside, uh, I have wondered in my darker moments whether this could represent a real threat to the future of humanity. Just how, uh, just how much animosity there is. Uh, could you speak to that for us, please? I'm about to launch into a monologue, and you are not going to disrupt me. And if you do, there will be like Alex in a clockwork orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've learned yeah. my lesson, sir. Listen, no, sir. Listen. You know, the spirals, the spirals, you're going to listen. You're gonna, your eyes are heavier and heavier. <laughs> I woke up and my bank account was empty. <laughs> hey, so seriously, I, I, I spot six, uh, six trends that I think has brought us to where we are. And yes, I fully, I fully agree with the anamnesis. Anamnesis in medicine means history, case history. I agree that there is animosity between the genders. I don't think any other word captures what's going on right now. I mean, we could say conflict. This, no, it's not. It's not. It's hatred. There's hatred. hatred. Absolute hatred. Mm -hmm. And I also don't think it's overgeneralization. Like you could say only 3% of, I don't think it's 3%. I think it's like something like 93%. It's bad. It's really bad out there. And it's bad in all age groups, which I think is a first. It's a first in human history. That's like a pandemic. Yeah. It spreads it's, across the whole yeah. population, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's a good metaphor. Actually, I have a video comparing uh, narcissism to a virus, but gender, this gender problem is is also a kind of virus. So Feminism. it affects all age groups. So you can find women age sixty five and forty five and twenty five saying exactly the same thing about men, and vice versa. Mm. So it's, and I think there are two, there are six reasons. Um, of course, I can never come up with two reasons because then I will not be able to monopolize the podcast. <laughs> but I came up with six reasons. <laughs> and they will be delivered in six stages until you are dead, dead, yeah. dead. Yeah, it's like a rocket, you know? Okay. Um, the first one I call, I coined a phrase to describe it. I call it invulner invulnerability signaling. I think the the... The two genders are signaling to each other, I don't need you, I'm self-sufficient, I'm autonomous, I have my goals and I'm focused on them, I don't have emotions, I'm uninvolved, it's like I'm, I'm not vulnerable. Yeah. So, while in the past, until, let's say, I could safely say 40 years ago, people were signaling to each other their vulnerabilities in order, for example, to have sex, mm. or to date, or to... Today, people are signaling to each other their invulnerability. Mm. It's a kind of F-off message, F-off yeah. signal, you know? Yes. The sec and this, is, this has become a, an ideology, an ossified ideology. Yes. Like, it's cool. It's cool to be yes. invulnerable, you know? Yes. You it's cool to be self-sufficient. You want to be a boss bitch or an alpha male player. Rigidly right. individualistic, highly narcissistic. And you want to be in a long-term relationship. <laughs> oh, my God. What well, else you claim? <laughs> second, and we'll come to that uh, shortly. The second trend, I think, is what um, another scholar called the gender vertigo. Gender vertigo is gender roles, classical gender roles, male, female, men, woman, have been abolished. They haven't been modi modified. 
That's another mistake in the literature. It's not the gender roles that have been modified. They've been absolutely abolished. Mm -hmm. There are no gender roles left. And sexual scripts had also been abolished. So today you don't know what it means to be a man, and you don't know what it means to be a man while you're dating. You don't even know what it means to be a man while you're having sex. They are not sexual scripts. They're not dating scripts. They're not gender roles. They're not guidelines. And this creates enormous confusions regarding what is appropriate and inappropriate behavior and what is a code of conduct. Today, the situation is this. Every relationship has to be negotiated from scratch. My mother and father, my grandmother and grandfather, when they had met and were on the way to becoming a couple, unfortunately for me, when they, when they were in this process, they were guided they were guided by codes, they were guided by gender roles. So they they needed to, to go the last mile. They didn't need to, to embark on a thousand mile way, uh, path, uh, march. They just needed to traverse the last mile. Today, if you start a new relationship, you have to negotiate everything. You have to negotiate what it is to be a man, what it is to be a woman, what is acceptable behavior, what's not acceptable behavior, what, what constitutes cheating, what constitutes, you know, Everything has to be negotiated from scratch in yeah. every single relationship. Now, yes. this is destructive. It creates friction. And it's, it's exhausting. Exhausting. Bloody exhausting. You took the word out of my mouth. Give it back to me. It's exhausting. And so it creates ultimately atomization. People, people give up. People are fucking tired. You know, they don't want to do this anymore. People, they stay give up. Home. people like this guy. <laughs> no, I'm talking about human beings. Oh. You funny guy, though. Give the word all of my boat. Sorry, Richard. You've been, you've been, <laughs> you've been exposed. Give me back my word. So they just give up. And there's a massive process of automation. In the year, 2000, the year 2016, wow. was year, when a majority of, of women and a majority of men didn't have a single contact with the other sex, with the exception of pizza delivery boy. What year was that? 2016. 2016 God. There was a first year that majority of women and majority of men in the West didn't have a single contact, single meaningful contact with a member of the opposite sex. So there's total atomization. Now the, the next trend is uh, what is called the stalled revolution. Stalled revolution is not my term, it's a clinical term. Stalled revolution means that women describe themselves more and more using traditional masculine terms. So now we have a situation where women use seven, every seven out of eight self-descriptive words are traditional masculine words. That's women. So we, we, have, we have created what I call unigender. There's a single masculine gender. Mm. Femininity has been abolished. There are men with males with penises and males with vaginas, but we are all masculine. What the it's fuck? Women what the fuck? Women have surpassed men in a variety of areas. Women are more educated than men. Men it's with vaginas. So women had become men. Aspire <laughs> to be men. Aspire to be actually narcissistic and psychopathic men. Hey, this guy is a clown. Convergence of the speed of the interspecies. There's a convergence. Excuse me. This man make me laugh. No, he's super funny. He's actually probably the, the most leading uh, psychology uh, doctor in the world. So It's make me laugh, but you're right. It's true. He is a, yeah. good, he is a great guy, but it makes me laugh. The word that That's he used, the, yeah, the, he's kind, the way that he used his word, make me laugh. Yeah, yeah, how he describes the situation just makes real funny. <laughs> well, but... but <laughs> Only because it's really fucking true. No, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> Between men and, and women. And the politically correct media, uh, mainstream media, adores this uniformity. I mean, embellishes it and promotes it. So today you have the idiotic, moronic phrase, pregnant people. The CNN, <laughs> I'm kidding you not, the CNN and the New York Times no longer use the word pregnant women. It's pregnant people. It's like saying people with testicles. 
You know, not men, God forbid. People with testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant, pregnant people like we are all people we are not men we are not women right. we are people and some of us mysteriously get pregnant so. <laughs> <laughs> we are people. This is oh, that's a crazy this man you're funny eliminating this beautiful difference between the genders the source the engine of attraction the engine of sex sexuality the engine of fecundity and fertility and procreation and recreation Eliminating this had made us so much poorer, so much poorer. We are utterly impoverished, utterly impoverished. Um, if you have something to say, you have my permission to say it from time to time. Just don't, over, oh, just don't overdo it, please. <laughs> I'll be for sure. The point you made earlier about gender roles uh, being abolished, I just want to support that by saying the gender roles are now illegal. They're, they're effectively criminalized. Like, so of course they're abolished. They're not modified. You're 100% right. If you try to suggest a gender role for a man or a woman, as a man or a woman, you're wrong. You could be trans, you can be gay, but if you suggest a man or a woman, if you suggest anybody has a gender-based role, it's essentially a thought crime. It's a thought. So absolutely, it's abolished. I, I, I yeah, it's abolished. abolished. The concept of gender has been abolished. Mm. Uh, gradually, the concept of sex is abolished via sex fluidity. So we have sexual fluidity. Transgender. You mentioned you mentioned transgender. And tra let's let's just uh, point out that Putin just said sexual flu fluidity was a fucking crime against humanity. So just, just <laughs> put that there. Crazy. We have that now. Hey guys, it's not that I don't like you, but I have to go. I have things to do today. All right, Bob. It was good talking See to ya, you. Yeah, folks. See ya. See you later, Bob. Bye bye. <laughs> people they do have their innate experience of not belonging to the biological sex and there's no no reason for them not to act on this innate feeling and, and change sex and that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about gender fluidity and sex fluidity as an ideology mm. negating the biological sex and the social cultural gender as patriarchal evil malevolent constructs intended to enslave women and so on and so forth i it's the ideological crust above all these changes that renders us stultified and, and ultimately nullified probably yeah. so this is fluidity the the next uh, trend i think is what i call defiant agency so this there's big there's big brouhaha about being agentic you know you need to you need to reacquire agency you need to be self-efficacious and of course that's healthy agency and self-efficacy are healthy they're markers of mental health but they had been imbued with aggression and they went from assertiveness to defiance reckless defiance so now people show display their agency or their self-efficacy by trampling on other people by acting recklessly by being violent and aggressive by becoming abusive this is a new this is a new agentic men and women you know oh sorry people these are the new agentic people men and women they will delete this video horrible i'm using i mean it became like the n-word you know yes. men, women, like the n-word yes. yes. you're not supposed to say the n-word um so benign this is by the way because there's always been there's always been there's always been a healthy tension uh, between men and women there's always been a, a discourse between genders and these were benign discourses um, at least let's say in the last 100 years 150 years they, they were benign discourses. Uh, prior to that some of the discourses were not so benign <laughs> women were really mistreated and enslaved and so there's no question about this but in the last 150 years it's no longer true yeah all intergender discourse has been essentially benign and constructive how do I know? Women are far more liberated and emancipated. Mm -hmm. Had the discourse been malevolent and malignant, mm -hmm. women would not have been where they are today. Right. So it, see, it seems that men had participated in the discourse in good faith. Yep. Yes. Judging and by the outcomes, yep. the discourse had been a good faith discourse. Yeah. And had, it, had, had it not been, we wouldn't be where we are today. I yes, women, women would not be where they are today. Yeah, right. sorry, women, women would be. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, uh, women. No, no, people would not be. People, pregnant people, people would never be where they are today. <laughs> pregnant people would never be where they are today. So the intergender dialogue had been corrupted and contaminated, became malignant, owing to this defiance in lieu of agency. And finally, yes, there is such a thing. Finally, even in my monologues, they come to an end. <laughs> You'll have to carry me on a stretcher before I finish. No have way. to carry the audience on some stretches. <laughs> Bring on the stretches. Yes. So the last thing I want to I want to point to, and I really am curious to hear your point of view. Seriously, mm. I, I mean it. I mean, mm. because I've seen some of your videos, and there mm. were there were great insights there. So I'm very, oh, I'm thank very. You. Um, that was meant as an insult. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the last uh, trend I think is what I call the enshrined double standard. Now, there's been always a double standard. Hmm. Women who behave um, in a certain way sexually were sluts. Men who behave the same way were studs. We all know this. This yeah. is the double standard. But what happened is an amazing thing. Women had adopted the male double standard. Yeah. Women women try to conform to male stereotypes of sexually emancipated women. Yeah. If you ask chauvinistic males, what do you think about sexually emancipated women? They will say, oh, they're sluts. Mm. And now there's slight slut pride. Like women are proud to be sluts, but mm -hmm. they don't realize that to be a slut is to conform to the most extreme chauvinistic male stereotype. If you're proud to be a slut, mm. you are a chauvinistic man, chauvinistic man's wettest dream. Yes. You conform to his worldview. You so claims of empowerment, women claim to be empowered. Mm. But there are multiple studies, for example, by Lisa Wade, by Kerry Cohen, that demonstrate that the the women who claim to be empowered the most, mm. they are the women who had adopted and internalized and interjected the double standard. Yeah. For example, these, these women told the, told the researchers, um, I've had like 40 sexual partners, mm. but don't tell anyone because it's shameful, right. you know? Yeah. So they are emancipated, they're liberated, they are empowered mm. under the carpet, secretly, surreptitiously. Yes. Why? Yes. Because men will think badly of them. Yes. They had the Emmanuel, are you awake? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out too. I messaged him. I know. I was gonna say if if he is really sleeping, I'm he's not gonna be able I'm to here. read that. Oh, you're here? Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm, listen. I love what the, these guys are talking about. It's just it's so interesting and so I guess direct. Yeah. Know? Well, never... this was removed, Emmanuel. This was removed a couple of days ago. The stupid fucking crazy bitches that crawl around these guys' channels can't fucking reported it and got it removed. Yeah. And they're white men, Emmanuel. See what white men have to deal with? They get fucking canceled for talking about things that should be talked about. Yeah. See, if people just started kicking them in the beaver, would never have these problems. Just go I straight know. to the oh. hair. It's all like you know that Dave Chappelle thing is going really strong. We need more Dave Chappelle's, definitely. Yeah, well, the Dave, that man. the Dave Chappelle's need to be supporting these dudes because mm -hmm. <laughs> these he just, dudes fucking. He just rented out like the entire stadium in like Toronto, and people were like, "It's like sold out." Like I bought tickets myself; it's sold out. Well, good. Damn. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't cancel him. You can't cancel him. Yeah. Adopted the male, the male double standard, duality, the self denial, the self deception, deception. I think it's driving the genders apart, right? Because women are conforming to specific male stereotypes, and the majority of men find this very off putting mm. because the majority of men are not chauvinistic, psychopathic, narcissistic men, yeah. And women are trying to conform to the stereotypes mm. and to the expectations. Mm. of chauvinistic psychopathic narcissistic men so mm. the majority of men are beginning to find women disgusting mm -hmm. repulsive and off putting mm -hmm. yep yep i mean I never means, you guys talk I never about it all the time i mean women but not words so, <laughs> hey, hey i had no problem with them they can be sluts so 
No problem. There is, there That's is not a my slot. Between, between the the genders because women are acting acting the part that actually the vast majority of men don't want them to act, right. mm -hmm. and men are acting the part that now women are rejecting because it doesn't sit well with the uh, alpha male narcissistic chauvinistic uh, psychopathic uh, kind of guy, you know, the bad yeah. guy. Yeah. So women because they are rejecting themselves because when you internalize as a woman when you internalize this point of view you actually you you actually interject the double standard when you say i'm a slut supposedly it's proud but actually deep inside you feel shame mm -hmm. so this creates self-harming and self-trashing behaviors mm -hmm. the, the incidence of sexual self-trashing mm -hmm. and other forms of self-harming among women is much much higher than 40 or 30 or 20 years ago for example the incidence of depression among teenage women under the age of 18 and then later in later studies under the age of 25 the incidence of depre depression is up hold your breath up 500 percent jesus christ holy 500 holy fuck. teenage women whoa are, are up more than 350 percent these are studies by Twenge and Campbell, and these are studies that terminated in 2008 and 2018. Wow. So these are all three, four-year-old studies, the newest mm. ones. I think the situation is much, much worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is that? It's long before COVID. Yeah. The influence of social media, of course, but also, I think, the fact that women had internalized male chauvinistic, psychopathic, narcissistic stereotype, and they feel bad with it. They... They don't feel, they feel ego dystonic. They feel ashamed. They feel guilty. Mm -hmm. They act this way because they're mm -hmm. expected to act this way because they are empowered. Yeah. But deep inside, it sucks. Yes. They feel bad. They feel, they feel they are not themselves. They feel they are acting. It's a part. Yes. See, and that's exactly what feminism has done to these women. That, that feminism ideology has made these women like this, and it fucking destroys their fucking lives. Yes. And, and I think that's self-harming and self-trashing. And anyone, anyone who, who has had sex or a date with a young woman lately would confirm that. It's highly politically incorrect to say this, but it's very true. It is what it is. And I've, I've had the... Uh... Of the few, the few girls I have dated in the last couple of years, uh, two of the three admitted exactly what you said to me over time, slowly and in their own words, but that they felt like they were compelled to have sex. They just felt tremendous cultural pressure to be promiscuous and to relate that promiscuity to strength. It, it, it was so uh, stereotypical. One girl even showed me a book that she bought that was written. That was it was a, written in a foreign language. Um, uh, only good girls cry and it was to teach you how to be a bad girl and she's like i bought this book because my friends recommended the book and this and i'm like you know you don't have to do that what i would say um is if i was when i was 28 i wanted a high notch count i was quite psychopathic i was practically homeless i was doing drugs i was a pretty naughty boy this would be my wonderland this version of Feminism. These girls say it's feminism. And I'm like, well, I studied feminism at university. It doesn't look like feminism to me. This is Wonderland. You take a girl on one date, she will have sex with you that night. Not just sex. I know this is horrible. It's graphic. Some people will be triggered, whatever. They will do everything. They will There's do anything, anything with you now. Absolutely. But a girl, previously, I would have had to have been with her for a year before she'd yep. even talk about it. First date or second date. Yep. You're, you're right. You, you were the one who raised the, the, the specter that this may be a form of self-harming in our yes. correspondence. You wrote this yes. to me. Yes. yes. I, I also mentioned it in my videos. Yes, absolutely. I fully agree. It's a form of self-trashing and self-harming, which is self-punishment for not being you, for succumbing, for giving in, for, for falsifying yourself. You know, I'm not saying that all women are Madonnas or all women are whores. Or I'm not, I don't, it's, not, it's not what I'm saying. It's what that's I'm, such, what that's I'm such saying. such a cheap repast. It's such a cheap repast. Everybody says, oh, you just have a Madonna or complex. Okay, so don't think about what's being yeah, said. No, that's not what I'm saying. Away. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually the, the greatest feminist. I'm saying women should free themselves of yeah. the male gaze. Hmm. The male gaze. What hmm. they did instead 
they adopted the gaze of the psychopathic narcissistic male rather than the gaze of the majority of us or majority of you who are not psychopathic and narcissistic <laughs> and so on. Yes. So they've alienated something like 90% of the male population. Yes. And they are stuck no. with this 10%. But so what so what you're saying there, just to back that, uh, the guys in the manosphere, the red pill community, the pickup community, they say with they do these YouTube videos and they keep reporting that on Tinder, the women are only getting with eight to ten percent of the men that are there. So that it, it, like we have this, we have hard data that backs this. There's actual statistical data that suggest roughly, you know, eight to ten percent of the men and the rest ignored. And those eight to ten percent of men need to have certain signals. They need to be in a certain category and they, they have a high degree of mate selection. And what they do with that is they don't choose to be monogamous. They choose to mate with multiple women. So why would they choose to be monogamous? Monog monogamy is a cost. Yes. Why would you pay anything for something you get free? Uh, it's not nice to say, but women were trading sex. Women were trading sex for stability, longevity of relationships, and child rearing. That was a deal. And now they're giving it free. Yes. They're giving it free. <laughs> Fucking Emmanuel. Why didn't you put that in the main chat? Manuel said, he just said that women have ditched good men for Pookie and Ray Ray. <laughs> Yeah, don't forget, forget, don't forget, forget Tyrone. Don't forget Chad and Tyrone. <laughs> Tyrone. <laughs> it's insane on their part. It really insane. is. It's it's totally self-destructive. <laughs> yeah. And they're calling it self-empowerment. And I'm like, this is the most de disempowering thing you can do. And you'll look like, if I was that same guy who just wanted to be as promiscuous as possible, yeah. it's never been easier. I don't even have to leave. The, I don't have to go to a bar. I'll pull out an app and I'll find girls within a five-mile radius. And it's, it's straight, if you don't approach them sexually straight away and say, you're really fit and I like your boot, they, they have a problem. They're like, what's yes. wrong with you? Like, why are you not, you should be coming on to me sexually immediately. And if you yes. don't, oh, you're a simp, you're a beater. I'm not, I'm not interested. It's, um, as you say, totally self-destructive. I watched the video. This again will really annoy people, but I watched the video of yours where you said, well, Think about the value of what you're doing. Like, if we perform a specific sex act, and that's between me and you, there's a difference if we've only done it with each other. If you've done it with three other people, that's different. If you've done it with 30 other people, 300 other people, we are reducing the value of what we're doing. Even as a man, if you know that I've done this for 300 other women, you're not going to value, you, you're going to feel a certain way. I know that men and women are different, but you are going to feel a certain way about that because it makes it less special. Then I don't have as much to offer. What I offer is not so special as pedestrian. There's 20 women on my street who've experienced what you just experienced. Anything that is commodified yeah. is devalued. Anything that is commodified is devalued. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think I think another another issue is that women feel pressured into into engaging in sex acts, which in the past used to be reserved for intimate partners. Yeah. I mean, one night stands have been around since since biblical times, I assume. Mm -hmm. But still, until very recently, women and men had maintained a kind of inventory. These mm -hmm. acts I'm doing with strangers, and these acts I reserve for intimate partners. I never yes. kiss with strangers. I never lick strangers certain parts of anatomy. I mean, <laughs> there are some things I never do with a stranger. And I do them only with intimate partners so that my intimate partner can feel special. Yeah. And now this is gone. Yeah. The specialness is gone. The mystery, the, I mean, it's so sad. It's especially sad for people my age. Yeah. Because I have, I, I had witnessed and experienced it before. Yeah. And now it's gone. Now it's gone, you know? I, I'm, I'm old enough to have seen the cost. Uh, because, you know, when I was dating, when I was 18, that's 1996. And I would say the, the dating scene has changed tremendously. Like, attitudes to men and women... As a man now, though I can have access to, to a woman's body and to her sexually, I won't get close to her mind because I am the enemy. And I am simply a cut-out avatar of an evil man. And it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter. There's zero trust. It can take years to get any degree of trust now because it's just, like you said, it's, it's ideological. And it's like uh, 
Gad Saab um, comes up with the idea of these ideological infections that function like parasites, gets into the mind like a virus, yes. and you can't fight it. There's um, the, you you mentioned in one of the six uh, the six things that, that push the genders apart. You said something about the communication of become hostile, become malignant, the assumptions. Yeah, the, the, the dialogue, the intergender dialogue. The intergender yeah. dialogue. You can't dialogue. You no. can only dialogue as their as their cut out avatar of a male, and everything outside of that, well, you'll just get like a bewildered look, like what 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 is this talking dildo? Like what's he trying to talk? To my yeah, it's it's on the surface. Is everything is kept on the surface, and this this harks back to the first harks back to the first trend: invulnerability signaling. Yes. If you let anyone dip in, dip inside, yes. they're going to see your vulnerabilities. Mm. And you don't want them to see your vulnerabilities because they can hurt you, and they're gonna hurt you. Mm. It's for sure they're gonna hurt you. I mean, that's a, that's a given. A so given. you're not gonna let them hurt you. You're not gonna let them in. Mm. Well, except in one sense. So, so it's it's a best situation. Now, there's a there's a new there are new trends developing which are not captured by the ministry, or actually wrongly captured by the ministry. For example, um, starting a few years ago, majority of women had renounced men psychologically in the sense that they now are actually looking for what the manosphere called beta. Majority of women since 2018 in studies and so on and so forth are actually selecting beta males to, to use the manosphere's uh, phraseology. Okay. Using beta males or choosing beta selecting beta males even for one night stands because women had adopted narcissistic and psychopathic um, male role models and so now they want to feel superior they want to feel in control so we have studies quite a few I, I have a bibliography on my on my uh, various YouTube uh, videos we have recent studies that show that women actually there's been a shift in preference for the first time in human history there's been a shift of preference from alpha successful winners to beta losers Women now are seeking better losers to feel superior and good and so on. It's pretty shocking. And of course, the Manosphere guys are denying this, but they're no, not they're, updated. They're, they're simply not updated. No, they stick, they stick with that rigid ideology yeah. of um, hypergamy. Yeah. She's always going to choose an alpha over you. That's, 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 no longer, that's no longer true, actually. I can see more examples women, of girls not doing that. Professional women yeah. who are self-sufficient economically and so on, they actually seek better males. That they can kind of home yeah control at home and okay i know what he's saying now yeah. you know, those essentially nice so, no, what they're what they're both saying is kind is right though mm -hmm. what, what they're both saying is kind of right because like what no, no this is the data uh this is all based on data so. yes i know but what sam what sam is trying to say is basically the women look for easier men that they can control because mm -hmm. they don't really have the options of getting the men that that they want right so uh, it's like in their in their terms they're quote unquote settling or going for that guy because they know they can walk all over him and get what they want yeah i mean they're afraid yeah. of people like it's, me busting their foot up in their asses i know i know i mean it's just terrible all i want to do is put my foot up their ass but they just want to go off and control other guys i mean i want to control them i want to fucking oppress them i mean that's yeah. see that's the kind of the issue with this shit and, and sorry to interrupt everything but i have to fucking say this 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 is part of the fucking problem like people are not shaming others when they do a socially unacceptable shit like i've been no, to no, russia women are being shamed the men get shamed because if i were if i were in, in a career man and i'm stronger and i go for a woman that is let's say 10 years younger than me and let's say i'm in my 30s it's predatory i know so i'm saying it's women aren't stupid. being shamed enough what's yeah. funny as hell to anyone watching this right now go to japan go to russia you're not going to see the bunch of fat bitches because then they're, they're like oh hell no that's the thing they know they are on code here mm -hmm. when you blur the lines with the genders you end up with degenerate, stupid fucks, which is the majority, unfortunately, of what we have to deal with. And then no one wants to bait anymore. Who the fuck wants to go out and fight the world and come home and fight a dumb bitch? Who in the hell wants to walk up to someone knowing that nine times out of ten they hate you and everything you stand for? Nobody likes that kind of shit. And then so you get these women who get off empowered and everything. They get up and they make all this money. They're alone, live with their fucking cats, drinking wine every other fucking day until they croak or 
keel over. I mean, nobody cares. No, no one one cares. give a fuck about those bitches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one cares about the amount of money they make. Like, if a woman tries to live as a man, you're going to find yourself very unhappy. No, she can do it. Life. She can do it, but just for a very short fucking time. Very short time. Yeah. Even then, she cannot unhappy. consistently fucking do that shit. Because the consequences are different for men and women. It's different. Because we're different. Uh, uh, you know, you said something earlier, um, Ryan, about how these women are going for the beta males because, you know, they can't get with the alpha. I think what they're saying is a bit worse than that. It's that they've, you know, the brainwashing, the, the shifting of, the, I guess, mentally, like, of the genders has gone so far that they actually actively pursue beta males. So basically, yeah, because, instead of being the gatherer, they're becoming the hunter. They're becoming the predator. Very funny. Right, but the thing is, is that at the end of the day, there's there's still that fundamental thing that they're women. Yeah. So they'll go for the for the beta male, um, you know, get with him, all this stuff. Go for him because they're easier to control, but they still won't be happy <laughs> because yep. deep down inside, consciously, there's that thing that says, "No, I need to be with," you know. Uh, you know, follow the rules of you know gender dynamics oh, that oh, were previously established. S S S S uh, S C E S C E. He was kind of trying to correct correct you, and like yeah, that see that what he's talking about. That's good for the environment. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, the poor <laughs> fucking yeah. feminists that die <laughs> is great for the social environment. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the crazy thing. I mean, when I see women try to live as man. Like, live as a man, I, I fucking laugh at him. It's the most laughable thing in the world. Maybe it's just due to my own personality, but just having women get up in people's face. I mean, nobody's impressed by it. Nobody really but, cares. But he he's, he's trying to point out something very specific, which is it's not that the women are trying to be men. It's that the women are being the most... Uh, like, the men you guys don't even fucking like. The, the men that you guys would sort out, they they took that on the the most yeah. toxic form of masculinity. Yeah, they took yeah. the worst aspects of of masculinity, yeah. and then the worst aspects of femininity, and put them together and called themselves empowered. Yeah. Right. They went from being a shitty female. The they went from being a shitty female to a shitty dude. And the, the funny part about it is, yeah. the alpha dudes that these bitches protect. A lot of us, Ryan included, could kick these guys' asses. You protect these motherfuckers. I've seen it. I've seen women protect some of the most psychotic people I have ever fucking known. And they yeah. act like the alphas can beat us up. When I walk down the street and these alphas pop up, they cross the goddamn street. It happens every fucking time. And some of these guys are bigger than me. They know. And that's the dumb part about it. They know who they can and can't fuck with, and they and, and and they become they become the bitch. So when a woman calls a man an alpha, they might as well be calling you a bitch because that's what you are. You fight for them like a dog. You will die like a dog, and they they'll be on about their very fucking me on their merry way. They they got backup plan, backup guy oh, yeah. A B, and all these other guys that they'll bring with. they'll bring uh, uh, the backup guy to your funeral as their yeah. date. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you play it real quick. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit play on this. Jim just man, advertising fucking works, man. He just advertised coffee in the chat, and I'm gonna go make one. So I'm gonna hit. Play. <laughs> That's why I fucking hate commercials. Psychopathic male role role models, mm. rather than good, healthy, constructive male role models. I don't know why should, they should seek male role models at all, but they chose the wrong ones, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very sad, uh, a very sad scene. What do very you sad. See? I was just going to ask you though, if there was a solution, what do you think the solution would look like? I think um, same-sex relationships are going to explode because. A solution that I would enjoy, Sam. Right, me too. <laughs> why would you? Why would you go for a poor for a poor imitation if you can have the origin? So I don't want I don't want a woman who's a who's a crap version of a man. I may as well just get a real man. Yeah, go get a real man. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Same with women, by the way. 
Same with women. I mean, why would you go for an effeminate, uh, pseudo, pseudo feminine man? I mean, just yeah. go for a, for a woman. So I think there will be absolutely an explosion. Wait a minute. Can you stop it for one so second? Relationships and sexuality. Yeah. I think we've all noticed, but like the women that have like the fucking like worst choices with men and like the worst experience with men all of a sudden know what a real man is. I don't fucking understand that. They don't. They don't. They don't. <laughs> don't listen to them, Ryan. They're lying. They can't be a real woman, so they're trying to dictate what a real man is. I mean, see, Ryan, it's not enough for me to kick their ass. They need their ass to kick. You need to kick their ass. They need a working man's ass kicking. I mean, just kick the shit out of them because it's just it's the only <laughs> way they're going to fucking learn. Oh, and man, the just, me, and me, the me, me and Bridget talked about this earlier. Um, when it comes, you know, you know, some like, because, like, um, I, I, I know the, we talked about this earlier. Like, you know, like sometimes the wife just needs a good disciplining and she just looked at me sideways like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, when you talk, when you're, when, you know, when you're being fucking annoying, you need to be put in your place. What do you want me to do to you? She's like, okay, never mind. Because it's the fucking truth. Because if you just let them, you know, if you just let, if there's no order in the household, what happens? Everything falls apart. Yeah, and the thing about it, about it is, women can have their moments or whatever, but there's just some lines that you do not cross with people. And just like children, they know who they can and can't play it with. For me, yeah. I'm pretty laid back. I don't get mad unless someone is actively doing some shit. But the way I see it, if women want to be with these psychotic dudes, I say <laughs> kick their ass and kick these psychotic guys' asses. That's what they ought to do. Mm -hmm. Because these men... They would have regularly that the, the men they call alphas would have regularly gotten their asses kicked in any other kind of environment. They promoted the lowest of the low uh, into in the leadership positions. And nobody better tell me about Debo down the street. You see, Debo in Friday after next, he avoided Big Worm. Big Worm was a fat dude because he knew Big Worm would smoke his ass. He knew that. They knew who they couldn't do it with. And so when you get these stupid fucking so insubordinate little fuckers, they don't go up in other groups of men and do this because they know they'll be re meeting an early fucking funeral. And so women actually propelled weakness like through them and men's forgiveness and leading to a generation of pussified dudes who some of which call themselves PUA. They might as well be gay because that's where it's let headed towards. Sorry, I that 100 percent agree with that. Hmm. They're so worried about what everybody do with their dicks and shit, and then they're gonna tell you got you got lame ass corny PUA dudes telling you, let me tell you how to get a girl, and you got women walking around going, let me tell you how to be a real man. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. This is the dumbest thing in the world. It's like the, it's like women have become Mickey Mouse. I swear it's like they got a Mickey Mouse some shit every day, just like like many and Mickey Mouse. That's what they are. You know the Jerry rig shit. They Jerry rig relationships. They Jerry rig life. And I hope I hope what I said does piss women off in the comments section. Don't worry. After somebody does whooping your ass, they'll kick Tyrone's ass too. It doesn't even matter. Chad, Tyrone, all of them, they all need their ass kicked. And someone's yeah, gonna women, do it. Women need to find. Women need to sort out, you know, femininity first. They need to find, <laughs> rediscover their femininity before they can even have any, uh, 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 you know, be allowed to even attempt to define what a real man is. Because how do you define what a real man is when you yourself don't even know what a real woman is? You know, it, it, it's it's ridiculous. It, it kind of reminds me of that clip of Jordan Peterson talking about how people have this thing where, um, I'm going to paraphrase obviously, where they essentially try to make, you know, take certain stances on uh, uh, issues that are outside of their control. Uh, in order to, like, you know, sort of like give themselves some sort of sense of purpose when they actually should be focusing on their own problems and sorting that out and having some sort of skill, gaining some sort of ability, you know, you know competence with regards to solving problems before they go and, and fix the rest of the world. And yeah, I think women need to look inwards. They need to look into femininity because there's certainly a, a crisis there. The fact that that 500% increase in depression... <clears throat> I'm not taking the word of people who have had a 500% increase in depression. Seriously, I'm sorry. I'm not. Not to you mention need to sort you, that out first. Not to mention you can't take the word of anybody that has a high notch count. I mean, having a high notch count, at least when I was growing up, 
wasn't something you bragged about, even for dudes. It was something you bragged about maybe among like your close friends and everything. But yeah. being a PUA wasn't something – people side-eyed that shit really quickly. It's, it wasn't something to be really – really glorify women think it's glorifying and empowering to be a fucking slut or some shit and nobody 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 wants to marry a hoe i mean it's just kind of how it is nobody wants to you know wipe up a fucking like garden tool or anything like that and it's just sex has been rendered to nothing more than a mere handshake and, yeah. and anybody that in this like anyone on on all the internet who tells you getting sex is like difficult no it's not it's easier than it has ever been before. Maybe when yeah. I was growing up, it was a little difficult. You actually had to have charisma. Forty dollar for sex? Forty dollar? Like, <laughs> I saw a video of this black girl on the street gonna, saying that shit. I'm gonna have to police your words for a minute because you keep saying women with the high body count. Those are sluts. Those aren't women. Uh oh. Hey, well, hey, they can be sluts all they want. I don't mm -mm. care. I just. Just don't want to be with one. That's it. Wow, being policed into actually stating the truth instead of <laughs> hey, you can't do that. You're hurting the you're hurting the the people with, with vaginas. You're hurting them. The people with just, vaginas. That's what who they are. Right. I'm just vaginas. upset. I'm not making ad revenue from it. Free pussy. Free pussy. All oh, free pussy over there. Free pussy. Yeah. Just, just sell it. Yeah. Auction wow. pussy. You just said something very interesting, um, Black Wolf, about the fact that, ironically, in the age of you know, incels. This is the this is the one time they've actually had it the easiest to get women. Seriously. So, in other words, you're saying the incels the incels of today would have absolutely no chance a hundred years ago. Oh hell no, Heck, not at probably, all. Now be killed. Yeah, back then they didn't stand a chance at all. Now, much as I hate to admit this, they actually have a better chance than like any alpha chat or even me. Because all they have to do is just go over there. I mean, the women are already socially fucking awkward. All they have to do is just go there and be their creepy, perverted selves and fuck, you know, instant, instant pussy. Yeah. I mean, hell. It's, it's, actually, you know? it's actually pretty, like, sad. Like, my friend just recently broke up with his girlfriend. He spends a lot of money on her. He spends about, like, half his pay on her. He makes a lot of money. He spends, like, half his pay on her all the damn time, never gets sex, gets, you know, yelled at. All this other shit abused. I've been telling him to leave that relationship for about three months. He decided to leave, and you know we went out, went out for a drink, like, and you know now he, I told him, you know, why don't you just go get like an escort or something? Now he's been like with the, like a couple escorts every other week, spending about twenty five percent of what he spent on his girl and getting sex at the end of the night with multiple yeah. girls. And super happy, I'm sure. A lot <laughs> oh, yeah, happier. and hella oh, more yeah. productive and more productive. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that semen retention shit. Once you get that sex out of the way, I mean, the thing about hedonism, I don't know how fuck it works for women, but I know how it works for men. Like when when it comes to us, like you got to get that out of your system. Like it yeah. becomes like a damn addiction. You know, pussy's nice and everything, but like with anything, everything in fucking moderation. I had friends growing up. Man, these guys would be screwing everything. Didn't matter whether it was like a five, a six, a nine, or a ten. I, I just had friends like that. They were just fucking with everything they get a hold of. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, damn, man, you, you got like a fucking stopping point or something? No, they didn't care. They were just addicted to the fucking V, man. I mean, it was so bad that they spend ninety percent of their fucking you know money on like like on the money that they gain on it. And the only dudes. That um, and this is where PUH bullshit originates from. It actually originated from street dudes, because street dudes don't pay for pussy. They don't at all. Pussy actually pays them. It's usually the beta cuck that ends up paying ninety percent of their fucking money, and that's why game is so coveted by those dudes because it originated from you know, a lot of street dudes, and that's it's game was is manipulation, but it was also made up to make up for a lack of whatever someone had. Oh, you lack charisma? Just get game. And that's what it was all about. And the meanwhile, people who were naturally charismatic, they didn't have to do that. Hell, I didn't have to do that. The thing about it is now the playing field has changed so fucking much, man. I feel like a goddamn alien. I can never go back to a fucking club and I, I just feel like old man or some shit being there. There'd be no fucking point. The thing about it is, but at the same fucking time. Just sexy. I was gonna say I often think that we're not really designed for this world. <laughs> That's why we should like destroy it and burn it down. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about my the situation when I recommended the escort to him, it wasn't really the sex he wanted. It was the girlfriend experience, and he got it for like 
twenty five percent of the the money, amount of money he was investing in his girl. And this this girl was getting a lot. She was getting Chanel handbags. She got a fucking BMW. Like she got a lot off of him, right? Man. So, I'm I'm happy that's, for him. But that's, that's a simple. I, that, but the thing is, a lot of women don't realize men can just do that. And and that's yeah. oh, it's because of the patriarchy. Yeah, the patriarchy built you fucking OnlyFans, and you throwing your you throwing yeah. your feet and your fucking pussy out there for money. Why do you think OnlyFans is legal but prostitution isn't? You know, this is this is no, no, this is it. Like they they realize that they realize that once prostitution is legalized, what that does is that it opens the, the market to all these other participants and essentially crushes the prices, brings yep. them down. Right. And then what that means is that if you want to be paid more, you'd actually have to bring something of value. You'd have to you'd have to offer something more you know than yeah just, you would than sex. Uh, yeah. um here in it's Texas, actual... it's yeah. uh, september they they upgraded a solicitation of prostitution from a misdemeanor to a fucking felony i actually know somebody whose husband just got caught doing that oh, they did oh. like a sting fucking opera no like th this is a family that i love <laughs> and yeah this is Oh this geez, so he. Yeah. Oh wow, so they first she discovered that this guy was cheating, and then on top of that, you no, know, they nabbed him to... with a sting operation. Yeah. Holy oh, shit! Wow. Wait, yeah. he was getting an escort. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that's that's yeah. That's right, horrible. right after it fucking got switched from a misdemeanor to a fucking felony. By yeah. the way, what's the significance of that? Um, I, I, I'm not. Too familiar with American employment law. wise, it's very significant. Employment wise, yeah. If you have a felony, yeah. there's, there's a lot of people that want in, and he is a pretty prominent guy, like in in a medical profession. And mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's it's fucked up. Yeah, I think I, I really do think it should be legalized. I think it will help. It's probably the most, uh, what's the word? Um, broad weapon that you could use to fight against this feminist tyrannical stuff that they're doing it, it like it just economically it just crushes the entire value proposition it makes them it renders them all equal and highly replaceable right and and therefore in order to acquire a man you'd actually have to work you'd have to have, you'd actually have to develop some sort of value no. You know. I think we should go even right. beyond that. Man. I want to go back to the old goat train. I want to go back to the goat train days, you know, where you'd weigh a goat and weigh a woman and be like, oh, you know, fine, I'll give you two goats and a half. Emmanuel just <laughs> solved the fucking relationship problem from an economic fucking lens. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, prostitution is legal in place of, what was it, like Deutschland, something like that? It's, it is legal. Uh, that's Germany. Yep. I thought that was Dutch, uh, Deutschland. Uh, it's probably Germany. Yeah, Fuck, that's German know. for Germany. Yeah, German for Deutschland. Yeah, yeah, that's German. My bad. I'm off today. But, um, yeah, I mean, prostitution is illegal. They got their red light districts, and depending on where you go, and you know, there's places for that. I mean, no, that's, that's funny Holland, enough. No? Yeah, that's the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah the Netherlands, yeah. Holland. My bad. Netherlands, Holland. I'm, yeah. I'm off today. But, but yeah, the uh, they have that in places. I mean, one of the reasons it's actually kind of funny in America, it's like bad if you show, I guess, sex in certain movies. But meanwhile, you go to Japan, sex all over the place, but they don't like gore. And it's like the opposite for America. It's like the funniest thing. Japan doesn't like showing gore, but they'll show sex. And we love showing gore, but we don't like showing too much of the sex element. And it's just kind of, um, it's actually funny as hell. But yeah, I mean, you, you find places in Shinjuku and other fucking places in Japan. I mean, they got places like established businesses for that that the like paid taxes and everything just like a normal fucking business and shit it's just it, it actually kind of killed in the funny way they, they end up kind of killing that but the hikimoris and the herbivores are pissed off for a different reason they're mad they can't like that well not they're, they're mad that you can't marry these bitches because the you thing just, about it is you just said herbivores <laughs> well yeah they're the hikimoris or herbivores too no. they're both the same thing yeah they, yeah they're they're more upset that um Dating was never like an issue in terms of like J like Japan. It wasn't the dating and the fucking that was the problem. It was the fact that these dudes work 15 hours a day 
And when they marry these women, the women control all the finances. So while he's working 15 yeah. hours a fucking day, she gets to do pretty much essentially nothing. And, and if he complains about this, you know, he goes, rah, 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 it's your duty. You're dishonoring your family. Get over there, you slave. <clears throat> I mean, honorable worker. You know, that's just kind of the fucking thing. And then so this happens all over the world. Like people are pissed about different things, but they're more pissed off. They can't marry these fucking bitches. There's no like you can't gain any kind of equi equity to, the, to that kind of shit. And so yeah. you get like American guys going to Thailand, fucking Japan and shit. They don't they don't fucking know. They go over there and yeah, you're going to look pretty damn appealing because a lot of those Japanese guys are like, oh, no, fuck that bitch. I got, I got, I got my wife over here because they already know. And then so they, for, they go and land these bitches and that and you still fucked, you know? Yeah. For for all that for all of what you said, right? I still think the Japanese system is better than whatever's oh, happening yeah. in America right now. Oh, it's way better. They they have ways of killing shit. The thing about Japan is they have a personality kinda of similar to mine when it comes to money. When something starts actively literally fucking with my money, I pull out like a motherfucker. And that's what they do. If it, like, if you fuck with their money, like, okay, sh shut this shit down, beat her ass. We are not doing this anymore. She has dishonored my dick. She has dishonored her vagina. We're not doing this anymore. Shut it down. They will shut that shit down so quick, especially if they're losing money. But they're having a population decline problem because people don't want to fuck. So right. foreigners yeah. are going over there. They want foreigners to go over there, but it's not going to fix the situation. If every foreigner goes to Japan and becomes a Japanese citizen, it, it'll solve the problem for maybe like 10 years and then boom, it'll be right back to the same fucking shit. Oh my God, these foreign Japanese citizens, they don't want to fuck a Japanese. Why do they not fuck a Japanese? You yeah. dishonor your Americanness. It, it's yeah, going to be the same fucking thing. But it's the problem that's, that's coming out of America and it is because of the feminists. That's yeah. true, but I'm just saying it's everywhere. Yes, and poison the rest of the societies because <laughs> globalization. Can we can we like talk about the Japan stuff after this video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I I have a video to show you guys after this, anyways. Okay. Poseidon, glad to have the Spartans here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there is going to be a lot of. Uh, a lot more atomization so there will be and we are already seeing this for example the frequency of sex and dating among people younger than 35 mm. and especially among people younger than 25 is much lower than among their parents generation and their par their grandparents generation so uh, uh, no people under the age of 25 date far less and have sex far far fewer times than their parents and their grandparents. We are already seeing this. Dating, just to give you a number, to blow your mind, dating had declined within 10 years by 60%. Jesus. That's six zero within 10 years. By the way, hookups are on the decline even, even hookups. I have a video on hookups where there's a survey of literature which uh, supports everything I'm saying here. But so we are seeing a situation where people withdraw from any contact with other people, even of the opposite sex, if they are heterosexual. Well, it makes sense because it's just painful. It's just a punitive experience. Dating. I would now, even say, for, even even if it's not painful, it's always frustrating. Yes. Yes. It's it's, it's, it's exasperated. Yeah. Okay. So baseline, you're going to be exasperated. Yes. You're not really going to get what you're looking for. Yeah. And if you push further into the lobster pot, then you will get you'll get really hurt. So it's that you, exasperation all the way to hurt. If you signal vulnerability, yes. if you open up, if you become yes. vulnerable, yeah, you'll get hurt. Yes. And otherwise, you will have a supercilious, superficial, on the surface relationship, which will end in, in frustration. Because whatever your expectations are, then they're going to be met. So people give, have given up on each other. Mm. They've given up on each other, mm. or they gravitate into same-sex uh, relationships or experimental sex relationships. So we have a surge, for example, in swinging, open relationships, open marriages, and so yeah. on and so forth. Already 3% of the population identify as open relationships and open marriage. 3% mm. sounds a sounds small number, mm. but it's a gigantic leap That's from the 1950s. Mm. Enormous. So... And people are going to give up on each other. I think ultimately we will all be ensconced and cocooned 
um, in our small apartments or big apartments or whatever. Mm. And we're going to interact digitally and we're going to find sex substitutes. So men had already find, found sex substitutes. The consumption of pornography is through the roof, mm. five times higher than only five years ago. Mm. There's a book called The Billion Wicked Thoughts, which documents this phenomenon. So pornography by now is definitely the main substitute to 3D sex as far as men are concerned. So men consider now pornography to be a full substitute, full-fledged substitute to the real thing. Women are not there yet. They're not there yet, although they're gravitating towards pornography. I think women will need more. So I don't know, sex dolls or whatever. But, mm. Or maybe, um, men have maybe digital sex with tactile, tactile input or something. There was, there was a girl I was uh, seeing and uh, she told me that three years previous, from the ages of 21 to 24, she sustained a sex-only relationship with a guy. And she said it was my friends with benefits relationship. And I was really sad. And she couldn't understand. She couldn't understand my sadness. I'm like, you're 21. And, and you're engaging. Because it, it takes a degree of cynicism. No, no, I'm not shaming anybody who's in a friends with benefits. That's fine. But 21. Shame on Three him. years. And I was like, didn't you catch feelings? She was like, he would catch feelings. Then I would push him away. Then I would catch feelings. And he would push me away. I was like, that's a recipe for trauma. <laughs> you're not, yeah. you're, you're not going to walk away from that, you know, bouncing and happy and full of yeah. joyful. You're both going to walk away feeling pretty hurt by that. We all make mistakes. I made terrible mistakes in my 20s. But am I being, am I getting old? I mean, that sounds quite cynical for a, that it was sustained for so long for a 21-year-old. What, what, what do you think about that? She gave up. Yeah. She gave up on any alternative, obviously. Yeah. And she settled for what she could get. Lisa Wade, in her studies, describes conversations with young girls between the ages of 15 and, and 30. Mm. And she describes these, these young women say, the worst thing you can do is show emotions. You should never cling. You should never ever write to your sex partner after the first uh, sex, so mm. the first one night stand. You know, mm. um, they mock, they mock other girls who do this. Mm. They say that it's a common practice for men to send them SMSs or text messages saying, don't call me again. Don't contact me again. It was a one time thing. Mm. They say that there's a code of behavior where both sides intentionally get drunk so that they can blame the drink and say, this, there was nothing there. It wasn't emotional. It wasn't even sexual. We were just drunk. Mm. So drink had become a kind of alibi. Drinking mm. had become a kind of alibi. So, so me, it's the alcohol or whatever. University. So there's a whole subculture which encompasses, according to Lisa Wade, about 81% of young women. Mm. Now Lisa, Lisa Wade is the preeminent scholar in the field. So she thinks about four-fifths of young women adhere to this code, mm. which is a code of rejection. Yeah. A code of alienation, a code of cold detachment, code of a code of cynicism, and a code of what I call signaling invulnerability. I'm not interested in you. I have no emotion towards you. I'm not even sexually attracted to you. I was bloody drunk. You know? Don't ever call me. Don't mm -hmm. dare to write to me. You clingy, needy, codependent. See, and that is uh, that that freaking Instagram posts where they were talking about fucking uh, asexual awareness and how uh, the women need to this is from the psychology department at fucking a &M, that the women need to focus on self love and you look up asexual as being a um, however they word it maybe, as being loving oneself and it's not the same as celibacy, but it's it's like not having a sexual attraction to anybody. But at the same time, you could still have sex, but still there's no sexual attraction, which I don't fucking get that shit. So anatomous sex. I mean, God, I'm getting, I'm getting real sick of these goddamn letters. I mean, just <laughs> what, what, A, B, C, Q, U, element of P. I mean, just, sexual just, just orientation is what they called it. Like, it sounds like some weird pan shit. You know, my college days, I actually took the time to learn about the whole non-binary thing. None of that shit makes sense at yeah, all. It doesn't. It doesn't. And it's just, 
Like, I don't feel attraction until I feel attraction. Right. What the fuck? I mean, that's just some weird shit. When I was growing up, either you like somebody or you don't. And if you don't, <laughs> move the fuck on. That's about it. It wasn't this complicated but fucking asexual. thing. Asexual, like you have zero sex organs or you're like a single cell organism that can reproduce with just by itself. Like That's, that's that so crazy, sense. though. Yeah. I mean, there's I don't think I've ever encountered a single woman that's asexual. I mean, like you can't be asexual and have a stupidly high body count. I mean, that just that's just like no, 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 because they can still have sex without the actual sexual attraction somehow. What? What? So you're telling me they're just a stick okay. figure and say just do it? What? I, I don't know that that's the when I looked it up. Look up the meaning of asexual, so, like so the current mean, meaning that's online. Sorry, like sorry. My dictionary <laughs> definition. I mean, I don't want to asexual in a, in a general sense. I mean, all children for the most part start off as default asexual. But the issue with this is that's relegated to to children. <laughs> if an adult <laughs> told me they were asexual, that's fucking weird. When I yeah. heard, I, mean, I heard about. When I heard about pansexual, they thought it was having sex with cooking wear. I remember Shit, this. probably is. My friend said I mean, this before. And then uh, when my best friend was like, yo, keep the pots and pen. He's getting excited. <laughs> you know, but crazy enough, it's fucked up. But crazy enough, like an asexual uh, um, take on life is that of a child. That's something you expect from a child because people are normally born by default in an asexual way. The thing about it, because, you know, cause they're, they're children, they don't know about it. Right. Until they get older. But so they can't help but be asexual by default. But with the See. decline in testosterone and the pathologizing of masculinity that the fucking psychology departments have done, along with allowing women to fucking overrun these universities and treat the students like children, they allow these fucking adults to play these childish games. So they get to make up shit at the university level and then it fucking goes out into our society. Damn it. Ryan, give me the cooking where I gotta go make some eggs, like semen eggs for these bitches. That's uh -oh. the only way. Uh oh. All right. I'm gonna I mean, okay. In the disgusting amoeba, you know? <laughs> and this is the intergender dialogue among the young. It's not 8%, it's 81%. What you're describing actually clears up some of my bewilderment over the last few years because I think I've dipped in and out of that culture, but without consent. I just didn't. I didn't know. So I'd have these bewildering experiences and all the coordinates were off. And in all three cases, when I followed up and was like trying to take them out during the day and get to know them, they were completely confused, complete and repulsed at first. Like I had to, I was like, don't. <laughs> it's it's creepy. Sex. It's don't creepy. Get to know me. It's creepy. You want to date them after a one night stand? What's wrong with you? You are hey, sicker than hey. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you need cold therapy. Yeah. In Zurich. <laughs> Come to Switzerland. <laughs> That's where the solution will be. In Switzerland. The, the final solution. What do you mean the solution? Yeah, the final solution. <laughs> the final solution. But, but, but now that you've said it's kind of like a, it's almost like a, a subculture. That, that explained how I felt. I was like, I've dipped into it. Because it felt like a cold tour. I just didn't know the rules. So I was like dipping in, I do what I've been doing since 1995 or whatever. And then I'll be looked at like, what the, what the hell's wrong with this guy? What's wrong with you trying to share things with me and get to know me? That's really, it's really strange. Another, phen another phenomenon is self-pornography. So mm. growing numbers of uh, mainly women, but also men, generate pornography mm. and just give it out. Mm. So they have live cams, not for money, not for money, exhibitionistic. Mm -hmm. So they have live cams or they, and they generate cell pornography and put it out. Mm. We're talking millions. And um, so this is one, one phenomenon. And uh, cell pornography is a substitute for a connection. It's a temporary kind of thing. You know, I've had a connection for a few minutes. Mm. They, there is an objective self-objectification going on on a mass scale. Thank you for saying that because yes. I don't think the feminists know that. Because they keep men saying keep it. objectifying women. They like, do it themselves. See what women are doing to women, and yes. it's not even other women doing. They do it to themselves, yes. themselves yeah. aggressively, yes. and very early on in the relationship, I'm being sent nudes. Yeah. And I'm like, 
nobody asked you for this yeah. and yeah. That, they're asking for me to reciprocate and i'm like there's absolutely no way i'm sending yeah, 16, you a picture of him 16 and sexting and camming for example masturbating with a stranger you've just met yeah. is in uh, women masturbating with strangers they've just met is absolutely yeah. common absolutely common i wouldn't say it's um, an outlier i think it's standard behavior sexting is definitely common like sending texts or photos but camming is becoming more and more prevalent so today a woman who refuses to masturbate to you on, on camera um yeah. you know she needs help so what's wrong with her <laughs> I feel, and of I course feel it's, like that. Again. <laughs> so here's the thing mm. this empowerment thing mm. is all male dictated and male oriented yes. 100% it's ironical it's crazy it's mind-blowing mm. mm. it's a male's it's, wonderland it's, it is it's, it's everything that I would have wanted as a young yeah. horny man women yeah. on demand yeah. they they think they I don't have to tell them they do it and they're yeah. proud of doing it yeah no girl no pressure no effort it's great Fantastic. and you can't when you try to explain it to women i've given i've given recently lectures to covid free vaccinated women of course so <laughs> when you try to explain when you try to explain this to women they get really furious at you yes i know tell them, don't you see? Be furious in the comments here <laughs> yeah i mean don't you see what you're doing you are converting yourself into a commodity you're objectifying yourself and then you are giving yourself free to men who expect it fully of you because they have stereotypes of you and then you're proud of it and you have pride slut pride month i'm kidding you not <laughs> slut, slut pride parade go online great well done humanity well yeah. done our future is rosy yeah. Yeah. slut parade oh oh yeah uh, mm -hmm. amber rose yeah. is is responsible for that yeah, that's been a thing for for a few years now. Um, yep. Heck, even I know about it. You know. Yeah, slut walk, slut walk started in everything. Toronto like what 2011, and the reason why I know that is because I decided to go downtown to uh, do a background check for a job I was taking, and I just saw all these fucking people just wearing no fucking clothes. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I've never seen so much fucking fishy pussy in one place. <laughs> Oh, you, you, you came on a tuna Thursday, um, Ryan. I, I hate to tell you, but uh, I had my cap on that day. I said, get your fresh tuna. You know, some of it before it goes bad, you know, in about five seconds. You know, just, you know, the crazy part about it is we could have actually stopped a lot of this shit. If more men would just shame women, I would have been out there clapping. And you, you, you have to endorse women and their dumb ass shit. You know, oh, yeah, you go, Cindy. You go over there, flash that cop your boobs. You, you get your ass kicked. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's just awesome. You, you got to show the kid that it's being an idiot because that's just what they're going to fucking do. You can't do anything. You can't say shit to them. Can't even kick their ass. But so you just have to kind of. That's why I make jokes about bitches, like, all the fucking time. They give me an endless amount of information. I mean, they give me, like, the ammunition that women give me, it's fucking insane. Like, I can leave the internet for a month, come back, and get my little coffee and everything. Today on live news, bitches at it again. Ah, oh, fuck. I mean, they can't even take a freaking break. Can't even enjoy my coffee. Can't enjoy nothing. Just, it's we, fucking insane. We're at, this, we're at a point where you're more likely to be cancelled for asking a woman to put some clothes on than you are to you know, <laughs> take them for, off <laughs> for, yeah, yeah we're actually at that point now women have right. like they've like twisted their brain so much that they've actually got to a point where they think men should be cancelled for asking them to not sexually objectify themselves what? Or... Women, women today think fucking marriage benefits men and it represses women how fucking yeah, stupid can you be well, but that that's the thing. It is stupid. But but that leads me to something I wanted to kind of go talk to Psych about, like with the law and stuff, because men, men are visual creatures, right? Yeah, and if yeah. you're constantly surrounded by fucking half naked bitches, I mean, that's that's something that's going to be harder for a man to curb than a woman in, in that same situation. Like, I, I feel like that is literally sexual harassment because you're taking advantage of a man's fucking natural biological responses. 
You're true. I mean, I feel sorry for the kids. I mean, but in all honesty, I would just grab a camera and treat that shit like Jurassic Park, you know, and just be tar- taking documentaries. This is the T-Rex and it's natural habitat. I mean, no, well, yeah. Like in the workplace or, you know, places where that shit is just not fucking appropriate and it gets in the way of efficiency and production. And I just, I don't, I don't understand how the, all this got so It's crazy. clown world, I mean. <laughs> right. It's fucking clown world. I mean, like everything's just upside down. Yeah. I mean, it's so bad. Every last one of us should do a damn Spider-Man, you know, skit. You know, good mother comes in. I'm dressed like that, you know, like that chief of the fucking newspaper. It's damn. We spent years trying to get these bitches clothes off. Now they're now we can't get them to put them on. God, you know, where did we go wrong? <laughs> yeah. I saw, you know, it, it, it's insane what you're saying, um, Derek. It's it's sort of like um, a, a tactic to keep men off their game. If I were to look at it on a macro scale. Right? Yeah. And yeah. what's 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 weird is that people would probably find it outrageous um, if people were to say uh, go to an AA meeting and surround it like decorated with alcohol. Right. Or, or go to or go to like you know think of any sort of like place like that or go to a place where people are, are seriously hungry and then decorate it with all sorts of burgers and saying you have no right to touch it, you cannot touch right. it, and they know right. they can eat it. And it's like you know, I don't yeah. understand why that is that is allowed and why people can't address it directly and say, you know the way men are constituted. You know that Yeah, biologically okay. fucking structured and hormonally it, it, it kind of reminds me of a of a of a picture where I think um they said uh, it was um Putin and um what's the name from Germany? Uh what's the name again? The the lady who was Merkel, that's Merkel. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, and the she destroyer of Europe. Uh, and and basically, Putin had brought I think a dog was it, and apparently she's scared of dogs. And I remember seeing in the in the comments people saying, "Oh, Putin, Putin is such a horrible person for doing that." Blah 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 blah. No. And then the person was basically saying like he is using he knows that his negotiating like you know opponent has this weakness he's working on that weakness it's fair game like to put it off the game so that you know he can get certain things you know i guess to make him more i don't know uh, um softer you know uh, easier to negotiate with and yeah if you can do that in that context why aren't people um see but this but actually, like, that's an outrage but you're not a brave that's so okay. smart for him because guess what? Uh, Richard Grinnell, he he, uh, Trump made him the ambassador for Germany because he's a gay man. <laughs> like women have a way with men that they cannot have with a gay man, mm. as far as negotiating goes. So yep. that's why probably Putin's strategy of bringing the dog kind of fucking yeah, yeah. up on that playing field. <laughs> but but my, my point being, this is my point yeah. is that. Why is that outrageous when Putin does that with Angela Merkel, but it's not outrageous when women use sexuality in the workplace? Right. Well, because nobody fucking talks about it and women don't get held accountable for their sexual irresponsibility. Yeah. yeah. So that that is a power that they use that they deny they even fucking have. Instead of saying it's a power, they're like, oh, I do it because I want to. Yeah, I do it for me. It's not about you. Right, I'm, which is a I'm fucking just, lie. I'm empowering myself. Lie. It's all about, and it's like, really? Well, if actually, you wouldn't do that if I was lying, would you? It's it's kind of true because maybe they get off on fucking, you know, sh- <laughs> shaking the fish in front of a starving person. Like, okay, yeah. you, you can see it, but you can't touch it. But here it is in your fucking face. Like yeah. I'm powerful though because I'm in control of that. You know, it goes back to them being children. I mean, what they want is that medicinal dick. I mean, like medical marijuana, they want medical dick. I mean, because well, they can just like yeah. get that legal. <laughs> yeah, they want medical dick. They look, they have that shit in, like firmly in, in in place. I mean, and that's kind of the thing. I mean, I'm trying to look at this from a younger guy's pers- you know perspective and shit. But most of us in this room are like over 30 and shit, and, and, I, and it's just really funny. I mean, I call these 
you know, this girl's gonna be, be shaking in people's faces and shit, and then the sad part is you can buy that shit anywhere else. I mean, it just, it's just like, stop it. Stop it. You're humiliating yourself. And I, mean, I like humiliating myself, and that's the problem. But, but you, yeah, you can buy it anywhere, but uh, if you're in a workplace environment, you can actually stop a man from like being focused on it. Like you can interrupt yeah. what he's doing. Hundred percent. Like, well, that's what the good old yeah. HR is for, man. If I still worked one of them damn desk jobs, what I'd be doing is moment some woman looked at me, I'll be going to HR. Um, she looked at my boobs, and uh, right. you know, so you can do that now. Woman, you're gonna go tell the woman in HR. Oh, yeah, yeah. All you got to do is just identify as pan, asexual, binary. I'll, I'll identify as every fucking unicorn pomer. I'm, I'm a beautiful Pomeranian. I just don't like my, my boobs being looked at that way. I got about six nipples. I don't, I don't want all six of my nipples to be looked at like that. So, What's hilarious is that this doesn't stop with age. I, I, I remember seeing um, some article about how I think they're trying to pass it in Congress. Uh, some 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 to basically say women have to dress in a more conservative way, like wear um, suits and things like sort of like, like the men do, don't show your arms, don't show your legs sort of thing. And the women resisted it on, you know, the whole thing of you trying to police the way women dress, blah, 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 you know, it goes. but it's like, even in the context of Congress, they still want to have that weapon available to them. They still want to have that sexuality uh, option available to them. And it's like, again, this goes back to the question, what are women without sexuality? Like, a lot Mannequins. of these women who claim to be empowered are basically nothing if you take away their uh, sexual appeal. Right, because they have nothing else to fucking offer. <laughs> That's Same. why they get so offended by, by the way. question of, of what do you bring to the table? Because it actually right. it goes directly at the point that right. you don't have it. I was watching a clip of uh someone else uh asking this question again it was a panel of i think it was three guys versus three girls and one of the points that the girls one of the w uh, women was saying is you are rushing the, the the process of getting to know me that's why we get offended by that question and it's like wait so you what? think i should waste my time doing some sort of dance with you to get to know you in, in quotes instead of just getting to the point I'm just right. trying to get to the point. What do you have to what do you have to offer? And the guy actually then asks questions like when you guys ask us what job do we have? Um, what are our plans in five years or, or whatever, you know, what are we that's right. you asking Future us what stuff. you bring to the table. Yes. Why is it so offensive when we put the same thing? But 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 that's the double standard that they have. If it wasn't for their double standards, they would have zero. Like you, you, they're allowed to know what's in it for them for the future, but you're not. Like that yeah, you're supposed to like so, you're supposed to waste. This is the thing. Why am I supposed to waste my time with the, with that? Like you have to be able to offer that um, those assurances on the first date. You have to be able to communicate them, and you shouldn't be offended if someone asks uh, asks to do that because who has time to be? It's like women think men have. Women don't value men's time. Right. Hell no. This is why men need to start valuing our own time. I mean, the thing about it is, if you're not getting what you want, treat it like a one done go, man. Just that's that's just all it is. The only reason women are you've been getting away with this for so long is because you got these guys that dedicate so much time and energy. Oh, let me buy her flowers. Let me buy her this. Let me do that for her. It's fucking stupid. It doesn't make like they've cheapened it so fucking much. I mean, women will laugh at you if you do that now. You can't do that shit anymore. And that's that's the whole fucking thing about like a lot a lot of this kind of shit. And women did it to themselves. And yeah. and now they want to walk around going, oh, these guys must be gay. No, someone doesn't have to be you know a switch hitter or whatever the fuck to to criticize these women. But that's just honestly where we're at. And now you got low value women dating low value dudes, calling them high value and then getting mad when they're in their 40s, 50s and wanting to start a family with everybody else. I mean, they. Uh oh, they, Black. That's a low blow. You need to stop that. You're going to get canceled. Can't uh, say yeah. that. You can't say that online. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, no, no. Come on, Ryan. Don't undo what Billy helped me do a couple days ago. <laughs> I'm just going to say. 
I'll put it in a more concise way. Women monkey branch too many times to where the monkey fell off the tree and cracked his head in a couple of fucking branches and now it's all crying and shit. Like, what happened? You fucked around. That's what happened. By the you way, Psych is here. Hi, hey, Psych. Psych. Hey, How are you doing? Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to talk about, uh, I mean, I guess you're kind of still on the same issue, but I just wanted to kind of broaden it as well, because uh, I, I mean, like there are sort of complexities on both sides of, of sort of the of, 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 of contributions of this problem from both sexes in some sense. But uh, I Wait, just... I, so did you see the, the video that we played? Yeah, I will. Okay. I... Wait, uh, I, I I did watch it, but I'm just having trouble. Rem oh, that, that was with Sam Vaknin and Grannon talking about. I, I must say, I didn't see the. I, I only saw half of it. I don't. I didn't see the beginning of, of that. Um, okay, it just but, general uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he cut most of it. But but I, I mean, it's interesting because I think that essentially, I mean, this whole thing is premised on the fact that women can sort of automatically expect. To be pandered to and therefore if they are kind of saddled with their own hypocrisy or paradox or sort of self-contradiction then somehow you know like you have to just kind of give this endless amount of adulation you know it's sort of like i mean this has existed in in many kind of forms of you know which i would almost call sort of vulnerable narcissism type things you know like where women are always playing this game where like oh i just don't have the self-esteem so i have to sort of extract self-esteem vicariously by putting you through the ringer and 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 creating all these you know and so you're you're so in some sense they can constantly frame their whole life as just sort of trying to fill the hole that always just you know kind of can't retain any sort of self-esteem and so then you can just kind of always uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it gets boring, you know, but, but uh, I mean, so and now this is happening on a kind of on a macro collective scale, you know, using sort of identity as well to kind of generalize it. But uh, the so I, I mean, the, 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 the complexity here, I think, that comes from sort of the, the male component as well, which is linked to the question that you asked me in the one stream, which I poorly answered or I, I, I didn't think about it sort of broadly enough when you were like, you know, what is it about men that makes them susceptible to sort of essentially pandering in, in some sense or, or sort of, you know, giving into this sort of non, this kind of, you know, play a shell game with your own accountability. And so you never have any kind of basic responsibility or, right. or anything like that. And right. I can and tell I, you what that is. Hold on, hold on, Black, Black Wolf. Okay. I, I want to hear his answer. <laughs> so, so, I mean, like, I do think that there is a kind of like, I mean, I said, I, I speculated, I was like, uh, you know, well, I think it's purely culturally bound, but in some sense, I think there is a biological uh, uh, sort of pre or there's a biological basis for, for this cultural adaptation, which is in some sense, the difference between the, uh, I, I don't know how to, how to say, the, the, the promis male promiscuity and let's say the interests of a father. So if you're a father with a daughter, you have a certain set of interests, you know, like, like you, you want your, your daughter to be the princess and you want her to have a good suitor or something like that. Whereas if you are a juvenile male or something like that, you know, like your evolutionary sort of propensity would be that, you know, you want to go and impregnate as many different people as possible because sperm is cheap and eggs are expensive, you know? So it's like, so male promiscuity, I think, we've got this kind of schism within culture, which is, I think it's the general denigration of the concept of the father, you know, so, so we, you know, and you can link this to kind of traditional religious kind of things as well, that, you know, the male conceptualization or the male archetype of the father has, you know, kind of completely given way to this kind of this pandering, because if women are not, if they don't have an internalized kind of conceptualization of looking after their own interests. I mean, it's very interesting in traditional society, I mean, just to give a historical sort of context here, is that the chastity of a woman didn't belong to her, it belonged to her father. It was a, it was a legally protected interest that belonged to her father, because if she lost her chastity, she couldn't marry as well as she otherwise could have hoped for, you know, like, like it was like having a, a diminished, you know, so for her own interest, a, a father would conserve this legally protected interest you know if, if some yeah. male guy came and slept with his daughter he's now just perhaps condemned her to a life suboptimal substandard you know like now she's got lower prospects in the world as it were now i i'm not happy with the traditional circumstance because i do think that in some sense we need to kind of we need to grow up out of this stuff people need to sort of you know women need to protect their own chastity or something like that you know which yeah. and, and, they and, 
there's a reason why like it, it's it goes beyond anything culture it's it's a biological thing i don't know if anyone here has ever seen a baby lamb being born and watching it trip over its own legs and stuff like that struggling to walk that's the whole reason behind why when why men protect women that's the whole it's it's out of a their weakness and our forgiveness for the whole thing because most men even the most misogynistic man will not take that same pity on another dude hardly ever right. but they noticed that women were doing this in the earlier days of man and then we made rules the villages the towns so whatever the fuck you want to call them they were not made for us they were made to protect women children and every other dumbass creature back there that was about it we were off hunting and doing our own little fucking thing we didn't need the towns when you, when you yeah. stop and really think about it, cities don't really do jack shit for men. It's, it's, a, it's a place for people to conjugate and meet, which is something that women enjoy doing, not men. Most We have a little clubs or whatever the fuck, but the way men communicate is never as complex or interchangeable as the way you know women do it. They form these like weird little committees and stuff. We form hierarchies or whatever, and then what we do is just quick, kind of concise, and, and that's it. And that's where that was born from. Men feel, have always felt the powerful need to pander to women because they, either they feel sorry for them to some extent or that they watch their fathers or somebody do this and expecting women to ever collectively grow out of that. They, they won't. Thousands of years. We could live in some Star Trek future. Women are still going to be pulling the same bullshit just in a different way. It'll be the same thing all over again. And it's just well, it, it just I, I mean, itself. I think that if there's enough kind of sort of transparency and culture and general sort of cultural understanding about these issues, and I think that you could have, like in sort of in the romance of of, of the Russian aristocracy, like right. you know, which is essentially people get shunned very quickly because essentially they're just you know they're they're not they don't have the right decorum for polite society. But it's not strict rules. The rules are 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 substantiated by. A, a real understanding that underlies them, you know, and, and so uh, I, I just, I, I, in touching on some of the themes that you just brought up, I, I just want to focus in on this paradox of the father, because, you know, if you set up things with a traditional structure where everything is just kind of maximized so that people can enjoy the maximum, you know, so, so you, you, you're saying, I'm, gi I'm giving this gift to female um, you, you, uh, proclivities or whatever, you know, you, you, I'm, I'm going to try and mold society to, to deliver things automatically and have them easy easily you know kind of set up for you to enjoy things that that creates this also if you have such a strong father that almost becomes kind of toxic and overbearing because people don't have an actual understanding of that that what is what the father is doing when we use tradition like the father and we just follow it like a behaviorism you know thing which maximizes our kind of utilitarian you know sort of benefits or whatever then what you end up doing is i think you end up creating a kind of weakness within a lot of masculinity as well which essentially can also pervert is perversely incentivized to keep women, I don't want to say that like women have been unaccountable because men have been lowering the bar for them, but I think that there is like a proclivity for men to want to do that because it greases the wheels. It's the social lubrication for promiscuity. Because if a woman doesn't understand about her own prospects, if she doesn't understand, if she doesn't, she's not plugged into reality and pragmatism, then she's a dupe essentially. And then she can just kind of, you know, uh, you can just flash the right social cues you know you you, you can just use to tokens of social standing or whatever and because there's no substantive understanding that actually correlates to um you know, what do they call them uh, uh you know status symbols and and such and so then you just get this artificial reality which is kind of infused with you know with, with the idea that there's some kind of Ironically, it sort of it depends on this kind of benevolent paternalism that is always built into the system. That you just have to assume that the system has integrity built into it, but it's actually been lost. It's been displaced. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. Ago. Long time ago, <laughs> they lowered the bar. That's kind of the thing. They 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 have lowered the bar. And the thing about this is, the men the, didn't stabilize it though either. The men allowed it to happen. Well, they couldn't have stabilized it. That was kind of out of their hands, and I'll tell you why. Men don't control how women communicate with each other, but they do set the environment on, under which they can communicate. And that's how the sisterhood 
operates for better or worse. Women have always operated that way. Even if a woman hates another woman, as right. long as they fucking another that's dude a, that's over That's a again. fact, because I can tell I you mean, this. It, yes, that's a fact, but I don't think you guys realize the, the difference that we're dealing with right now in history. There's shit that's going on that's never fucking happened before. In it, it happened, it's really? happened before, just never on a grand scale like this. this, this it's happened before, and every time society wow. fell. The thing about this is... Right. And I, and I urge everyone to, when you, when you get a chance to look at, look exactly like, I know everyone talks about Rome, Rome, but look up exactly what fucked them up. Hedonism, it led to letting women do whatever they want. Then people were fucking animals. Then shit just got so fucking crazy at one point that it, it was just, it was a done deal. It was, it became yes. irreversible. Yes. And that's kind of. approaching the that. I'm so trying to figure this out. <laughs> so I, I, this might seem counterintuitive, but I really think that, you know, we just have to be very careful about sort of not trying to impose traditional solutions right. to these problems. Because in some sense, I, I, I think that how women get, in some sense, you have to let talk, juvenile or toxic masculine people, you have to let them do their juvenile or toxic thing. And you have to let women be, but you just kind of have to create the right lens of judgments to judge them. Because that is the thing that actually stabilizes society is yeah. sort of is not essentially letting them get away with their sympathy grifting or whatever. Because I mean that's exactly what they're getting drunk on and, and sort of inebriated on at the moment is that a woman can sort of make herself unhappy with her own hypocrisy and sort of just you know kind of paradoxes and then can sort of scapegoat that onto the system or onto other people. Men, and it's like white men. sorry, white men. That's where yeah. the feminists place the fucking blame is white men. They would have done that to anybody. Well, that's the shit part about it. They place it on all men. White men just happen to be a hot topic right now. Yeah. It'll it, it shift. Yeah, it everybody, but it'll shift. It's, yeah, it's, it's all of us, but black, like the white actually, men, the white men black are the black men. Yeah. No, no, yeah. it's all of us, but the white men are the boogie in the closet. Like, who is him? And that's the thing. I mean, the funny part about it is they weren't even the first. If you go if you guys go way back to maybe like 1960s, 1970s, I mean, what is it like? Black community, for example, is like fucking 10 years ahead of feminism and occurs everybody else. I mean, like that's the fucking future practically in terms of that shit. And then later it hit everyone else. So whatever happened there in one community trickles down to another. It was the canary in the coal mine. And what they're experiencing is no more or less than what, I mean, they're getting the worst because of the whole like, you know, global thing, but what they're experiencing men before them already is, have already experienced and are still experienced to this day. So it's all over the world. The white man's more of like the uh, boogeyman in the closet, as um, the man said, it's just, it'll be somebody else. Like, like give it time. They rotate this bullshit and you can okay. go Black anywhere white. in the world and see this. I, 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 I mean, in some sense, I almost, I think that. I mean, it, it is vulnerable narcissism on a large scale. Like, I mean, I've tried to always describe it as a kind of as a collective borderline personality disordered, you know, sort of way of, of framing reality and, and sort of grifting and, and gaslighting as a kind of as a gang or, or as a kind of, uh, uh, you know, as, as a because then they can kind of use a kind of democratic consensus to sort of bully people into having to conform with their kind of unilateral projection onto reality, making it sort of true. And that that whole sort of psyop or something like that i don't think it's even about the particular scapegoat it's about that formula of controlling sort of politics you know in this very you know sort of subjective psychological kind of interface and you know which is almost kind of pseudo-religious it's got you know weird elements because it's so deeply psychologically you know kind of uh, uh, built into these people and uh, oh, sorry i i'm just trying to think of the, the point that i was that i was leading on to make is that um how to stop uh, it? Is that, I mean, I, I do almost think that the ideology itself is not serious about itself. I think that this was this was cooked up by leftism in some sense, because leftism has always essentially grifted on complaining about something, reacting to something. So, you know, it, and if it's not reacting to something, it's very weak because, you know, like it's been wonderful that it's always had a kind of Christian culture to criticize because you could always criticize Christianity for being hypocritical or for like not living up to its own values because it's very sophisticated. It's very deep and people sort of, you know, have shallow. So it's, it's very easy to criticize that. And then you look like you're an intellectual elite. You look like, because you, you, you are, 
shining a light on hypocrisy. But as soon as you, you're not criticizing something, as soon as you actually have to build something, you know, independently, a, a stable structure of, or framework for seeing the world, you know, like it completely runs dry. And, you know, th th uh, anyway, the, the point is that I think that identity politics was designed predominantly to destabilize both liberal society. I was talking to Black Wolf about this uh, last week, so uh, sorry, last yeah. night, so I'm kind of uh, uh, riffing on, on, on that a bit. But I do think that essentially they are just trying to undermine the, the necessary conditions and the necessary sort of framework for having a liberal, open, democratic society. They, they are trying to displace yeah. that with essentially narrative, you know, sort of uh, you know, this psychological group think and, and, yes. and it's not, it doesn't really matter what it is. It, they're just trying to acclimatize people to this formula of of interfacing with politics, because this is how you wow. have a kind of feudal, you know, plebs. You know, this is this is, you know, just you can always just delude people because you can just feed them some virtue signaling and then you can get away with, you know, because there's no procedural principles that there's no but I, I did just want to echo the the point that a good mother was kind of bringing up um uh, to, to 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 black wolf earlier that the american system on paper in theory i mean i've criticized it overtly like it it does it does have lacking structure it does have it it, it it's almost was you know, like I, I think it was almost designed. I don't, I don't want to be too cruel or whatever, but in some yeah, sense, it yeah. was never going to be good enough. It was always going to be abused, and it was going to be corrupted by these kind of these cultural things. But I also think that that was a necessary stage in history, so we could see evidence of it, so that we could sort of witness, you know, why it's de why it's deficient. You know, we could get to your constitution, which is way better. Yeah, I mean, but yet I, you I, still deal with these fucking identity politic bullshit. That's <laughs> because it's been interwoven into the culture. I mean, long before they even hit a damn university, they yeah. they noticed this shit in the household. They noticed this shit everywhere that they go, and so they parrot what was taught to them, and then they have that molding ever since the word. I mean, it goes beyond even right or left at that point because they carry this on into wherever they No, no, no. We need, we need to come back to the foundation and the source. Like, what I'm saying is Sykes Constitution could be fucking rock solid and bulletproof. It doesn't matter as long, hold on, as long as America is failing and our bullshit is leaking in because we set the fucking standard. Our media, our culture, all the things it, it it travels to all other countries. Uh, it does. Just jump in here quickly. Um, <clears throat> I think what what Syke was saying is actually quite powerful because what he said essentially is that it's not even about the the facts. It's not even about what's real or what's not. It's about how we get to establish the facts. It's about exactly. the, the the process and of, of it, it's, it hits at our morality. It hits at our truth discovery process and that means that even if you have a constitution that is rock solid right if they hit you in your mind that yeah. piece of paper is, is rendered useless exactly so what we need is a way to actually counter the i don't know the psychological attack that this is it's a, it's on a level beyond just mere signs or facts it's it's on the level of truth of how we understand, like the way you think, like what what Cyprus was saying about how they replace the way you 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 think and replace with this, you know, politics of of just narratives and 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 whoever um gets to sway the minds of the many through narratives, and then and then also say that um conveniently now that they've swayed most of the people through narratives and you know propaganda and all that stuff that oh look everyone's voting the way we we said that um you know they're voting in our favor so democracy therefore we write and it's like but that's not how truth is discovered but who are you, you know? talking about exactly you're talking about the feminists because I'm everything about the that feminists. happens is what the feminists dictate <laughs> it, something, yeah. something that jordan peterson said uh, the way that um, to stave off um, uh, it, it's truth that keeps the thing uh, to, that keeps competence from going into tyranny 
It's truth. Truth stands in the way of that. So when you remove the truth and insert affirmative action, diversity, inclusion, equity, uh, like uh, policies that dictate you, you need all of these things, you're taking away the truth for equity purposes. I think I think it's it's a bit deeper than that, good mother. Um, it's that it's not just that they replace the truth. It's that they replace the way you think of getting to the truth of of how you process facts, you know, your sensory input, all this stuff to get to the truth. Right. So that by the time you, 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 you know, they're done with the brainwashing process, you actually genuinely believe that what they say is the truth is the truth. So the, the alternative facts become the truth because they've changed your way of, I, 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 like I like, um, think of the way um, this whole Gareth Cliff situation was handled. You know, people now think that just because um, things are, uh, um, you know, yield different outcomes, racially speaking, that automatically makes it racist. Right. It, well, it, it, uh, it, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I, I, I mean, I, I, I just wanted to, to make a, a more broader point here before dealing w w with this kind of stuff, because, look, South Africa certainly has its own particular problems, and I don't think the problem is decentralized into the culture itself, although that is a manifestation or a symptom of the general problem. But in terms of the corruption of the South African constitutional order, because I mean, I'm, I'm about to have a, a, a big recording where I'm arguing that there's a professor called Kurs Malan, and he basically, I haven't read his book, but essentially I think the title of his book is something like the not so supreme constitution or the, or, you know, the unsupreme constitution. It, it, and, and it's basically a critique of the de facto constitutional order in South Africa where he doesn't talk about the document itself. He talks about how it's working in practice and how it's basically been betrayed in practice. And so I think that I probably agree with a lot of his analysis, but how he's morally framing it, I think is just utterly reprehensible and irresponsible because the, the constitution would be the greatest tool. In, I mean, he's, he's sort of interface, you know, he's, he's advised the independence movement as well. And, you know, he, it, it is, it is so irresponsible to conflate the constitution with, you know, sort of, with let's say the courts although obviously you can understand why that conflation would naturally come about because you know what's you know how the courts interpret it how the courts use the thing is in some sense what matters more but still in in the ideological war of ideas that i think is is, is the necessary ingredient to actually really doing any because so you want to throw away the constitution you want to go to a pure democracy you want to make a direct democracy to try to undercut a lot of this bullshit or, or something like that well now you're right in the hands of of the masses now you're right mm -hmm. in the hands of your neighbors i mean you know so the, so in in some sense i think the, what would actually be a really good way to stabilize culture to some degree is not expecting culture to live up to perfect standards you know which maybe there'll always be stupid people that will follow, you know, fashion and follow, you know, kind of crazy ideas. But at least if you have a place that you can go to solve controversies, you go to a judge, you go to a court, and there the standards are, you know, then you've got a boilerplate sort of, you know, you're not going to fall out the bottom of the system. And so it's very yeah. important to get the, the justice system to actually have a proper standard, because that will, I think, sort of guarantee truth to some degree because at least there's a, there's at least one port of call that there, there, there's one recourse there's one method of recourse that kind of stops the whole thing from just imploding into semantic you know kind of you know group think or or, or 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 something like that and just having an institution that actually gets to have the final say that it gets to say no actually when we are sub judicate when we're making a decision about something you don't get to second guess us while we're currently seeing the matter you know you 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 are subjugated by us because we actually have a common justice system we we have common basic standards that are quite sophisticated and quite you know mm -hmm. substantive and that they all have all these principles and it's you know like that is what i think de facto stabilizes culture to some degree so that's not susceptible to this kind of you know sort of the frog boiling in in the in the psychological you know uh, cognitive dissonance and 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 bullshit artistry and, and narrative witchcraft and gaslighting you know like that yeah. that's what holds against that and sort of trying to just say oh well you know going to some kind of lowest common denominator i mean this anyway so 
I, I, sorry, why, why, why wouldn't that be the psychology departments mm -hmm. at the universities? Aren't those supposed to be where our fucking problems are solved? Okay, well, I mean, yeah. psychology is a is a very weak subject, no. and it's usually licking the boots of the neuroscientists and and the you know like it's, it's so I mean like they are all I mean in in fact usually psychology departments are manned by people who are failed physicians they didn't get right. into medical school so they went in, in into into psychology and right. so you, you really have the worst kind of you know sort of second rate intellects trying to just follow the fashion of the time and trying to just kind of, so but you know, not, <laughs> but it uh, used to be men mostly and the, the worst of them have been replaced with women and then they medicalized it so now they're a fucking authority figure that dictates what things should be like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, we're both on the same page on this in that if we could just at least have one university that tried to 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 essentially say we're, we're going to clean ourselves up, we're going to be like a model institution and we're going to not be party to any journals that carry any any of this bullshit, you know, like any of the subversive, you know, sort of you know like right. how you're even trying to do psychology while you're trying to promote a kind of psychosocial model of groupthink you know it's you know oh, the, the whole psych, psych psych dude the fucking texas a&m posted one of their fucking psychology instagram things was talking mm -hmm. about um asexual awareness oh, oh, wow. asexual as being a um what, what do they call it a fucking Gender sexual action. preference agenda? Or... Uh, no, uh... I'll have to look at it. I remembered it earlier. I'm tired, so I can't even think straight right now, but asexual awareness, uh, self-love. Yeah. yeah As an identity or a, something. Yeah. So, so, I, I, so I mean, it's very interesting because, I mean, like, I, I was watching this morning shot clip, which I, maybe just for context would even be interesting to watch it here, where he basically, he he, uh, the the guy who who sort of does morning shots, which is a South African YouTuber who kind of uh, does news and and analysis, essentially in political analysis, and I I really don't like, you know, so I mean, he's also very pro independence um, in terms of the Cape uh, breaking away from the rest of the country, but you know, the, I, know I, I I really don't like how people you sort of are, I think it's very historically insensitive to treat. I mean, you can say that maybe essentially the constitution has never really been in effect because essentially not many people understood it or really bought into it. And, you know, sort of because of the, the unfortunate history of the country. But I mean, you know, when you look at other data, it's, it's very interesting. You know, when you look at the, the Institute of Race Relations uh, polling and things like that, you know, most South Africans are decent. Most South Africans don't buy into this you know racialist stuff and in fact a lot of the eff supporters even support independence for the cape because they just want some kind of radical change which is why i think the da really does itself a huge disservice by not essentially going after the you know you, you have to try to divide the public uh, away from the people who are always going to be your detractors people that you're never going to win over you have to start creating divisions where <laughs> sexual orientation is what they're calling it and they're bringing fucking awareness to asexual people why 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 uh, apparently hold on that's actually something that i did here from Christy Winter. She's not completely fucking useless. Uh, she said something about how feminists brought the private matters of the home into politics in the 70s. That's when it started. To make the private public. I think yeah. she actually used that those words. Because, again, this hits, this sort of like brings back to what I was saying earlier about how women can't it's like they don't have agency they always have to default to the to the collective so you can't solve your private matters privately within the home uh, uh, and keep it there it always has to go to some larger scale to leverage that, ma that you know, macro level 
against the individual. Responsibility is a woman's kryptonite. I mean, it's been kind of proven time and time again. Okay, but I want to go back to... <laughs> Sorry, so I, I, my comment on the sexual orientation stuff is that this is yeah. just another label to put the world into a narrative format. It's just another way, and in some sense, it's the way to break, because when you're already looking at it from the level of a generalization or a collective group or, or something like that, then you already, the type of politics that you're going to endorse is basically sort of left its command politics. It's, it's top-down politics. You know, it's, there's no liberal independence within such a structure. There's no free choice. It's meant to be that there are conventions coming down from on high, being imposed on people, and people have to conform to them in order to sort of be morally uh, uh, upgraded or, or sort of plugged into the right narrative or sort of, yeah. anyway... But, but the, way, you? the way I look at it, they're seriously spoiled little bitches that have these fucking degrees that have nothing better to do than promote what the children, and plus they don't even have children of their own because they've wasted their fucking years at, at university. They're, well, they're totally the playing sure. these games of the children and promoting the games of the children. I mean, I guess the, the sexual orientation, the labels, the identity labels become oh. like the children in some abstract kind of, you know, yeah. that's what they're, that, that, that's the matrix that they're, that they're tending to and that they're trying to mother, I guess. Yes. Uh, yes. What the fuck? That's what we need to be. That's why we need to fire them. Are you saying they're trying to give birth to new gender uh, identities? That's why they keep. That's why they keep breeding more and more and more. Like it's coming from the women. Women breed all these things. They so wait, 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 wait. Um, in much the same way we say, you know, if men, you know, you know, they need need to kind of get that, you know, lust out of their system in order to, you know, work properly. Maybe in much the same way you could say women need to get babies. Um, and babies are the system in order to you know be yes. properly calibrated for yes. You know. I, I, yes. I, I just I have a general sort of, sort of blurb about this because I'm, I, I've I've actually discovered this within my psychological models. But uh, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go into into that fully. But essentially, I mean, Jordan Peterson has a version of this which is very accessible. Essentially, which is that you have to understand that like woman as sort of as as a necessary component to reproducing the species. Is, is almost not just an independent entity. It's kind of like mother and and infant child or something like that. And you, you can almost understand that there would be a tendency to create a homogenous, holistic view of the world to a very young child. Because a very young child cannot be educated from day one. It has to be given a kind of a, a, a static picture that they can kind of acc acclimatize to. So, so they can't be explained, this is that, and this is how this works together. It's too much. So they have to be given a kind of a, a, a complete picture. And so if a woman is kind of tuned into that homogenization of things, like simplifying things into a, into a holistic perspective. Yeah. So this is what women do. Yeah. But, if it's, not, <laughs> but if it's not counteracted or, or complemented Mm -hmm. by a kind of understanding so there's you know the one is the superficial face of it and right. the other one is you know sort of what's happening underneath this you know and yes. if these things are not hand in glove if they're not sort of wa walking in step with one another or something like that we shouldn't then... be trusted with anything if well, they're not congruent if that shit is not <laughs> balanced they have no business fucking touching anything that changes anything in our society i mean a healthy individual has both and obviously gender yes. will accentuate one or the other you know in terms of you know i guess if you are really into performing your gender or or, or something like that which i think most people in some sense it shouldn't really be an i an ideological thing they should just they should be obviously have an appreciation of both they should have an integration of both or something like that but they should just do you know in some sense by if everyone, if we have non-racialism and non-sexism, people will have through their own, through their own development, they will develop into more integrated people. You know, yes. that, that, obviously, but when you start using labels and narratives and and special privileges and and yes. counter, you know, sort of ideological compensate compensatory privilege or, or whatever, 
It fucks yeah. me. Well, the, it's just politics. It's politics of the feelings. It will never go away. But you know, when shit hits the fan, like you know, all of us pulling out of fucking Afghanistan after what almost decades, what two decades of fucking war. Well, what happened? Not, e not even, not even, not even fucking twenty. What was it? Thirty hours for them to take over the whole place. You know how many fucking but, Americans died? But, how many Americans but, were left behind? Yes, yes, that was a fucking mess. But guess what? That whole, like, if you were to look at that situation as a mirror of a man or a woman, that was a fucking mirror image of a woman. Yep. Run away. 100%. Like, that's, that, that's how you know that that shit was, <laughs> that was, it, because women, are, like, just like with the pandemic, like, they react, they, they, what did uh Lou call it they freak out they panic yes, yes, they yes, fucking I, leave like <laughs> i can tell you this right now that there was there was this i saw like um, a study it was like a couple months ago where like uh they were asking how couples felt or married couples felt or people that were in relationship together how they felt during the pandemic and they were saying the majority of people like 45 percent uh in a demographic felt closer to each the couple felt closer to each other but that's basically political correctness for the woman having a man to protect them right and then there was like the other there was like other people who didn't it was like what 20 percent that felt indifferent and then the the others just wanted to get away from their partner because they were they were stuck they were with their partner all the damn time because that was also a big problem that's why you saw so many people getting divorced during the pandemic out of my clients about seven seven couples divorced it's pretty bad but you, you see what I'm saying? I, I I've had two a psych nose. He, he's he's helped me through my uh, therapy dealing with these traumas in my life I've had two very good um, close families <laughs> that have you know, been destroyed this past month. Like, like, and these, these are people that I'm like, ooh, these people have been together for a long time and, and all the things. And yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, one thing to ask, psych. So like, there's always that argument that comes up that, you know, we're going through all this BS and people don't know what real suffering is. Shouldn't we just have a war? Well, well, I didn't see how that solves anything. I'm but I, I mean, in some sense, I, like a war to what end as well. But I mean, in, in some sense, I think that the actual thing that needs to happen, because I mean, Texas has a problem. I mean, if 48 or what is it like some high 40% of, of, of Texas votes blue. So, I mean, I, you know, like this is a not problem. really, not really. No, 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 none of the voting is fucking even legitimate right now. It's like, like the past couple of elections. It's it's been, point, yeah. yeah, it's, but, it, no, it's, it's rigged. Like, you know, I mean, even if you try to craft your own sort of thing, in some to me, the important thing is like, can you have institutions that have integrity that can filter this corruption from from getting inside of them? You know, like, and and that work has to be done either way. If if you win the war or something like that, so like, what? How are you going to? What what things would you put in place in order to actually fix the culture after you win the war. So, I mean, like, I would rather just skip ahead and be proactive and actually work on the actual solution directly mm -hmm. rather than some, essentially, some kind of diversion. Because I don't think you can defeat this with force. And I, in some sense, I think well, that this kind of... Sorry? It's women, Sai. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It, the war's been between the sexes. Feminism has been destroying men. And men can't really, I mean, you can't use, I mean, men's strength is their force and their overt fucking fighting skill. That's toxic. Women, Ryan, quit being an SJW. <laughs> women, but men don't, I mean, men can't use their fucking strengths against women in this war. That's where the fucking problem is because women, feminists have been castrating and gagging men, which I mean, just they can't even fucking use their words in this war. Like, how are they supposed to fucking fight back or solve anything? This is why. It doesn't make sense. This is why men need to start ghosting. Speak with your dollars. Speak with your absence. 
Absence is also a choice as well. Just let the fucker burn and be and be done with it. You can't build anything out of this. And the clown colleges or whatever, they're fucked anyway because people are no longer enrolling them damn things. They're taking trades as they should. You can make more money that way anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, so I, sorry. I, I think that that is the more responsible action. But I think that the actual long-term solution is just if there was a college that someone set up that said, we don't have any SJW professors or lecturers we we don't talk we don't our curriculums don't have any of that bullshit it, it don't have any identity politics in any of them in fact mm -hmm. we have a module trying to teach people about how corrupt it is and how morally corrupting it is and how psychologically you know sort of damaging it is like if you just had institutions like that then you know it, it isn't just avoiding the damage then you actually have an actual building towards the actual alternative model uh, i guess and and resilience you know but not just not just surviving or coping but actually or you know or avoiding but actually a basis upon which to thrive and and and, and you know you don't have to win your whole society you just have to have nice places that you can enjoy i guess and and you can still lead the good life in your you know, like culture should perhaps not be a Unitarian church. Perhaps we shouldn't try to make a society in which the tradition is enforced and the tradition is good for the people so that we're capable, because that's just going to reproduce the same bullshit. And, and so I was yeah. going to make the claim that the American structure in some sense is naturally vulnerable to this bullshit because yeah. it's so premised in democracy that the majority will get its way. So the only way to actually fortify cultures if you have independent institutions you actually have schools that you know that this school system is 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 run with these values and you know you have to private you have to privately have integrity enshrined in things that you support perhaps and and that have good filtration systems or whatever and then they can show themselves to be better to outcompete you know this mediocrity and this you know kind of fascistic group thinking bullshit you know which just makes itself more and more stupid and, and pathetic <laughs> and, and entire society more stupid and pathetic but the stupid and pathetic i think are outbreeding the logical well i mean I, I don't they have less children like almost naturally based on their sort of on the things that they promote no brainwashing new people right? that's their but, way of breeding but they also have control of the poor people, which the poor people are the ones that fucking breed the most. The government dependent women have the well, most children. I mean, I think we're still in a much stronger position if we just have a model of an alternative. Because right now yeah. we might have pockets of resistance and you might have in independent voices, but they, they don't have the backing of proper, they, they don't have institutional backing. We don't have institutions that are essentially free of this stuff and until we actually have a model of success rather than just a model of coping right. we are yeah. always going to be on the back side we're always going to be defending you know we need yeah. to actually bring the fight to them but you need a stable basis we also need a secular model because you know you could have a christian university that says based on tradition we don't accept this bullshit but that's right. not good enough from my perspective because right. that isn't that isn't scalable that isn't a, then you can't use that as a beacon to show them you know just how profane and you know sort of uh, uh you know, dead well, well that's why it has to be texas a m they were like the last <laughs> ones to adopt all these like it's not even that bad at this university because i mean it's it's mechanics and agriculture are, are their staples and now technology with the relis campus which the relis campus is completely free of all this ideology which is good but they're the newest and I, I, yeah. I think that, that you have to put pressure on the leadership and you have to just make yeah. them actually put in policies that actually cut it out, that literally yeah. Yeah. suppress it and restrict it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need, we need um, like sort of, heck, this might be like a bit of an argument for segregation, but you need some sort of <laughs> isolated um, community that's isolated from this nonsense. And we have alternatives to YouTube. We have alternatives to all sorts of other um, things, yet we we haven't made an alternative to the very source of the problem, or at least one of the main sources of the problem, which is the schools. university. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. And schools. Yeah, yeah. the schools, well, yeah. The education systems. We need to have 
we need to have an, a totally independent system that people, even um, as outsiders, you saw, like um, maybe psych, you, you saw get this more as a South African, um, like an Oranya, but for universities. Something that, 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 that is even known nationwide that that place does not have this. You know, it's, it's separate from what we are doing in the rest of the country. And um, yeah. You, you, but it's yeah. mostly women at universities now, though. So that's going to be the hard part because the majority of the people that are pushing this shit are just stupid fucking incompetent people that probably need to be fired. Yeah, but these, they, these, universities won't be, these universities won't be handled democratically. So they right. wouldn't be able to push this nonsense. You'd have some sort of like Caesar, some sort of king who says, no, this does not meet the standard that we, we set out in our right. founding documents or whatever, you know? And so there's no pressure that they could impose on these guys. There's no, um, uh, they'd even be immune from, um, to, uh, you know, the, you know, public, you know, uh, reputational um, pressure that these guys tend to use, because it's like, who are you gonna? Who are you trying to? How are you trying to shame me? When by shaming me, you're actually promoting exactly what I'm trying to do. Right. By telling people that these guys don't have, can you believe these guys don't have social justice? <laughs> you're actually doing my marketing. You know. Right. Back to marketing, though. Like I like they're they're pushing for because spring enrollment they're pushing for more women in fucking technology and computers and shit like like they have they have the majority of the university and the one department that is the majority is men which is your mm -hmm. your technology your stem shit they're pushing there for more yeah. women and these women get preferential these scholarships and like <laughs> but i mean that in some sense that doesn't even matter too much because in some sense all of those schools are essentially already on the verge of of being boiled alive in this you know in this narrative witchcraft and this ideology and identitarianism you know or it's at least tolerated or it's right. it's kind of it's not it's not exactly you, you know, it, it, it's, it's sort of, it, it's very, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's at work within those communities already. So you almost don't need a, a kind of an, a, an official sanction from the institution because there is probably enough of a bleed over of, you know, sort of student life or, or, or infiltrating that and ideologically. But, but, but uh, anyway, the, the, the point that I just wanted to raise is that just to touch on because you keep on focusing on you know how women are the problem here and and i think that in some sense women are very aware of of social standing and in and i think just having the the knowledge that in somewhere in the world there is an institution that is militantly against this stuff and cuts it out that that creates a different category in social standing there's almost like there's a difference you know so now there's actually a distinction in the world that you can have a university degree from one of these universities where they're being boiled alive in identity politics or you can have one where you, you you're actually you know you know for a fact that people with that piece of paper they're right. in a different caliber they're in a right. different you know league of right because and, and, and that, that will already create a different that will start to create a bifurcation where you can actually right. start to segregate from these toxic people with their toxic morality and their disgusting right. you know a na narrative framework Right. Well, and, and another, I mean, uh, another goal of mine, like these stupid bitches that have that psychology piece of paper or that poli sci piece of paper that gives them that fucking superiority complex mm -hmm. that is actually just they're what they're doing with that is destroying society. Like one of my goals is to get that piece of paper that they hold to be the opposite of fucking valuable. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. That, that yeah. is a real problem. Because you are competed. Yeah, I, you, you make it like what, what Syke was saying is exactly yeah. the point. Like I think of um, our uh, uh, schooling uh, system in South Africa. We have basically two distinct, we have a third one as well, but mainly two distinct um, uh, uh, qualifications um, on the matriculant level. You have IEB and then you have the, I forget what the abbreviation is for, the government um, schools and the uh, um, outcomes that these two different systems have are vastly different 
Uh, the government schools are way worse than the IB schools. Um, in terms of literacy and all these uh, basic, you know, things you, sh you should achieve by the time you leave high school. And what that does is that it automatically communicates the quality of, you know, student you'll have or, or person or worker you'll have just by virtue of the two different systems. And if you could have that sort of thing on the tertiary level where people know, know automatically that if the person comes from say the let me call it the non-woke uh, uh, education system they already have all of the stats backing their um, uh, quality you know how good they are at work um, how how much effort they put in uh, how maybe they should even have a metric for how many complaints they have like frivolous complaints and if they find that um, these sorts of stats are now stacking up even the private guys will have no choice but to hire from there right you know they'll have to they'll it's like, how do I allow my competition to have a, 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 a staff that is almost completely comprised of people from this non-woke in, um, uh, institution of education, knowing that they are way more efficient, way less likely to cause issues at, in the workplace? That That's me allowing my competition to defeat me. Right. You know? right. Yeah, so I have to compete. But, but one has to go first. <laughs> Like that's the thing, because the the university that does it first is going to be the most fucking popular. There's well, so well, many people that would well, rather. Well, 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 I mean, a, a lot of these things have got a kind of geographical monopoly. You know, you will try to go to the yeah. best university that is sort of within your geographical reach or something like that. So I mean, I, I don't, mm -hmm. but but it certainly needs to happen someplace first so that other people can copy the concept, can copy the kind of idea or something like that. But so Emmanuel is making a very good uh, practical point, but I just want to sort of emphasize something that that uh, Good Mother was saying earlier because this is where I see is is the is where the frog is being boiled here the, the, the you know and where we're getting this kind of democratic illiteracy is being promulgated because of this kind of illiberal identity politics is because you know it's exactly the communications people the the people that become pr people for for companies and corporations because yes. this is problematic because we really have to this is why i say we have to fight the we have to fight the war from our side because we we because essentially otherwise they will always win because they will say if we don't have a woke campaign we are going to lose out on customers and they will win the lowest common denominator kind of argument we have to actually say that no 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 we don't like your pr department you need to fire all of them and get non-woke people because we're not going to touch your company because we're, we're not putting up with this a liberal propaganda that's undermining the constitution and undermining basic civil liberties and basic liberal freedom of choice and, and things like that you know like yes. which are, and my my whole view is is that in some sense this is a conspiracy theory that is again like just against capitalism against the the basic freedom that capitalism you know and liberal freedom that, that is inculcated within free open markets essentially that um so so i mean in some sense i think that, that this is how they are the, these are their their their, their soldiers on the front line and it's at some point we, we have to have communications departments, or I don't know what they're called, but, you know, the people that become PR people and, and the, or, or, you know, poll sci people or, or whatever, or people that are, um, we need a non, we need those people to be non-woke and we need them to actually have a, that's where the, the war is actually going to happen in terms of the cultural broadcasts that, that, that fills, you know, just advertising is a huge disproportion. I mean, people, when they watch advertising, they think they're seeing reality, but they're just seeing what someone has paid them to see. And so, you know, there is this, you always have false perceptions and it happens within politics all the time because, you know, these identitarians are always broadcasting their narrative. You think that there must be something behind them just because of the repetition, you know, and in, until we actually start going after them and saying, you know, yeah. like, no, you're, you're actually distorting the debate around all of these issues by conflating them into your toxic subjectivism and and in some sense your own psychological problems that you know like please don't yes. bring your psychological problems into politics right, <laughs> right. but, yeah, so, but we, we're not going to start to do that until we have institutions yeah. first because we need right. like people need to have the the intellectual elite or something like that they need to have some some backing that someone is going to at some point stand behind them and anyway, so. But but Syke, did you um, uh, 
something I wrote to you earlier about Putin talking about how the gender fluidity bullshit is like he literally said it was crimes against humanity. Okay. You you didn't hear? Okay, I, I want to play this because I wanted I wanted your take on this. Um. I mean, Putin's calling us out for allowing the fucking women to let the fucking children play their games with everybody's fucking life. So he's literally calling it out right now. I got to tell you guys this story. I was telling you this yesterday, but I think it's important for people to know this. Friends and family who are Russian, okay, Mm -hmm. who live in America, Okay, I don't know. I'm telling you this right now, and I know a lot. I don't know a single person will hit that. I don't know a single person who's Russian, doesn't respect and love Putin. It's such a weird dynamic. Why do you think they love him? They so love much? the way he leads. You He's a man's better, man. Better Putin than Perry. Says something about you. So maybe <laughs> you're watching too many of his videos. Okay. Putin rails against cancer culture and suggests teaching gender fluidity to kids is a crime against humanity. This is an insider story. He took aim at cancel culture and support as a transgender right, suggesting that teaching kids, uh, che- teaching gender fluidity is a crime against humanity, while stating that Russia should remain its spiritual values and historical traditions. Putin said that some Westerners believe the aggressive deletion of whole pages of their own history reverse discrimination against the majority in the interest of minorities constitute movement toward public renewal. Let me read that one more time. What a technical statement. Oh, tongue twister. L- listen to this. Putin said that some Westerners believe the aggressive deletion of whole pages of their own history reverse discrimination against the majority in the interests of minorities constitute movement towards public renewal. Wow. The Russian leader whose opponents have often ended up dead or imprisoned, like in cancel culture, to reverse racism. He said the emphasizing of the racial topic divides people. Um, I'll go to you first and, you know. Absolutely fucking true. <laughs> I, I didn't understand that, that part right at the end when he said something about, um, just before when he said emphasizing the racial issue divides people, but he said something about people are landing up in jail or something or, or, or being shot or, or is he talking about Russia? Or, or, oh, yeah, yeah. He was talking about people that fuck with Putin. <laughs> yeah. He's basically, oh, uh, sorry, um, he was... yeah. I think he's talking about the Soviet, um, you know, what was happening uh, under that, you know, regime. He's saying yeah. that yeah. a lot of what we're seeing with workism and, and uh, it is much like the stuff that happened in Russia. Yeah. And he says that the cancellation of people is basically uh, uh, like when people were getting murdered. It's, I guess he's saying it's, yeah. it's like social, or, or let me say, yeah, social media murder. You're getting canceled um, out of society. is yeah. It's much like you being killed. It, yeah. Obviously, it's not biological, but in all other respects, you've basically been killed, you know? Yeah, um, yeah so... I happen to agree with him. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Um, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it seems that, well, I mean, his analysis is, is you know, is, is, is interesting as well. Um, I mean, well, he wasn't, I, I mean, he didn't really criticize it apart from calling it in, apart from labeling it a crime against humanity and uh, apart from characterizing what he says that their, their partisan line is, you know, which is, you know, obviously I guess he's, He's just pointing at it in the and he's in some sense he's just saying look how crazy you know this this thesis is you know but uh, i mean i guess what he isn't what he didn't substantiate in some sense which which perhaps requires some elaboration is essentially you know or, you know how this is child abuse essentially or, or you know yeah. like how uh, unnatural it is uh to, to indoctrinate people with you know these weird you know sort of uh ways of of experiencing reality through an ideological interface of, of identity or or sort of or categorizing sexuality before they even reach puberty and 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 and, and stuff like that is, is very strange but um i i just you asked a question before i was here you were like oh i wanted to ask psych about 
the law and about sort of you know you were talking about slut parades and 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 and, and <laughs> stuff like that. And I think that uh, th th that whole sort of um, movement around uh, which you know I was linking it to the theme of hypocrisy when I sort of you know that, that you know they they are creating a kind of an impossible problem so that they can kind of always have something to blame you know always always have something to scapegoat they have to sit with some kind of inconsistency some kind of cognitive dissonance so then they can always just blame somebody else for for essentially stoking it in them or, or environmentally sort of impinging them or something like that so they always have this kind of victim relationship to their environment that just is never good enough for them but they can always use the complaint about it to kind of navigate their their individual lives in some sense so they have a kind of systemic sort of pull lever here to to gain intervention to gain you know kind of get out of jail free card or 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 or, or something like that but uh, i was just going to say that the point maybe of public decency and humility or something like that or having some laws against you know it, in my view the clear argument for that is always around the protection of children you know like in some sense because yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, and they're it's destroying it's, children. That's yeah. what that side's doing. But you see, it's interesting because the arguments, uh, well, how they, I think, have culturally advanced this line is essentially because people don't understand morality themselves. They don't have a, a premise in reality. It's either a kind of religious traditionalism or it's just kind of like, you know, like, how do people base their own moral claims? And when you live in the kind of democracy that America lives in, where essentially the majority gets to almost generally enforce its, its cultural values and now we've kind of opened into this epoch of a kind of like moral relativism like yeah. you know people don't have the temerity to say you know like don't or, or in some sense but you know like i guess if you're a woke parent or something like that it's like <laughs> oh my, my children can believe whatever they want to believe because belief is just a kind of is like an artistic <laughs> sort of uh, uh you know scribble drawing or or, or something like that and so it's, it's like there's no structure there so they can just impose whatever they want on it because it's just there to be molded, you know, uh, the, the blank slate kind of view of, of humanity. But um, but I don't I don't understand what the, the thought process in these mothers brains that allows them to believe that that child knows more than they do about the child, if that makes sense. Like, there's something in them allowing them to do that that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, so I, so I, I, the point that I was going to get into is that it's interesting how classical liberalism generally, I think, precipitates a kind of conservative public moral order because in some sense you don't want to impose on like if you want to privately have a conversation with someone and negotiate or, or discuss a mm -hmm. deep issue then do that on the private scale but right. I, I i think that i mean i i think this is also why we have more school shootings and that kind of public violence for instance is because we have essentially normalized fascistic worldviews and fascistic politics everyone well, we have the based on, now sorry <laughs> the vegan yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 all those, because essentially, if you if you have this kind of objective narrative, but your particular identity politics, your particular objective worldview is not on the ascendant, isn't powerful at the moment, and and you you don't have a hope that it's going to become the cultural hegemon, that it's going to become in force in your society. Let's say you're a white nationalist, you're a, you're a teenager, and you're, and you're and you've got into white nationalism, and you're just like, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, so I might as well, you know, go shoot up a school and kill myself, you know, so right, or, or something right. like that. But, but and I mean, this is why all radicalism, I think, I mean, that that is. The, the, the way to protect against that is liberal culture and liberal morality, because in some sense, when when society isn't ruled by a narrative, then it doesn't matter if your narrative isn't the one in force, because in some sense, the only way that you were ever going to spread your, your, your worldview was not by creating a monolith of society, but right. was actually, you know, through your freedom of association. Enjoy right. your personal life and your freedom of association. Do it that way. Don't try to control make a unitarian church out of society but now because we've translated things into the and this is the problem because america was always 
in some way built to kind of tolerate being a Unitarian church, but in a in some secular form. You know, you can't talk about God, but you can enforce your morality on other people. You know, right. so you can have victimless crime. You can literally have a victimless crime and you can put people in jail for a victimless crime. Right. I think that there's, there's something fundamentally, you need a broader right. sense of justice. To, uh, uh, but anyway. I have, a, I have a question actually, because something, um, I had a conversation with Muhammad from uh, Warrior Life Channel. Uh, he lives in Dubai, <laughs> Ryan. Um, and he was talking about, uh, so nationalism, when did, I don't know when America actually criminalized nationalism. Does it have to do with Germany and the Nazis? Because something that they have in Dubai that curbs the group identity politics, like they focus on nationalism more and competency. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they write policies based on um, how many nationals this and that, like, and when they, when they praise something, it's, oh, look at this person that's a, a, your whatever nationalist that happens to be a woman or whatever. Like yeah. their nationalism takes priority. I don't know when yeah. America lost that. Well, I mean, the, the, that I guess was a cultural thing because I mean, it's not technically illegal, I think, but I mean, uh, no, they just, the left is always calling fucking people's Nazis. So, yeah, like, yeah. I feel like that's a, that's a thing that they've, that they've cut okay. out while they yeah, were yeah, putting yeah. their other bullshit in there. Yeah, it's, it's like a form of, of demoralization. But yeah. uh, I, I was just going to say that, like, my, the, the, so, so the framework that I was just trying to, to, to install about, you know, like having, that, that you need to have almost a kind of conservative or, well, and I, I guess I'm using that very descriptively, like an adjective, but like that the li classical liberalism and personal freedom, in some sense, you, you do try to keep an open public square or something like that you don't want the public square sort of dominated by a rigid enforcement or something like that. Okay. Like there is a kind of it's basic by women, women, sorry, women, women, yeah. dominated by women who get but, their feelings hurt. So I, I was just going to get into the issue of the inconsistency where if you try to tolerate things in the public square, how that means that you end up, you know, sort of going towards conservatism rather than trying to let people be naked, you know, like in public, because, you know, like, and, and essentially, the, I, you know, like, and you were talking not about children, but you were talking about, you know, how this affects men, you know, because this is, a, 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 you know, a kind of sort of sexual uh, you know, and I mean, I, I do think in some sense, obviously, the reason why they do it is because it is psychologically penetrating. It's because they know that they're having a psychological impact on right. other people. Like, that's the whole point of it is to be provocative and to agitate and to say, I have the power to invade your thoughts and to sort of be noticed right. by you and, yeah. and that you have to deal with that. And that's part of my activism is that I can psychologically penetrate you, essentially, you know, so psychological it's, rape. it's psychological rape. I want to add that to the law, uh, to the rape law. Well, I, I mean, generally, it is against the law. Public indecency has has been, uh, right. generally, but essentially, the, the 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 one of the protected interests within the common law, at least in my country, of public decency laws, is essentially, it's the interest is not necessarily children, although that's part of often the substantiation, or or men that are that are perhaps going to be affected, uh, you know, untowardly, because it's not nice, you know, sort of being provoked into sexual responses or, 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 or I mean, into sexual feelings, I guess. Right. You know, like I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that men are going to become rapists because they've been exposed, but I'm saying that it's, it's, it's not, it's not civilized, uh, it, 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 or, you know, it, it, because it's, it's breaking the boundary of yeah. the personal and the public. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's, but, 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 but it's about that, public morality, it, right. public morality is a protected, is a protectable interest as it were. Right. And, and, and that does have something vaguely linked to a liberal order, you know, in, in which, you know, because I mean, we also have very conservative people in, in all societies. You know, if you have if you have Muslims in your society, mm -hmm. you know, it's incredibly offensive. Uh, yes. to, to, I mean, it will also it also obviously to, to conservative Christians as well, or, or even to most Christians would think that, you know, this is completely inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but but essentially, I mean, we in religions that have at least very, very clear 
it's part of even their, their, their religious view of the law is that you have to dress humbly, you know, and uh, anyway, but, um, but I mean, most people, I think that are spiritual or religious will, will believe that somewhat naturally anyway, that, you know, like, why are you dressing provocatively? You know, like, it, right. it's, uh, what are you trying to accomplish here? <laughs> it's it's self-centered it's narcissistic it's attention seeking it's it's toxic <laughs> very toxic and it's disruptive and it's like it, it it doesn't produce any kind of positive fucking outcome in a workspace or i i just i don't get it but that that's something that that christy actually said in that old debate that i watched a couple nights ago um she said that in the 70s feminists are responsible like she did a list of things that feminists were responsible for accomplishing and bringing the private the home stuff into the public sphere and into government was one of them also getting the law changed to where men can also be um uh be protected under the rape laws apparently before okay. feminists achieved that, it wasn't a thing. Yeah, yeah. So they opened that door already <laughs> to add to it. Because if they're psychologically penetrating, I mean, we, we have nothing. No, we have nothing in our law that protect men or women against any kind of fucking psychological or emotional violence. Well, well, I mean, this, I think, in some sense, would be covered under public morality, and it would, which I'm trying to say that in the modern, in, in a proper constitutional, in, in the ideal legal system, which I still think on paper exists in South Africa, essentially, you have to realize that if we live in an open, liberal, democratic society, and we have liberal values and liberal freedoms, we have to understand that the public square needs to belong to everyone in some sense, and in some sense, it means that there is a kind of there's a more conservative lowest common denominator that should be observed within the public. Also, especially things that would would be inappropriate for children to to see, you know, like uh -huh. I, I, I mean, I think it's, it's somewhat obvious. Yeah, well, you would think, but we have quite a few people that don't believe that, apparently. So, I, I mean, I, I just wanted to bring up this topic because it's maybe... I because I, I, I'm I don't want to avoid the hard topics where I might seemingly be a, hi a hypocrite because I'm basically saying that you know like for the for the conservation of a of a self sustaining uh, of of of, a, of a open liberal democratic thing you, in order to have you know proper tolerance uh, as being the cultural norm or whatever this yeah. is how it's enforced uh, but in some sense I think it's useful to say these things because we've We've left this stuff so far behind, you know, because of the gaslighting and because of, you know, we've we've deformed our general standards of how to see the world in such a radical way that I, I'm just trying to give a picture of, as to how the status quo would generally be contended. And that, you know, you can't expect to be in the public square and think that, you know, like, OK, I'm going to feel good about society. You're not supposed to feel good about society. You're supposed to contain people that you disagree with. You know, you're, you're not supposed to dominate the public square. You can dominate discussions yes. with people that, that oh you can essentially engage with people. Sorry, yeah. so talking over you. No, I'm agreeing with you. It's a huge fucking problem that we have. You're filling the spirit. <laughs> But it's ironic because you know these are the people that they are trying to fascistically take over society. That's that's the whole point of their type of activism and how they promote their ideology is that they are goading people. You know, like in the the DA had these election posters up, which they had to take down, and which they they apologized for, which they they also defended them. They apologized and they defended them, which I think was supposedly the reason why they apologized for them is because some of their some of their um, campaigners felt physically threatened that they wouldn't be able to go out and campaign for them because they were going to be confronted by essentially EFF and ANC thugs or, or fascistic, you know, kind of henchmen on the ground. Right. But in some sense, I think that's exactly the kind of confrontation that we, we have to take the ideological fight to these people because we can't just be bullied by them holding the narrative, you know, kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, we have to pursue them and indict their morality and, and their corruption, because otherwise we can't just keep on 
taking flack from them and, and playing defense. We actually have to uh, indict their moral character. And, and, and in some sense, you know, the, this is how you boil democracy is that you've really reframed the debate because they can always just say that stop being tone deaf, you know, like this is insulting mm. to people or, or this is upsetting. I, I can't remember the thing that they, that they say is that, you know, sort of, uh, you know, that's very the controversial. They use a whole lot of words. They have dehumanizing, they have problematic, they have um, all sorts of words that they use. Yeah. I, I'm just, it, it's the one where it's, it's almost like an intellectual word where someone is being upset on somebody else's behalf, like in, in the third person. So they're usually saying like, this is very insensitive or, 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 oh, yeah. or this, uh, I, I can't remember, or, or, or upsetting or, or I can't remember what it is, but you know, like it, it's inflammatory essentially. And it's mm -hmm. like, like, I don't care if it's inflammatory. The people who find this inflammatory are evil people. And the point of saying this is to is to actually shine a light on, on you know, essentially their... To inflame some motherfuckers. <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. not supposed to be pleasant. Yeah, yeah. And, and being goaded by the feelings of fascists, essentially, okay. is going to put you in a very, very, uh, uh, you know, a more and more restricted cultural space. Right. And, yeah. you know, until you kind of actually say you know like oh you see they they have such a weak narrative that unless they can actually police how they're criticized you know we're not even allowed to detract and criticize them because if we actually forthrightly actually indict them and actually describe what it is that they're doing they can't even tolerate that 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 kind of robust debate you know they are insulted yeah. by robust debates i can't remember the exact word uh, actually psych while you're here i want to show you this stupid bitch that i was provoking the other day Oh, you're gonna love this. You too, Emmanuel. <laughs> this this yeah. is this is why we have all this shit going on in our society. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this is the perfect example. <clears throat> uh, what was your last Win Winters? Oh yeah, Christy Winters. Yeah. Yeah, she did a reaction video on PragerU. I gotta find where she. PragerU's video is ten minutes long, and it took her fifty fucking minutes to react to it. <laughs> I was in the chat though. I was in the chat. I was going to make one other quick. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, this is. Uh, oh man, now I'm losing my own thread. But uh, um, what was it? There was an argument. That, that, oh, sorry, I, I'll, I'll think about it while I'm watching this. Uh, I've lost my own thread. Excuse me. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll have to think about it now. I've forgotten it. Okay, so we all agree. Take take away women's rights and like you know hit them with a goat. All right, we we agree. <laughs> oh man, my my eyes hurt. Welded, welded, one might say, to their positions. All right. So already bit sus. There's a picture of some dog. Isn't that the dog that's in Otto's thing? They're trying to like link those together. Day, and I don't want to have to keep turning my head. As a Swede. <laughs> All right, how's that? How's my composite framing look here? Yeah, it's not too terrible. It'll do. All righty, Dighty. Let's get on with, uh, yeah, let's having a, a white guy who allowed oh, the hypocrisy of slavery to continue while getting rights for himself as a white man, but not even white women and nobody else. Because hero. Let's go to the source. Type in American Dream. I wonder who we'll meet. Yeah, I wonder. Good idea. American Dream. This doesn't look like America at all. Isn't it great that we're white? Otherwise, we might be kidnapped because people might think that we're runaway slaves. And if we show them we could read, they might kill us. All right. Um, ben Franklin and, and I don't think you have to do capitals in the, for a Boolean search. American dream. I don't think Ben Franklin ever talked about the American dream because the American dream again is like a 19th or 20th century concept. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. 
Franklin's works were written to instruct or improve the white public. Let's just, they say the public, but it's the white public. We always forget how these were racially targeted documents. These weren't for everybody. Of which the autobiography is the best known. All rest on assumptions about the possibility open to the white individual, which have come to be called the American dream. <clears throat> the essence of the dream is that any man, any, again, white man can earn prosperity, economic security, and something else. But um, yeah, the thing is, uh, fulfilled the American. Okay, so that was interesting to know. I think it's a little bit of it, you know, it is so cleansed of its racial restrictions and its gendered restrictions. This was basically another example of how white men were using privilege and power for themselves. Now, we rhetorically cleanse that. We like rhetorically launder. Is that the, the equivalent of money laundering? Rhetorically laundering the, the discourse to remove the implied and understood racial limitations, the gender-based limitations of this. And then we pretend like, or we're, we're taught to pretend that the kind of dehumanization that took centuries to undo was just always there. And therefore, what are people complaining about? It's white is a moving target. Exactly. What does exactly. That mean, white because is a moving target? He said Franklin, <clears throat> uh, swarthy Swedes, right? Why would Franklin call the Germans and Swedes swarthy? All right, so let's talk about, let's, let's put this in context, right? Let's put this in context to what another thing Franklin said. Why should the Palatine boots boars be suffered to swarm into our settlements and by herding together uh, establish their language and manner to the exclusion of ours? Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of our anglifying them and will never adopt our language or customs any more than they acquire our complexion? <laughs> it was racist AF, which leads me to add one remark that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionately very small. All Africa is black or tawny, Asia chiefly tawny, America exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so, and in Europe the Spaniards, Italian, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we <clears throat> call a swarthy complexion as are the Germans also, the Saxons only excepted, who within the English make principal the body of white people on the face of the earth. Whiteness was invented by white people to be racist. Is, is this CRT? When we talk about the principal body of white people on the face of the earth, are we talk, should I ask myth, myth informed of Milwaukee? Anyway, I wish their number were increased. And while we are, as I may call, scourging our planet by clearing America of woods and so making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus. White people be shiny, y'all. White people reflect what? Why should we in the sight of superior beings darken its people? Ben Franklin was a terrible racist, horrible, horrible, vile, disgusting racist. I, I don't care that he performatively, like, symbolically embraced emancipation on a uh, on a timetable for slavery. Because I don't think he actually like what he believed in human dignity only extended to a certain group. Alrighty, righty. Uh, why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all black and tawnies of increasing the lovely white and red? But perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country for such kind of partiality is natural to mankind. No, it makes you a freaking racist, Ben. It makes you a vile racist. <sighs> All right, so that's that's Ben Franklin. When we're talking about Ben Franklin's American dream, you have to put in for white people all the time, or actually not even white people, because women didn't have human rights 
in Brent Franklin's eyes. So only white men. It was no different from like the kind of elitist and racist imperialism of you know ancient Greece. This is not the American dream. This is a white supremacist dream of domination. All right. Let's go. Okay, I just I needed to have that little rant. I needed to have that vent. All right. We continue. Oh. The phone says 1784. Wait, I thought that's when she went off on Precisely. me. You two look lost, man. Good mother. Layla, and my brother Leo and I are trying pulling Good themselves mother. up by their bootstraps, and that's uh, the American dream. Don't leave yet. She's about to go off mm. on me. Like, yeah, let's talk about all of the ladies he was shagging. So please but, please so just find it. Like, this girl is, yeah. is complaining know, about white men that are dead. Franklin getting and how his head racist head. and misogynist. Is this what we're talking yeah, about now? Sort of, like, French lady oh thing? Let's be honest about it. Just say, hey. You know what? I'm gonna go and knock boots with you, and then I'm coming over to your house and knock a booth with you because freedom means sexual liberties. I think it is you who are too kind. Yeah, is he wearing? I don't know what he's got. She, she literally just said that. That's feminists, right? So, professor, <laughs> right, is, or whatever else, right? Is that when you have a script? Information should explain garbage. Like, make an effort. Oh no! Here, here we go. It gets us. I don't see anyone else wearing one. They like that you're different. You see, when I first arrived in France, I dressed as... I see that Precious Tranquility in the chat is trying to get a rise out of me. I like, it's, like I just want to tell you, you're a troll failure. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm leaving you in there. Like, just let them... They're just being so ridiculously bad at trolling. So basic. Like, really, I, I haven't... Like, you're so common. There are the thousand trolls that come up with the exact same garbage. Like, make an effort. Aim higher. Come on, Precious, just like rise above the pack unless you can't. Like, unless you're intellectually so limited that all you can do is attack someone's looks and sexual history. Like, the most basic things like, a a anyone could do. If that's all you got, like, move on. Honestly, up your game. You're, you're, you're really, you're, you're not at our level. That's why you're not getting kicked. It's why you're not getting a lot of attention from people in the chat. It's because you're basic, bish. Okay, let's go. You two are now. <laughs> the two things that I you're supposed to be. I don't know what fish or fish is. I don't know what the Whoa. fuck she's on about, but the two things that you're supposed to be roasting her about are the two things these feminists can't even fucking get. They can't even get that shit right. You know, having a body count and empowerment. There's something I want to point out I didn't about say this. Anything about her look. This there's something I want to point out that the fucking projection. Notice how she went all from happy and sweet and shit to venomous like a motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You're just a troll. Well, no, because I've been in there twice before. And I went in this last time under my other channel because the last time I went in there, she fucking started ignoring me because I made a fucking video about her. So at the end, I told her because her people in her comment section were all being stupid. And trying to talk shit, and I was like, I just want to, um, I just want to have a conversation with her, and she won't have a conversation with me. Um, and then she said, I don't even know who you are. I was like, Oh, sorry, I'm under my other channel. Here's my other channel, and she fucking went silent after that, and then uh. commented twice that she was getting a haircut tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn, you made it. <laughs> You made a chick get a haircut. That's that's, that's, that's fucked up. You know, like I gotta get a haircut. She stressed me yeah, out. I mean, I all the shit she was saying. These are the people that are teaching our children. Well, they're two faces. Fuck. I just wanted to point out the pr limit of projection. They try to put words in people's mouths, and it was so funny to watch just that evolve. Went for all happy and sweet and loving and all this other shit, and then the moment you say something, <laughs> everything just kind of shuts down. And she gets all like like fucking hissing snake shooting venom. That shit was just hilarious. I'm sorry. Just you'd know her going off about <laughs> everything. Yeah, she just like blamed you for every problem of the fucking world and then I'm laughing. I mean, I didn't know the greatest threat to humanity was a bunch of old dead white dudes. Oh my god, you know, this we're just Ooh, damn it, Ryan, stop sending old dead people after me. Good lord. I can't take it. I mean it's just I don't even know what the what our fucking point was about that. It's just it's everything on page of you kind of sucks anyway. I mean, just 
She made a 50 minute reaction to a 10 minute video. It's pretty damn ridiculous. I mean, it's just okay, whole... She kept saying white men like 150 times. Yeah. That was another weird thing. Like I mean, she couldn't just one and done. Men. What's weird about that is she couldn't just one and done that shit. She just kept repeating and hyphening and I'm like, okay, what the fuck? You know, we no, get the it, whole Jesus. Thing is just that over and over and over and over and over. White men did this to uh, black people. White men uh, did this to women. She even said that white men stole their fucking wife's love. Like, <laughs> how the hell do you steal love? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm trying to understand why these sorts of women take pleasure in things. It's like, why do they not realize that if they were born in those times, they'd probably be just as racist, or they have the whole, they'd hold the yep. same. View? You know, do they not? Um, it's like, it's sort of like um, laughing at a child who can't walk just because you are an adult who's mature enough to, you know, who's gone through this, the, the, you know, mouth phase and now can walk. It's like you were there, you know, and if you were that old, you'd be doing the exact same thing. You'd still be struggling with your mathematics, your all sorts of things like that. You wouldn't be able to, to talk. Like, What's the point of this? What, yeah, so I, 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 I just sorry. I, I just want to add this one, this one uh, little factoid on, onto that narrative. Like people don't realize how long ago, like the American Revolution was. Like they, I mean, maybe people. I find this very unsettling. But you know, like the tax collectors, the British tax collectors, how they dealt with them in the early phases to, on on the way to to to, to having the revolution is they would tar and feather the tax collectors. Like, just imagine that, like, justice in your community yeah. is done by, t I mean, tar and feathering. Like, yeah. boiling, tar. Tar. I mean, like, that's medieval bullshit. You know, like, yeah. that's, that's really messed up. Like, on, I love on, like, it. Like, I love it's like it. horror, horror <laughs> level of, you know, like, mass, vi that's a form of sanctioned mass violence and mass hysteria. I mean, you just... Yeah. These people are not that civilized. I just want to, I, I'm sorry right. to, to shit on America's history, but yeah. uh, anyway, it, it, not such great people. In, in my view, if you tar and feather someone like you, civilization is a bit uh, is a bit a ways away. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, people yeah, I, I, I just don't understand why people take pleasure in, in like, what's the point of pointing out that people who have, like Ryan was saying, who've died, died a long time ago, were racist, just like every other person or most people in their time? No, but Emmanuel, like, what these people... It's not like you're probably any less racist, really, if you're actually like... No, looking, but, but know, Emmanuel, like, what, what people about? don't understand is when they look back to the past, they, equ they equivalent uh, modern standards to the standards that they lived back then. You can't fucking do that because when you do that, everything is hypocritical, hypocritical, and nothing makes sense. Because, because right. if today, because like today, like you know, things that oh, okay, there are women that are saying that Shakespeare was a misogynist, that he hated women, when all he wrote was peace, love. love about women and how right? they're important and they should be the cornerstone of your focus as a man if you look at all the stories that's generally the the, the idea and that's why the, re the reason other men loved it because there are men back then who lived and died for women yeah. that was kind of the whole point all men live and die for shut up ryan <laughs> if it wasn't for women men wouldn't get out of bed in the morning y yes don't lie yes <laughs> i have you know i have a whole set of comic books to read in my <laughs> but no but no no but they're saying like oh men went to wars and they protect the women and this and that oh yes. so women were just properties they just used them for their pussy and this yes. and that. I'm like, right. yes. yo i'm telling i'm telling you <laughs> what I, okay I said, okay okay think about back then when the vikings are raiding and pillaging pillaging in england what the fuck happened when they came in and they were beating everything up they took the women and the women like shit he my new husband <laughs> that's what the fuck happened. Right. Okay, that's what the fuck happened. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 saw some, uh, I saw some clip um, picture earlier where they were talking about how the earliest Vikings were basically black. And I was just like, whoa, what? You know? 
I was like, if that's the case, then England's got some reparations to claim from black people. <laughs> yeah, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <man. laughs> the closest thing ever historically that was maybe the Moors in Spain or some shit, but not not in the way these idiots are trying to paint it. It's just kind of, it's just funny as history is funny. It's just really funny as hell. Just uh, yeah, women. Women fold. I mean, hell, they'll have the babies of their enemies. They don't give a fuck. Hey, like Ryan said, a new husband. Fuck. They don't. They don't really care one way or the other, as long as they're being taken care of for the most part. So, it's just. Well, survival was what was important back then. Yeah, now that was that that sense. You know, we've been civilized to this point. It's kind of like, I don't need you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. I let's, mean, we've let, eliminated let, Darwinism. Let, let, let the lights go out longer than three days. See what the fuck happens. Well, yeah, we'll go out for five days. <laughs> a lot of them will say generator. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, they, uh, we eliminated like, uh, too, many, too much of Darwinism and to the point where it's women, just. Women like, are in the way of it, though. Women are in the way. Well, they blocked it. You know, they tried to put a whole safety net on the whole fucking world and shit. And you go to places where they don't have as much. I mean, other guys tell me, like, man, I went to this village or whatever. All the women were nice. I'm like, well, yeah, they kind of have to be. Like, why? Because nobody there got shit. That's why. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yep. it's just kind of the thing. No one, no one got shit there. So it's a third world country. With this crazy bitch, um, she's... I don't psych from a psych perspective. <laughs> what compels these crazy bitches to do this shit? Unresolved issues in their own personal life. I mean, I, I've I've seen that woman's YouTube before. I think maybe you linked uh, one thing to me of her or something like that, and and uh, or I, I and I, I don't like being exposed to that at all because to me yeah. it's just. Monotonous, and it's it's like kind of it's just so toxic because you know it's it's sort of like they, they see themselves as comedians in some way, you know that they're just presenting something that is so obvious to everyone, and it's like if this needs to be explained to you, if you don't already understand this, you know, and right. it's so you know it, it's so superficial, and it's it's just you know, and and it's pretending to be so sophisticated simultaneously, and right. like you know, you're just playing with these very s simple gimmicks, and you're just repeating the narrative monotonously. You know, it, it's just yes. basically so you're just entrenching the narrative, and you're solidifying it, and you're crystallizing it, and then you're just basically saying, well, this is the polemic of our time. If people aren't on boards, you know, like, they, then they're a part of the problem, essentially. So it's just kind of self-aggrandizement towards a kind of self-righteousness or a moral sanctimoniousness, which is to be shared. So she is what I would call a cerebral histrionic. She has her reductive worldview, and she is just going through the mo you know, destiny does this on YouTube. Um, the, the 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 YouTuber where he will just in some sense you know he will have maybe probably more of a sophisticated flourish you know like in terms of how he uh, goes through his you know sort of the motion of setting up you know like a, a topic or whatever. You know? So like you know these people are trying to set themselves up you know, sort of to look like like they they are. I know they're exemplifying a kind of a formulaic way of translating data into their worldview. And so they're just showing, they're just showing how everything aligns with their worldview, how everything plugs into their worldview and it explains these things and, and it holds these things out to be sort of, the pro I mean, it's interesting because you know how you can even listen to them and there are lots of non sequiturs where it's like they will actually say what other people say about their position. Right. They will live it with themselves. It's this weird kind of sort of like, you know, it's almost like if they preemptively incorporate it into their worldview, it's like they become impervious to, to, the, to, the, to the paradox or the contradiction, you know. So it's like they are leveraging what, what people would criticize about their worldview. They have it sort of layered into their own sort of sophisticated intellectualism and it's, right. it's interesting it, it it's so uncareful it's so unserious about its own analysis it's just this kind yeah. of hodgepodge you know kind of but the idea is just that 
it it all mesmerizes you and you get transfixed into conflating this holistic narrative which just becomes so entrenched within its own cognitive dissonance and it's it's just so solidified as as you know like a uh you know like it's it, it's just then can't be moved because if you touch it you kind of if you try to move it if you, if you try to Im impose on it or, 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 or try to get it out of the way it kind of it gets its its hypocrisy rubs off onto you it rubs off onto your hand so it's this very day it says no. up a I, mean, I was going to say this about the slut walk and stuff like that yeah they are setting up a booby trap waiting yeah. to be springs on on a scapegoat so in some sense yeah. they don't have if they don't have the scapegoat here and now they're mm -hmm. doing the work of laying the trap so that so they can come back and then they can have a feast of whatever has fallen into the trap <laughs> right so, yeah. And, and they're just doing this in semantics. They're doing this in, yeah. in sophistry, and she's just one of these sophists. And it's like you can't catch her out on her incoherence because it's 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 just a it's a chorus. It's a kind of it's a it's a it's a performance. Singing, it's a, it's a song. It's a song yeah. that has a particular rhythm, right. and she's just practicing that rhythm and and, and practicing that. Well, the first time the first time I went into her chat, she was spouting off some psycholo like psychological stuff because she was talking to these two white dudes trying to convince them that they fucking needed CRT. And she kept mentioning psychology type stuff. And then somebody in the chat, I remember, I'm pretty sure said that she's a psychologist. So that's what I went in going or that's what I thought going into this last one. Um but no, she has a political science degree, like a PhD. Useless. And but but I asked because I didn't know. I asked in the chat because just watching her, I was like, is her fucking major in theater? Like, what the fuck is she yeah, even yeah. doing? Like it like she's like she maybe belonged in theater instead. Yeah. She she's such a lousy intellectual. And the the, the problem is, right? the way she reads history is so childish think about right. this way, right if if you had the first person like we think about uh, humans evolving out of the religious age into science right the first person to have the idea that maybe religion isn't all the way correct about some of the things that we see around us that person would have been very religious but they would have had like one maybe one topic where they saw starting to delve into science what we would now call science right maybe they, they're like maybe maybe we don't maybe the, the sun doesn't revolve around us maybe we are the ones who revolve around the sun you know but maybe in everything else they're very religious you know point, that's the point, same point. sort of development you'd, you'd expect to see with regards to race the first person to take the initial steps towards non-racialism was probably quite racist and over time, people developed this idea until it got to a point where it's like, okay, maybe let's not just consider, let's say, let's say non-racialism um, went from just white people towards maybe Europeans, and then expanded towards being, let's incorporate everyone in the, in the world and see them as equal humans. That's, that's a process. And to expect people like Benjamin Franklin and all these people to have everything perfectly aligned with today's standards is ridiculous and it's also uh, uh, it's it's like they have a blind spot to the fact that what if you are the um benjamin Frank, uh, franklin of you know the 21st uh, century what she if is. 100 years now, people sentence. are going to be looking at you as just as flawed as as they look at um benjamin franklin point yeah, blank it's, it's not point, the blank. point blank there yeah. are some people that read through history any time thing that they read like a child will read through a fantasy book. There were dragons and they burnt down villages and oh my god, the dragons had fire. No shit. I mean, it's just, that's pretty much what she was like reiterating the fact. And then she had to hyphenate and just kept hammering it in. And it's like, damn. It's not even a matter of who's right or wrong at that fucking point. It's just how you're telling a story, how you're observing something. It didn't need to be hammered in. Got it first time. Didn't need to hammer it in. Okay, let me keep hammering in. It's just. I mean, it's because they have so little to, to, to analyze and talk about. But also, I mean, I just want to point out two of the incoherent things here is that she, so she, you know, so it's stupid, I think, to conflate 
one of the forefathers of American democracy in terms of how he's talking about democracy. And then obviously, you know, he doesn't use racial language. He doesn't say the white public. He's talking about democracy in the public, which in some sense maybe she doesn't. She kept adding white, though, to it. She kept yeah, adding yeah, yeah. white to everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm so he's just so I mean that you could call that kind of democratic philosophy, which you can salvage. You can just look at oh, this is how he framed democracy, and this is how he kind of construed it, which didn't even include women at the time. You know, like uh, essentially, but but you know, but you can use you can generalize the word public, and which has now you know been properly fleshed out as a word. But uh, but and then she reads something that Ben Franklin said that was actually racist. And then she says, this is how incoherent her, her whole worldview is. She says, you see, it's the same as CRT. How is this not CRT? It's like, yes, yes, CRT is as racist as this. Yes, right. it is. It's both racist. It's both bullshit. Like, right. thank you for bringing 300 years of racism into the present. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> uh, like, 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 you know, pointing at something and saying, look, this is the same as CRT, like as if that's like an accolade to her worldview, if, if that's like a, a prize that she's won or something like that. It's disgusting. It's like, yes, we, we had hoped that we actually eclipsed that, that we left that in history. But no, we have people like you. That resurrected the bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking religious bitches. <laughs> uh, at this point in time, whenever I hear uh, about someone being a doctor, I sort of have to ask in like in what field, because I'm not going to give you all the same sort of you know almost automatic um, deference or, or, or respect. Yeah. You know. No, she does uh, zero if, fucking zero. If you if you're a doctor from the humanities, I, I you have to prove to me that you're actually worthy of that title because. She's not. That's the thing. But she's been she's been uh, creating papers or something and influencing fucking policy. I mean, she's been in the UK for or in Germany for a while. I mean, <laughs> to do what? What is she being employed to, to do? That I I don't know. She she worked <laughs> she worked on some fucking political shit in the UK. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What? How? How does the fact that you've just pointed out that Benjamin Franklin is was a racist? What does that do to in which help people today? Like it, the thing is, it doesn't doesn't change anything. It's just some pointless fucking rhetoric. Right or wrong, it didn't even fucking matter. A point was irrelevant to really anything that that fucking matters today. And that's why that's the thing that they when feminists write their books is written from the perception of a nine-year-old reading about dragons and knights is written that way they describe it that way and then and then there was that weird little weird hand movement when she was like 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 talking shit about a man and a little fucking little weird cat thing she was doing I don't, I don't know what the fuck that was all about but just it's just these people are adult children trying their damnness to emulate what would otherwise be some deep conversation it, like the context doesn't oh, even the matter bish, the bish thing yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it, many, i don't know what it means either my son no, doesn't no. either so apparently it's not cool yeah because i've never heard that before vish like bish with a v or something i don't i don't i don't know it's i think it was her way of saying bitch yeah yeah. And the sort of sass with which she said it was very um, reminiscent of like the typical hood black chick that I see like, you know, in the media from America. Would that not qualify as cultural know. appropriation? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's kind of hard to appropriate a water buffalo. You got to have the right, you know, <laughs> you know, qualification. You, be, you know, there's a weight requirement. You got to eat enough Twinkies, you know, to, to get to that point. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's That's she's up shame. there though. <laughs> <laughs> she's up there though. She's about a hundred Twinkies away from it. You know, you're about fifty, fifty more, maybe like a day or two. She'll be eating yeah. five hundred Twinkies and a thing. Point being though, these people don't actually co uh, contribute anything of value to society. And right, they just they're, like, they're destructive. The fact that like we're literally only paying attention to them because we're just amazed at how someone can, you know go through all of the milestones of development and come out such a, an unproductive member of society, you know? 
but besides that, like, besides the theatre of, you know, all of the antics, it's, there's not much that she's contributing. And imagine being on your deathbed and reflecting on your life and realising at that point in time that you just wasted what could possibly be your, your one and only life talking about all of this nonsense. Yeah. I, yeah. I just I mean I'm amazed at what I'm looking at because you know you can just imagine so that she has a house or she has a residence and it's filled with things that have been bought with money that was made peddling the shit. You know, like it just yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, this is why we don't have not, this is why we haven't made progress. This is why right? we've gone backwards. Right. You know, it's because yeah. we're funding this bullshit and it's yeah. just literally a diversion from any kind of practical you know, progress in any tangible dimension, you know. Yeah. She's yeah. basically an intellectual only fans model. Yeah, yeah. Well, like he said, a cerebral histrionic. Watch this shit, though. This was What's weird. special about America is that what matters is not where you come from, but where you're headed. <laughs> I... I... I can't. I can't. It... What the fuck she, is that, guy? She, she, <laughs> see, so, so, good mother, this is what we're yeah. not going to do, okay? You know we say they're going to die with cats and dogs. I don't want to see the in-between, but like, <laughs> before, right when they get the dog and, no, before, and before they die, or whatever, whatever the fuck she has. She, the, no, she has a cat that she dresses up like a lion. Okay, I don't want to see what happens when she gets the cat and right before she croaks, okay? I don't want to see that shit. Okay, that's why they can keep that shit in their fucking apartment that smells like cat piss, all right? I don't want to see that. What the fuck was that? I don't know what that was, honestly. I've never seen anybody that isn't fucking mentally ill do anything like that. That is mental illness. Well, I mean... I don't think any amount of tax dollars is going to fix that. I'm sorry. That's it's not stop gonna stop being well, that ex- well, that explains why our cats keep jumping off the second story of the fucking apartment. I mean, they can't deal with that shit. I mean, I w- I jump too. Fuck. I don't know what the hell is. I don't even know what that was. But <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's not even a name for that. I mean, some muscle conjo. I don't know, muscle contraction, weird shit. Right. I don't know. A seizure. What was that? Jim. Jim said. Jim said. Germany is fucked without the U.S. backup. A country of hookers these days. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, you know, there's a lot of women with or without a degree. I mean, especially the 20 year old motherfuckers. They, they do this kind of shit, and and it's making people think they're fucking loony as hell, and they are. I mean, they get these damn degrees, and these are the people teaching, teaching. Gender studies. Kids. Gender studies too. She's written papers on fucking gender studies. Holy oh, she, shit. Yeah. Holy shit, the fucking tax rate in Germany is so fucking high. Why? How high is it? From so so zero dollars to ninety nine thousand seven hundred forty-four euros is zero percent, but then nine thousand seven hundred to fifty-seven thousand goes from fourteen percent to forty-two percent. Forty-two percent is the highest um, marginal tax rate. Yeah, so 9,000 to 57 goes from yeah, 14 high. to that's 42%. For percent. And then 57,000 to 270,000 is 42%. Yeah. yeah ours is 45, right? 40, I think ours is 45. So basically, then, anything above yeah. 45,000, every dollar you make, you have to get, you get taxed 40 cents for. Yep. yep. What's the point of working? Uh, no. what's, what's the, well, what's they the don't just actually... give me the amount again? Pardon? Uh, the amount for the forty-two percent. Uh, so forty-two percent, forty-five thousand to forty-five thousand to fifty-seven thousand. Forty-five thousand euros. Yes. Let's see. I just want to see what that is in rands. That's about eight hundred thousand rand. Right, and then I think our forty-five percent kicks in at about a million, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's roughly the same, yeah. What the That's fuck? insane. Why, why, <laughs> why is Germany having the same sort of tax rates that South Africa's well, having? Well, they, they have more public services than we do. Like, they have socialized medicine and they have socialized university. 
So they have free right. tertiary education and they have free uh, universal uh, uh, medicine. Yeah. Yeah, free at the cost of 45% oh. of your income. <laughs> over. Right, right. But people aren't allowed to not work either. So. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, yeah. that's also. Um, hmm. Yeah. Average but, oh, yeah. Some saying, yeah, don't forget the 19% VAT tax. Their, their VAT is at 19%. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, that's I, higher than ours. Not, yeah, though, no, like they half of the money they make goes to taxes. Like more. What the hell? Yeah. No one from the left talk about, yeah, in, in Europe, the tax rates are way higher. Um, America should be increasing their tax rates. Because, what the hell? <laughs> Bro. And I come from like a country where you know, like, standard is communism, socialism, and I'm complaining about these, uh, these tax rates. And uh, these kind of modern states are, I mean, at least if you're giving services to people based on the tax, at least you can say that you know, like, because in some sense people would have to be out of pocket for that privately. Otherwise, they would have to still pay for that in some sense. And you're just kind of spreading the cost over the progressive tax system or, or something like that. So the richer people are subsidizing poorer people in some sense. But I mean, if you have a state that has debt, and I, I think Germany probably does have some debt, I'm not sure what their public debt is. But that is, I think that that's immoral because, you know, eventually it's going to be unsustainable. And, you know, like it's, it actually really hurts people at the bottom a lot because if you can't actually start a business because the property taxes are exorbitant, you know, like you can't actually, you know, own a piece of land somewhere. You have to, you eventually, you're essentially renting it from the state. And the reason why you have to pay such high property taxes is because the, 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 the government is essentially, um, is, is, is have to, has to pay off its debt. And, you know, so if, if you yep. get public debt into a structure, it becomes so morally murky and it, it it gums up everything but the people who suffer the most are the people at the bottom because then they can't establish themselves they can't make the next move because the, you know you are basically renting your property that you own from from the from the government essentially because you you have public debt that you are essentially a, a you know a, a debtor for essentially the the, the tax uh, you know like the the taxpayer becomes a co-debtor essentially with the government and you know, like it, it's, it's uh, anyway, like that's Not the just no debtor. You are the debtor. They're just yeah. the agent, the uh, and 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 they get to benefit from the fact that <laughs> they're actually eating from the fact that they took out a loan on your behalf, which you didn't actually consent to, except through the ballot bo the ballot box, and then yeah, from there it's just like that so, toxic relationship. No, uh, the I, I don't know, with... mother, could you pull up the um tweet uh tweet that um elon musk uh put up with regards to the new taxes that you know are being proposed in uh, the state he, he sort of put like three tweets responding to it and i think it hits at the the, the heart of this issue you know uh emmanuel yeah I, I just went to the gross wage calculator for germany if you made sixty thousand dollars you would take home Thirty-seven thousand dollars, if you made sixty grand, euros. Yeah, and that's before yeah. you buy shit with the high tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so, before the, the the VAT. That's so before the it, VAT. That's before all of the other taxes that they probably charge. And yeah, everything. you would pay ten thousand yeah. dollars just to the tax system. Then pension fifty-five hundred, unemployed insurance seven hundred, health insurance five thousand, healthcare insurance a thousand, and then social charges eleven thousand. There should be there should be a compulsory like um, year every four years that um, people just don't pay any tax just to get the feel get a sense of what it's like to not have the the government involved and then to like constantly remind themselves after that one year that um, do we really want to do this again <laughs> like <Right. to> have... <laughs> you know um, I don't know. He was responding to, I sent to you via um, the private chat, um, oh. sent you a link. He was responding to um, the private chat in on StreamYard. He was, oh. yeah, he was uh, responding to a tweet that I was talking about. Yeah, 
this new tax is going to allow us to get this much and, um, and Musk and blah 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 and I guess he was just clapping back at that it was quite cool mm. yeah I say a little while ago it was I can do I can just reset it again sorry if you're looking private chat yeah Uh, if you could just like scroll up so that um you know they could get the context of everything. Uh yeah. So let me just try and read that out. Basically they're saying um uh Musk would pay as much as fifty billion dollars dollars under the tax over its first five years, while uh Jeff uh Bezos Bezos um could pay as much as forty four billion dollars. Democrats' billionaire tax would heavily target 10 wealthiest Americans. So from there, Elon Musk responds to, um, I guess, this article. Um, if you could scroll down. Uh, Gamal, if you could just scroll down. So, um... There's so many problems with this tax. Yeah, it's insane. Um, Elon Musk says, according to their own estimates, this tax only covers 10% of the $3.5 trillion spending bill. Where will the other 90% come from? The answer is you. Goes on to say, yes, uh, the U.S. national debt is 28, what is that? Um, 28,900 billion, which is, which is, I guess, 28 trillion, 900 billion. Um, Right, uh, uh, and then it says in, in 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 American language, that's because their their trillions are different to our trillions. So that's I, I think that's two hundred eighty nine American trillion, but it's anyway. But anyway, yeah, something like that. that. And then um, he's yeah, or two hundred twenty nine thousand rand. Um, I'm saying rand uh, dollars <laughs> per taxpayer. I have it. Um, even taxing all billionaires at one hundred percent would only make a small dent in that number. So. Yeah. Obviously, the rest must come from the general public. This is basic math. Yep. Spending is the real problem. Yes. <laughs> Even puts a, a, a link to the US debt uh, clock. Right. Yeah. I think there's another tweet. How many? I think yeah. Yeah, but like you, you got to think about it. Like these folk, these fucking people want them to pay more taxes, even after they pay their share, and they're doing more to help society than the fucking. He said they also can't not. pay the tax. They don't have the money because that's the problem. Is that they're talking about unearned gains. So yeah. that means that if you if your stock price goes up and you hold stock, now you've just got unearned gains. The only way that you can right. pay the tax is if you sell your stock, yeah. which means you're going to divest from from your holdings of, of that. Actually, you know, you, yeah. If you if you tax working capital, it can't be working anymore. You know, right? like it's yeah, exactly, it's exactly. It's, it's stupid. stupid. Uh, no, but all they do is they, the just see, that, um, they just see the earning reports and like, oh, you're making all this money. Give it to me. No, it doesn't yeah. fucking work like that. This this even applies to houses, hey? Like if you're going to be talking about um, capital, yeah, yeah. unrealized gains. That means yeah. if you, you have a house and it turns out it's appreciated in value, you'll have to sell it. Yeah, <laughs> or take out the equity. Give it yeah, to like us. How, how do you realize a portion of your house that you can pay the tax? I mean, it's ridiculous. You'll have yeah. to take a mortgage. Uh, you can knock down some drywall and give it to them. Here's the worst part of this, right? Is that it's going to crush the, the average American. Because the average American, like, I think um, JC goes into these numbers all the time about how the average American is living, you know, hand to mouth, doesn't have enough to, to cover any sort of additional expenses. So what you're going to be doing is forcing them to sell their houses. And obviously, when these huge uh, companies are coming to you know, buy these houses, they know that you've been pressured by the, the tax man. So they're not going to buy it at a high price. You're going to, you're going to have to sell it at a much lower price just mm -hmm. to make sure that you cover um, you know, your tax obligation. Yeah, it's, but yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, if they were, uh, look, I, do, I don't think they can do this because it doesn't work for many reasons. Because what happens if your unrealized gains suddenly become unrealized losses? 
then do you get the rebates to did you get did you get the do they pay you the money back or, or something they're going to have to pay back it's the tax money but, but, yeah. but, but, but also i think that they wouldn't do this to rich people to normal rich people like they wouldn't do this for people i think sort of the the, the threshold is probably going to be like i think they said 50 billion or something or or i i, I don't know but i think the threshold is 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 quite uh I think they said only like 300 people would fall into this bracket. So I think that's how they would get around the PR nightmare. Because if everyone was was subject to this kind of taxation, it would obviously be oppressive. It would be so disruptive. You know, it would be crazy. Yeah, but, um, but the problem is that economically, it's still it's still just as dis disruptive. Yeah. Because yeah. the three the 300 you're talking about are running America. Yep. Can, can I remind so, you guys that it was a woman who proposed to do this bullshit? <laughs> not, not surprised, but the thing is, like, I, I, I can just, even uh, I, I'm yelling. I can even make my own damn example. Like, people just yeah. think money grows off trees. Oh, Brian, you have money. Okay, my company, my company did its best year was the year before the pandemic. We made about three point four million, right? You know how much I had to pay my fucking employees before I can get anything. I had to just paying them alone, no other expense. I had to spend 1.9 million out of that money. And that's not factoring in taxes. That's not factoring expenses for the place of work. That's not a factoring for benefits I have to pay for them. I had to pay that money first. How much do you think I had after all that? Only like two to three percent. People just think this money grows off trees. And a majority of it we pay in taxes. After you after you hit the two hundred and fifty thousand mark here in Canada, the tax rate goes crazy. It goes almost sixty percent. <laughs> like what the fuck? Fucking Nancy Pelosi portfolio tracker, really? <laughs> 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 By the way, did you watch that bit on PBD's podcast? Uh yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> <laughs> 200, your house is worth seventy thousand. Print four hundred. Your house is worth four hundred thousand. Tax the unrealized gains of two hundred thousand. You don't have any cash. Black rock buys your house and for pennies on the dog. Oh, oh shit! This person's account is hilarious. Like her bio or his bio, whatever his gender is. Um, <laughs> a Maria T it says. Nancy is the greatest investor to ever do it. She's the next Warren Buffett, exposing <laughs> the bad actors and government corruption one to get a time. <laughs> God. Oh, man. By the way, uh, the the third part... Oh, God, I can't stand her. Um, the third part of that Rannan backman conversation just hit the telegram. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is hilarious. This account is. <laughs> At some point, he was asking. <laughs> you, I think he said, uh, uh, like, added what's her name, uh, Nancy Pelosi, asking her for some insider information. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh man. Uh. Oh, this is hilarious. Like the whole thing, about, this whole thing about um, the new tax, I, I don't get why it's not getting um, serious blowback. It, it, it's insane. Well, I guess in, in some sense, it's a really sort of fringe. You, you kind of have to be a little bit familiar with economics or, or have some even like mathematical sort of some appreciation for, for like, you know, sort of, but, you know, like you can understand how, I mean, it's amazing how most people in society are just kind of like, you know, you know, normies, you know, like that they just kind of, I don't know, it, it, it's really scary, you know, like, like when you don't have journalists that have integrity, when you, you, when you just have, you know, sort of these broadcasters and these loudspeakers, you know, sort of in, enthroning the masses, you know, right. like their, uh, I, I know Michael Malice spoke about this. Uh, I, I, he referenced a book, but, you know, there's always this kind of, he calls it the, the ballast of history, which is, you know, sort of this mob of people that just kind of get carried along by, and there's always a lot of tumultuous, you know, sort of contention within this mass. And, you know, they'll believe anything. They'll, they'll go on to any different fad, you know, and that's it's always been weighing us down. And, you know, 
I think the slow march of progress has been sort of, you know, having things like the rule of law as a concept, but that's been more realized in some places than others. And in some sense, we are boiling in the contradiction that we don't really have the proper rule of law. And in some, anyway, that's my polemic of, of but uh, let me not keep on repeating myself, but uh, yeah. uh, I do, we have the law of man or woman, the yeah. law of woman. <laughs> okay. I, 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 need to, I need to go outside and get in the sun before there's no more sun. It's half past 2 p.m. Yeah. But, uh, Gray just came up. Hey, if I can say something real quick. Sure, Brandon. Um, there's two things. Well, with a value added tax, for example, you can't even be able to sell your house or sell any investment because anything that you've that added through value, you're going to pay taxes on that. Then you have to pay taxes on the real estate. Then you have to pay taxes on the sell. Like a two hundred thousand dollar house, you'd have to sell for like three hundred, four hundred thousand just to break even, because you're going to have to pay a value added tax. What? And then the one talking about the four hundred or was it $600 that they're going to track from you? The banks aren't going to take that fee for managing all that. They're going to charge every transaction about a penny because I, I basically work for investment company. So I kind of know what's going to happen. So every single person's yeah. bank account is not going to be free anymore. Every single mm -hmm. transaction that's over $600 that so they're going to track for the banks, the banks are going to have to track for the government. There's going to be a penny fee. So the banks are going to make all this money and everything is going to go up. So if you look at the supply chain, say you buy a loaf of bread, farmer buy, farmer makes the bread, he, he sells the bread, that's over $600. Okay, he's paying a penny. Transporter company is going to have to deposit that $600. So that's going to be a penny charge to him. They're going to go to Mexico to make the bread. They're going to have to pay a penny to sell it. You're going to, have to pay a penny for the forex exchange then you're gonna to have to pay a penny back for the trucker and sends it back to the united states to a grocery store so even like a simple good might go up yeah. per unit maybe 27 cents so imagine every yeah. single good in the united states like doubling in money that's inflation that's, that's what's gonna happen with oh, just, yeah. the stupid <laughs> ball, just to go after like elite and the thing is everybody all the illegals money that what they're trying to do is they're going after the illegals because what happens is you get a donor account that has a family member that's a United States person or whatever the case may be, and they have that money. So then they'll deposit the money into the bank account. So what they're looking for is people's bank accounts that are like, say you work $15 an hour and you're getting like six, 15 or six, $600 deposits because um, illegals are using your bank account just to live. They're going after those people. So it, it's really not going to net a lot of money for the United States government, it's gonna, but it's going to cost everybody probably their livelihoods mm -hmm. because everything's yeah. going to go expensive. You think like a gallon of milk is going to be like three fifty a gallon? It's probably going to be like four seventy five a gallon. I, I've never had more of it's a reason just, to they start. Don't, Democrats just don't in understand economics. It's really that simple. They it's such a it. violation of of our rights, especially if, <laughs> it's taxation without representation. It, it's it's rubbish. It, That's yeah. why they don't the teach that, the bill of rights anymore, yeah. or or the or any or anything like that. Because if you actually look at the the um, Declaration of Independence, we violate about ninety percent of it. So if, if they actually taught that, people would be like, oh, wait a minute, we violate this, 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 this. Why aren't we at war? That's why they don't teach the Declaration of Independence anymore. I'm telling you that right now. I, I don't understand. So, like, is there a new regulation that they have to monitor every transaction over 600 and then the banks are going to put a fee on it? But, I mean, surely, I mean, well, the, uh, banks are, the banks are doing it for free. So... Yeah, so under the yeah. new Biden infrastructure plan, every single transaction that's above six hundred dollars, which is basically a person's pay at fifteen bucks an hour. So anybody that's making fifteen bucks an hour or more is going to be making more than six hundred dollars deposit every whatever their paycheck is. <clears throat> that's going to have to be tracked to the government. Banks aren't doing it for free, so they're going to have to charge a fee. I'm just using a penny as an example. It might be more than a penny. So every single transaction that's yeah, four I, I mentioned that it, it shouldn't have to cost them. or the 
for a, a, a deposit or or taking out above six hundred dollars is going to be tapped. There's going to be a fee for it now because the banks aren't doing stuff for free. I'll tell you that right now. They're going to pass the charges. Yeah, no, no, but, but that doesn't That's mean why taxes. It, just because. No, no, well, it's it's going to cost them something to do it, but that doesn't mean that it's going to that they're going to charge it for each individual thing. I mean, like they could just systematize it and and essentially have the cost. Like it's you know it, the cost could be that they have to have an extra computer that does an extra algorithm or a different you know aggregated. I I don't see why it would necessarily cost each transaction. Because you're going to have to you. The regulations, you're going to have to track it. You're going to have to submit it. Nothing in the government's easy. There, there's going to be paperwork involved. No matter how you look at it, there's going to be paperwork, and someone's going to have to fill out the paperwork. So they're going to have to hire somebody, yeah. and that's going to also. Yeah. Like, no one's – anytime you're going to pass a law, so you're going to have to do the regulation with it. So you, you can't just like – the system no. might not be able to yes, be automated. I'll, right I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, not saying it won't be, I'm not saying that it won't be costly and that the cost won't be passed on to the customer. Obviously, the cost will be passed on to the customer. It, it'll be the part of a cost of business. But at some point, it should be integrated. It should be systematized. And you could sort of run it parallel with – I mean, yes, you'll have an extra bureaucrat that has to submit something or something like that or, or to confirm the system. But I mean, like, you know, banks are, probably already have the infrastructure in place to monitor this. They just have to have an extra sort of capture, uh, you know, or, or, or way of, of siphoning the information that is already being captured in, into, you know, some kind of presentable form. So, I mean, right. I just I, I just don't think it's going to cost per transaction necessarily. I mean, banks will structure this differently, perhaps, or they'll find, you know, that's what the competition in the market is. But I mean, I, I don't except that it's necessarily going to cost a penny uh, a, a transaction. I, I just think that's a bit of a... You don't think the bank's going to charge more money so they can, they can take well, this penny and make a penny... I, I really, no, I really concede that they will charge more money, but I'm just saying that it's not going to be per transaction. It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be per transaction. Why would it not be, though, uh, Sag? Because you can't compare, say, for example, the average person who has only so many transactions per week to an, an, an entire organization that has loads of transactions per week you can't to 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 try you know make the overall cost be borne equally um across all of these people would be you know unrealistic you'd have essentially you'd have people who are um who only uh, maybe transact maybe once or twice a week having to pay the same sort of amount that you know someone who pays and transacts a thousand times a minute uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but, well, I, I mean, my, my point is quite simple: is that transactions are already done at at some cost Tr yeah. without recording the transaction. The transaction is already being performed on some sense. Okay. Now, what's to say that in whatever the government regulation is? Obviously, I don't know the details of that. That that has to be itemized for each transaction. Maybe it can just be summarized in terms of well, this is the total you know sort of debit or credit or, or, or movement you know so you if you if you only have to report an aggregated sum then all you have to do is make sure that for each account that you you work out what the aggregated movement was or the aggregated transaction was you know in and mm -hmm. out or something like that and so yeah. it, you know the idea that it has to be itemized is i think you know so mm -hmm. already transactions have they have to keep a record of something they have to because they, they have to know what is transferred or whatever if there's a problem with the transfer or if, if you dispute a transfer so they already have records of something right so it's just like in terms of reproducing something that is already in the system but displaying it in such a way that it conforms with the regulation obviously that's like an added bureaucrat but that's something that I imagine will just be systematized. And I don't see, so, I mean, yes, there will be some added costs, but I don't think it'll be anywhere close that's to awesome. per, per transaction. I mean, it, potentially, but I, I can imagine different banks will do it more smartly than others. will find a way to yeah. integrate it into their already functioning system better than others. And they will offer perhaps a better rate or something like that. But I mean, usually um, these things are only expensive in setting them up. Yeah, Emmanuel, are you are you logged in? Uh, yeah. The controls. Okay, I need yeah. I need yeah. to go because I need to take a nap before my <clears throat> first appointment. <clears throat> so, <laughs> luckily she's coming later because she has an appointment. But <laughs> I need Come to on. get some shut eye 
<laughs> it was nice talking to you guys, though. Psych, thanks for coming up. And <sighs> give uh, actually, you gave me a couple ideas that I'm gonna think through for this problem. I have a good rest. I should probably go outside as well and we'll start to think about what food I'm going to prepare for today. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, it was good talking. It's nice, it was nice talking then. to everyone and yeah. having yeah. some good discussion. And sorry, Gray. Um, yeah, I know you just way. came on and you haven't really said anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I was listening. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually wanted to um, uh, pose a question to you, Gray, because Jim made some uh, statements about Germany a few like, like a little while ago. Yeah. Um, about where is it about germany being um <laughs> what did he say he said something about germany being full of hookers now saying that basically germany screwed where is that um i think I, I, I don't know if you'd like to comment on that um yeah i'm struggling to find it now i mean i don't know i mean there are certainly places in germany where there are hookers but like for the most part they're oh i found it I, I found it. He said, I don't know what Germany is fucked without the U.S. Um, U.S. backup. A country of hookers these days. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah, military is probably not so perfect in Germany. I mean, because we don't have this. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know what. What does he mean by hookers? He means like prostitutes, like women. Uh, I guess. Maybe yeah. not literally prostitutes, but maybe also like just loose women, women who are just sexually, you know, liberal. Ah, so, ah, okay. They are just uh, jumping into bed uh, just without yeah. giving it too much of a thought. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, but I wouldn't call them hookers. Like a hooker is really like a prostitute. And yeah. I think it's prostitution is legalized, but I don't see it. I mean, I think there are certain cities where this is more prominent, like Hamburg. Mm. Uh, he says he's one quarter German. So you've got one quarter of a brother there. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, a whole lot of this stuff is very interesting to see, you know, um, especially with regards to German, Germany. Um, I'm just comparing it to, you know, America. I'm comparing it to, you know, what it was before. Ah, but you know what I'm re reminded of? There is mm -hmm. actually, I saw in a documentary, oh, why, why now that you're talking about hookers, um, I think there were uh, people that were, I don't know whether they had a disability or, or they were, um, uh, Basically, the, the thing is, you you the, you you could get a hooker by the health insurance, under some rare circumstances, and I found that very weird. Wait, a hooker with with health insurance? Yeah, your health insurance pays for because for some reason you can't have so that you can take part in society. It was considered like you take part in society. In under certain circumstances, is is the health insurance uh, like socialized? Is it um, something that's paid for by the government uh, centrally, like Obamacare or? Uh, um... No, we have private health insurance, and we have this mm -hmm. uh, general uh, uh, health insurance. Does the does the general one cover hookers? I suppose so. I think that's what I saw oh, in the documentary. Word. Well, that's not fair. I mean, it's. It was not like your typical hooker. It was like, I think they were in An some mm, Yeah, like so. Let's say you, uh, let's say you have a child, but the child has a disability. Then it grows mm -hmm. up. Uh, we have like a specialized school or something where you engage in some crafts or something, so that the person does something. But they are somehow mm -hmm. limited in, in, and they're not really like part of society. And I just saw like a woman came in. She looked like a normal woman, maybe in her forties mm -hmm. or something. And they, I don't, know. I don't want to get too deep into it, but just just because you talk about hookers. Uh, but, wait yeah. a minute, wait a minute, but they don't pay taxes though. Do 
do they pay taxes for i mean do hookers pay taxes in germany great uh the at i mean at some point i think they legalized it and you have to register yeah i suppose you have mm. to pay taxes if it's an income yeah. If you're a registered hooker, yeah. Yeah, if they pay taxes, then of course that makes it a bit. That makes a whole sense. But if better, they're not, and you're know? just under the table but, cash, which a lot of the time it is. E guess even if it's not, not my, um, it's not my purview. I just. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I, it's like, guys, case, I don't right? do it. I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't do it. I was curious, case, but right? I don't do it. The problem is that they engage in an, in an activity that is inherently more risky, health-wise, right? And that means they should be either privatized so that they can pay a, a tailored fee for themselves, or they should be taxed more uh, as a result of their profession. So that essentially they're like a higher fee of contribution to the system because they're probably going to withdraw more from the system, you know? It's like, um, in much the same way that people who have a record of, you know, being bad drivers are charged a higher premium uh, for their for their insurance. So, yeah, I, I don't see how that would be fair. You know, I, I guess it's manageable because I, I assume it's a small enough percentage for people to, you know, sort of like, okay, we'll just, you know, go along with it. But if, if it gets... If it becomes a problem, eventually I, I, it would be a political issue. That why do hookers <clears throat> pay the same amount into the health system um, that I do if I'm, I'm I'm not a hooker, and yet they have the same benefits? You know, the, the thing yeah. I would just uh, maybe we can change topics, but the thing I want to point out: I don't believe Germany is a country full of hookers. Yeah, so yeah, there yeah. are hookers, but this is like a side thing. It's not. What the majority of people engage yeah, in. I just wanted then to I, on that, yeah. And yeah. if uh, women are, if normal women, like feminists or whatever you want to call them, they if they are like sexually, what's the word, promiscuous? Yeah. Then that's something different that I, I wouldn't call that a hooker. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think... uh, the thing that I wanted I, to chime in, you were talking about this financial stuff, and this uh, one mm -hmm. gentleman claimed uh, every transaction gets uh, charged a cent or something. Yeah, that was banded. Yeah, I think there's like maybe it happens, but when it happens, we will see it. So I don't see the point like making a big speculation about it. But what I can say from experience, if you are European and you, I think you open a. Uh, like uh, options trading account or something like this. Yeah, yeah. Then obviously that can could generate income. So the companies are required uh, to have you have to have a US uh, taxpayer number. And if you want an individual taxpayer identification number, you have to actually talk with the IRS. And I did that once, and uh, they would see the status of my account. And it was like a maybe. 10 years ago so i think this basically all this data collection may be so that the irs uh, if you have an irs case officer they can just punch you based on, on your identity into the computer and they see all about you so you basically yeah. you are totally transparent to them but yeah. you don't see what they have on you or, or how yeah. transparent you actually are so yeah. that's i would suppose it's all about data collection uh, even further than that, it's it's to make it easier for them to to track people high, I guess high value um, individuals, and then you know, high also, net worth yeah. individuals, mm -hmm. and try target them for 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 taxing. Mm -hmm. you know? Maybe yeah, but uh, I also know from going to the tax office in Germany for my business, the a lot of the stuff is like uh, standardized. So if I do my own taxes. It's all uh, it's all the digital forms. They have lots of data fields, and you put something into a data field, and yeah. one data field is correlated with another data field. So there are a lot of dependencies in these uh, in these when you submit the data, and yeah. uh, they uh, it does seem to me that they have like computer programs that uh, can detect certain discrepancies, so that mm. with a minimal effort and personal staffing, let's say at the tax office. The, the computer program escalates what's the most relevant for them. 
Yeah. So they can go so after that, the most yeah. uh, most taxes <clears throat> with the least For amount like of fraud product. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it it it, it makes sense, but it, it's just such an uh, what you call it um, an infringement on freedom on privacy for the average individual. You know, I mean, it, let's just stretch it a bit further to the extreme. Imagine if they're tracking every um, single dollar that you spend. It, it's it's like, geez, what more do you want? You already know how much I earn. You've taxed me there. You tax me up when I spend anyway on, 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 you know, through VAT. So why do you need to track, you know, do you get what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it just feels like yet another um, wing of, or another arm, another avenue uh, through which the government is encroaching on your personal rights, like your rights, your privacy, you know, um, with regards to your income, your spending, et cetera, et cetera. Like imagine knowing that there's some, you know, bureaucrat who knows that um, this many people bought this uh, number of, I don't know, sex toys or, or, or whatever, you know, it's, yeah, it's annoying. I, I find it very invasive, personally. I mean, I, I didn't know if I followed everything, but I mean, I think that the point was is that this was actually not even to track high potential tax targets. It was to track something like overseas remittances or like sort of illegal, uh, or perhaps illegal immigrants uh, uh, that that sort of are sending money back to, to, to their uh, home state or, or, or that it's, it's just sort of to track the flow of money out of the country as another tool to managing something to do with illegal immigration. I, I thought that that was almost the angle of it, uh, potentially. But um, I mean, anyway, I mean, this is maybe a bit, I, I do think that like already banking already is kind of very transparent. I mean, that's what sort of, I think that the regular banking structure is almost designed so that essentially, I think it's made to be designed so that like drug dealers can't just kind of launder their money through banks or whatever. And so, but the banks themselves do that, like do that monitoring in some sense where they know that they're not allowed to take money from certain sources. And so you have a kind of leaking, uh, legal banking sort of space and section of, of financial services or whatever, which is different from dark money, as it were. And then and then you get into, I mean, Elon, Elon Musk said something even quite sort of risky, I would even say, uh, as being a kind of public figure. He said, you know, not everything illegal should be illegal. And sometimes you need to purchase things on the black market, essentially. And that's what crypto is good for. You know, like if you're if your grandmother is dying of cancer and she needs cannabis and it's illegal where you live, you know, you thank God for cryptocurrency that then you can use cryptocurrency to, to purchase, uh, uh, you know, sort of marijuana that then you can use medicinally because not everything, you know, sometimes you do need to basically operate outside of the legal framework, but that, I mean, I, I make a distinction that there's a distinction between illegality and unlawfulness. Uh, but, but anyway, that's a yeah. kind of a bit of a yeah. philosophical moral distinction. But uh, anyway. Yeah, but I, I guess that's the question. It, it's how much of the gray area are we willing to tolerate for the sake of, you know, reducing frictions for, say, a person who needs a certain product for a dying grandmother versus a drug dealer, you know? So that's, that's the question. And... <clears throat> You don't want to create a system that makes it easier for people to get away with things like human trafficking, you know, all sorts of crazy things like that. But at the same time, this goes back to the whole thing of <clears throat> of freedom versus safety. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in some cases, it's, it's, it's also the question. issue of integrity because cryptocurrency is not just for illegal activity. Well, it's, I mean, it's not just for like underworld criminals. It's also for corporates. Um, uh, bribery, you know, it's never yeah. been easier to bribe someone now, you know, in the corporate yeah. world. Before it would be hard because you would, how would you give, get them the money? You would have to give them a bar of gold and it would blood, you know, you would have to have some commodity, some physical thing. Now you can just kind of do it, you can just transfer crypto in, into their, you know, their, their, their account address or whatever, or their yeah. wallet address, or whatever it's called. Uh, um, 
I mean, how is it any different from cash? I know cash obviously has, you know, serial, serial numbers and all these things to try to keep track of it. But I mean, once it's passed through a certain number of hands, it's very difficult to track, you know. Um, I, I don't see how the cryptos... The problem with cash is that it's conspicuous because in some sense, if you hold, if you use cash and you hold cash, like there's a you know, you're actually physically dealing with the cash and you're handing over the cash. Whereas whenever yeah. you're handing over crypto, that is is more inconspicuous, I would say. You yeah. know, because essentially, yeah. and so you have to actually know what the contract, the purchase is, the, the actual contract of sale or whatever, or the, the actual negotiation, you would have to be privy to that. Except I guess if you're, if you're receiving delivery of something, which is obviously like a large thing that you've ordered or, or, or that you're obtaining an object, people would say yeah. oh look he just bought that but then you you could assume that maybe he used a credit card or who knows what the method of payment was you know when you receive goods so yeah. i mean i, I just, but when you're handing over cash i mean also i i think it's famously you know that's just how people get hounded by the irs and things like that because you know they can work out that they have got cash to spend but like you know it's not connected to a bank account or something right 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 so they they track the difference and they say okay wait this is weird it's sort of like the lifestyle audits you know yeah. when they so you can sort of track that okay looking at your bank records how are you on how is someone who's earning this much able to buy a lamborghini and a yacht and you know basic things like that makes sense um yeah i just think i'd like to earn the side of of freedom and privacy yeah especially given the 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 recent moves by our governments like i mean looking at australia and new zealand that stuff is very um concerning there's a, yeah. a clip that we played earlier psych i just can't remember if you were here when we played it of the uh prime minister um uh, of what's his name new zealand um like Narvin basically literally admitting that the system that they're going for is one of two class system where you know you have the vaccinated and you have the unvaccinated um yeah, yeah and i even saw something from noam chomsky uh where he was also discussing this topic about how those who are unvaccinated should be isolated um uh from society oh, really if, if <laughs> noam ed to brute wow noam chomsky to see how he has devolved from his it's moral... insane yeah. I, I, let me try and look for it and then um hopefully i can play it um or yeah it's just with my whole audio setup i won't be able to i need to get this mic um where did you get your mic um sign well do you even consider it a, a good mic because i only get it if, if you like the quality of it I, I was actually making videos on obs with with my, while recording my desktop so i could talk about diagrams and I, yeah. I, I had to use sound filters because it, it was actually, I thought my microphone was better, uh, uh, but uh, when I was listening to it on OBS, but this is a shotgun microphone that comes from Australia and I bought okay. it on Amazon and Amazon sent it to me. I, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the link for it, but it's, it's called Rode. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I'm familiar with that. Uh, the one that's normally on like uh, DSLRs and things like that. like. People tend to use them for vlogging. Is it that one? I'm just trying to think. Where isn't DSLR a kind of camera? It's a camera. Yeah, they normally put it on the camera and then use it like to record, like just to get a bit better um, quality of audio than what you get from the native mic on the on the camera. I'm, I'm um, just trying to. F oh yeah, yeah. This is what I have. So I got this. Um, it's forty dollars, and then they are going to get you for uh, uh, it, it, man. I I did spend, but sadly, like I I just figured this would fix my life because yeah, I mean I don't like headphones. Um, sorry, this is maybe boring to gray. Uh, uh, yeah, tell me if that link works. Is that the right brand? Let me see if I can share the screen so that um, 
Uh, it doesn't look like road, right? Let me check it out real quick. I'm the micro sorry, I, expert. I, I, sorry, I, I, I think I've, I think that that is the wrong brand. But you see, the one that I have almost looks identical to this. So they've obviously copied it because uh, I'm trying to find the one that has the the covering on it. Um, because the ones that I'm looking at now from Rode, they don't have the covering oh, on it. I see. The, the oh, fluffy okay. covering. Um, yeah, that's meant to. What do they call it? Uh, the cat. What do they call it again? That cat. Oh, I, found, I found it now. Cat, I found it cat, now. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. They, they call it, it a yeti too, as well sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's for it's to cut out wind noise. No, something like that. Yeah. But what do you guys want to do with that uh, microphone? What's the application? Uh, the no, point is I, that when we're streaming, uh, say for example, right now I want to share a video, right? <clears throat> now because I'm using my uh, wireless headset, uh, headset, I can't hear and speak at the same time you know um i can share the video and you guys will be able to hear the, the audio but i can't hear it um so like i'll, I'll put up the screen now just that um so you want something watching. that picks up sound from the surrounding uh, yeah i want something that um because i want to be able to use uh, my headset for listening and then have a mic on a separate um device to, so you know, not using the mic uh, not using the headset mic headset. which you're using right now yeah, because the, the mic on my headset works perfectly, but I can't hear um, when I'm sharing a screen. Um, yeah. Okay, just mm -hmm. note that these may pick m up more of the sound in your surrounding, the room noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah but, but the sound yeah. suppression on this on this client is very, uh, like, like, like this live stream, uh, this, what's it called? Stream Yard. The StreamYard yeah. sound suppression is very good, I, I think. Well, I mean, you'll have to tell me. Cause, uh, but uh... I mean, right now, Emmanuel sounds a little bit better because oh. his, because it's the proximity. You basically, the sound sounds better the closer the microphone is to your voice. Obviously, the further you go away from the microphone, the higher this has to be regulated up so it picks up more of the room. And then room acoustics come into play. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Am I a bit <laughs> echoey, or is it just the volume that? The, no, that it's, it's perfect. No, it's okay. But oh. yeah, it's a little bit. You hear it, but it's normal. Oh, oh let's see. Yeah. So, um, by the way, Emmanuel, I did give you a second link to the actual microphone that that I use. Uh, I, the first one was incorrect. Yeah, the Rode video yeah. mic. That's a very popular one. Oh, okay, I'll, I don't know if you guys. Can see. So you basically see it. This is going to be like, well, it's almost like I, you probably don't see it like this. The two different classes of people, if you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated, you have all these rights. If you are vaccinated. That is what it is. So, yep. Yep. Can you describe as you were previously hoping not to be able to, not to have to do that, I guess, when we still mm. look like we could maintain elimination across the whole country. I guess that has now changed because. I think it was less, less because necessarily of the elimination determining that and more because we, of course, uh, maintained and actually we have managed very high vaccination rates generally without the use of certificates but actually what it's become clear to me is that they're not just a tool to drive up vaccines they're a tool for confidence people who have been vaccinated will want to know that they're around other vaccinated people uh, they want to know that they're in a safe environment it is a way that we can give confidence to those who are going back into hospitality or events uh, and so that is something that I think we should offer to people who have been vaccinated, that confidence that we're doing everything we can to keep them safe and that they can come back out and start enjoying those things safely. It's disgusting. Yep. There you have it. The, I mean, the, I mean, it's just it's completely unjustifiable. You know, the idea that the sentiments of of many people somehow, you know, sort of translates into a morally enforceable, you know, sort of stricture for somebody else, is just yeah. a, it completely penetrates the liberal fabric of of a society. You know, like uh, with caveats or or, or to, to place a kind of, I, I, I know, it's just. I can't believe that these people can't hear themselves, you know, sort of like the, what is the moral principle behind this kind of, you know, or we have the power to do it or something like that. I mean, in some sense, that's the problem is that perhaps if you live in such a, a constitutional order where you do legally 
the government has the leeway to do this kind of bullshit. You know, you know that you live in a substandard government. You know, you, you know that the, the structure of your society is 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 illegitimate on some level, on some deep level. There isn't it, it, anyway. Like I mean, I, the I, I, the I, bizarre I, thing to me is that for, uh, from the things that I heard, the this virus. So basically, the lab, the Wuhan lab, was from a French company, supposedly. The French built that Wuhan lab, right? So if you export like this crazy virus lab to China, I mean, there there got to be some export restrictions on labs like that. So some bureaucrats, they probably signed off on it. So how can the people that actually uh, directly or indirectly created that problem now are being in charge of regulating it? I mean, that's bizarre. And yeah. to my knowledge, nobody was like arrested or put in front of the court. Or why did you sell that lab to China? Was that even the like who gave you the authority? I mean, someone signed off on, signed off of, off on this lab being sold. It's like if it's a bio research lab, obviously you can do shit with it. It's kind of yeah. obvious, right? There are not that many. I think it's an S two lab. There are not that many labs in the world. And then yeah, the the, the Americans probably funding this gain of function research so who who nobody was behold was anybody hold accountable but now they want to pass regulations on me what i can and cannot do because i am vaccinated or not i mean it's like it's not yeah makes no sense to me this is where this is the world we live in now it, it, where people think well people do um you know impose these sorts of restrictions on people purely based on a medical choice and uh, i mean what happened to my body my choice what happened to uh uh, uh all of that stuff it, it, the same people who are endorsing it only all stuff it on only me. applies it only applies your body my choice only applies when it's in in a specific narrative embedded in a specific narrative that goes one way yeah yeah. So if you want to try try to apply that logic, it's uh, yeah. probably going to cause yeah. what's the word cognitive dissonance? What's cognitive dissonance? Is that the right? Yeah. Thing? It, it, it's certainly going to cause some weird. Um, I don't even know what that means. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it just means that you you think two things that are that don't fit together. So like you know, it's sort of you 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 you. you believe two things that, that sort of literally contradict each other, but somehow you, you claim to hold both. Yeah, at the same time. Yeah, it, it's, it's unreal how we've devolved over the past two or whatever years as, as a, not just a society, but as a, a whole, I don't know, um, div, what, 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 what can I say? I, I, uh, I think the, the, the culture, the, the kind of the yeah. intellectual, but, but also the, the political culture, just but in terms of the general political discourse itself, how that that whole structure has sort of degraded into, you know, like a narrative warfare. You know, it's interesting that Alex Jones called his thing Infowars, you know, kind of before, you know, almost preemptively, you know, it, it kind of because it really mm. is. It's like gaslighting, you know, it's like so instead of having heads roll or anyone taking responsibility within the establishment, you know, like instead of working out, you know, where this virus came from and who's responsible for letting, you know, people do this stuff. Instead, we have to put up with the witch hunt of the people who are unvaccinated, who don't want to have an experimental vaccine, you know, like, so, so, you know, like I, I can't say, well, actually I would prefer because I'm not in a risk category. So I would prefer to find out what the consequences of this vaccine are 10 years from now when we know everything or we know more about it, you know, like I'd rather not be, you know, sort of, you know, and I've probably already had the virus twice and I, and I probably have, uh, I think that there was a separate virus that went around. I, I, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say this on somebody else's live stream, but uh, <laughs> like, I, I think that, I think that the vaccine caused an outbreak of some kind because that's what I think happened in Australia as well. Australia had eradicated the virus. They start vaccinating people. Suddenly, they say that it, it escaped from the airport, that someone to do with an airport, uh, you know, had just, to, just so happens that they eradicated the virus, but it just 
as they started vaccinating people, suddenly they had another outbreak and suddenly it came out of the airport, supposedly. I, I don't believe that. I, th I think that it's a well-known phenomenon that, that vaccines cause illness. Like if you have the measles vaccine and other people don't have the measles vaccine, the people who don't have the measles vaccine, like children, will get measles from the ones that got the measles vaccine. Like viruses spread from vaccinated people to unvaccinated people because you are literally you're being afflicted with with the virus. Um, mm. it, it happens at a low rate, but it still happens. Um, so I, I think the same anyway, sorry, I'm kind of talking, but so but and even that, like, you know, what are the actual effects of it? So, I mean, I would like to know what the long term effects are. I mean, like, you know, all of this stuff is comes from psychiatry. You know, we don't we make these Frankenstein things. We don't know the long term consequences, but it's like we just use epidemiology and we just say, oh, yeah, there's some correlation to some uh, an abatement of symptoms, you know. So you're just always mm -hmm. managing the effects with statistical models of how good this thing is. But, you know, like you don't know what the long term structural thing is you know like i mean biochemistry is so complicated it's impossible i mean we have known all the biochemical things within the body for a very very long time but because they're so interconnected and interwoven you can't know systemically what you know like i mean this is you know it, it, the human body is basically so complicated that's what makes it sort of and you can't really game it that well you have to be quite intelligent about how you intervene with it and especially when we start making chemicals that have never existed in interaction with our physiology ever, you know, with our biochemistry. We're doing things with biochemistry that, like, have never happened before. But anyway, I'm making a, a general kind of hysterical claim, maybe. But, you know, at some point, you actually have to know that the kind of medical data that we have and the kind of medical science that we have is not pure understanding. It really is a kind of inductive statistical yeah. model you know it's, it's kind of like you know well you know and, and especially when you don't understand personalized medicine well enough you know like medicine itself is in a very bad state like you can't have general medicines for general people like we have different you know we have different me mechanisms going on you know we even have different physiologies like some people okay. have different musculature structures you know some people have di completely different calves to other people you know just a, 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 as an example, you know, like we, we we all have different blood types, you know, like we're not mm. this homogenous mass, you know, like you you can't as soon as you start trying to generalize medicine across all of these different categories, you know that you're not really dealing in in a real sort of understanding of, of the actual structure. You're just kind of throwing shit and seeing what sticks, you know, like you're just kind of, you know, you, it's it's funny, right, uh, Sai, that you just pointed to something. Um that the people who were previously so loud about uh, all of the different genders, all of the non-binary stuff, are happily able, willing to accept that what that a vaccine works for everyone. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> that's cognitive dissonance. You know, it, it's having two it, like completely conflicting ideas and holding them at the same time. It, it, it's insane to me. Only for it's them, like, it's not conflicting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, people don't have. This is a, this is the thing, though. If you don't have, as you're saying earlier, psych. If you haven't got the exposure to certainly mathematics, logic, um, and by logic, I, I, I don't mean in the more abstract abstract term. I mean more closely to um, mathematics. I'm talking set theory, all sorts of things like that. Um, if you don't have a, a decent grasp on these things, you'll find it very difficult to understand statistics. You'll very, find it very difficult to understand variation and how you're supposed to conceptualize it, you know, and treat it. Uh, and what you get from people who have this clumsy understanding of statistics is that they just sort of wait for a nicely worded statistic that suits their uh, narrative and they just bash you with it. They don't actually have an understanding of how all of these systems work, you know? And I think that's that's what we're finding more and more is the case with, you know, just the general conversation that's being had on social media, just in politics, in society as a whole. Is that it's just people throwing whatever statistics suit them uh, and using them as like some sort of hammer to just beat down whoever's 
um, opposing them. And they think that's a good faith debate just because they've managed to curate some convenient statistics, you know, like the whole debate over the gender, uh, gender wage gap uh, and all sorts of other issues, you know, even, even the whole issue with BLM, with uh, 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 affirmative action, with all sorts of issues that we are currently, you know, at the top of the agenda for society. It's just, no one's actually talking, we're not talking like to each other. It's sort of like we're talking past each other and people just want to say what they got to say and then, you know, be done with it. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah. there are kind of two elements to this is that sort of we've created this kind of cultural uh, normalization of people living in their own little cocoon and not actually directly confronting each other's views or negotiating on a level that where you're actually susceptible, where you actually put sort of your substantiation on the table. Because then if your substantiation actually, you know, gets diminished or gets demolished by the other person, then you actually sort of are on the hook for having to change your views or change your beliefs about something, you know. And so people are in this kind of practiced sort of view of sort of just trading volleys of, of you know, just kind of like um, essentially very non indirect ways of trying to sort of cast shade on somebody else's worldview, but without actually sort of making themselves vulnerable. And then, you know, it's very hard to do that because if you do that with someone who's intellectually dishonest, then they will take, you know, they'll take you for all your, your worth then essentially, because then they'll just leverage hard skepticism against that. Because, you know, so if you try to have an authentic exchange, you know, you are very vulnerable to hard skepticism. So you have to actually have some filter that you know that the other person isn't into those kinds of dark arts of sophistry and, and you know, kind of rhetorical witchcraft where you're just kind of, you're, you are just claiming that you hold the defaults, that basically if everyone else gets disproven, like because your substantiation is made vulnerable, like you win by default, you know. So basically, if you can just sh show that there's dubiousness or doubt on somebody else's position, then somehow you automatically win because you have didn't get any dirt stuck to your position, you know. And so it's that kind of, and that is a very superficial sophistry kind of you know maneuver to pull essentially, where you know you you, you attack the other person's vulnerability. But you never show any vulnerability yourself. But that's a kind of dishonesty. But that's kind of glossed over because it's just been normalized that people are just we accept people giving nonchalant, you know, kind of very obtuse ways of framing their position, very indirect ways of kind of claiming that their position holds some kind of natural dominance or, or currency. But I'm just trying to find this video. It would even be worth us uh, to watching it. It's a video from a CIA specialist who was a CIA uh, analyst, and they were just talking about heuristics for finding the truth, and just they were going through three basic things, and they yeah. were just saying like, and it's a very good catalog of how stupid people or how you know pseudo intellectualism kind of comports itself mm. because it kind of trades on these built in dishonesties like like there's, a, there's an intrinsic yeah. So, yeah the shortcuts are being made but then there are these it's connected with all these like logical fallacies almost in some sense so yeah. i'm just trying to I'm so bad i, I, I remember this. um when i was studying at uct that was the first exposure like i had to sort of i, I guess what you what you'd call critical thinking um uh was the exposure to logical fallacies and heuristics and I think the most humbling thing about that course was, you know, us being made aware that even the people who who are intelligent are, you know, um, what's the word, um, susceptible to yeah. to these sorts of um, heuristics. And yes, they have they have application. They, what's attractive about them is that they actually do work. They actually have a good stick rate. They have a good um, accuracy rate. So, say you have a, a method of thinking that is correct seventy to eighty percent of the time. It's very difficult to let to let go of something that's eighty percent correct. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the appeal, uh, and that's what that's what politicians use. Uh, politicians, you know, sophists, as you were saying, um, all sorts of people who want to manipulate you. They use these weaknesses. They know that if I can present something that. Um, <clears throat> 
is right 80% of the time, and it can somehow convince you that it's right this time. Like, I mean, how can you dismiss it? It's right 80% of the time. Yeah. And it's like, no, but you need to use it along with nuance. You need to be able to, you know, you need to have the mechanism in, in place to detect when it is incorrect, when that 20% starts to be a factor. And if yeah. you pretending that the 80% is 100, then I mean, you've got a huge, get like a huge blind spot. Yeah. I don't know if you, okay, you sent into the chat, so I'll just share oh, it quickly before I dash to take a leak. Um, okay. Yeah. Let me it's see. quite long, um, sadly, but uh, maybe, maybe the first, uh, maybe you can try skip past if, if there's an introduction. Okay. Um, let's see. Share. I think she calls the, them blind spots. Yeah. Oh, well, I says she, I, uh, um, let's see now. Are we good? Everyone hearing it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me just. I'm here to talk to you about some of the lessons I learned at CIA over my 33 year career there that saved my butt from really uh, some embarrassing mistakes, although I nevertheless made embarrassing mistakes while I was, I was at CIA, and I've entitled my talk Survival Heuristics. So just a little butterfly thing here. Uh, I did work at the CIA. I spent 32 years there as an analyst and as a manager of analysts. And here I am in only one of two possible countries. Which one is it? Afghanistan. I, I heard the F somewhere. And these two guys here are uh, uh, protecting me. And I've carefully cropped the photos so you can't figure out the plane number. And I spent 32 years there. I, uh, I worked on Southern Africa and the Middle East. And then I eventually became a, a, a poobah and hardly had to work at all. And uh, the, um, uh, as I go th went through my career, you know, I became less and less interested in any particular part of the world and much more interested in how we think. You know, how do we generate good ideas? How do we examine an issue comprehensively? And so I became really interested in that. And as a result, I sort of became a bit of a heretic at the CIA. We're all, I was thinking too much, right? And I was always suggesting different things that we could do and different approaches that we could take. In fact, when the internet reared its head uh, in the mid 1990s, I was the person at, at the CIA who was saying, you know, the internet is gonna be big. It's gonna, it's gonna change the way all knowledge organizations do their work. In fact, it actually changed the way all organizations do their work. And at the time when I was arguing that in the mid 1990s, people uh, were not very receptive to it at the CIA. And I, I didn't realize, and this is something that I get into a little bit in my book, uh, Rebels at Work, that, uh, which was co-written actually with Lois Kelly, is that uh, when you're trying to make change in an organization, and this may have some uh, relevance to being a, a cybersecurity officer in a large organization, when you're trying to affect change in an organization, it's very difficult to do it if what you are presenting is a theological argument. So the internet is all about open information, right? At least it was in the 1990s. And the CIA is all about, right, closed information and arguing the benefits of some, something that would promote openness and sharing of information to an organization that was so closed. I might as well have been like Martin Luther banging up the, the letters on the church in Wittenberg, right? That's how receptive they were. So some of the lessons about that are captured in the book, Rebels at Work, um, which some of you, un some unlucky people, I guess, are going to get today. So, but the rest of my talk I, that I really want to talk about are the lessons I learned about good thinking and avoiding the traps that lead to bad thinking. So are you good with that? Yeah? All right, let's go. So. I'm just going to go through a, a few of the traps. Avoid the streetlight effect. Anyone uh, raise your hand if you have some idea of what I mean by the streetlight effect. There's a few, OK, but not, not many. So there's a joke 
And the politically incorrect version of the joke is that there's a drunk at night on a sidewalk on his hands and knees. And the person doesn't have to be drunk, right? It's just something they threw in the story. And uh, a policeman finds him and says, or her, what are you doing? And the drunk says, I'm looking. I lost my car keys. I'm looking for my car keys. And the policeman says, is this where you lost them? The drunk says, no, but it's the only place I can see, right? So that's the streetlight effect, where we as analysts treat the information that is in front of us, the streetlight, and act as if it accurately represents reality. And I have to say, and I'm ashamed to admit it, that I was well into my CIA career, probably 20 years into my CIA career, which gives you an idea of how effective their internal brainwashing is and or how not introspective they are, that I said, wait a minute, this information that reaches me through my inbox, I don't actually know how accurately it represents reality. Actually, I don't know what share of reality it represents. Is it 5%? Is it 20%? I mean, if you think about it yourself as cyber threat analysts, how, if you were God and you were omniscient and you knew, you knew everything there is possible to know about cyber threat, now compare that to what you know, what percentage of everything that you should know do you know? But yet, you, you're forced to make decisions on that. You know, you have no choice but to make decisions on what you do know. But the only point here that I want to make is be humble about those decisions that you're making. Avoid the streetlight effect. Always realize that the information you have in front of you represents a slice and a kind of a flawed slice, because it's biased, too. And I won't get into that for the sake of time. Uh, uh, just represents a slice of reality. So one, avoid the streetlight effect. Trends are always, always, always about the past. I, I, I hate it when people presented an argument about the future based on trends of the past. Trends are composed of data points. And so by definition, if it's a data point, it has to be about the past. So anyone know what this trend line represents actually? It's a very famous trend line in American history. It's the trend line of the Great Depression. So the uh, first severe drop is uh, October 1929, when the stock market crashed. Notice that it began to go up after that. And a lot of people thought, oh, it's over. Everything's going to be fine. And then it just steadily plummeted down until I think the last point is maybe like 1936, 1937 on that line. So if at any point on that trend line, if you had based your decision on what had happened previously, you were likely to, to, to make a flawed decision. So what do I like to use instead of trends? Well, I'm, I'm a fan. OK, so first you have to use trends, right? You have to know what the past tells you. But if you know anything about probability, what happened a moment ago doesn't really affect what's going to happen next. It's a, it's a false construction that we have in our heads. And what I like to look at a lot are small indicators of change. I think the best way to observe the future is to observe the present very, very carefully. So when I travel, for example, I pay a lot of attention to graffiti. Graffiti is one of my favorite social indicators. Just the volume of graffiti in a particular city like Madrid, for example, in Spain, tells you something about the social cohesion of that country. And I, from what I know about cyber threat intelligence, perhaps this is the point for me to confess that I don't know a lot about cyber. I didn't work on it in my uh, agency career. But from what I understand of the way these uh, malicious groups work, they, they do have a kind of graffiti that, they, that, they, that exists, that they leave behind as they troll uh, companies and as they talk to each other about what they want to do next. So I like small indicators. I always I describe myself as an analyst of small things. And uh, kind of related, but a, a somewhat expanded category, are non-obvious indicators of whatever phenomenon that you're trying to look at. What, what can you see that is uh, 
not a direct indicator, but somehow travels with the phenomenon that you're trying to look at. But my bottom line is don't depend on trends. Related, most things don't happen by chance. Now, you know, I've said this uh, before at other conferences, and I've been appropriately challenged by someone who points out that you do have things like random clustering. Correct. But we, you know, uh, how I really came upon this rule or uh, 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 thinking uh, trap to avoid is an analyst actually, when I was uh, reviewing his or her paper, actually wrote that X event in a country had happened by chance. And I, I pulled the analyst in and I said, well, what do you mean by the fact that this thing happened by chance? And the, you know, and the analyst was sort of hemming and hawing, and I realized that when we use the phrase something happened by chance, what we're actually saying is that we do not understand the causality chain that led to this event, right? So when you say something happens by chance, you're saying, well, there's no way I could have known, so I'm therefore not responsible to try to figure out how I could know. If you replace that phrase with, I do not yet understand the causality chain, then in fact, you are much more likely to work on trying to figure out why things that you didn't think were gonna happen or that completely surprised you, in fact, did happen. So related to most things not happening by chance is this, uh, which is exponential causality. Now, I've scoured the internet looking for an image that could represent exponential causality. At this point, the grand taxonomy of rap names is what I've settled on. And if, if you Google that and look it up, you'll see that you know one rapper comes up with a uh, name and all of a sudden that influences a whole lot of other rappers and then leads to a whole lot of other rappers and this great universe of unusual names uh, emerges. Now, exponential causality is related to the notion of exponential functions, of course. And how many of you have read Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman? Required reading, I think, for a senior intelligence, uh, serious intelligence analyst. Uh, he, he makes the point that one of the reasons why humans are so bad at statistics, me, is because we're not very good at understanding exponential functions. But related to exponential functions, how something can go from like 3 to 15 uh, in one step, is uh, what I call exponential causality. So we tend to think linearly. Unfortunately, um, there's something that our education encourages us to do. And the way we look at facts encourages us to do, but we tend to think A leads to B, B leads to C, so forth and so on. But in reality, A leads to a multiple set of consequences, and each of those leads to another multiple set of consequences. And if you keep up on quantum theory, it's even argued that something in the future can affect the past and uh, affect the consequences of the thing in the past. So you're dealing with exponential causality, and you have to respect that. So, uh, and trend lines actually are a great example of uh, uh, something that we use a lot that doesn't take into account exponential causality. Are you all still with me? Yeah, okay. Worst case scenarios happen, okay? Now, I love this GIF. I will play it over and over again. Hopefully it'll just, there yeah, it goes. My favorite thing about this GIF, or GIF, there's an, a controversy as to what you should say. If you look at it again, it's the car approaching the intersection. The driver, I love to imagine the driver in that car going, large red ball has appeared in front of me. You know, something he never prepared for. This is apparently a uh, Toledo art installation or something like that gone wrong and the large rubber ball escaped. I, I don't think I can stop it unless I advance to the next slide, so we'll just let it, we'll just leave it like that. Anyway, so I learned this lesson when I started as a result of a conversation I had with a policymaker. And uh, bad stuff had begun to happen in the country. You might even imagine that country is Iraq, for example. And uh, there's a meeting with the policymaker, and the policymaker goes, you didn't warn me about this. And we say, well, we did. We told you this could happen. And the policymaker says, 
but you said that was a worst case. Interesting. So what, what was the policymaker doing? What was he assuming we meant when we said worst case? Unlikely. So policymakers often conflate the worst case scenario that you've painted and, and think to themselves, oh, that must be unlikely. So one of the most important pieces of advice that I have to give you all, uh, particularly those of you who deal with decision makers in your company and who have to convince them of the importance of a, of a security threat of one kind or another, that just because you say something is worst case doesn't mean that it's unlikely. And in fact, the probability of something occurring is independent from the consequences that that event may have, right? And it's human nature. You have to really fight this hard to equate worst case scenario thinking with unlikely, completely different and can cause all sorts of uh, disconnects and communication issues with your customers. Finally, we get to move on from that. Again, this is also about dealing with your customers. When you're explaining, you're losing. I think it was Ronald Reagan. I, when I Google this, uh, Ronald Reagan comes up uh, as the originator of this quote. If you're explaining, you're losing. But when we as technical experts present whatever our findings are, we tend to present them uh, with a lot of facts and uh, a lot of information. And we're doing that to a policymaker who wants simply to make a decision. And the very act of explaining, the more you go on, the more you drone on, I think the more you're losing, as a general rule, the person that you're trying to persuade. Uh, this is particularly true when an argument ensues. You say X and the policymaker says, no, I don't believe X, Y is true. And then you start to explain why the policymaker is wrong. And you ain't getting anywhere there. So my advice to you, and I'll, I'll, we're going to talk a little bit more about best practices in a little while. But my advice to you when you're talking to a policymaker is that you need to have compelling stories and examples to make the point that you want to make and have those ready to go rather than another technical explanation. I don't know what the analogs and metaphors are in your domain, but you need to have those available so that you can present them rather than only rely upon explanation. So for example, a policymaker might say, well, do you have any evidence that this could happen? And you might not have any evidence, any hard evidence. And you could say, no, I don't. But you know, we want to avoid being like the drunk looking for his car keys only in the streetlight. There, you know, something that really makes the point without having to deal with a lot of technicalities. And finally, I think this is the final one of my traps is you never run out of bullets. This is, a, a, again, I guess, another way to come at linear thinking. When I was, uh, and I think this might really apply to your domain, one of the lessons I learned, on, I learned early on from one of my first team chiefs, he had been working on Laos, I think, and he told me, you know, Carmen, I had it figured out. I had counted the number of bullets the Laotian gorillas have, and I knew that on April 13th, they were going to run out of bullets. They weren't going to have any more bullets to fire. And my boss at the time said to me, John, you never run out of bullets, i.e. life happens, stuff happens, and they find a way to keep going. So when you think about what you're working on analytically, and you've got it like the whole linear train figured out, and you know that you know on this day the attack is going to end, or on that day the attack is going to start, step back swallow a little bit of humility and realize that you never run out of bullets. Still with me? All right. I, I just like to check, you know. All right. Oh, uh, uh, one more. Speaking of bullets, I ruined my segue. Emotions can kill. Um, you know, one of the, has anybody here ever worked at CIA actually? I should have asked this question earlier. 
Oh, I see a couple of hands, yep. So one of the things that we did as analysts is we tried to be extremely objective. And we didn't want to have any kind of subjective issues in the, in, in, injected in our anal analysis. And again, as I went further into my career, I realized that that was mistaken because the world is made of humans. And humans are, of course, highly emotional. And we often would misjudge a situation or the severity of a of an outcome or what happened in Iraq, for example, or what's happening today in Afghanistan, because we underestimated the emotional motivation that the actors had in the conflict. I was thinking how this might apply to what you all do. And I, I know I, I, I understand that a lot of what happens in terms of uh, successful attacks on a system involve getting a human to click on a piece of clickbait that brings the virus or the malware into the system. And you know, you can say to the human over and over again, don't click on attachments, but you know, if they love kitten pictures and and they are having a really bad day, the chances are heightened that they're going to click on that thing that appeals to us. And of course there's this entire field of See if I get it right. Social cyber, social cyber security, or uh, social cyber attacks, where in fact, and we saw some of this in the in the 2016 elections and in the Brexit election. I think it might be irrelevant where now. People who are trying to influence. How yeah, it's a little bit long. Are very methodical in presenting information I to know. you in a way that will. Yeah, I'll just try to. But she brought up some go, some good points. I think you you yeah. were actually previously talking about this. She mentioned yeah. this Kahneman, Kahneman, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah a, a lot of what she says, <laughs> it's it's so true. Like the the sort of, sorts of shortcuts that people take um, in thinking. You know, it, it's so tempting. Like the whole point you made about um, how people will think worst case equals highly unlikely. Yeah. Which is just which is just not the case. <laughs> Literally, when I'm saying it's worst case, I'm saying this is the worst thing that could happen. I'm not saying that it's the least likely to happen. Yeah. You know. And I think I think. Colloquially speaking, you know, just the way we speak in, 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 in you know, just normal day to day speaking, when people say worst case scenario, it does sort of have that implication of this could happen, but I don't think it's likely to happen, you know. But when, it, it, when you're reading a technical document, that's not what you should be, you know, you should be trying to read it, at, you know, understand at face value, you know. But um, I, I, yeah, I these thought. Are I thought the whole yeah. point about this like quick quick thinking is uh, it doesn't strain a lot of your mental resources. You just think uh, and like you said it works a certain percentage of the time. It's good enough probably for most people to go to life and to go through your day uh, because like you guys sometimes here on the stream you're doing the total opposite. You're just like dissecting it a lot and that's like even when I'm listening I find it very interesting but sometimes it's a little bit much I need a break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. I, so it it, think, it takes more resources, and mm. yeah, I think you need the balance of both. Whatever that means. Yeah, I, there's a very useful video that I uh, I've showed good mother this. I don't think we ever had it on stream, which is John Cleese on creativity, and he talks about within that the closed mode and the open mode, and essentially, you know, like sort of, you know at some point you actually want to close yourself to being open so that you can actually go and do something you can be productive in in some sense mm -hmm. you have to kind of you know so you narrow your vision because now you you actually just want to uh, 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 prosecute a particular plan or, or sorry what's the but you know you, you're in the mode of of, of doing yeah. it essentially or, or yeah. being active but um yeah. but, but but also the uh, the I, I, I can understand why there's a natural there's a natural tendency towards 
reframing worst case because technically when you're saying worst case you're not saying anything about likeliness you know so like as she said like um calling something worst case or how what the consequences of or how bad the consequences of an of, of, a, of a of a potential outcome is is completely independent of its likelihood you know like, like the question about its likelihood is is completely independent so if you just tell someone what a worst case scenario is in some sense like that's not a very human way of communicating because you're just kind of focusing you, you're making a very technical limited you know you know because in some sense if you say this is the worst case scenario you're just saying this is a possibility but you know like you know as the as the saying goes anything is possible so like you know that doesn't mean anything until you actually put a value to it unless you actually say how likely it is or unless you actually give me a warning but in some sense if you just say this is the worst case scenario you could say that well you're prompting the other person to ask you how they should evaluate its you know its 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 warning quality because in some sense yeah. if you just tell someone what what a worst case is you're not warning them because in some sense you're not you know like anything is possible the world could spontaneously blow up from a virtual particle that explodes you know like like uh, like, like a nuclear bomb or enough virtual particles just sort of you know like 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 you know you know somehow quantum gravity stops improbable things from destroying everything but uh, you know so because literally anything is technically almost possible you know like any, any object could just start levitating somehow quantum gravity stops that from happening which you know there is no theory of quantum gravity like but people just assume that something like that must exist so that you know we kind of live in something that approximates a deterministic universe even though we live in a fundamentally indeterministic universe but uh, so anyway but uh, you know so if you say what a worst case scenario is you literally have not told them anything except that you've in some sense you're encouraging them to inquire as to how likely it is so if you don't already say how likely it is then you know like i feel like you are sort of expecting that if well if you're not going to frame it as a warning then i'm it makes sense it makes human sense that i should just ignore it that it's likely to be unlikely because otherwise yeah. you wouldn't communicate it in such a dry technical logical sort of right. way <laughs> yeah yeah that's actually spot on and i think um i've run into plenty of situations where i've said things and found myself lacking in that department of not thoroughly communicating the a certain quality of say uh, 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 whatever statement so say for example um likelihood or 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 how soon something can happen you know um and yeah i think that's the thing people people who function in a world where you know they take in a lot of emotional and um i guess social cues um they sort of depend on that and they sort of use that as a crutch to understand um the severity or the severity of whatever statement you're making so as a person who's like I, getting out of university that was one of the main things i had to um adjust um was sort of re acclimatizing myself to as you said no means um having to understand that certain statements need to be i guess you sort of have to dramatize it you sort of, you sort of have to add a bit of um emotional spice to get the reaction that that statement requires because people tend to take these shortcuts where they assume that uh, you know worst case means unlikely um if you don't actually communicate the fact that hey this is this is imminent or, or hey this is this is something you really need to consider because if you don't that what you stand to lose is x amount you know um I, I, sadly yeah. i mean on some level this relates to just the lack of intelligence of people in leadership positions to a large degree because I, I, sadly that just must be said but in some sense mm. human society suffers from this in general that we don't have enough high iq individuals in charge of everything i mean it's just a it's a basic fact you know like you have to put your you have to save your the clever people to be surgeons and doctors because otherwise then we'll never get quality medical you know sort of services and there just aren't mm. enough good leaders left over especially maybe politics but i mean you would expect that if a policy maker who is a leader should be responsible they should be responsible 
So when they're told that something is a worst case scenario, they should know that essentially they're not being they're not being advised by someone who's spoon feeding them the answer. They are they are being advised by someone who they have to manage and they have to sort of completely, you know, sort of run through all all you know methodically go through all the important criteria. And if they fail mm. to when they hear worst case scenario and then they don't ask the question, well, how likely is that worst case scenario? They should not be a leader. I mean, in some sense, yeah. you know, like there's a you know there's a lack of integrity here. And I mean this is the sad thing is that many people that become leaders, they should never be leaders, but they're popular, you know, or, or, or they have yeah. charisma or they have something, yeah. but they just don't have the actual stuff. You know, they they, they yeah, and, and it's like, sad because I mean, mm. responsibility and intelligence, I think, sort of on some level, they kind of you know, like some people can make up for their intelligence by essentially being very grounded in an, an understanding of responsibility and what their duty is, and you know, sort of how to procedurally, methodically go through some some issue and arrive mm. at you know, sort of a conclusion. But you know, sadly, I guess you know, this is also the failing educational system sort of gets into this and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so yeah, sure I'd say that we actually have a, a lack of both of those things, both responsibility and intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like the worst outcome, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, think I guess you can, you can have better and worse cultures or intellectual cultures that can help shore up this stuff, you know, like these deficits could mm -hmm. be, you know, like if you just had a, a better, you could call it collective intelligence or a collective understanding about, you know, sort of, you know, what thoroughness looks like, what carefulness and what seriousness looks like. But mm -hmm. when you can kind of substitute carefulness and seriousness with a kind of very, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, or you have an advisor. So if anything goes wrong, then you were given the wrong advice, essentially, you know, because you're not in command, you know, so it's the, the integrity mm -hmm. just kind of leaks out into into your environment you just kind of blame the environment and you don't really mm. believe that you are actually a leader or something like that or you don't have the proper accountability of a leader that the buck stops with you or something uh, yeah. the, the thing is like i i always imagine like a leader someone who who kind of like sets an example also like like a role model so then the question is okay what happens to the society if you have uh, less let's say virtuous competent role models then because then if i have a leader that hasn't these qualities do i even want to i mean i do not want to model a behavior that's not worthy of modeling does this make sense yeah yeah i mean uh, yeah I, 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 what i'm going to say sort of doesn't exactly uh, correspond with what you just said but i think it is actually thematically connected which is that what I would even expect from a leader is when they are being advised by an expert, that I would even expect them to be skeptical of the expert and actually to say, well, now that you've told me what your advice is and you've told me, you know, what, what your conclusions are, please prove to me that like that you have actually come to reasonable conclusions. Please prove to me that 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 there's value behind you know the story that you're telling me. Like give, give me the argument in a nutshell. Tell me how you substantiate you know, like having confidence in that in that perspective that you're bringing to the table, you know, like, I'm not just going to believe that you have brought me a set of facts, you know, tell me how those facts are arrived at, you know, like, actually testing the somewhat weighing in on the quality of, of the, you know, of the input or, or something like that, I would even expect leadership to have that kind of quality uh, about it, because it knows that in some sense, that they can't just say I was misled by people who told me things, you know, like, you know, mm. did you actually interrogate, you know, what was brought to you? You're like, you know, because you and th th that that is a certain kind of competence, which, you know, has been sort of outsourced. And some and this is part of the scientific mentality, because in some sense, science has become so complicated. It's been such a sort of tower of Babel, you know, which the idea is, is that you as your specialist, you don't even understand your own place in the field of science because there's so much collateral support coming in. It's like you don't understand the other fields, which prove mm. that your field has its own niche, you know, so you can just kind of fly by, by you know, the, the, the collective consensus that science is the, is the promulgator of truth and is the voice of of reason, you know, even though no one understands it, it, it's been, you know, sort of collectively 
mustered through this kind of social structure and this kind of sort of credential and and this authority that gets vested into these you know sort of strange tokens and that's how you end up with a system that has no integrity because it hasn't been reduced to actual understanding and to actual substantiation that you can actually communicate and you know mm -hmm. losing that kind of basic sort of substantive undergirding integrity that that connects things together you know like I, I think that a lot of the cognitive dissonance and the, and the and the instability that we're facing is essentially the decadence of that never being brought into alignment because it too many people are fed or or are, are dependent on a system that essentially you know like so I mean, academia, I think, is a perfect example of this, but bureaucracies and companies are, are, are much the same. You know, it's just accepted mm -hmm. that you have to have all these different bureaucratic departments, even, you know, like, never mind, you know, what it, you just have to have them somehow because they understand in that department why you have to have them, you know, and it's, it's there's no cohesion, you know, like in terms of it's not intelligible to an understanding. It's just a kind of these are the rules. It's a new convention. And Anyway, I mean, like that, I think we've sort of alienated ourselves by just kind of grifting and being a part of this kind of general trend. Uh, yeah. It's like yeah. The, the benefits of the, the negatives of hyper specialization. Uh, um, people are so focused on their own niche that they don't actually have any sort of. Um, it's like they don't even know what northwest east south is they're just yeah. sort of floating about knowing that i'm in my field therefore they they can forget very basic things that their whole field is premised on and then, yeah. and then you actually end up with complete like dietary advice like i okay so you i guess you can call me maybe a bit of a conspiracy theorist but you know like the people that i'm following within the dietary science you know which was all actually came from tim noakes the the, the you know created banting yeah. and he yeah. really inspired yeah. a lot of people in America to start researching kind of the, the low carb, no carb, uh, you know, kind of bent. And now I think that they, they have actually, we know now what, what the real solution is, is that, you know, uh, I, I've got these two videos who, which I can hand out. The, the, the one, so the one is of an investigative scientific journalist, and she looked at the history of dietary science, essentially. And Eisenhower, the American president, had a heart attack. And suddenly, you know, it was it was in, in the news that America has a health problem and we need to work out what's causing this. And essentially, they vilified saturated fats. They said we need to have less saturated fats and more of the polyunsaturated fat, like the vegetable oils, as they are so named, even though that's a weird name. And if you mm -hmm. actually look at when this heart attack started increasing, increasing, already more people were eating the vegetable oil than they were eating the saturated fat. So already saturated fat was being eclipsed and taken over and displaced by the vegetable oil, which was essentially Crisco and it's a bit cheaper, essentially. So, which is a bit essentially, so uh, it's weird that before that, like 200 years before, no one had heart attacks. Like the number of heart attacks, the number of culinary heart disease, you know, it was like nothing. But anyway, so like all the research now very quite clearly shows that what's killing human health, or at least this is my view based on this research and stuff like that, is is the polyunsaturated fat. Because like mm. when, when you have a polyunsaturated fat, what's, what the unsaturated means is that you have a double carbon bond within this chain of, of the fat. And you have multiple double carbon bonds, which means that they can oxidize because the, the saturated bonds... Uh, the, the unsaturated bond means that that double carbon can become a single carbon and then it, 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 to, it'll take, it'll oxidize two things, which it'll combine mm. with itself. And so we, when we take in all these oils, which are polyunsaturated, they are causing oxidative stress in our body. Like oxidative stress by definition is, is essentially caused by omega-6 fatty acids and, and, and omega-6 fats. And so like, the polyunsaturated fats, these are all omega-6s. And we never used to consume them like, like we do today. In fact, because you couldn't, you couldn't hold vegetable oil or seed oil in a, in a container. It would go rancid very quickly. To stabilize them, you go through a huge chemical process where you put in 
like these solvents and then you have to remove the solvents to, to hydrogenate them. I think it's hydro. I can't remember what the technical term is, but it's, it's a very chemical intensive process just to make it shelf stable. And essentially it's not maybe look, maybe the chemical stuff is not such a bad thing because maybe they do clean up after themselves. The problem is, is that the quantity of omega sixes that people are having now in their diets, we've as human beings, we've never experienced this before. It's unnatural to us as an organism, and we're drowning in it. And omega sixes causes lots of problems, and that's what's making everyone have this weight around their uh, around their waist and their fatty mm -hmm. livers. If you feed if you feed ten percent of of rats polyunsaturated fats, they become little hippo, hippopotamuses. They they blow mm -hmm. up. And it's like, it's, it's just the polyunsaturated fats because, and, and all the heart people have been essentially giving us the opposite of good advice. They say it's the animal fat, cut out the animal fat, cut out the saturated fat, replace it with the vegetable oil. It's the, it's the, that's what's killing people. That's what's causing cancer. If you put it on graphs, it makes a much better compelling explanation to all these things. And Anyways, wow. and, 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 so, and they also complain about salt and they complain about all these other things. But in some sense, that's only because we already have culinary heart problems because it's this polyunsaturated fat. I mean, you know, when you do deep frying, you get this you get this build up of stuff that is like a polymer. It becomes like a polymer. That That's what we're ingesting when we have this this vegetable fat. Hmm. Anyway, so uh, 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 my whole point here is that you can just see how contentious this is within the dietary science. You know, like yeah. they, they can't listen to the stuff because they've got their statistics. They've got their epidemiology, you know, never mind that it's junk, you know, essentially. Uh, right. you know, like they have no understanding of these things. They just have these base correlates, these statistical correlates. Like, and, and that's what they use uh, to, to, to fuel them. And um, I mean, this. I th the reason why I went into this is because I think that it's a very useful analogy for everything. And then you obviously, you get a lot of vegetarians and vegans who are ethically vegetarian and vegan, and they have, mm -hmm. you know, sort of every incentive to essentially find evidence to, to make claims, you know, that like, you know, vegetable oils are the solution or, 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 or something like that, you know, get away from yeah. saturated fat. Although there are veg... You can coconut oil is, is quite a saturated fat. It only has oh. like one percent unsaturated. So like coconut oil is probably one of yeah. That's probably why it's so stable. Um, yeah. It's relatively stable compared to RPC. Like it's solid at room temperature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's. I mean, I, I think of how uh, economics is also handled. You know. Um, we do also kind of run into this problem where people become almost ideological religious about um, the way they, you know, conduct economic analysis. They, they, they sort of get to, the, they sort of have a conclusion in mind and then um, look for all sorts of, st st uh, I'm, get, I'm trying to get the word out of my mouth, statistical, um, you know, uh, let me call them coincidences um, that, support their analysis and what the way economics is supposed to be handled is it's supposed to be free from that sort of um, approach it's supposed to be um, logic logic first and then evidence coming afterwards you know um, you need to understand the system you need to understand the the um, the mechanics of the system and you need to have a good logical way of of illustrating why you think things work the way they do and i guess this is why you can have people go to university and come out uh, uh, uh you know study the same program and one comes out a socialist and the other comes out a capitalist you know it, it's it's ridiculous and i think these are sorts of issues that we need to address as the west you know um how do we how do we i mean science how do we address that if people don't even have any sense of where they belong in the scientific structure? You know, people don't even know um, how, say, for example, computer science relates to statistics, uh, the rest of mathematics. Um, you know, I can understand why maybe someone, it's a bit of a jump to go from, say, 
biology to computer science. I can understand that. You know, uh, one is is silicon based, one is carbon based. Um, the you know even from a you know chemistry point of view, they kind of on very different um, spectrums or ends of the spectrum. Um, but to have people who um, say are economists not being able to understand, uh, you know, finance or statistics, that's that's not good. That's not good. Our education system needs serious addressing. Serious addressing. I don't even know. Like people are uh, people are obviously toting um, homeschooling. You know, I guess that's in response to a lot of the um, brainwashing that's being driven from the left. But it still doesn't address the issue of the failures of the Enlightenment to to inoculate themselves from or, or itself from from some of the drawbacks of hyper specialization, you know, um, way too much liberalism, all sorts of things like that. Yeah. What, what I, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I I think that part of the sort of the because I think the Enlightenment can largely be salvaged but you know in some sense Slavoj Žižek I think has already actually sort of framed this is that we do need a return to modernity but it won't be the same as before and it's like this is why I call like the secular state moral anarchy that that essentially that you use enlightenment as a container for the world or something like to, to mediate things in the world but it's not the same as your moral compass so it's like it's a kind of it's a it's a it's a it's a way of having an orderly and a peaceful kind of medium of tolerance, of liberal tolerance, but it's not meant to be a Unitarian church. It's not meant to be a kind of, you know, like a one-stop, you know, like an ethno state or, or a kind of, or a bastion or a symbol of, you know, a kind of, so, I mean, I, I was thinking about, because maybe, my, you know, some of my views seem scattered and, and contradictory, but, you know, uh, but the, the, I do think in the end, even though that what I'm describing is slightly sophisticated, I think that it ends up being better for people growing up in such a system because they will be more bootstrapped into an internal locus of control. They'll be more molded towards actually having a psychologically healthy kind of interface with society. They won't just see themselves as a kind of as, as an extension of their group or something like that. They will actually... Yeah have a kind of, you know, investment in their own in individualism or, or their own choice of growing their their conscious beliefs and things like that, that they will actually mm. be, be more accountable and responsible and be therefore much better off and much more grounded, as it were. But uh, the, 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 maybe the slight contradiction here, I think, um, is that can a democracy turn a liberal open democratic society into a nominal try to inject a kind of nominal identity into the system. And and this is, you know, I, and I do think that there, there can be some leeway for this, but not, not in such a way that it treads on the toes of the open liberal democratic sort of tolerance of the justice system. And so, you know, like, I do, I do think that in some sense, it, it could be fine to have a government that is trying to instill conservative moral values or something like that, or even Christian moral values, but they have to do it in a very indirect way. They have to do it. They can't do it sort of on the nose. They can't sort of try to indoctrinate people through state organs, you know, like mm. they can't use public schooling to do it or something like that. Or, right. you know, like the public school has to maybe be, first has to sort of show its allegiance to the constitution and to the and to the general framework and then maybe has to can teach controversies or can give you some general primer in politics or something like that or civics or in the general civics education obviously you can't turn a civics education into a kind of in, in indoctrination or re-education system you know into some strange ideology but you know the, the actual the, we have a liberal constitution. So I do think that in civics, you should be taught liberal politics, essentially, democratic literacy from a liberal democratic perspective. I, I think that, that that is common, should be common cause. It should be accepted. It should be, you know, th that, that was the point of the democratic revolution, as it were, uh, that, that had such a constitution, is that it has these values built into it. Uh, and you know of non-racialism and all these sorts of things. So I do think that those principles in the Constitution um, 
that facilitates a, a, a functioning liberal democratic society, you know, should be primed in schools, but like obviously not. If so, but if, if let's say the government is taken over by a Christian majority, they should not be able to introduce Christian ethics into their civics education, but they can still be religious schools. They can still be a private freedom of association and you can educate your children, you know, however you want, essentially, as long as you're not kind of running up against the intolerance paradox of like teaching people that they should rise up and take over and replace the constitution with a theocracy. That would be, in my view, illegal uh, uh, or, or, you know, sort of that you're fomenting um, or constitutional damages, uh, mm. essentially, or, or you're trying to foment, in, uh, foment insurrection or, or, you know, so I mean, like, so uh, the intolerance paradox is something that I think, you know, you have to have a liberal society that's capable of defending itself. Otherwise, you are just waiting to sort of be boiled alive or displaced by some yeah. warlord of some authoritarian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, uh, I'm going to bring it back to local um, issues. Um, I don't know if you actually got to speak on this. What was your take on the whole um, uh, Gareth Cliff debacle? I mean, yeah, so I, I, I really liked the discussion on Morning Shots with France Crenier about it. Uh, and, and also I heard the, uh, the Daily Friends podcast uh, uh, spoke about it. I thought they had a decent analysis of it, but I mean, so yeah, I mean, the, I just wish that the, because, you know, the DA is somehow part of the story and at some point now is probably not the time with, you know, the election about to happen, but in the next election cycle, we, or the, 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 the non-racialist ideologues need to actually go and start a fight. And I, when I say that, I mean, they need, we need to morally indict these, these, you know, sort of diversions and, and uh, these people who inject this kind of scapegoating into our politics. Because, yeah. And I mean, I think the best line about it is that, you know, that Helen Ziller got more black voters than Musi Maimane did, you know, is, is a very important factoid to, to keep on trotting out. And another important yeah. point is that it, yeah. is, it is incredibly, I think it's dehumanizing and, and it's actually um, incredibly condescending to expect that you can only get large scale black support or supporters from black people in the country if you essentially mimic the ANC's style of politics, that you have to basically mm. kind of, that, that, that you have to create an ANC type way of, of, of doing politics in order to, 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 to make ground. I think that that, that, that you know, you re actually have to try to red pull. Yes, there are some people who are rabid fascists, essentially. You're never going to convert them, but you have to actually go after the people who are on the fence and you don't, do yourself any favor when uh, favors when you're not when you uh, again like I, I, I there's this wonderful video of of um, a town hall uh, where the independence movement people were giving some questions and answers and I must say like I'm I, I really I I really find a lot of the independence arguments especially the ones that attack the constitution I find them very clunky and I think that they're, they're actually they're missing a trick there because they could be endorsing the constitution but anyway my point is is that they were pointing to the fact that many EFF supporters in the Western Cape support Cape independence because in some sense they don't it's not even the politics of the EFF that they are in love with they are just in love with anyone who is radically proselytizing change radical change from the status quo that anyone who's promoting radical change from the status quo and who seems like they have conviction behind their claims yeah. are attracting support and we are really doing really badly i think in the opposition uh, in terms of the da by not red pilling people and because you can only red pull people you can't red pull people while you play defensively and while you vacillate you have to yeah. push it up to the line you have to press the point and you have to choose the hill that you're willing to die on and you have to keep you know pick and choose your battles yes but i think the the election poster one was almost perfect that would have been a perfect hill that you should be you need to be willing to die on that hill i mean obviously it's not good to die 
And so you don't want to die on the hill, but if you're not willing to actually, people know that you're not willing to die on the hill and then you've lost the plot. You know, you, yeah. you're not doing yourself it's, any favors. It's that whole thing of, if you not willing to stand for something, you you'll, you know, yeah. fall for anything. Yeah. That's the whole notion that people get, even people who, like you said something earlier that, you know, why is the DA so scared of losing the votes of people who were never going to vote for them anyway? Yeah. You know, why are they trying to appeal to people who hate them anyway? You know, at the expense of the voters that they've already secured. It, it's stupid, you know. Yeah. What uh, what these parties, I guess, societies, and in the context of America, what all these organizations need to do is stand for freedom, stand for non-racialism, and don't cave to the mob. Like, um, yeah. I, I don't know if, um, maybe I should play the video just to give um, Gray and maybe a few viewers who came after the first time we played it some context to what we're saying, what we're talking about. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah. I'll try and play it quickly. It's a two minute clip. Um, let's see if this is. It. Thousand people who are going to sleep. I'm sure that there are a hundred thousand people who are going to sleep tonight worrying about where their next meal is coming from, and about five people who are worried about the hideous racism that's up. Cool. Anyway, I think we'll that's move. a bit. I'm sorry, I must let's interject that. Point. Let's see. If you let's see. Let's see. Let's get tested. I don't think that many people are interested. In fact, the IRR has shown us endless reports of people who say that racism is at the bottom of their list of priorities and concerns. The we obviously priority don't are. experience the kind of racism that I experience on a daily basis. Okay. So to say well, that your something personal, that I'm no sorry. one cares your, your, about, your, I'm sorry. No, it's really, your, personal really experience, your personal experience is completely mm -hmm. anecdotal and unimportant to all of us. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that you think that the experience yep. of a black woman in this country is yes. unimportant not, and irrelevant. I'm not interested, Mudzili, I'm not interested in identity politics at all. Nobody really is. They're only interested in themselves, what they can get out of this. The elections are coming up. If you... And Absolutely. service delivery, service delivery. Please, it's just, I'm over it. It's so uninteresting. And, and this has played out so badly for people in other parts of the world where they've tried it. I can't believe you're going down this track. No, we Gary, were we're not speaking about ideas. Okay, you can proceed with your conversation then. Please proceed. No, I, I want you to finish. I want you to at least you explain. You don't want me to finish because you're speaking over point. me. I'm just trying okay. to, this was not about sucking us into a conversation about race, politics, and identity politics. We, we were having a conversation to say that the issues of service delivery are not as important as the issues that people genuinely feel when they, they feel are. like they're being race based. Race -based. And I'm not saying in, to you, don't In a municipal election, they just aren't. Okay, but municipal elections don't stop the rest of your experience. And racism is structural as well, so it's not like it's, oh, because it's municipal Who's elections and everything else that I'm... Is, 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 is the ward councillor of your ward going to solve the problems you have with racism. I mean, I'm in all honesty, climate that. change. I mean, let's talk about gender politics because it's a municipal election. No, I want the water and electricity and the roads Absolutely. to work. And what I'm asking is for the DA then not to debate on the race issues. Can yes. they not put that poster up? We're not debating on the race issues. issues. Yep. This is such yeah. a typical pattern. It plays out over and over. They yeah. try to argue it, they fight it and put the blame card on you. And the worst thing is, I think, if if you then go into like this uh, mode of uh, qualifying to them, right? Yeah. Which yeah. I mean, she she cannot let she cannot let go because she needs to elicit that response. Yeah, she needs to get the people to cave. She needs to get it, and and she knows that if if I can't get you to cave now. Um, perhaps if you're not scared of the mob now, I know that if I can get you on clip on on a, on a video saying these things, and literally this tweet comes from the lady in, in question. Um, uh, yeah, we can she, witch hunt you afterwards. She's the one so. who, who who posted it and said, um, "Let me just read her tweet." Um, uh, let me see here. She said, uh, "She said when they try talk over you." They try to talk over you and tell you that your experiences as a black woman in South Africa do not matter. Racism she talks over him. She talks yeah. the fuck over him. She says, not the other way around. 
but, 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 but I mean, this is a long debate. This was like an hour show or something like that. And there was a lot of yeah. back and forth. And everyone has, you know, like Gareth Cliff is is a radio presenter and he is like an abrasive, he is a bit abrasive, but he, mm. he, he you know, it's, you know, you do have the opportunity to fully respond and to fully, you know, given, uh, you know, like if you can't, it's interesting, you know, like sort of, the decor, you know, you can't have a robust debate about this because it's also not based on anything that you're allowed to debate because it's their subjective anecdote. So, you know, whatever exactly. they say, it just has, it, it, it can't be questioned. It's sacrosanct. But yeah. I wonder, can you get a picture of the posters? Because the, the, the sort yeah. of the, the, so she's, you know, bringing up race, but she's saying that they didn't bring race into this because it, I don't know if you know about the recent history in this country, but basically there was an infight but within the ANC and there was like all this looting. It was kind of like the George Floyd riots. Oh, yeah, America. I saw that looting from the helicopter. Yeah. It was absolute chaos and mayhem. Yeah. So so in, in South Africa, um, now during these local elections, in one of the towns that has quite a large Indian population, because you know, many communities had to protect their own sort of, you know, sort of their own houses and their own, you know, sort of maybe shopping malls and then their own shop fronts and things like that. And so these these people who were a lot of them were Indians, but with other people of other races protecting the, their, their, their property and the property of their neighbors and, and their and their local shops and things like that um, uh, were uh, uh, they, they defended themselves. And there were some vigilantes uh, or at least allegedly. Although I know when you look at the numbers, I, anyway, th there's supposedly going to be a prosecution around this. Or I've heard that, but uh, you know, a lot of these racially trumped up charges, you know, uh, but at least th there were some reports of, of vigil. I mean, there were some vigilantes all over the place, essentially. And, and the EFF and the ANC marched in this town, basically holding up all these signs that were like generalizing the whole community they were like these indians are racists uh, i can't remember all the things but very disgusting racial kind of ve very racialist you know kind of things and in some sense you know the, the whole disgusting thing is that people would never have to have defended their own property uh, if the government had done its job if the police had done their job but the police were nowhere you know, so, 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 so the police just let this happen, and now you're going to scapegoat a whole community and and make a race issue around it, which they did. And so the DA made these posters, and they said the ANC called you racist, the DA calls you heroes, which is also actually the president himself, even in one of the letters, said that there were people in Phoenix who were heroes, essentially. And so, in some sense, there's nothing controversial about that, except in the in the in the opinion or in the the framework of the racial uh, of the race hustlers that created these accusations to begin with because this is essentially calling out those people as being essentially you know sort of you know racial scapegoating you know kind of thugs and and you know and and using a kind of very toxic kind of fascistic politics essentially so you know and it's interesting because i can uh, it actually i didn't understand why they could have had an issue with those because it was so obvious to me what the posters meant. But in some sense, if you take it from their narrative, in some sense, the posters supposedly, according to their racial interpretation, are saying that like you are heroes for being racists. You know, like like like. But you can only. That's how they interpret it. Yeah, yeah. They, well, that that's their basic. That that's their argument is that this is so insensitive, because you're basically saying that that Indian racists. Who are anti-black are heroes. Like that's that's the sort of that th th that's their that's their racial interpretation of this, basically. And the only way that you can get to that is if you think that the DA is like not non-racialist. You know, like you, you have to project onto the DA so much racism to get away with that kind of specious interpretation. You know, like and so the idea that yeah. that the posters could be interpreted that way, it's only ever going to be interpreted by that way. By the black fascists and the black, yeah. you know, racial scapegoat artists and the and the Twitterati and the woke journalists, you know, only if you are a woke person can you actually project that onto these posters, you know, like. And but obviously, I, but I mean, it can happen, right? We can all, if we're not careful, project stuff onto something. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in some sense, I think it's so obvious. The question is, to which extremes does it go? To which extremes yeah. does it go? 
And people have even complained to the South African Human Rights Commission about these posters, saying that they stoke racial divisiveness. And it's like, you know, the the the, the paradox here is utterly insane. Like, how how can you not raise a legitimate political issue and point at political parties that are playing race politics? These posters are saying the ANC and the EFF are guilty of playing toxic race politics. How can you not bring that up in a political debate? How, how, how can pointing to that basic fact, that basic situation and reality that is occurring, how can pointing that out be causing racial divisiveness? Just just abandon logic and, and fly by whatever comes to your mind. You just construct yes. it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's this basic gaslighting that has to be contested. If you cannot stand up to being gaslighted like this, it is impossible to win on the ideological front. You know, you're never yeah. going to be able to actually make any headway anyway. Sorry, Emmanuel. They take away they take away any sort of verifiable way to determine a winner, um, like at least in your favor, uh, yeah. and and that's how they play. That's that's the way it, it's this whole thing. Of, I think the phrase you you might have been looking for, psych, was uh, tone deaf. I think that may have been the one. Yeah, um, yeah that that that's the sort of phrase that's typically used by um, these sorts of people to, to try silence. Any sort of criticism, you know, ah, see, and genuine well, criticism, you know. Yeah, go on, Greg. Uh, see what I remembered. Um, uh, there was some point where you talked so much, and then uh, when I listen, I always have some idea. But like, <laughs> it's like talk that time. So, so, what was mine? Um, it's the last thing I. Last time I talked about this, uh, the school, right, in East Germany, the, this communist yes, yes, school yes. where the ANC was supposedly trained. Yeah, uh, was so that, I looked. Like we here. Um, Gray was basically talking about um, a school that was outside of, uh, do you say Munich? No, Berlin. I, the Berlin, point is, yeah, I looked. Yeah. I looked up the documentary and I rewatched the documentary, and there was literal, literally a guy. Uh, in the documentary that uh, actually said sorry so, sorry sorry so there was literally a guy in the documentary that said yeah the ANC was also at that school so oh, had, geez. yeah yeah I just wanted to send you a picture from that compound oh wow uh, basically and, um what Gray was saying is that um, there was like some school that was essentially teaching um, people, you know, how to be communists, you know, radicals, um, and a lot of people from all all over the world were sent there, you know, radicalized, and then you know, uh, sent back to wherever they came from. And he was essentially asking the question like, um, these ideas that we have now, um, certainly in South Africa and I guess other parts of Africa and the rest of the world. Where do they come from? Could they perhaps come from this school and maybe others that were radicalizing a lot of these people? Uh, do you have a, a clip or, or, or something that we can play? Uh, or is it like in German? Oh, yeah, it's uh, all in German. But basically, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the basically, let me just show you, uh, give you a picture maybe. Yeah. Where... yeah. Gladly shared. Um, Stop working. So I, I just want I, I wrote this comment or this kind of like this opinion in uh, in a Facebook group, a, a DA Facebook group. I just posted it to you on uh, Discord, uh, Emmanuel. I, I just wanted sure. to, uh, I think, I think that this is a, anyway, I, I think that this is a pretty good substantiation of of, of the necessity of the DA to sort of be more ideologically on the ball, as it were, and proactive about this issue uh, in, 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 in some sense. But uh, because it, I, I think I outlined uh, well the, the danger of essentially just always being defensive. But, um... Okay. I mean, there's a lot of different pictures. Maybe click that link. And then scroll down to the bottom of the text and next to the info. Video. It says uh, photo album, picture album. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, let me just do that again. Um, clicked on the wrong link. 
you said so you have, um, go German ahead. text. And then at right. the bottom, there's like info. And right, right next to there, it says photo album. Right. So it's like a picture album, picture. Right, right, right. Uh, let me share the screen quickly. Um, okay. Are there anything that looks interesting on the statues, maybe? Yeah. So Can that was like, this? I think it was like a, a like a run, like an exchange university. And they had people from all over the world, from Cuba, from and from and from the ANC. And I think they were politically kind of training them. And uh, I did a few quick Google searches and I found that the communist leaders at that time, they wanted to really see this idea of socialism throughout the whole of Africa. And uh, they had some trouble with it. Not everybody picked up on it. But uh, I think South Africa was a big focus. And I would imagine they would bring people from the ANC there, uh, train them in socialist thought, and maybe monitor how they behave uh, with that. And if they were good socialists in training and they passed some background checks, then from this uh, socialist university, I think they had like then the, the East German intelligence service probably would come in and pick them and then do this... Uh, the the other training and other compounds with like coded communication and like almost like guerrilla warfare or something i remember i saw another documentary at some point too but i couldn't find that so the and the ironic takeaway was for me like it isn't like the anc claiming they're doing stuff for the black people or something yeah but essentially that wouldn't that mean they're doing the white man's work they're just intr instrumentalized mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, if I, I mean, this is one of the criticisms that um, people on the radical left also have for some of the stuff that comes from uh, 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 the ANC and the EFF. Like, I've, I've seen people say, if you claim to be pro-Black and pro, you know, Africa and all of that, why, why, why are your founding principles based on Marxism, which comes from Germany, you know? And you know, that's a bit of the left eating itself again but i mean that is a criticism that um people do pose um so yeah that is a thing so wow. basically they brought people from all over the world into that compound and uh you're stuck somewhere in the forest out of sight so even yeah. if uh, socialist uh, communist east germany uh, like a lot of things that are not very representable, like empty sh yeah. shelves at the store, you would be locked in this, in this prestigious school. You wouldn't like, and if you take a tour, you probably would just take a tour to Berlin uh, at places that were nice. So, so it, basically it, it creates this illusion that if yeah. you're at that, if you imagine you're at that school, maybe like 30 years ago, it creates that illusion of how great the socialist is. I mean, that's how I imagine it. Yeah. Some of these pictures are actually reminding me of a mission on, uh, I think, the first Call of Duty game. Um, uh, and we, you sort of like find yourself in uh, a building that looks, actually kind of resembles a lot of these pictures. What, yeah. what kind of mission? What? Uh, it was a mission, you know, Call of Duty was, I think it was fighting ah. the Nazis or something like that. Um, one of these missions infiltrating some sort of building yeah um i think it's the first one if we get um yeah the first call of duty um, so I, I didn't even know that they did stuff like this i mean i know that some of the people in the anc were actually trained in russia directly. yeah yeah that i do know yeah yeah look at that yeah but i mean i guess east germany was I I did I think if I recall it correctly the East German socialist communist leadership they wanted to impress the Russians basically that compound is built I think based on some Russian compound they just like they they copied the idea and they wanted to make it so good and vast that when the Russians visited they are like impressing them so so as to validate their their status as East German rulers socialists I wonder if I can just read this uh, this thing that I wrote. So, 
Uh, okay, yeah. If, uh, well, I, yeah. if you can show it as well, maybe. Uh, I just yeah. guess anyone want, but the, what's the copy of it? But uh, anyway, so so I just wrote uh, this is like on a DA sort of open sort of forum. I said I don't want to stoke any division within the DA. I just want to state that I stand behind the leader John Stiernes, and I don't want to see the DA fall behind in the necessary ideological battle of outing the racialist narrative peddlers. I don't know why the DI, DA retracted the posters, if it was perhaps a concession based on internal ideological schism within the DA or strategic calculation of some kind, but I think we should at least listen to what the leader of the party first said on this issue and be the grassroots support to that political line because it's worth listening to and it's worth repeating and defending that political line. Um, so this was attached to a video of Morning Shot where he actually showcase John Steenhays and answering journalists who were trying to essentially uh, race bait him and do their narrative witchcraft essentially. Um, but anyway, so, so I, I just then made the summary of the argument myself. The ANC is diverting from its own misdeeds by dishonestly decontextualizing the DA's election posters. The journalists and those complainers to the South African Human Rights Commission on this matter are contriving specious accusations which are born from their own racial consciousness and worldview. The irony is that those who are crying foul are guilty of the very thing they are leveraging against the DA. Both the ANC uh, and, oh, I guess I'm missing a word, both the ANC and its ideological acolytes of racial consciousness or racialist consciousness are the ones who are instigating racial divisive politics. It cannot be wrong for the DA to draw attention to this reality. Let us rally behind and endorse the leader's own defense of the true meaning of the posters, which was already clear to every non-racialist to discern, in brackets, and everyone who knows anything about the DA's values and political stance. Uh, we should not apologize for disagreeing with the worldview of racialists and race baiters, nor give credence to their claim to hold the moral high ground or stand as an objective opinion of what, on what interpretations are worth entertaining when their primary weapon is simply a commitment to repeating a dishonest narrative to distract from the moral corruption which they continue to perpetrate with impunity. The DA's posters were a valuable addition to bringing democratic literacy back into focus within what is now a systemically corrupt media landscape where the racialists have laid claim to setting the terms and content of an overdue debate about the hollow and two-faced lip service which gets played to the now thoroughly betrayed fundamental constitutional value of non-racialism. Sorry, that's a bit of a mouthful there, but uh, we need to fight over the meaning of non-racialism and rescue the state of our subverted constitutional order, lest uh, least we get gaslighted, I, I should actually say lest, lest we get gaslighted into a tyrannical dysutopia before the DA has a chance to win a future national election. And anyway, so, okay, that's a bit rough, actually. I, I thought that that was, it flew, I, ha, I had hoped that that flowed a bit more strongly than it does, but at least substantively, I think it, it kind of covers all the things that need to be covered in terms of the, the prominent issues it, it, around yeah. this. Yeah. It, it really is all about who gets to control the default position of who gets to interpret the world. Do racialist ideologues get to say, well, according to my interpretation, it's problematic? Yeah. Matthew, Matthew, I think it's Mazal, is saying um, our politics seem like a, an exact cloning of American politics. This is hilarious. Yeah. I, I don't even think. Um, <laughs> You know, it's difficult for me to um, exactly pin it to American politics. Um, we kind of had our own radical stuff going on before the, you know, rise of wokeism and, uh, you know, all the stuff that we've seen basically since 2010, 2012. Um, yeah, we kind of had our own, you know, wokeness already like bubbling, um, fermenting in, in South Africa as well. You know, you think of some of the parties, um, I know, um, when, when was the EFF founded? Um, Saika, if you have any idea. It was during the Zuma presidency. I'm just trying to think yeah. when, uh, it was. Oh, wait, so, I, no, 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 no. Wasn't Julius Malema chased out of the party even under the President Thabo Mbeki's 
for, you know, I, or he left himself during the early part of Zuma, maybe. I'm just... Let me see. I... Found a... Oh, EFF. Let's see. Uh, 26th of July, 2013, yeah. So it was... Um, geez, uh, yeah, so the, he probably spent like a year or two, you know, as an estranged um, ANC member and then uh, founded the EFF soon after that. Um, yeah. I don't even like so talking wait. about them. I only like talking about their ideology. I, I don't like talking to them by name because in some sense, I, I just, it's... You anyway, feel like uh, you're giving them airtime. You're giving them legitimacy. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, they they are just you know. I, I, but I mean, the point that you're making is is that essentially there there was always an, there still is or I mean there was always an undercurrent within the ANC of a kind of racial nationalism. You know, like the, the oh, ANC yes. has kind of had this racial nationalism for for quite a while, and that that. Um, Usually, it's been suppressed by their by the leadership. The leadership has not really tolerated it. Uh, when when the ANC was you know, the ANC has tried to be a broad church, but it has always been founded in non racialism, and they kind of got that from the communists to some degree. That's the one thing that they kind of they got sort of this human universalism they got from the socialists, but mm. now that's kind of been completely displaced. Um, yeah, and you know, a lot of the people in the ANC, even the the, the Marxists themselves didn't want socialism. They actually wanted capitalism in this country. They wanted to have a proper development. They, they were like, no, we're going to be, we're not going to be Leninists. We're going to sort of be organic Marxists, which is that you actually go through a proper capitalism. And, but that they have now been sort of displaced by the identitarian chauvinism stuff, because as soon as you get into racial chauvinism or, or anything like that, it's very helpful to have a collectivist agenda because then you can just, you can always just divert the pressure onto, you know, like, like, like you know, it, it helps you conflate what the problem is. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, it's in, there are some Marxists who, I mean, I guess they're very fringe. They're, they're not really part of what you would, I guess, consider Marxists who basically are almost like anarcho cap. I mean, there are people who are basically from a from a Marxist an, an, an analysis and perspective, they actually believe that anarcho capitalism gives you a kind of that's as close as you're going to get to essentially communism essentially that that, that anarcho capitalism will gradually evolve into a kind of communitarian kind of arrangement essentially um, so they must be like um heavily against uh, the state no yeah yeah, yeah. The, 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 you call them left libertarian marxists uh, they're kind yeah. of sort of in that kind of camp yeah, Where they, they uh, actually believe they, they don't believe in opposing capitalism. They believe that essentially you you need to actually just make capitalism more abundant because that will naturally tr that will naturally promote some transition to something else. Because the the actual Marxist hypothesis is not that is not that capitalism is evil and it needs to be overthrown. The actual hypothesis is is that capitalism kills itself capitalism is the antidote to capitalism that's what actual real marxists authentic marxists actually believe but yeah. as soon as you mix in utopian socialism and you mix in moral strangeness or whatever and you and you get these half breeds like leninism or whatever but i mean marx himself he vacillated on, on a lot of things, essentially. But, you know, because like Marx was very pro-colonialism. Like Marx was like, yes, we need more colonialism because we need to spread capitalism everywhere. So you know, it, it's this weird kind of paradox. It's almost like the beginning. It, you can see there's a kind of postmodernism within the Marxist worldview to some degree. Because it gives you, when you have this objective reductionism that you can just apply the world to or you can use to to interpret the world you can give mm. yourself the confidence to do anything you want at, at, at the end of the day because you've got this you've got this ideological scale that says yes it's it's the right it's the right balance you know and so like th that's what leninism is about is that when you understand how history works in some idealist form then you can take history into your own hands which i would actually say is a kind of anti-marxist or but, um, you know, in some sense, Leninism is about preemptive revolution. And, and you can see how this has now created, I think, a new kind of leftism, which is that the idea is, is that 
they don't trust capitalism is capable of actually being an antidote to itself. And therefore, they th and they think it's too culturally stable. And so mm -hmm. the only way to actually get a leftist revolution is to destabilize the culture and to destabilize sexual relations, destabilize, you know, n normalcy. You know, you have to kind of demoralize people into a state where they can accept a kind of collectivist narrative and get into right. an illiberal kind of political program. And that's kind of what I think we're living through is that that kind of psyop, which mm. um, I mean, I, I, I would consider it leftist because just I mean, I understand I'm making the argument which a lot of people on the right simply hate to hear, which is that, oh, they're not the real Marxists or, or that that's not true <laughs> communism or something like that. But I'm, I'm not well, in that camp. But I, I would like to say that these people could be argued, well, Marxism is itself a bit of a, it, it contains its antithesis to some degree in, in the form of Lenin. Like Lenin sort of re reverse engineered dialectical materialism and said, we can do whatever we want as long as we kind of use it as an outline or as a virtual outline, like a, a stencil, you know, we can color within the stencil or something like that, but we can yeah. even color outside the stencil because it'll be, it'll all come back in the end or something. The ends yeah. will be justified by the means, you know? I mean, I'm not, fam I'm not familiar with all this stuff, but if you talk about it like that, I just imagine these young people sitting there in that school being like taught that, sh that stuff and then they go out into mm -hmm. the world. Well, I, I would actually li like to know what what the Soviet Union or, or what the communist, because what they actually taught themselves, because as far as I know, sorry, by the way, I just said the opposite. I, sa I said the ends are justified by the means. I should have said the means are justified by the ends. Uh, I misspoke there. But you see, like Lenin himself knew that the Soviet Union was not communist. It was state capitalist. That, that was ideologically within his own theory what the state was. It was state capitalism, which is a kind of socialism, but it's not communism. So whenever they referred to themselves as communistic, they were lying through their teeth. And obviously they needed to indoctrinate people and they needed to create social cohesion. So, mm. you know, in some sense, they, 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 they had to create a, a, a false consciousness or something like that. And so... I don't know to what degree that they were teaching this, the sophisticated version of this, essentially. But essentially, like there was double speak within the Soviet Union because they had to call themselves communistic. But they were communism isn't supposed to have a state apparatus. You, know, you can't have a government or you can't have a national government and call yourself communistic because, you know, I mean, it's interesting that. that the Soviet Union had like two revolutions right at the start and the one revolution took over, you know, the, 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 the Bolsheviks took over and the Bolshevik uh, revolution was, was a difference in character to, to the Menshevik, uh, 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 you know, so, so like the Mensheviks, uh, I, maybe my history is slightly wrong, but I believe, you know, their slogan was power to the Soviets and Soviets literally means workers council. So the, 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 the original revolution was that your life is ruled by your local workers' council. They It's ruled by mm. committee. But then yeah. the, the, the Leninists, when they took over, it was a complete command, you know, and, you know, which eventually became Stalinism, essentially. But it was a complete top-down pyramid. So yeah. the original model was decentralized to some degree and would have to be negotiated by committees negotiating with other committees. And the people that said power to the Soviets were killed by the Leninists, essentially. But, uh, but in some sense, it was inappropriate to even have communism. Even if the Mensheviks, the, to have a Menshevik revolution, even that is a power to the Soviets, it doesn't make, you can't have a, a communist revolution with the peasantry. I mean, there's no means of production to take over. There's no industrial base. You know, it's, it's like from a Marxist perspective, you got the whole thing historically asked backwards, you know, like it doesn't even make sense. So, I mean, in some sense, the Leninist radical adaptation of Marxism was the only route to go. And they set up this command economy and they set up, you know, so this top down authoritarianism, you know, which is centrally planned, all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Question, um, Sai, quickly. Um, the way you've described communism uh because you know when 
I've obviously I haven't got as much of a detailed depth like I'm not professor level uh, in terms of my understanding of um, all of what it is to be a leftist but um, I suppose if you have communism and it's totally voluntary then it's no different from having um, capitalism with you know uh, uh, charity yeah yeah but i i mean yeah i mean th this is the biggest problem that i've generally had with leftists and and and, and communists is mm. that even if you wanted communism you're not going to get it by essentially destroying any alternative to it because then in some sense you, you can't make your system be the winning system just by removing the competition and then by yeah. default everyone has to be your system you know like that's not yeah. how like you know to, to even think that that's going to be a tenable solution is so retarded you know it, it, it's just <laughs> it is it's unthinkable you know the idea that oh yeah i want my religion to win so i'll ban every other religion in the world and then i'll yeah. be able to say that everyone believes in my religion you know it's just it's it's insane in fact you know the idea that somehow the system will be so psychologically impregnated in the in the actual culture in the actual means of of, of how the the society reproduces itself that people will just be in they will inherit the civilization somehow they'll just inherit the the ideology it'll just be part of their psychology you know it's like you know this is this is a kind of stupidity this is a kind of you know ideological possession you know on a level mm. of depravity that really it dehumanizes it it's it simplifies the human condition to such a degree that you know it's 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 obviously going to collapse on implode on its own stupidity its own yeah yeah I mean, yeah and and so like if you really actually wanted communism you would actually want there to be a liberal democratic capitalistic edifice as being the default because mm. that would be the only way that you could distinguish yourself from actually having an operative structure that, by the way, the, just the definition of communism is generally regarded as being a stateless, a st is being stateless. So right. that, that there is no state. So in some sense, I, I don't believe that there can ever be a true communism. They can, there might be a virtual communism or a con like Star Trek doesn't exist without the, the Federation. You, everyone talks talks about Star Trek and Starfleet, but you have to understand that there's a distinction between Starfleet and the Federation, the Federation, which is like the political structure, you know, and mm. these things are mm. not the same thing. The, the, they are anyway, but uh, so there, there are ways of talking about this thing and I'm jumping all over the place. But so, you know, you have to have a, a secular orthodoxy or, or 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 a default system that's at yeah. least a container that can contain the things that you want to have you can't just force them onto people you know like and right. sorry I'm repeating myself uh, you kind of need some sort of convention uh, some sort of uh, framework but, and yeah. i'm just thinking of um if that's the case then surely um left uh left libertarians should be heavily in favor of uh you know voting for republicans or, or at least um uh, uh traditional conventional um maybe yeah. conservative libertarians they should be like way more closer yeah. to them than they are with say the the, the modern version of the democrats you know uh, yeah or, i mean if, if they were serious marxists in my view if they well look you have to make a big distinction between Leninists and and other Marxists because Leninism yeah. is like a hyphenate and it's a complete. It's like, it's like uh, I can't think of a church. You know, it's like some Catholic cult. Sorry, some some Christian cult that broke away from the Catholic Church. You know, like right. something like that. It's 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 so it's very different. It's so far removed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I would say that like proper Marxism and the pro proper Marxist analysis, if you actually believe in the Marxist hypothesis, is to endorse the purest form of capitalism possible, because that is what will bring about the, the, the Marxist hypothesis is that capitalism will beg to be overthrown because it will collapse under the weight of its own contradictions, essentially, and that it will throw right. people out of work. That That is the hypothesis is, is that 
capitalism will eventually make everyone unemployed. And then right. Lenin and comes up with, with, with this very paranoid idea that, well, if we get into such a situation, the rich will have so much technology and will have so much good guns and they will have so much control of the military that essentially it'll be too late. You won't be able to have a revolution because the rich will be able to protect their stuff. You won't be able to take it from them. You won't be able to seize the means of production. So the only way to do to, to actually have a successful Marxist revolution in the end is we have to jump the gun. We have yeah, to make the end of revolution. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that, that was Lenin's view essentially. That actually, it, it kind of makes sense because okay, um, let's just do a bit of a think tank sort of thing um, experiment here. Uh, if you think of um, the situation we find ourselves in now, right? I'm looking at America from different perspectives, right? If you're looking at it from the perspective of capitalism has actually led to um, full employment for America which means that at least for the foreseeable future, um, the uh, hypothesis of, of capitalism uh, collapsing under its own weight doesn't seem to be panning out, right? Um, yeah. Which lends credence to um, Lenin's uh, theory. Um, and at the same time, it, it, it makes Lenin's theory uh, irrelevant because if if capitalism doesn't fall apart, then you don't need a revolution at all. Well, yeah, that too. But I mean, um, uh, okay, uh, let me just flesh out okay. the next point. I was going to say that um, if you think of then the what's happening with uh, technology and how things are becoming more automated to the point where you might actually have technology replace the worker, right? Yeah. And you might actually need to have some sort of left leaning policy that um, compensates people for that, you know, for the fact that, you know, you literally cannot find work due to the fact that anything you could ever do is being done by a machine now. Right. And the people yeah. who have the most access to the means of production, et cetera, et cetera, would be the people who would also be producing the machines. Therefore, uh, uh, that kind of leads to, more towards what Lenin was talking about, where, say, for example, your Bill Gates of the world would have all of the means to protect themselves from a revolution. Especially now when you have a, a, a greater and greater push for um, disarming the, the population. Um, yeah. uh, you think of lockdowns, you think of all sorts of the, all, all of these things that have shown that these guys can live a whole different life compared to the average person don't have to yeah. abide by the same laws um and mind you i'm not i'm in no way a leftist i'm just entertaining yeah. the idea for working yeah. through the logic yeah, so, um, so, so, uh, i mean i so, sorry uh, yeah I, I, I just want to raise a few points here because i that are somewhat re relevant to this to talking about these kinds of issues is that in some sense, I think that a revolution is utterly, even even if the conditions precipitate some kind of, that we need some kind of solution, we don't need rich people. We have the government. Like, like you know, having a democracy in some sense is already a kind of fail-safe that I think obviates the need to have a revolution. But, I okay. mean, in some sense, you know, scale... I mean, obviously, in some sense, this is why democratic politics gets very murky because, you know, and why you get into this kind of social dem democratic stuff, which then really d debilitates people because it kind of produces, you know, these horrible perverse incentives, which are, you know, all these supposedly it's all this enlightened charity or all this enlightened, you know, or we're going to help people. But it's done in such a bad way that, it you know, it, 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 it leads people towards essentially losing the, the capability of, uh, of 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 you know sort of being independent and and you know and, and being completely dependent on the state essentially um but i was just going to say in the scenario in which that we have all these robots displacing people's work i don't see how that's a problem for even the individual because first of all you don't want a whole lot of very desperate people in your society it's going to be very violent it's going to be very dangerous you know so like right. it's in everyone's interest that people are are basically are are stable in some sense and i think that this is where 
where I think that you would have a transition away from capitalism, but it, it would not, it would be in, in, in effect, it wouldn't be by changing the system, by changing the governmental framework. All, I mean, if, 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 if robots are replacing human beings, then I can buy a robot to help me farm. And there's enough agrable land around, you know, land becomes more valuable if you farm it properly. You know, if you actually, if you have, you know, like desertification was only being caused because we removed the herds. We, we, when we had very big herds, because what happens is when you have a large group of animals that graze, they, they make the, the ground more fertile because they come in, they do intensive grazing, they trample the ground, they, they aerate it and, and they trample it up mm. so that, because otherwise the water can just kind of, if you have very dry ground with a crust on it, then the water doesn't penetrate into the soil. And yeah, that have, clay, clay soil, it's sort of like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but so, so when you have these big herds, and that, I mean, there are also other things that, 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 that people do. There's this Canadian farmer, uh, this is going to get maybe to, to go into the this is slightly disgusting or whatever but he does intensive grazing where he's got a kilometer a square kilometer with the kind of electric fencing which he moves a kilometer at a time he gets the cows to come and eat all the grass and then he moves them onto the next one kilometer and so that what's left is all these cow paddies uh, and and what he does is he's got these chicken coops which are like part of these wheelbarrow, bar like he puts it on a wagon so he can move these chicken coops around. And he comes and he puts all these chicken coops on top of where uh, the cow paddies were, were, were just in the last grazing section. And he does this, he times it so that the chickens are there like three days later after, after the cows have moved on. And three days is just enough for the flies to come and lay their maggots inside the mm -hmm. cow paddies. And what the chickens do is they pick apart the cow patties and they eat the larvae. They eat protein. They're eating maggots. They're eating protein. So now you've got chickens that are eating protein. And at the same time, the chickens are defecating and urinating. And, you know, avian excrement is very fertile. So you've got very powerful nitrates that are being. And so yeah. you've, you end up feeding your cows the best grass and you end up feeding your chicken the best protein. And the, the animals are feeding each other because you've just got it. And so you can actually make the ground more, more fertile using animal regenerative agriculture. You know, like yeah. you know, these vegetarians, they want us to all eat grains only that are produced. You know, you know how that all the all the agriculture that is produced from just growing crops all the time with, that doesn't use animals is dependent on artificial fertilizer, which is made from oil, yeah. ironically, ironically. So they are having us being dependent on, on oil and, and unsustainable because, you know, eventually the oil is eventually going to run out probably. Mm. But, um, but, you know, if you just add animals into the mix, then suddenly it's, everything works. It replenishes itself. It's fertile. And so anyway, anyway, I'm talking a, a lot here, but uh, what was my point? So my point is, is that if you have, if you just have a robot to help you do that and you maybe you know i mean if robots really do get to the point where they can just replace human labor then why can't i use it to supplement my human labor and then i can be independent enough and you know you do want your neighbors to be stable you know if you want to live in peace and tranquility you want your neighbors to be stable because otherwise they're going to be on your doorstep you know uh, uh, making problems and so there's there's plenty to go around. There really is. Like it's we have a distribution problem, and we have you know sort of uh, I mean, we we have lots of problems, uh, but in some sense we have a skills problem, and 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 we, you know just you can't expect to live in a society with high standards of living when people are just not productive because they're not skilled or they don't you know actually know anything, and they they're not you know like human beings require a lot of input. Yeah, and you know like failing to make those basic investments you know like we're not putting ourselves in a good position but in some sense that's how let's say the democratic politics in america you know for, for the democratic party that's how it's spread itself is is you know sort of these general i i mean you know it's very easy if you can just keep on scapegoating the rich you can just blame the rich for why we don't have nice things because the rich are subverting us like, no, 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 like this is, this is democratic yeah. illiteracy, you know, like you, if people need to blame themselves for the state of their society as an electorate, because if they don't do yeah. that, then they are complete, they've disempowered themselves, you know, like they're not, 
but anyway, so I mean, obviously, I can understand why people don't have the time to think about these kinds of ethical things, and they just kind of, I know, they're, they're just following the trend of society, and they don't have an independence. They, so I, they really don't. They just uh, have their nine to five job. They come home, they watch some television, eat some yeah. pre made food from the grocery store, and then the day repeats. Yeah. yeah. There is well, no is like it? long intellectual, it just doesn't exist. What's the saying about being uh, ignorant about, um, you know, politics? Um, it's, uh, I think one of the founding fathers, if I'm not incorrect, said something about uh, being ignorant about the po uh, about politics just ensures that you'll be ruled by evil men, something to that effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, um, I, I just wanted to ask the question because Matthew here has got, um, he says, capitalism now is a le uh, laissez faire um, aristocratic form of control. The elite who deem certain people to be successful in the system will be. Everyone else gets dumped, right? Um, by my definition, that's that's not even capitalism. You, you strayed so far from capitalism. I don't even think that by definition, that's not even laissez-faire. It, it, it's um, yeah, it's cronyism. I, 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 I mean, that, that is, I think, the definition of, of oligarchy, essentially, where, where yeah. the people that already have money control everything, essentially. But uh, I, 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 I just wanted to say that, like, I that's why I actually I like the SJWs. I like what they're doing to society because you have to hear me out on this, that, that, that mm -hmm. it's not going to be enough to just skate by now. You can't just go to a nine to five job. Like eventually the system is unsustainable. If it doesn't find integrity, it's going to unravel. It's going to fall apart. And mm -hmm. so I think that in some sense, I don't want people to have an optimized quality of life if they don't deserve it. If I can right. put it like that. You know, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. we we need to do, and in some sense, I mean, I think what Matthew is maybe talking about is, in some sense, he's somewhat, uh, he, he's not doing this explicitly, but in, from my ideological perspective, he's pointing to the fact that America is not, is not a proper, open, liberal, democratic, free society for individuals, yes. and yes. and it's be and 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 it's been corrupted because it doesn't have good enough legal structures or good enough, you know, kind of it, you know. Like you, you end up being shackled by the politics of the day, by the current lobbyists in, you know, that, that have been able to craft the policy that already kind of puts you on the back foot and you don't have general legal remedies to your problems to actually sort of stand up for the individual against these, you know, big power structures or whatever. And so I think that that is because, you know, America never had a good enough integrity within its legal framework if, if i can just put it like that but i mean yeah but but essentially i mean i wonder if that's in, in, entirely true it's not it is true to a large extent but it's not entirely true in in the sense that because you can still join you can still disrupt you know like, like if you invent yeah. something and you it, it it often is in the in the newest industries you know like in you know like technology has famously i mean i guess what he's talking about is how now the current tech giants can literally control public opinion. You know, they can literally yeah. manipulate society because of social media and because essentially as a cartel, they can yeah. kind of, they can get their morality. But in some sense, America has always been prone to this. And so mm. I'm actually glad that they're doing it because it's just showing you how piss poor your legal system is and standing up for actual rights that in terms of because in some sense your freedom of expression sorry your freedom of speech is not being infringed by these people because they are not the government the the, mm -hmm. the, the that's the technicality yeah yeah so it's like you don't actually have the freedom of expression you have the freedom that the government shall make no law to restrict your freedom of expression that's the only freedom that you have in the American legal system is that the mm. government isn't allowed to step on your freedom of expression, but a corporation has every right because they're, a pri they're just like you. They're a private entity like you are. And so they're allowed to do whatever the hell they want to your freedom of speech. Now, this is, it is slightly more complicated because of section 232, whatever it's called, 230, I, I can't remember uh, exactly, but you know, like that, that is because government has made these platforms, not publishers. They've allowed them to essentially have 
legal exemptions for what the content on their platform. So, I mean, like it, it, you've mixed it around because I would say your whole system, the American system, doesn't have the, the conceptual sort of structure it needs in order to even properly safeguard the individual. But anyway. Uh, uh, if, if we had on the screen like a counter who talks the most, you would have already won the triple high score. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the, the, the point with um, capitalism, right, is that, um, I mean, at least on, on paper, it, is that no one should be able to amass enough um, control over a market to essentially become a person who can also set the price, who can dictate how the market's supposed to go, yeah. effectively a, a monopoly. Yeah, to, to, to know, control the entire supply of something. Yeah, and, and to essentially say, this is how much we're selling, and this is the price to which we're selling. It. That's the sort of thing that a cartel can do. That's the sort of thing that a monopoly can do, or an oligopoly yeah. can do, where there are few participants, and they sort of set what goes, you know? Um, what should happen, in, I'm talking now conventionally, right, is that you should have perfect competition, where... You know, you walk into a grocery store, there are thousands of, uh, well, not literally thousands, but I mean, there are loads of companies that produce, say, for example, canned beans, you know, and they're basically indistinguishable from the next. The, 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 when one company tries to raise its prices, it can't afford to because there's 10 other guys who are willing to take the normal price. So it sort of crashes, it sort of finds this um, equilibrium uh, where you have low prices and you maximize on quality because if you don't compete on both of those fronts, you get eliminated, right? Yeah. The problem or, comes or, in when you or, have... Or, or, or the, the idea is also that people aren't perfect at doing this, but then it creates the mousetrap, which is the opportunity for somebody else who's willing to, to do it. Exactly, right? And you sort of have this dynamic equilibrium where you're constantly like, just shifting about this perfect... I don't know, sweet spot in, in the market where you're meeting um, all of the demand with a good quality product and at a, a, a price that maximizes the, the what you call it the but but here's uh, where uh, I see the I see the problem even if you had that uh, it's nominated in some kind of currency so you you using the currency dollars euros whatever and that's the uh, as far as I understood it that's the so-called unit of account. So you're using that one, your currency, that one reference number, to yeah. to judge the judge the transaction. But what now happens if I sit at the central bank, and I'm good friends? I know my banker buddy, and now yeah. we and uh, I also am good friends with the president or local politicians. And the politicians come to me, oh, uh, we need more money for this and this program. Or the banker says, "Oh, my reserves are really bad. Can't you just buy some stuff off my off, off my books?" And then I, the central bank, start printing money. Then, am I not somehow changing that unit of account? Yes, you are. And you know, and to and to make it about... even worse, to make it even worse, my concern yeah. was always. Okay, yeah, I'm changing the unit of account, but it does. It's again, it's intertemporal. It doesn't have like this immediate effect right now because I'm yeah. first going to give it to whoever gets it first, and they go out into the economy, they engage in some transaction at the old unit cost that every everyone thought, oh, that's the the number that we are using in this game. But yeah. then it turns out the number has changed afterwards. Yeah, that, so that's the, I have an incentive. Yeah. I have an incentive to print more. And get the money first, because then I'm getting a better you're deal in the game. Getting the best, yeah, you're getting the best without deal, the uh, cost, yeah, without the the inflation uh, impact. I, I get that. It, it's just what I'm talking about is in a world without currency. So, um, if you were, if you're too, like, there are a few textbooks you can read, just basic economics. Um, what I'm talking about is probably first year going into second year economics, and, um. This is before the introduction of currency. This is just on the basis of um, trading real goods. Um, so apples for oranges, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, I haven't introduced the issue of currency yet. So uh, I'm plainly talking about competition 
without the, the involvement of, of many. Um, the problem comes in, right, once you have issues, once you have um, industries uh, where they're not predisposed to being um, perf like perfectly competitive. So for example, um, tech, big tech, right? We all use Google. There's only like a small fraction of us who use um, DuckDuckGo or, 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 or Bing, right? Most of us use Google. So by convention, it, it like by, let me say like there's sort of economies of scale and all sorts of incentives that lead to market concentration, naturally speaking. Um, there are other industries like the fact that um, the way we use keyboards, I always use this as an example. Um, we all use, uh, certainly in the West, QWERTY keyboards. We don't have any other arrangement for the keyboard because you need to know that when you're switching over to a new computer, you, you know, you're using the same keyboard that you use on your computer. So you need that sort of convention. These sorts of things happen across many uh, markets and these markets are prone to having concentration, having one, two or three big players who dictate what happens. The issue is how do you handle these sorts of uh, situations? And in, in giving people the power to fix those sorts of situations, how do you limit them from not also using that power to further empower the people who are in who 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 are controlling that market? So, um, how do you not how do you not give regulators the very same power that allows them to empower the big companies that that allows them to shut um, to to block um, new competitors from entering the market? Um, these are sorts of questions that need to be um, you know. Us, not just generically saying, oh, capitalism is, is you know, um, broken, therefore we need socialism, therefore we need um, uh, uh, whatever, and, you know, redistribution, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, be more nuanced, be more technical in your in your analysis of yeah. this stuff, because you don't want to find yourself throwing uh, the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I have an answer to, to, to your question. So, I mean, first of all, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. And th there are yeah. multiple ways that you can deal with this. And I do think that because you can just go the regulatory route and try to control it from politics, which I think obviously has its own nefarious uh, pervert. You know, that, that that's it's likely going to cause favoritism. It's likely going to cause. Exactly. It, it, it's it's non-ideal, I would say, for a lot of reasons. But they maybe there is some. If you can come up with a general salute, like a general conceptual thing that like prevents, you know, you sometimes I, I feel like you know one of the best ways that governments can do anything is just to kind of create platforms and encourage or incentivize people to use those platforms. And the point is, is that when you get people using them, it it creates a an emergent benefit to everyone because there's transparency then or something like that. It's all done above board. And in some sense, I mean, like, you know, a lot of what's happening in the build a ball in, in, you know, those, those forums that they have, those world economic uh, sort of forums where, yeah. when they all come together, a lot of that yeah. is plan is planning for working capital because you don't want to overcapitalize an industry. You need to coordinate. Sometimes you, you're going to lose money in the world if people are acting purely independently. If, if yeah. people are, are acting without knowledge of how other people are going to act, suddenly you realize that five people have all invested into making a, a factory to supply a particular industry. And now that industry is overserved, is, is overcapitalized, essentially. You've just yeah. wasted capital in the world. You've wasted yeah. resources building, overbuilding factories where you only need one of those factories to supply the whole market. And now you, you, you sit with all these extra factories which essentially by the time that you will actually use them, they're obsolete because now the technology is better and you would have actually exactly. built a better factory in the future. So mm -hmm. there is such a thing as wasting resources and coordination is an important thing. And just encouraging coordination is generally can be a net benefit for an entire system or something like that. So there are already anti-rivalrous mechanics that are operative within a market, you know, and when certain conventions are found that, that, bring people together as it were, you know, so it's like people that are different manufacturers all use USB, USB inputs or USB mm -hmm. ports, you know, like that makes everyone's life better. So, so, but that does create, that does require vision. And often, you know, 
it's wonderful when the industry is actually being led by, I mean, the technology industry is probably a, a bit historically different to all the other ones, because in some sense, it's designed by people who maybe have a slightly higher IQ, they're slightly more intelligent, it's also the latest thing to be developed. And so mm -hmm. you can see that, you know, Apple always tried to make proprietary ports for things and everyone hated them for it you know because it's like and they were always changing their own ports whereas you know like if you're windows or, or android or somebody else you know you're just using usbs and it's like you you get a huge benefit but okay let me just say that one, one of the general ways of getting out of a lot of the problems that you were describing is just that there is an alternative not that it has to be just that there in, in concept, there is an alternative that if I feel like Microsoft is, is screwing me, I can always go to Linux. It's going to be hard, but mm. it is technically it, it, it is an alternative. So just you have to make it you have to make a category difference between if someone holds all the mines that produce all the cobalt in the world, that's very different from someone having a concentration that in some sense is just because people have chosen to make that the market king or the industry, the leading, you know, company in the industry or something like that, that, you know, mm. is there an actual alternative? Uh, let me just say that the one thing that we do have to worry about, and in some sense, they produce their own mousetrap to some degree. So, you know, when you're talking about that, that, a, that a cartel or a de facto big players are controlling a whole thing that I think can even in the long term end up being good because it eventually does find itself. I can't remember what the history of the railroads were, railways were, but in America, but sometimes at some point all the railroads were privately owned, and then at one point one company basically tried to universalize it, and 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 I don't. So it's interesting that there is. Some people, they eventually say, this is not working. This is madness. This is inefficient. But if we just, you know, if we just universalized it, it would be better for everyone, you know. And so there is a natural mousetrap kind of cycle that it does just sometimes take a certain break point. I mean, in some sense, you know, the one thing you can't sort of divorce agency and intelligence that much from, you know, markets don't just operate in a vacuum. They operate, you know, there are people that have ideas that change the world as it were or so they have you know a vision as it were but but sorry the the major point that i'm saying is that the the, the evil thing that i think that you might somewhat be able to almost make a regulation against but it's also problematic to try to make too much of a regulation against this because this would fly in the face of people that want to make their own independence system because if i wanted to create my own independent system one way that you could classify that in a capitalistic sense is that it would be vertically integrated, that it would do everything. It would, you know, from, from the production to the actual end sort of use of it. And the yeah. recycling. So, yeah. but essentially I think that this is, this is the threat because if, if things get so vertically integrated, they cannot be deposed. They cannot, in some sense they, there's no room for having choice or, or a competition to be let in because if yeah. you go to your su supermarket, which is virtually integrated, there's only one type of produce and they are producing it and there's no room for any variety, you know, in, in the market. And yeah. that can have a stiltifying effect, I think, because that can sort of bring things into, you know, on a, you know, I mean, this is why people have always said, you know, it's more important to be conscious of consuming locally produced goods and things like that. Yeah us other than just preserving a decentralized supply chain and preserving let's say a liberal amount of variety and choice you know in terms of yeah. that you know then we're not going to impoverish ourselves by losing the capacity to be able to do certain things that that otherwise in the background suddenly all the food in the world gets converted into you know gmo produced genetically you know sort of right. seeds that kill themselves you keep have to, having to order the new seeds from monsanto and it actually destroys the quality of the soil in fact you know a lot of these gmo crops they end up having less they end up being less productive it's crazy but like you know they have one good season and then and then the soil kind of gets gets abused. Uh, right. Anyway, so so uh, yeah, uh, um, you touched on the point um, of perhaps one of the 
conditions that need to be, you know, set is having an overall culture in society of support locals, support small businesses. And or, or, or to be averse to vertical integration, but also that yeah. you get better services if you don't have vertical integration because you can hide things in vertical integration. Whereas if everyone has to be there, they, they are dealing with this and then they have multiple clients that they have to tend to or whatever. But if you have vertical integration, then things get insulated and they're not as transparent because you don't have yeah. as many nodes of connection sort of, you know, and also you, you, you mean that, that that particular node can be stupid or, 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 or uh, yeah, it, it, it practices aren't being surveyed by as many different actors or stakeholders or something. Right. It, it, it's, it, it makes room for complacency. Hmm. That's a much better way of putting it. Yeah. It, it sort of allows for, yeah, it, it allows for people to be unaccountable, to have certain information hidden. And hidden information is one of the things that is detrimental to perfect competition. You know, you, um, yeah. another industry that's taught in economics that, um, that on its own fails to coordinate itself into an industry is uh, insurance. Uh, I'm sure I've spoken of this uh, on the stream before, is that um, the main issue with insurance is information asymmetry, asymmetry, is that you know more about yourself and your behavior and your inclinations than the insurer does. Therefore, left alone and without any sort of process to, you know, gather information from you, it, you know, that industry won't coordinate properly. Or, or in, this, in the case of uh, selling, uh, say, for example, cars, used cars, you know where your car had bumps and scratches of real significance. That maybe a, a person who's just buying it from you, on, you know, at face value wouldn't be able to pick up. Therefore, there's a whole industry that needs to be created of people who can actually um, certify, you know, uh, uh, the, um, uh, I don't know, how am I supposed to put it, how well w um, this car works, you know, how uh, in working order it is, you know, the extent to which it can, it, it can be relied upon. So these are sorts of things that, um, inefficiencies that need to be dealt with. Um, not everything needs to be dealt with through regulation. Um, that's what people like on my side of the, the camp would typically say. Um, but I am aware that there are some things that require some regulation because, you know, if not, there's some perverse incentives for people to hide certain information. Say, for example, in the case of vaccines, you know. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, well, it, I, I think if certain vertical integrate, I think certain specified vertical integrations could perhaps be regulated against or something like that uh, mm. as a kind of anti-monopolistic sort of antitrust you know kind of of of, of yeah yeah so th th that i think would, would would make sense but that yeah um yeah yeah we, we need to do a lot more. we need to be a lot more sophisticated in our um uh, uh analysis of and this goes back to your point, Psycho, of people needing to have a base level of education, certainly in in civics, um, I'd say economics as well, statistics as well. You need to have, for you to have any idea of what's happening in the world, you need to have some sort of um, grasp on these, you know, basic topics, you know. I mean, this is um, what a Bachelor of Arts used to be. When you were educated in uh, a Bachelor of Arts, you had to understand all the latest scientific mm. theories and all the latest sort of sociological, all the major ones. You know, you had to have a general awareness of, of, of what was going on in the world. You know, that's what a liberal arts education consisted of. You know, like you, you wouldn't be properly educated mm. if you, you sort of weren't sort of, you know, if you, if you weren't sort of built up in a kind of in, in a basic understanding of, you know, where, where, where we're at as a, as a, almost as a kind of sorry, as a residual history and a residual, you know, kind of collective, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you're given the capacity to read the pulse of the zeitgeist, you know, that you, you will actually yeah. have insight into what's actually happening in, in, you know, at this stage in history, you know, that you are a mm -hmm. part of, you know, it's kind of giving you the keys to the conversation as it were, you know, uh, but, but anyway. 
that, that's what university yeah. used to be about. Not now. now. <laughs> now it's more about radicalizing people. Um, yeah, I, I think people need to have a, a more sophisticated conversation around these topics. The, the whole, oh no, we just want change. That's irresponsible. You need to be able to specify what sort of change you want and be able to understand why you want that change. What's the benefit, you know? Um, and that takes some sophistication, uh, in, certainly in terms of understanding policies and all the stuff that you've mentioned, Syke. And this brings me to my whole point. I, I basically hold the position that not everyone should be voting. That's, you know, I know I live in, in a democracy. I know that, you know, that's the basic value of um, certainly my home country. But I, I, I don't think it's efficient, you know, to have everyone vote on everything and t treat everyone's view as equal, even though some people's views are based on basically feelings, whereas others have actually taken the, the time to, you know, have a, a sophisticated analysis of where we are at this point in time. Yeah, I was just going to say that lends itself, that obviously has the problem of how do you then gauge what constitutes a, a, a good grasp of what you know is happening today that's obviously subjective that's obviously so, you know that sounds yeah. sounds to me like there you perceive it as if there's some filter missing in society so people who are yeah i think we need some filter i yeah. think i think we do need some filter like I, I, my basic um proposition if someone were to ask me okay say how you'd want the, these things to be filtered i'd say certainly you'd have to be over the age of 25. you'd have to have um done some physical labor done some stem subjects or or, or, or served in the military you'd uh, preferably um but of course this this lends itself to bias but i'd prefer for people to have some long-term relationship experience um uh preferably in the form of marriage um i think once you've clocked these few categories these few um check these boxes you you're most likely going to be a well-rounded human being um, who's able to vote and think responsibly. And yeah, I, I think our straying away from these sorts of um, prerequisites is what's led to this, um, to our democracies, you know, devolving into demagogueries, you know. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. I'm afraid we're going into the opposite direction. So voting with, I don't know, 16 and uh, I think we have like some politicians, some uh, young ladies, uh, that are now elected into the German de parliament. I think, I don't know how old they are, but they're in their twenties. So it would go kind of like, if you're very young, if you don't have certain experiences and it would be just counter to what you say, because you say you that there's what you propose is like, mm. you have to re reach some sort of maturity. This, this, yes, I, exactly. I, I say, look, I, I'm, I'm vastly sympathetic with the kind of thing that you're trying to describe. But I think there's in, just in terms of what democracy is, having restrictions like that are, are wholly unworkable. And in some sense, you have to relegate that to the mm. culture itself. You have to actually say that you have to hope that the actual cultural ethos and the cultural sort of mood and the standards, the moral standards of society will sort of enforce that kind of, let's say, competency check or, or, or something like that, which obviously, you know, the, the problem, the reason why I think you can't really do this with democracy is, is just to kind of like, is that in some sense, your your vote can be seen in two ways. You you see, like the problem is that it, the vote is not well defined in terms of what is the purpose of the vote. The purpose of the vote is whatever you decide you want to use it for. So already like some people might be trolls, some people might, might yeah, as in like they just want the world to burn, you know, they're just like the Joker or something like that. Like they mm -hmm. just want to have a good laugh because they're not political creatures themselves. Some people will say, I'm going to maximize my selfish interest. And other people might say, I'm voting for some kind of collective good or something like that. We would maybe yeah. hope that culturally the standard is, is that we're we're trying to, to have essentially optimization for or I mean, that's a kind of utilitarian argument, I guess, or, or we want some kind of integrity, you know, maybe people vote for different reasons. But the problem is, is that voting for self-interest is such an obvious, let's say, idea around voting, 
that the idea that some people would be able to use the ballot box to promote their self-interest and other people would not because they are less competent in some sense creates a kind of toxic paradox there which would be untenable so i think that putting restrictions on voting like that qualitative restrictions you know like things that you know so like you know an age i think you could do that you know but the idea that oh you have to have relationship experience or you have to have some kind of you know sort of job experience of a certain quality or something like that right. is it's going to is going to be sort of too antithetical to the idea that democracy in some sense is um is essentially that 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 people get to air their grievances or, or, or you know that, that is how they are interfacing you know and in some sense yeah, you know, in my view, democracy is not shouldn't actually be that important. It should be less important than the constitution and the courts. Obviously, you know, like my view also has some problems in terms of in practice, because obviously if the democracy gets too far off the rails, then you know, like you're not going to be able to, to sustain anything that has integrity or, or something like that if if the democracy devolves so badly. But anyway, I mean we're not having these things properly working in tandem with each other, which would also help reinforce each other. But um, anyway, so, 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 so yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic with your, your, with your inclination, but I also am slightly, it, it almost starts getting onto the territory of trying to create a kind of Unitarian secular church, you know, that, that this is, yeah. yeah, which I mean, I understand that I could be considered to be a hypocrite on this because, you know, I want a, a strong civics education and, a strong, let's say, allegiance to the Constitution, which in some sense could be argued to be almost like a kind of Unitarian church. But in some sense, if the Constitution entrenches a kind of moral anarchy, which I think that it does, when it basically says everyone should be liberally tolerant of other views, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, obviously uh, that don't breach the intolerance paradox because you can't let some people to have such radical views that they are openly promoting violence or openly promoting crimes be committed or openly promoting that they want to radically take over the government with the, with the democracy and change the way that the justice system works so that they can just kill whoever they don't like or you know the, yeah. just trying to create a thought experiment obviously that goes beyond the pale as it were but within those bounds you know like having yeah, I mean, I, I've been trying to sort of rack my own thinking around how to explain to people that you, know, you could still use democracy to promote your morality, but you have to do it under the pressure of a structure that that gets to be dominant to it. And that is how everyone's freedom as an individual gets to be guaranteed. That is how everyone's freedom is enshrined and protected. Yeah. And, you know, so that we don't run into the intolerance paradox, essentially. But uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. What you've said is a perfect counter to what I say, and I don't ever, I don't have an answer that can sort of defeat your, your argument, like your argument is superior to mine. And the only thing that I have to rely on after people um, respond to me in a way that's very similar to what you've said is that basically what I would like is for the economy to be more, to, uh, more independent um, from uh, the or of the uh, of democracy, from democracy, I, I think um, in much the same way that you would want um, the constitution to be some something that is held above democracy, um, because you you see that democracy has you know inherent um, flaws that, when allowed to play out like to their full ex um, extremity, will lead to bad outcomes for people certainly in terms of justice and i would say economically as well like the fact that um it the fact that uh, land expropriation for example should not be an option it should not be an option that's theft the, yeah, well, like the fact that you can get eight out of ten people to agree that okay we want to have land expropriation that should not be an option just because of the fact that just a, it's a majority i think that's a fundamental corruption uh, you know you're destroying the entire economy um the way in which we judge uh things the way in which we price things that the, the your title deed is only um of value that pa that piece of paper is only of value because you know you can enforce it 
once you can't enforce it it's just a piece of paper that's all it is yeah, and, just, yeah. Just, just, yeah. I, mean, I, I was just, I mean like obviously expropriation without compensation uh is is i mean in in some kind of general without it being particularly appropriate in because of his, uh, the particular history of a particular property but just as a general kind of framework obviously that's unconstitutional which is why they're trying to sort of change the constitution which i also think is not possible i don't think technically it's you're capable of changing the constitution that way i don't think it's feasible i i think uh, anyway, I, there's a bit of a, a legal argument, which I'm not going to repeat. I've, I've said it a few times uh, in, in other sort of live streams. But I think that just to generally contend with your point, I think that you can use the Constitution to actually push for a kind of slight shaping up of that. If, if we had a proper functioning constitutional order, what I imagine that you could do is you could bring a class action lawsuit against the government for future generations on behalf of the public interest and the argument that you would make is that you are increasing the public debt and you are not developing the country so in some sense you're putting us in a worse mm. position in the future in terms of development and you're not even helping us at the moment and so you we are applying to the constitutional court to put the government on notice that they have to go through some kind of more rigorous you know sort of if they want to spend money it has to sort of be checked on in some, you know, that, that the exception, essentially that the executive is doing things, is impoverishing the country, is impoverishing, you know, sort of that you could do it on behalf of the taxpayers. So you can say like, yes, you yeah. might have the democratic right to be the executive, but how you are executing the, executing your governance is essentially unreasonable. It's irrational. And there, there are some basic things things you know there's, there's there's basically some kind of you know the baby is being lost in the bathwater somewhere and you know we have to put a stop on that and so you can continue to be your crazy government but you can't keep on increasing the debt you at the very least you have to start getting the debt paid back you know getting it paid down essentially or or, or, mm. or start contracting the public debt because this is you know essentially this is you know yeah, I mean, this is bad for, for our future in some sense. And you can even make a democratic argument based on that because, you know, we are impoverishing future generations that are going to be yeah. inherit debt, essentially. Yeah. Because, and so and I, I, I think that there's, there's a constitutional argument to be made that there needs to be essentially a tendency towards having no public debt, that actually that's the yeah. only direction we're allowed to go in. And look, there are, there are perhaps the, the democratic reasons why you should be allowed to go into debt if because if you can say that the proc that it's better to invest the money into education but if the money is not actually producing development if it's not being effective in terms of transforming the country then you know increasing the debt when we're not even getting transformation in exchange is obviously you know it, it's it's a waste of money essentially and yeah, yeah. sort of yeah especially in in the political context where you're constantly blaming rich people for everything you know where you, you're saying you know the reason why we, we're not thriving is because the rich people aren't paying their share you know as they're as they are have been slowly destroyed by you know the command economy and by the over taxation you know we would we, we would probably collect more tax you know if we had a more reasonable sort of tax regime and and all these sorts of things you know and especially in a country where you need to have economic growth you know it's, the whole yeah. thing is so yeah. fundamentally backwards yeah yeah anyway. uh guys I, I may have to dash soon because um i have to go soon because I've got some need to go to the life. grocery store get some food life you know <laughs> yeah so um, i'm sorry i spoke so much and yeah great it's, it's very interesting to hear your perspective as well for, for, from germany and stuff but thank you very much for, for the discussion guys yeah you're welcome yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Do you guys have any sorts of comments you want to say to round off, or do we call it a night nice day, depending on where you guys are? <laughs> I think Gray is the same time zone as us, except when they have daylight savings. So he might literally be in the exact same time zone or two hours off, I think. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. we are very close. We might be in the same, same time zone, yeah. Oh, at, at sometimes we yeah. do have the same time but it, you see we don't have daylight savings where we where we live and you do so it changes yeah. for you but half the time you i think you have the same time it's as us. 5 yeah that's exactly oh. what it is here yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, it just dawned on me that um, Namibia was called Southwest Germany, which would mean that, you know, approximately Germany is right above us to the north. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All, all right, guys. It was fun chatting. Let me, let's get back to life. <laughs> have right, we, <laughs> yeah, have, have right. a good evening. Take care, everybody. Right. Bye. Cheers, Cheers, everyone. All right.